Web novel fanfiction TG the good. The latest of the latest. Chapter 197 Entered the second floor. The scenery on the second floor of the Forest of Giants dungeon was similar to the first. The trees, rocks and everything else in sight were all huge. Kill 44, 44 to proceed to the next floor. However, the quest on the second floor was completely different from that on the first floor. Monster hunting this is much better. There shouldn't be any troublesome situations. And the player's resolve was also different from on the first floor. All we need to do is grab it. When the players heard the conditions to clear the second floor, fighting spirit began shining in their eyes and their faces began to glow. This was a scene that ordinary players would find hard to understand. Wasn't 44, 44 a large number? Even if every player who entered the dungeon hunted 140 monsters on average, it still wouldn't be enough. Most importantly, this was a four-floor dungeon. There was a high possibility that medium and large-sized monsters who appeared as boss monsters in two- and three-floor dungeons would appear here. Nevertheless, the players who entered the second floor burned with fighting spirit. This was extra proof that these were no ordinary players. Right, just grab it. It wouldn't be that hard. With an average level of 118 which was built on the numerous corpses of monsters, these players were far from ordinary. They were also the ones who had willingly thrown themselves into a dungeon that Lee Sejun had given up. This showed that they were more adventurous and enterprising than anyone else, and also that they had great confidence in their ability. Let's show our skills. Right, we have to show that we didn't get this far by luck. More importantly, these players were those who were used to being above others. Isaac Ivanov isn't the only player. They had no intention of simply accepting that Isaac Ivanov was the best without any competition. Whoosh! It pushed them to prove themselves. However, this spirit didn't last very long. A woo! The wild roar that appeared as soon as the battle began immediately cooled down that burning spirit of victory and fighting. Before long, the players, who confirmed the source of the howl, were greatly astonished. It's a hellhound. Hellhound. It was because, at that moment, a monster that was called a nightmare by players had revealed its presence on the second floor of the dungeon. This is insane, why the hell is a hellhound here? This is the second floor. It was impossible. Was it possible for a hellhound to be the boss monster of the second floor in a four-floor dungeon? It was like encountering a fatal bug in a game. However, the hellhound's next actions stunned them greatly. A wool. The hellhound, with its overwhelming aura, began slaughtering the monsters instead of the players. W- What's going on? Why is the hellhound hunting the monsters? In the face of such an unexpected situation, even these veteran players could not help but be confused. After a while, someone finally spoke. It was summoned by Isaac Isaac summoned the hellhound. It was at that moment that it became known that the hellhound was none other than Isaac Ivanov's new summon. No more accidents were possible. The player's burning fighting spirit had become completely frozen by that point. This is better than I expected. Kim Woo Jin was very satisfied by this sight. The ability of Osiris Ring is truly amazing. Osiris Ring. Required level, level 1 or higher. Description, a ring that holds the power of Osiris it contains the power to resurrect the dead. All stats 15%. All attack power 15%. When equipped, resurrection skill becomes available. Resurrection. Literally, with this skill, any corpse the user targeted could be resurrected. Of course, there were conditions. The more intact the corpse was, the less magic power it would require to resurrect and maintain it, while the less intact the corpse was, the more magic power it would consume. In other words, as long as the mana supply was enough, something could be revived even if only bones were left. And the target that was brought back by resurrection could use all of the skills it had in its previous life. The hellhound uses hellfire. Naturally, this meant that the resurrected hellhound could make use of its hellfire. Magic power has been consumed. Of course, it was the summoner's magic power that was used instead, but Kim Woo Jin didn't care. 
At that moment, when faced with the overwhelming spectacle that the hellhound was showcasing before him, Kim Woo Jin paid absolutely no attention to the consumption of his magic power. The effect of ruler of the battlefield stacks. What's more, as a summon the ruler of the battlefield skills buff also applied to the hellhound. This was a scene where not even a single point of his magic power was wasted. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin still had a lot of magic power to spare. I'm sure this will instill fear. And Kim Woo Jin didn't intend to spare that either. Summon the Book of the Dead. Summon Skeleton Knight. Incarnation of the battlefield has been invoked, TL, I wished it was applied to the Hellhound. In this way, Kim Woo Jin started sprinting. Johann George, the King of Undead, began his activities in 2025. After a trip to an auction in Sotheby, where he purchased the ruler of the battlefield skill for $100 million, his power rapidly grew and eventually, he became the only one who could rival the Messiah Guild. This was incredibly surprising, considering the fact that the Messiah Guild had already become a transnational organization through the war with Japan in 2025. It was similar to a runner, who started an hour late in the marathon, catching up to and competing against the race leader. So how was this possible? It was simple. The frightening violence that the King of Undead displaying far surpassed that of the Messiah Guild. And the King of Undead had shown that level of violence since 2025. The monsters in the dungeon were slaughtered by immensely powerful skills and legendary items and even his skeleton army were equipped with numerous legendary items. In addition, there was always an audience who were able to witness and subsequently spread the presence of the King of Undead around the world. This was the complete opposite method of Lee Se-jun who always attacked dungeons with nothing but his team and concealed himself without allowing even a single outsider audience. Now, a similar scene was taking place in the Forest of Giants dungeon in 2024. The Hellhound, a monster which was considered to be a nightmare for the players, was currently fighting on their side, tearing into the monsters with reckless abandon. Rattle. And skeleton soldiers equipped with powerful armament were assisting it. Kyaha. In this chaotic battle, the skeleton knight clearly displayed its might even more violently. Shiba. And of course, Li Jina was also showing off his presence on this simple, chaotic stage. One eleven monsters remaining. There was only one emotion flowing through the players who had the opportunity to witness this overwhelming violence firsthand. Isaac Ivanov isn't a player he's a being on a completely different level than us. This guy is a monster who surpasses common sense. Fear. In that fear, only one thought flowed through their minds. I'm glad I'm not enemies with that monster. To think that I'd be so grateful my guild doesn't have any resentment with Isaac Ivanov. Fortunately, Isaac Ivanov wasn't an enemy. Of course, for the Messiah Guild, it was the exact opposite. How the hell is this possible? Are you saying we have to fight against this monster? The members of the Messiah Guild, who had risked their lives and entered the dungeon without hesitation to defeat Isaac Ivanov, surpass him, and trample on his reputation, had never felt so depressed. Everyone, wake up we didn't enter this dungeon to be spectators, did we? Only the leader of the Messiah Guild's team, Yung Chan Su, was able to come to his senses and slightly pull back the veil of despair that had covered his team. However, it had only been lifted slightly. It was impossible for the despair they were feeling to just disappear so quickly. Instead, the feeling of hopelessness that Yung Chan Su was feeling at that moment only deepened. Damn it. Although he had once said that he would willingly give his life for Lee Se Jun, he couldn't help but feel ashamed when he felt his determination break down. That was why he was feeling even worse. They've finally broken. And Kim Woo Jin was well aware of that. There was no way he couldn't know. No matter how good the hunting dog is, it would be hard for it to show its teeth in a situation like this. Because he had once been like these messiah guild players now. And it was Kim Woo Jin himself who had felt those feelings more strongly than anyone else. For the messiah guild, with the determination to sacrifice his life for Lee Se Jun, he had faced countless enemies and adversities. He also knew how hard it was to not lose your resolve in a situation like that and that there were very few people who could actually do that. So I should make it even clearer. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had no intention of just stopping there. 
He planned on driving the pile one, in so deeply that none of the people present would dare think about becoming his enemy. It's time to hunt the twin-headed Cyclops. A very solid pile. Chapter, 198 It was a week since the attack on the Forest of Giants dungeon had begun. Even though it was considered a very exciting event, the world kept moving on its course. It was the same for Oh se -chan. Since they had made the Messiah Guild their enemy, he was busy all day, every day without break. How is the black market these days? Completely dry everyone seems to be withholding their goods it seems there have been rumors that dungeon items would be traded at the Sotheby auction which starts on January 1st next year. Oh se -chan complained loudly as he heard his subordinate's words. Why are those Sotheby bastards doing something like this all of a sudden? After saying this, Oh se -chan scratched his bald head nervously. In truth, the thing that bothered him wasn't the fact that the Sotheby auction had halted the trade of items and skill pages in the black market. Honestly, that was a good thing, because it meant that all those items and skill pages would appear in the auction and then it would just be a problem of acquiring them instead of searching. But skills and items exclusive to the emissary of the underworld are disappearing too quickly. The thing that bothered Oh se -chan was the fact that items and skill pages for players who had the emissary of the underworld as their halo were rapidly disappearing from the market. It could be said to be because of Isaac Ivanov, but... This wasn't strange considering Isaac Ivanov's recent performance of Isaac Ivanov, the value of players who had the emissary of the underworld as their halo. Something is happening. But Oh se -chan's instincts were telling him that the situation wasn't as simple as it seemed. This was why he was frustrated. Oh se -chan was not the type to trust things that went against his instincts. Something. While Oh se -chan was trying to find some clue, a subordinate came into his office. Boss, I think you need to see this. What is it? There's a rumor going round in Europe. What rumors? Rumor has it that someone is attempting one of the dungeons the Messiah Guild failed to clear. Oh se -chan tilted his head at that. There are people other than us who are willing to attack dungeons the Messiah Guild abandoned. Attacking the Messiah Guild's failed dungeons was like a taboo among the players. Wasn't that the reason Isaac Ivanov's challenge was able to grab the spotlight for such a long time? There was someone else willing to do that? Oh se -chan couldn't think of such a person. At least he had no information about such a person. It's a rumor. It was quite normal for rumors to appear and disappear just as quickly. But since he came to see me. However, if it was just a rumor, his subordinate would not have come to him. So who is attacking? That there were players that the boss wanted to recruit in the past, right? Who have the emissary of the underworld halo? Aren't there a few of them like that? Well, not many have the emissary of the underworld as their halo who is it? All of them. Huh. The eleven people who were on our list are all a part of the rumor team. Oh se -chan's face went slack for a moment before he cried out with his eyes wide open. Who is the leader? Johann George. When he heard that, Oh se -chan was convinced. An eye for an eye, this is it. The Messiah Guild had lit a counter fire to extinguish the blaze known as Isaac Ivanov. Kim Woo Jin remembered when he attacked the Forest of Giants dungeon in the past. 277 people entered, 53 died on the first floor, 9 died on the second floor, 17 died on the third floor, and 71 died on the fourth floor. It would be strange if he could forget the dungeon where half of the players who entered with him died. Moreover, those teammates weren't just co workers. They were all veteran players over level 100, very important assets for the Messiah Guild. However, it was only the aftermath that truly cemented the memory into Kim Woo Jin's memories. Nevertheless, we were treated like heroes. Upon their return, Kim Woo Jin and his teammates were all treated like heroes instead of defeated soldiers. The reason was simple. Only for the reason that such a result was inevitable against the twin-headed Cyclops. The twin-headed Cyclops on the fourth floor was far stronger than the Messiah Guild anticipated. In fact, the twin-headed Cyclops was completely incomparable to monsters on the same level. Its size was much larger than that of a normal Cyclops, and the eyes on each head were magical eyes with different abilities. 
Those who were exposed to the eye on the right head would be given a curse that made their bodies heavier, while those on the left would become confused by hallucinations. The twin-headed Cyclops also had no blind spots. It was surprisingly fast, its skin was tough enough to withstand unique grade weapons, and it had a strong resistance to magic and curses. It was also outrageously aggressive and violent. It was virtually impossible to hunt that violent creature that would hunt whoever angered it down relentlessly until it crushed them to death. It couldn't be helped. It was natural to be treated as a hero just for returning alive. However, Kim Woo Jin was unable to accept that fact. If I was willing to tolerate stuff like that, I'd never have joined the Messiah Guild. After all, he was a member of the Messiah Guild before anything else. A member of the Messiah Guild who believed that they could put an end to this game and save the world. It was impossible for him to tolerate the fact that there were monsters in the world so strong that he could barely escape with his life. Therefore, from that day, Kim Woo Jin made preparations so that such a tragic event would never happen again. He also devised numerous ways to deal with ridiculous monsters like the twin-headed Cyclops. And now, the opportunity for revenge had come. Proceed to the next floor. He had finally gotten the chance to hunt a twin-headed Cyclops. Of course, there were a lot of differences from that time. I'll shorten the distance between Lee Sejun and I using the twin-headed Cyclops. Especially the fact that Kim Woo Jin was no longer hunting for the Messiah Guild. Cyclops. They were muscular monsters with an average height of around 5 meters and the most distinguishing characteristic that made them stand out was the fact that they had a single eye. The hunting difficulty was average. Of course, the average difficulty only corresponded to normal Cyclopes TL, yep, that's the plural of Cyclops. It definitely won't be ordinary. Definitely. None of the players preparing to enter the fourth floor of the dungeon dared to look down on the twin-headed Cyclops they were about to face. After all, it's an A-rank, five-day survival quest. The difficulty could be reflected by the fact that the A-rank dungeon had a survival quest rather than a hunting quest. Its strength should be on a whole other level. Entered the fourth floor. However, some of the players who entered the fourth floor of the dungeon were faced with this monster immediately. The Cyclops' single eye is watching you. It's the Cyclops. The eight-meter-tall Cyclops that had two heads, each with one eye, was looking at the players who had just appeared. Damn it. It was a horrific situation for the players. But it was a situation that was possible. After all, the place the players appeared on the next floor was not something that they could choose. Therefore, it was pointless for them to complain or question why such a situation had occurred. The important thing was to deal with the situation. Retreat. Scatter. At that moment, the 31 players who were unlucky enough to encounter the twin-headed Cyclops immediately ran away. It was a great response. After all, who would be foolish enough to challenge a monster that had never been hunted before without any preparation? There was no problem with their judgment or execution. Your body has become heavy due to the Cyclops curse. The problem was the abilities of the Cyclops' two eyes. Cup. Ugh. The players who were targeted by the eye on the right head immediately fell to the ground as though someone had stepped on them. This was because their bodies had suddenly become heavier and their balance was lost. However, their situation wasn't that bad. You have been confused by the Cyclops curse. The situation of the players who had been targeted by the left eye was much more serious. Damn it, when did orcs arrive here? There are lizard men. In their confused state, the players mistook each other for monsters and began to attack each other. In fact, the only three players who managed to escape were those who had high mobility and ran away without looking back. Ache. Saw Dash, save me. The 28 players left behind died without even being able to put up proper resistance. And the commotion caused by the deaths of these 28 players was soon transmitted to the other players who were elsewhere. Of course, it was impossible for them to grasp the exact situation with just that information. Has it started already? Looks like they didn't even get the chance to escape. It must have more special abilities than we expected. However, it was not difficult for them to realize the severity of the situation. First let's move as far away from that sound as possible. 
all we have to do is survive for five days. Naturally, the players began using all of their strength to get as far away from where they heard the sound as possible. Among them were those from the Phoenix Guild. Let's move away as well. If a teammate gets caught by the Cyclops, don't save them this time survival is our top priority. They too steeled their determination and prepared leave as soon as they heard the commotion not long after entering the fourth floor. Now, let's move. The sound came from there, so let's go in the opposite direction. Soon they began to move. And Isaac Ivanov also made his move. Ha! Huh. M- dash, Mr. Isaac. I- dash, isn't that the direction that the sound came from? Towards the source of the sound. Chapter 199. A wool. It was the hellhound who announced the start of the battle. Without hesitation, the hellhound, with its long, black body, leapt up and rushed towards the twin-headed cyclops. Boom! The twin-headed cyclops swung its gigantic fists at the hellhound, but the hellhound immediately dodged by rolling twice on the ground before jumping back to its feet and baring its teeth once again. Roar! The twin-headed cyclops' two heads faced the hellhound at the same time and let out roars of anger. Then they used their curses to affect the hellhound. K.R. The hellhound felt its body become heavier, and the focused light within its eyes seemed to waver a bit. But that was all. Although it had become heavier, the hellhound was a monster that was not inferior to the cyclops at all. In fact, when it came to pure physical ability, the hellhound could be considered superior to the cyclops. This meant that even with the curse, the physical difference between them was minimal. And it didn't matter if it was confused. After all, the only one facing the twin-headed cyclops at that moment was the hellhound. So naturally, the hellhound only had to attack the only enemy it could see. The battle that began between these two monsters was incredibly fierce and brutal. P.U.K. Every time they collided, the sound produced was reminiscent of a loud drum, and the sound of the two moving around and knocking against the ground was not lacking when compared to thunder. It was a scene that made it seem like the very world was shaking. Moreover, the battle between the two didn't seem like it would end easily. That was how formidable the Hellhound's power was. Magic power is being consumed quickly. However, the current condition of Kim Woo Jin's magic power was not great. Of course, this was to be expected. The twin-headed Cyclops was originally not a monster that players from four-floor dungeons would be able to hunt. It would be strange if he could fight for an infinite amount of time against such a monster. Ten minutes at most. Kim Woo Jin knew that he could only maintain such a fierce battle with this monster for no more than ten minutes. And it would be hard to make use of the skeleton soldiers or knights. Naturally, there was no place for his skeleton army in such a fight. Rather, if they were to be confused, there's a high chance that they would become a hindrance instead. It was also risky to add more troops because of the twin-headed cyclops' ability to confuse its opponents. In such a scenario, the skeletons were more likely to attack each other. Above all, weak attacks wouldn't do anything. Most importantly, the twin-headed cyclops' skin was so thick that even unique grade items would not work. Kim Woo Jin was more aware of this fact than anyone else. In other words, to be able to step into this battle, certain conditions needed to be met. 1. They needed to be immune to the curses that the twin-headed cyclops made use of. 2. They needed a powerful enough item which could get through the twin-headed cyclops' thick skin, as well as the ability to use it properly. 3. They must have flawless technique to attack the twin-headed cyclops at the best possible times. It's impossible even for Li Jina. Even Li Jina could not meet all of these conditions. There was only someone who could. I'm the only one. Kim Wu Jin was the only person who met all the requirements. The problem was that currently, Kim Wu Jin could not let go of Merlin's staff. Merlin's staff infuses magic power into you. Because as soon as he did so, his magic power would plummet, and the hellhound would immediately get trampled by the twin-headed cyclops till even its bones could not be seen. It was a problem that couldn't be solved unless there were two Kim Wu Jins. Alter Ego skill has been activated. However, it was an easy problem for the current Kim Wu Jin to solve. Is this enough? 
Kim Wu Jin was able to create a clone of himself using the skill of the seventh tail of the nine tailed fox. Its abilities are lacking. Of course, the abilities of the clone Kim Wu Jin created by the alter ego skill were lacking when compared to the original. To be precise, the alter ego skill didn't copy the user's stats, instead, it divided them. If Kim Wu Jin had a total of 100 health, stamina, and magic power, then it would be divided randomly. Moreover, the stats that were divided were only the basic ones and the ones gained from achievements. As the stats of items could not be divided or changed, the stats of items could only be factored in if the items were equipped separately. Because my alter ego doesn't have Van Gogh's bracelet. This meant that the clone would not be able to benefit from the stats and advantages of Kim Wu Jin's items. But it's still stronger than I was then. However, it was still on a completely different level when compared to himself who had challenged the forest of giants in the past. The items are completely different from then too. Most importantly, the items that Kim Woo Jin's alter ego was currently holding in his hands were much more powerful than any item Kim Woo Jin had in the past. Ganjang resonates with Makya. The resonance will last 10 minutes. Attack power increased by 50%. Cutting power increased by 50%. All stats increased by 50%. Movement speed increased by 50%. Gang Jang and Makya. Wu. Kim Wu Jin looked at the two swords that were vibrating in the same frequency and smiled. Dig out his eyes first. After that, I'll peel his skin. When Kim Wu Jin entered the battlefield, the first to notice it was the Cyclops. The left head targeted him as soon as it realized that there was another challenger in the fight. You have been exposed to the Cyclops curse. Confusion. The curse which made it impossible to distinguish between friend or foe immediately attacked the alter ego. Lancelot's ring negates confusion. However, in the face of Lancelot's ring, the confusion disappeared before it could truly reveal its power. In that time, the alter ego quickly shortened the distance to the cyclops and immediately cut its left Achilles tendon. Shook. The thick skin, which was so tough that even the hellhound's teeth were only able to leave shallow scratches, split apart like paper in front of the resonating Ganjang sword. As soon as its Achilles tendon was cut, the twin-headed cyclops let out a pained roar and stagger. However, it didn't fall. Like a deep-rooted, ancient tree, it remained standing. The hellhound wasn't going to let go of this chance. It leapt forward once more. Under the hellhound's assault, it was naturally impossible for the twin-headed cyclops to chase after the alter ego. Once again, the alter ego was able to do what it wanted, and it immediately took advantage of that fact. This time, it was the right Achilles that was cut. Then it went back to the left foot and cut the Achilles tendon in the same place it had been cut before. Snap! Then he heard the sound that reminded him of a piece of rebar breaking. It was the sound of the Achilles tendon, which had been severely damaged, finally snapping. It was also a prelude to the fall of the twin-headed cyclops, which could no longer remain standing. The twin-headed cyclops fell backwards with a loud roar. And as if it had been waiting for this moment, the hellhound pounced onto the twin-headed cyclops' torso. However, at that moment, the hellhound turned to look at Kim Woo Jin's alter ego. In its eyes, there was no sign that it was looking at its owner. This was due to confusion. Immediately, the hellhound bared its teeth at Kim Woo Jin, expressing its intentions. Tuck tuck. But in the next instant, the hellhound's body began melting. Its flesh disappeared in no time and its bones crumbled not long after. It was at that moment that Kim Wu Jin had cancelled the summoning of the Hellhound. It was also the moment when the Cyclops had a chance of escaping its predicament. But the monster wasn't able to see this chance. When the Hellhound summoned was ended, the Makya and Ganjang pierced the twin headed Cyclops' eyes. The Cyclops' curses have disappeared. It was at that moment that the twin headed Cyclops, a monster brimming with terrifying power, had become both lame and blind and could only rely on its large body and thick skin. It was also the moment when the overwhelming hunter had become pitiful prey. Kyaha. A skeleton knight appeared before such prey. Spashiba. And Li Jina also made his appearance. Those who appeared didn't seem like hunters. Instead, 
they were more like butchers who were ready to slaughter livestock. Chapter, 200 The twin-headed cyclops has been slain. Earn the achievement first twin-headed cyclops hunter. Earn the achievement twin-headed cyclops hunter. Earn the achievement outstanding. Even with the death of the twin-headed cyclops, the dungeon wasn't cleared. This was because the clear conditions were not to hunt the twin-headed cyclops, but to survive for five days. Good. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, it was a good thing as he wouldn't have to rush to deal with the twin-headed cyclops body. Even Kim Woo Jin wouldn't have been able to properly butcher it in time. I'll handle it until I disappear. The alter ego was willing to butcher the body on behalf of the main body. Kim Woo Jin smiled at that. How convenient. Lee Jina who was nearby couldn't help but shudder. I can't believe there are actually two of this evil guy. As he looked at Lee Jina's shivering figure, one thought remained in Kim Woo Jin's head. Come to think of it, whenever I clone myself, the stats the clone gets are completely random so it would be even better for training. A way to efficiently make use of the clone popped into his head. But it didn't stay there for long. The Emissary of the Underworld praises your achievement. The Emissary of the Underworld has sent you a special gift while looking forward to your actions in the future. Looking forward to the future. Kim Woo Jin immediately confirmed the gift he got from his halo as he thought about the notification he had never heard before. When he looked at what he got, he couldn't help but smile. Dullahan. Condition, Emissary of the Underworld. Required level, level 150 or higher. Effect, summon a Dullahan by using a knight-type monster as a sacrifice. I never thought I could receive higher-leveled skill pages from a gift. It was the moment when he'd learned a new setting in the world. I'm lucky. One of the most important abilities of a hunter was to analyze their prey simply from the tracks they left. And at the top level, the hunter would be able to reliably gauge their prey's capabilities just from looking at their tracks. It's an absolute monster. That was why the players were shocked and they found the traces on the fourth floor of the dungeon where the players of the Kunlun Guild encountered the twin-headed Cyclops. Only three out of thirty-one managed to get away, the rest couldn't even make it one hundred meters. One set attacked each other, while the others could do nothing to defend themselves from the Cyclops' attacks. It's a monster that's impossible to escape from if you don't run away immediately. The broken bodies scattered around told the players that the twin-headed Cyclops was much stronger than they anticipated. If we encountered that beast. At most, one or two people would survive. Of course, they understood. This monster is the reason surviving is enough to clear this a rank. Just why this a rank dungeon had a survival quest. This is definitely not a monster that players in four-floor dungeons can hunt. They determined that players active in four-floor dungeons or players below level 140 were unable to hunt this monster. This caused them to feel more afraid. But it wasn't fear for the twin-headed Cyclops. Isaac Ivanov still managed to hunt this monster. Instead, it was fear toward Isaac Ivanov, who had hunted such a monster. Their fear was understandable. As had been pointed out earlier, the twin-headed Cyclops was designed to be something they were unable to beat. But Isaac Ivanov had defeated it. And he only took less than 30 minutes. What's more, he had done it in an extremely short time. Without the help of the Phoenix Guild. Without the help of anyone but his teammate. If you knew Isaac Ivanov's capabilities, it wasn't a big deal, it just meant that you were too weak to understand. In addition, this fear was the reason no one approached Isaac Ivanov even after he killed the twin-headed Cyclops. Never offend him. After all, this was a dungeon. And the outside world wouldn't know what happened in this place. Offending Isaac Ivanov in a dungeon was like going into a lion's cage while no one was around and pulling its mane. Gulp. That's why the players only swallowed their saliva while watching Isaac Ivanov from a distance. Thanks to this, Kim Woo Jin was able to dismantle the Cyclops' body in a very relaxed manner. It was quite fun. I gained a lot. Moreover, his gains were much higher than he'd expected. First, he got the Cyclops skeleton. If I make it into a skeleton soldier and seal it in the Book of the Dead, then I could resurrection at any time. Skeleton soldier, Book of the Dead, resurrection. 
Through this combination of skills, Kim Woo Jin would be able to summon the twin-headed ogre whenever he wanted. Its leather is incredibly tough. The twin-headed cyclops skin was also a pretty big gain. The skin of the twin-headed cyclops, which was a monster that couldn't be hunted by players in a four-floor dungeon, was comparable to the hatchling skin in terms of toughness. It was also incredibly large, so the quantity was more than sufficient. I can make another powerful unit like the hatchling unit. This meant that he could strengthen his skeleton army once more. However, his biggest gains were something else. More importantly, the tails of the nine-tailed fox. The twin-headed cyclops had tails of the nine-tailed fox in its body. And it wasn't just one. Fifth tail of the nine-tailed fox. Rating, legendary. Required level, level one or higher. Description, the fifth tail of the nine-tailed fox it contains mysterious power if all nine tails are collected then the user will be able to unleash the power of the nine-tailed fox. All stats 10%. All defense 10%. When equipped can inflict enemies with confusion. Sixth Tail of the Nine-Tailed Fox Description The sixth tail of the nine-tailed fox it contains mysterious power if all nine tails are collected then the user will be able to unleash the power of the nine-tailed fox. All stats 50. All resistance 10%. When equipped, slow down enemy movement speed. There were two tails of the nine-tailed fox, one for each head. It was truly an amazing gain. Now, all that's left are the first, fourth, and eight. The most surprising thing was that Kim Woo Jin already knew where to find the remaining three, who had them or where he could get them. That was to say, the opportunity had come. I'll be able to get all the tails of the nine-tailed fox. It was an opportunity for him to gain tremendous power. Of course, this only meant that he had the opportunity. Actually acquiring all of them was still no easy task. After all, weren't opportunities things that were often missed. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin wasn't excited by the fact that the opportunity had come. Instead, he began preparing so he wouldn't miss the opportunity. A skeleton has been summoned. After he finished skinning it, Kim Woo Jin created a skeleton soldier with the twin-headed cyclops. The resurrection skill has been used. And using Osiris' ring, he once again summoned the twin-headed Cyclops. It's the fear that comes in the moment when you think it's all over and relax your guard that truly remains in your mind. It was at that moment that Kim Woo Jin prepared to induce fear that far surpassed what he'd done before. Isaac Ivanov clears the Forest of Giants dungeon perfectly. Isaac Ivanov creates a new legend. The news that Isaac Ivanov had cleared the Forest of Giants dungeon was transmitted around the world in real time as they stepped out of the gate. But as time passed, the atmosphere in the world began to shift. Isaac Ivanov's dungeon clear process revealed. How does Isaac Ivanov hunt? The reason for that was because news about Isaac Ivanov's dungeon clearing process began to spread. Is that article true? Did Isaac Ivanov really summon a living hellhound? Is there really such a skill? Isaac Ivanov's hunting process, which was revealed by the audience he had taken with him, far surpassed common sense, and naturally, it shocked everyone who learned about it. Could it be that he tamed the hellhound instead of summoning it? You need to say something that makes sense how could he take a tamed monster into a dungeon? There might be a skill like that. There are rumors that he has a subspace skill. I heard that he signed a contract with the devil in hell. I heard he can summon that monster in the dungeon because he opened the gates of hell. At some point, people began saying that Isaac Ivanov had signed a contract with the devil which was why he was able to summon the hellhound from the gates of hell. Isaac Ivanov must have found a bug in the world after it became like a game. I heard this story too. Well if you look at it, that would make a lot of sense. Are the rumors that Isaac Ivanov knows how to end this game true? It might be. Eventually, the rumors transformed to claiming that Isaac Ivanov had found out the truth about the game-like world. It was the moment when a powerful man trying to save the world suddenly transformed into the person who might know how to end the world. It was also the moment when Isaac Ivanov's presence changed. From that point onwards, the powerful people in the world began treating Isaac Ivanov not as a card they could bet their money on, but as someone who might be holding their fate in his hands. 
It's similar to Johann George at that time. Before returning to the past, a countless number of people had entrusted their fate into the hands of the King of Undead. The problem is from now on. Of course, this alone wasn't enough to let him rival the Messiah Guild or Lee Sejun as the King of Undead had in the past. There's still a three-floor difference. Right now there was a huge, three-floor gap between Lee Sejun and Kim Woojin. No matter how outrageous the rumors became, they couldn't change these differences. The Messiah Guild's checks will be even more severe. Moreover, Kim Woojin had drawn the Messiah Guild's ire, as well as the interest of those who did not like the Messiah Guild. The hostility of the true demons who pretended to be saviors to devour the world. We need the attention to gain investments. If they couldn't profit from the interest and attention Isaac Ivanov was garnering, then they had slapped the dragon in the face for no reason. I know there are anti-Messiah guild forces, but... Fortunately, Kim Woojin knew the key figures of the anti-Messiah guild faction very well. The problem is I don't know what kind of relationship the anti-Messiah guild faction has with Johann George. If they were in contact with the King of Undead, they'll definitely start weighing their options. If there was only one item but two people want it, in the end, it would be the buyer who suffered a loss. Only. That thought alone gave him a headache. Woo woo. Kim Woo Jin paused his leatherworking and answered the phone. How have you been, Kim Woo Jin? It was Oh Se Chan's voice. What is it? It's not a big deal, but I have bad news. Chapter 201 Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but smile bitterly when he heard there was bad news. There's not much good news these days did you lose a legendary item or a skill page? It seems God has been blessing you so much recently that he decided to give you a bit of a crisis. Oh Seichan's joke made Kim Woo Jin's bitter smile morph into a real one. So what's the bad news? Do you know Johan George? However, when he heard what Oh Seichan said, the smile fell from Kim Woo Jin's face entirely. He started out in Eastern Europe and as you know, Eastern Europe has been a mess since the dungeon gates started appearing in fact, the function of the government there was almost paralyzed even hell itself wasn't as bad as that place well, he's a guy who grew up and strengthened himself in that hell. This was something that Kim Woo Jin knew as well. Recently, he's shifted his focus over to Western Europe if we leave him like this, it won't be long before he conquers all of Europe he's a pretty amazing guy. He was well aware of the fact that the King of Undead had started out in politically stagnant Eastern Europe before advancing to Western Europe, turning all of Europe into the kingdom with which to go against the Messiah Guild. He's begun moving as well. And now, as he had expected, the King of Undead had started making his move. The Emissary of the Underworld is a very partial halo because of me, his growth would have been extremely stunted, so he will come after me. Because of the King of Undead's personality, he would not be able to accept Isaac Ivanov taking what he believes he deserves. That guy is targeting Isaac Ivanov his halo is the same as yours. And that was exactly the news that he received from Oh Se Chan. He's also joined hands with the Messiah Guild that's 1 plus 10. He also received news that Johann George had joined hands with the Messiah Guild to deal with Isaac Ivanov. But Kim Woo Jin smiled when he heard that. Of course, Oh Se Chan, who was unable to see that, continued speaking in a grave tone. They recruited eleven players who have the Emissary of the Underworld as their halo, including Johann George. Kim Woo Jin finally opened his mouth after receiving the information. So in summary, the Messiah Guild set up a ten-man counterfire together with Johann George to take care of Isaac Ivanov? That's right. Kim Woo Jin replied simply. That's bad news. Very bad news. Johann George and the other ten were enough to match the power Isaac Ivanov had displayed. After all, if every player summoned ten skeleton soldiers, wouldn't they be able to get 110? Though they might be lacking in quality, the number of skeletons they had was still larger than Isaac Ivanov. The Messiah Guild and Johann George would definitely try to emphasize that fact as much as possible. Kim Woo Jin also admitted that they would be difficult enemies. I'm not sure if it's my own perception, but it doesn't seem to me that you think this is bad news. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin couldn't get rid of the smile that came to his lips. It must be your delusion. And there was no reason to erase it. 
The fact that Johann George is working with the Messiah Guild means that he can no longer get any support from the anti-Messiah Guild faction. From that point forward, Kim Woo Jin would be able to obtain everything the King of Undead had under the title rival of the Messiah Guild. I have a favor to ask. Favor? Can you make contact with the Lightning King? Kim Woo Jin's first target was the Lightning King. The Lightning King? Why? When he heard that question, Kim Woo Jin answered it in his head although he couldn't say it out loud. Because it was the Lightning King who gave Johann George the Lich summoning skill. It was because of the Lightning King that the King of Undead was able to complete his Lich unit, one of the most powerful forces in his army. Which was why the Lightning King was targeted by hunting dogs. That was the reason the Lightning King was killed. After thinking about that for a moment, Kim Woo Jin finally responded to Oh Se Chan's question. Since the Messiah Guild is fighting back, we need new investors. Oh Se Chan couldn't help but give a wide smile when he heard the word investors. Park Yong Wan would be sad to hear that. Kim Woo Jin's response to that was simple. It's fine, Park Yong Wan will be the biggest investor anyway. Players, who always risk their lives to clear dungeons, were bound to be sensitive to trends. Therefore whenever a player created a new strategy that had a high rate of success, the others would immediately try to implement. There were no copyrights involved, so there was no problem. The value of emissary of the underworld players soars dramatically. Market prices of items exclusive for players who have the emissary of the underworld halo have skyrocketed. Is this the Isaac Ivanov effect? The era of necromancers? Of course, as Isaac Ivanov far surpassed common sense, it was not easy for any player to imitate him. The five great guilds begin to actively nurture necromancer players. The US government has decided to grant special citizenship to players with the emissary of the underworld halo. The Chinese government confirms one billion budget to foster players with the emissary of the underworld halo. The five great guilds also began investing in players in a bid to imitate Isaac Ivanov. Johann George and the Ten, a necromancer party appears. Up to 310 skeletons can be summoned. The appearance of a necromancer party, consisting of Johann George and the Ten others, was natural in a way. Johann George and the Ten make their debut in a dungeon that the Messiah Guild temporarily gave up attacking. B Rank 5 Floor Dungeon, Monster Forest. They couldn't really be compared to Isaac Ivanov, but that alone was enough to draw some attention. Let's see their results first. They have to prove themselves first. If they really were able to clear a dungeon that the Messiah Guild had given up on, then they really could become Isaac Ivanov's rivals. Maybe they're stronger than Isaac Ivanov. If they're attacking a five-floor dungeon then it can be said that they're a level above Isaac Ivanov. Or they could even become a huge fire that devoured Isaac Ivanov. Johann George Ha a pretty amusing guy has appeared. That's why Park Yongwan was talking to Kim Woo Jin with a dissatisfied expression on his face. Do you know anything about this guy? Nothing at all. Then we'll have to find out everything about him, otherwise we might get eaten by him. Park Yongwan, who had invested almost everything he had into Isaac Ivanov, could certainly not tolerate the emergence of Johann George, who might be able to overshadow the person he invested in. I shouldn't say that we have to get Isaac Ivanov to trample over those guys. It was clear that Park Yongwan wanted to deal with this problem as soon as possible. In response to Park Yongwan's words, Kim Woo Jin asked. How do we do that? We should attack the dungeons more aggressively not just the Messiah Guild, but also the other top guilds, we have to crush all the dungeons they were unable to I'll handle the press coverage. Kim Woo Jin's expression became one of embarrassment when he heard Park Yongwan request. Is there a problem? Isaac Ivanov only has one ironclad rule when it comes to attacking dungeons it has to be a dungeon no one else can clear. Aren't there plenty of dungeons like that? It was as Park Yongwan said. Isaac Ivanov was currently attacking four-floor dungeons, and among four-floor dungeons, there was an extremely large number of them that had been abandoned. Most of the dungeon ranks were also high. Most players over level 100 were too afraid to attack high-ranked dungeons, and even if they wanted to, they might not get permission from the guilds or governments. Would they give you's permission as soon as we ask? That's right. Kim Woo Jin also had no intention of denying that fact. 
he was just raising the questions. But there's no reason for us to attack them for free, is there? Park Yong Wan's expression changed slightly when he heard that question. Explain. There are many dungeons that Isaac Ivanov can clear that means there's also a lot of people who want Isaac Ivanov the demand is high, but the supply is low in such a situation, there's no reason for the supplier to donate his product, is there? So. As long as they are willing to pay for it, Isaac Ivanov would attack any dungeon they want him to. At Kim Woo Jin's suggestion, Park Yong Wan's expression, which had been stiffened by the Johan George situation, gradually began to relax. Then Kim Woo Jin gave the last push. Since you've already invested in him, you'd surely get a dividend. The nudge caused Park Yong Wan to smile brightly. It was a proposal he had no reason to refuse. But he still didn't accept it immediately. Wouldn't Isaac Ivanov get upset if we used him in this way? This was because this wasn't a matter that could be discussed without Isaac Ivanov being present. I will persuade him. Could he be persuaded easily? Isaac Ivanov is noble, but he isn't naive he's also willing to do whatever it takes to reach his goal rather, he might think we're not moving fast enough and contact others. Park Yongwan's eyes narrowed when he heard about him contacting others. Do you suspect something? It seems he's become interested in the Lightning King and as you know, the Lightning King is a weirdo who loves collecting items. Park Yongwan's expression stiffened. Kim Woo Jin's words are right, Isaac Ivanov is noble, but he isn't naive he would definitely contact others if he has something to gain from it. It had already been confirmed that Isaac Ivanov was willing to do whatever it took to further his noble cause. In a sense, it was natural for him to seek more sponsors in order to become stronger. Moreover, if he finds that he has nothing else to gain from me he might toss me aside. And if Park Yongwan was no longer found to be useful, Isaac Ivanov might very well throw him away. Damn it. In addition, Park Yongwan no longer had any items to give to Isaac Ivanov. The Osiris ring was the most valuable item he had to give. Of course, he had been looking for ways to obtain items and skill pages for Isaac Ivanov to make use of, but it had not been easy as the market price for all items exclusive to the emissary of the underworld. It was very likely that Isaac Ivanov was already aware of that fact too. In such a situation, it was natural for him to find another sponsor. The Lightning King. Especially if it was someone like Lightning King. He was a weirdo who liked to collect items and didn't like to trade. If it's that guy, it wouldn't be strange. In other words, there was a high chance that the Lightning King had items that couldn't even be found on the market. He would be worth the attention. So it was understandable that Isaac Ivanov would be interested. There's no way to stop it. Furthermore, Park Yongwan didn't have a good enough reason to prevent Isaac Ivanov from making a deal with him. Then there was only one option left for him. I'll negotiate with the Lightning King. Park Yongwan intended to stand in the middle of them and prevent any form of direct contact between them. Wouldn't that be difficult? Of course, it wouldn't be easy. As had been mentioned earlier, the Lightning King was a weirdo who didn't like trading away his items. To make a deal with such a man was like fighting a losing battle. It seemed Park Yongwan had prepared to bleed a little. Right it won't be easy. This was proved by Park Yongwan's irritated expression as he imagined the difficulty of dealing with the Lightning King. There was no longer any joy at the fact that he might be able to make a profit from Isaac Ivanov. I'll let you know once I have some results before that, make sure that Isaac Ivanov doesn't contact anyone. Kim Woo Jin nodded at the order. He should come to Korea soon enough at that time you'll be able to discuss it with him personally. If you need anything, just inform my secretary. When Kim Woo Jin stood up, Park Yong Wan's secretary approached him immediately. Kim Woo Jin stretched out his hand to her and said, I'd like to borrow the corporate credit card to use while traveling with Isaac Ivanov. Chapter 202 Burp Li Jin Ah let out a loud burp as he rubbed his stomach that had swollen like a mountain. It's been a long time since I was this full. Oh Se Chan, who was looking at the clean grill, couldn't help but talk with a dumbfounded tone. You ate it all on your own hey, don't you know what self-restraint is? Li Jina shrugged at those words. It's meat that Kim Woo Jin bought with the Phoenix Guild's company card anyway, so why can't I eat all of it? 
You're not buying it, are you? And if you need meat, we could always buy more, so what's the problem? Oh Seichan closed his mouth when he heard that. Seemingly satisfied by this sight, Li Jina stood and patted his stomach a few times before saying. Now then, let's have dessert. With those words, Li Jina headed over to the nearby refrigerator, and Oh Seichan, who had just realized that, shouted out to him. Hey, wait. Don't open that. Ha. Huh. As he asked this, Li Jina opened the refrigerator and was shocked when things began falling out of it. Ha. Huh. Chocolate. The things that had fallen out were all chocolate. The refrigerator had been filled to the brim with chocolates. In addition, the packaging on them was all different. Valentine's Day gifts. Soon, Li Jina who identified some of the packaging looked at Oh Seichan and laughed. Did you steal all the chocolates that Isaac Ivanov's fans sent him for Valentine's Day? Oh Seichan shouted at those words. H- -dash, How is that possible? Those were my gifts right, they were sent to me. Li Jina snorted when he heard that ridiculous excuse. Hyung, let's be honest here what Valentine's gifts would you possibly get? What's that supposed to mean? As he was looking at the different chocolates, Li Jina's expression suddenly stiffened. Then, with a stern look on his face, he recited some Russian that had been written on the wrappers. Spashiba. Li Jina turned to look at Oh Seichan with wide eyes. Ha ha, ha ha. Oh Seichan could only laugh awkwardly at his stare. Hyung. You even stole the ones sent for me. I dash, I didn't steal them. I just quietly kept them in the fridge for you so that they wouldn't melt. Of course, that was just an excuse. An excuse that would never work. Hey, really? How could you do that? I could understand if you stole from Kim Woo Jin, but how could you take Valentine's chocolate from me too? I didn't steal it, just saved it for you I was going to give it to you when you came and honestly, not a lot came for every 100 eyes it got, you only got one. At that time, Li Jina shouted as he saw a chocolate bar that was already unwrapped and had been bitten a few times. This, why is this one unwrapped? There was probably a problem with the delivery. Alright, I'll just tell Kim Woo Jin about this. Kim Woo Jin. The moment this name was mentioned, Oh Se Chan shouted desperately. Jina. I'll buy you Tang Su Yuk. Do I look like I'd get bribed by food? I'll buy it twice. Hyung, don't be pathetic. Three, three times. I'll buy it three times. With my money. Well, now that I think about it, it wouldn't be worth it to ruin our good relationship over some chocolate. Oh Seichan breathed a sigh of relief as Li Jina closed the refrigerator door with a satisfied expression. Li Jina then began to eat chocolates non-stop while asking Oh Seichan. Is it really that hard to make trade with the Lightning King? When he heard the question, Oh Seichan's expression crumpled a bit. It's very difficult. Why? The Lightning King only barters but this only works if you have an item that the Lightning King wants so simply put, whenever you make a deal with him, you are bound to be on the losing end. As he said this, Oh Seichan recalled his past dealings with the Lightning King and shuddered involuntarily. It sounds like Hyung would rather die than trade with him then how would Park Yongwon trade with the Lightning King? Didn't I already tell you? There's no way to trade with him without losing. Will Park Yongwon tolerate the loss? If he doesn't do it, Isaac Ivanov will leave, so of course he'd do it but ITLL be hard to get what he wants in any case, all Park Yongwon has to do is bridge the gap between Isaac Ivanov and the Lightning King but even that is gonna be expensive. After saying that, Oh Seichan stretched his hand out to Li Jina, who placed a chocolate bar on it. After taking a bite of chocolate, Oh Seichan said. So if Park Yongwon bleeds a little to become a bridge, it would be a deal between Isaac Ivanov and the Lightning King using that bridge. What deal? The Lightning King's weakness is the fact that he can't get into four-floor dungeons because his level is too high in other words, the Lightning King will direct Isaac Ivanov to a four-floor dungeon and ask him to retrieve items from there if Isaac Ivanov gets the item, he would then be able to trade with the Lightning King. It was then. Woo woo. Oh Seichan's phone began to vibrate, and he picked it up without hesitation and answered it. What's up? Ha. Huh. 
Park Yong Wan made a deal. That's much faster than I imagined it seems Park Yong Wan is determined so what's the Lightning King's offer? Skeleton Magician Mastery. He'll give you that. Then Oh Se Chan's expression became hard. He wants us to give him a unicorn horn. Shit, he's coming on strong from the start is there a dungeon where unicorn horns might appear? Where? Suddenly, Oh Se Chan's entire body, not just his expression, became hard. That's crazy okay, go ahead and hang up. Soon after the call ended, Li Jina couldn't help but ask Oh Se Chan a question. What happened? Nothing special. So you're saying you made such an expression for nothing special? The next attack location has been decided. Is it someplace dangerous? No, it's not that dangerous. Oh Se Chan who was talking in a relaxed voice continued to say. More importantly, have you been vaccinated for malaria? Malaria vaccine. Because the dungeon is in the Amazon. Li Jina then spoke in a voice filled with fear. You mean the Amazon that has become a monster den because rebels and terrorists have taken control of it? Where there is news of battles and deaths happening every day? And where monsters can be easily found? Yep, that Amazon. Chapter, 203. Fortaleza, Brazil. In one of Brazil's largest port cities which had a coastline 700 kilometers long, a ship was moored in the harbor. That was all. This port, which had once been crowded with ships and tourists, now looked so desolate it was almost like an entirely different place. The same was true for those who had arrived in this port city. Most of them looked as though they were pigs walking into a slaughterhouse. Samba. Among them, only one large man was different. Dalalala, la 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 la. He was humming a tune like he was a normal tourist coming to Brazil for the first time. Li Jina. Seeing him like this, Kim Wu Jin couldn't help but look at him with a questioning gaze. You seem to be in a good mood. MHM, it's my first time coming to Brazil to sightsee. Sightsee. Kim Wu Jin's expression became incredulous when he heard that. You came here to sightsee. Li Jina gave a slight smile at Kim Wu Jin's question. It's okay to do some sightseeing after we're finished working, isn't it? Can't I do that much? Kim Wu Jin couldn't help but click his tongue. Do you know why we came here by boat instead of by plane? Of course I know. Li Jina answered the question with confidence. You did it to save travel expenses, didn't you? After all, you guys are super cheap by cheapskates tway tway. TL, Tui is kinda representing him spitting at their cheapness. Only then did Kim Wu Jin realize. He doesn't know the situation in Brazil. In Li Jina's mind, Brazil was still in the same state as in 2020. And it wasn't really Li Jin AHS fault either. Most people in the world would have the same thoughts as Li Jina. Li Jina where in the world do you think is the most dangerous currently? Isn't it Eastern Europe? Why do you think that? There was an accident related to the dungeon gates in Eastern Europe, there were articles and news reports about protests happening there every day. In other words, it means that the situation was under control enough that reporters were able to stay there and send out articles. That was why Kim Woo Jin decided to tell Li Jina. Ha! Huh. Keep in mind there aren't even journalists to write about the situation in the truly bad places. Just how bad Brazil was now. Only then did Li Jina, who had started getting an idea of what he was talking about, change his facial expression and ask. Is Brazil really that bad? Even before the game began in 2020, Brazil was in a state of political and economic turmoil it was impossible for them to properly deal with the dungeon gates. When the dungeon gates appeared, many countries were unable to cope with it because of damage caused by political and economic problems. Of course, it wasn't just Brazil most of the countries in South America had similar situations like Brazil, and in the case of Africa, the situation was much worse than in South America. Countries in South America and Africa were perfect examples of this. Among them, the chaos that erupted in Brazil was among the worst. However, Brazil was the only country that had to deal with the Amazon rainforest. TL not accurate, the Amazon rainforest in fact spans eight countries and one overseas French territory French Guiana, Brazil just happens to be the largest and claims the largest portion. 
the Amazon rainforest. This place, which had almost no control or monitoring even before the dungeon gates appeared, made it impossible for anyone to notice when the dungeon gates did appear. The government has become ineffective since then. Thus the Amazon rainforest basically transformed into a den of monsters and the Brazilian government was unable to do anything. And in such a time, anti-government groups, terrorist organizations, etc. who aimed for Brazil's resources, came to the country. The paralysis of the Brazilian government was practically a declaration that Brazil's rich resources had entered an ownerless state, and countless criminals came to Brazil seeking opportunities. There was no sign of the desire to sightsee on Li Jina's face after he heard that much. Ah, then why the hell is the Lightning King here? Instead, he began to wonder what was wrong with the Lightning King that made him come to a place like this. Kim Wu Jin laughed at Li Jina's confusion as he said. That's because the Lightning King is the head of Thunderbird, the world's number one private military company. The Lightning King, Hugh Fry. As one of the first players in Australia, his other title was the head of Thunderbird, the world's leading private military company. That's why he sponsored Johann George to become the center of the anti-Messiah Guild faction. For the Lightning King, it was unacceptable that the Messiah Guild had an uncontested value in the world, which was why he supported the King of the Undead, pushing him forward to become a rival for the Messiah Guild. He believed that by making the two of them fight and weaken each other, he would benefit the most. And in truth, his idea was correct. From around 2026, when the battle between the Messiah Guild and the King of Undead truly began in earnest, Thunderbird, which was the Lightning King's company, grew rapidly in the space left by the two top world powers fighting each other. Eventually, Thunderbird became a force that surpassed the conventions of a private military company to the extent that they were even able to directly challenge a country. The hunt wasn't easy. That made it very difficult for the hunting dogs to take care of the Lightning King. As he recalled that time, Kim Woo Jin smiled bitterly. And Lee Jin Ah, who had now gotten a grasp of the situation, also smiled bitterly. I can't believe we have to look for unicorns in this place I bet I'll have to suffer this time too. Kim Woo Jin only gave a simple reply. We don't have to look for unicorns. Ha! Huh. What do you mean? Don't we have to find unicorn horns so you can exchange them for skill pages? If I just wanted to get one, I wouldn't come here. Kim Woo Jin paused for a moment before continuing as he brought up his memories. I'm planning to make a bigger deal with the Lightning King. Lee Jin Ah tilted his head in confusion. He only does bartering, doesn't he? What else can you give him? Kim Woo Jin answered without hesitation. Isaac Ivanov. After the Brazilian government lost its function, the dungeon gates appearing in the Amazon rainforest were basically neglected. After that, the dungeon gates began releasing monsters constantly, and after adapting to the rainforest's environment, they began to form their own territories. A woo. Roar. The Amazon rainforest was saying that Earth no longer belonged to the humans. However, that didn't mean that mankind would just watch on and accept that fact. On the contrary, many people saw this as an opportunity. It's an ivory wolf. It's ten million for two pieces of ivory. In an era where the corpses of monsters had unspeakable value, this was an opportunity for non-player hunters to also catch monsters. It wasn't just the ordinary people either. From the players' perspectives as well, it was an opportunity for them to hunt monsters with modern weapons that were much more powerful than their items. This was why some people considered the Amazon rainforest in Brazil to be the true El Dorado one. The same was true for the private military company, Thunderbird. From an early stage, they had seen the Amazon rainforest as a land of opportunity and invested heavily in it. This was proven by the fact that the Lightning King had none other than his older disciple as the head of the Brazilian branch. Ah, this is killing me. Shakira, a Latino beauty with a sensual body covered in bronze skin, was that disciple TL, Shakira, Shakira. This damned forest, I wish I could just get rid of it. Of course, that wasn't necessarily a good thing for her. Being the head of the Amazon forest region, where chaos reigned, was enough to drive any person crazy. Moreover, she now had to deal with another headache. When the hell is Isaac Ivanov coming? Ha! Huh. Didn't they say that he would arrive at the port a week ago? 
Did you get it right? You aren't losing your mind because of the heat are you? TL, as someone who lives in South America sees I am losing my mind because of the heat. We would have heard from him. The Lightning King said it himself. When Isaac Ivanov arrives, take him to the Unicorn Forest, A B rank 4 floor dungeon, and trade the unicorn horn he brings back for the prepared skill pages. The deal itself wasn't much trouble. Is it possible that he died along the way? The problem was if Isaac Ivanov died on his way to them. Isn't it Isaac Ivanov? That monster managed to survive in a four-floor dungeon with just his teammate. The skill he had displayed far surpassed that of normal people, but the Amazon rainforest was different. No matter how amazing he is, he would still die to a gun do you think him and his little skeletons could survive Allah's magic wand? This was a place where monsters and crazy hunters armed with extremely powerful modern weapons roamed about freely. If you were to compare the Amazon rainforest to a dungeon, it would be at least seven floors. The Amazon rainforest was a place where even players above level 100 were not able to guarantee their safety. I can't even get a good night's sleep. Even Shakira, who had once been able to experience attacking a six-floor dungeon when she was level 165, could not help but be wary of the rainforest. So it would be nothing strange if Isaac Ivanov died in this place. But is it okay if he dies? Isn't he our responsibility? Of course, it was partly the Lightning King and the Thunderbird Company's responsibility to ensure Isaac Ivanov's safety. I don't care about that responsibility. But Shakira paid no attention to that responsibility. The problem is that if Isaac Ivanov dies in the Amazon rainforest and his items are scattered here, everyone in the world would come those American bastards would probably send bombers to raise the Amazon rainforest immediately. What she was worried about was the fact that everyone in the world would rush to the rainforest for the treasure known as Isaac Ivanov. Ah, this is insane. As she thought about that, she let out a sigh. It was then. One of her subordinates walked into her office and reported. A person from Isaac Ivanov's side has arrived. Someone from Isaac Ivanov's side? Not Isaac Ivanov? She immediately asked without missing a singing detail from her subordinate's words. Who came? That a person named Wu Jin. With just those words, Shakira was able to think of a person who had such a name. Wu Jin. Isn't that Isaac Ivanov's teammate from Japan? The moment she recalled the name, Shakira's expression became grave. Does Isaac Ivanov have a skill to create zombies too? The subordinate tilted their head slightly. He didn't act like a zombie he didn't smell anything either. Shakira's expression crumpled when she heard that. Did he come here alone? Yes. When she heard the answer, Shakira's expression crumpled even further. So he came here alone, but he has no injuries and he doesn't even smell of sweat. Only then did the subordinate's face turn pale as he realized the implications behind these facts. Shakira spoke to her slow subordinate. Call the interpreter. Chapter, 204. Click. Shakira began speaking as soon as she came through the door. Kim Woo Jin, wasn't it plastered all over the news that you died due to a terrorist attack? She asked a question without bothering to greet him first. But Kim Woo Jin wasn't phased by the question. Her personality is still the same. Kim Woo Jin knew the personality of this woman named Shakira well. That was natural. After all, analyzing the characteristics of their prey was one of the basic skills of a good hunting dog. Shakira's question in Spanish was immediately translated to English and delivered to Kim Woo Jin by her interpreter. Kim Woo Jin answered in English. It was staged it seemed that my movements would have been greatly restricted if I stayed alive. Shakira smiled. In other words, if I kill you here, there would be no repercussions, right? Since you're already dead. The interpreter looked shocked at Shakira's words. Was he supposed to translate that too? I want to speak to the Lightning King concerning Isaac Ivanov. This time, Kim Woo Jin spoke without waiting for Shakira's interpreter to translate. Oh ho, you can speak Spanish. As her interpreter was once again shocked by Shakira's words, she sat in front of Kim Woo Jin, her eyes shining. Sniff sniff. As soon as she sat down, she began sniffing loudly. 
you don't even smell sweaty how the hell did you do that? Of course, she wasn't asking that because she was curious about his deodorant. She was questioning how Kim Woo Jin traveled through the Amazon rainforest and managed to keep such a neat appearance. Kim Woo Jin responded to her question simply. That's just my constitution. TL, alternatively that's just the way I'm built. What an envious constitution I sweat so much every day that I'm going crazy. At that moment, Shakira gestured to one of her subordinates nearby. Thud. Then, that subordinate placed a large communication device on the table between Shakira and Kim Woo Jin. This is the only way for us to contact our boss however, it's really difficult to contact him as you need to use a password and I'm the only one here who knows the password so, what will you do now? I just have to persuade you. That makes sense. Shakira nodded, gesturing with her chin. This meant that he should start talking. And so Kim Woo Jin said. I heard the Lightning King only barters. After the interpreter interpreted his words for Shakira, she nodded. And I heard that people can also be traded. However, the following words caused Shakira's expression to harden. Because Kim Woo Jin said them in Spanish, not English. So if I offer Isaac Ivanov, what can we trade for? Instead of responding to him, Shakira picked up the satellite phone. Can I trade in kilograms? The first question that came from the satellite phone was quite shocking, enough to make the listener hesitate. But Kim Woo Jin responded without pause. You want Isaac Ivanov without one of his limbs? You're a funny guy. Along with those words, faint laughter could be heard from the other end of the call. Kim Woo Jin also gave a slight smile. However, on the inside, Kim Woo Jin was quite cold. Just like before this person is more like a snake than a human. Kim Woo Jin knew that Hugh Fry, the man who was known as the Lightning King was someone who could rightly be described as evil. For that person, words like fairness, peace, human rights and morals were just things that would help him achieve whatever it is he wanted. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin was certain. So how do you intend to trade him? You're trading him to me alive, right? The choice of which dungeon Isaac Ivanov attacks will be up to you. Can you explain it in more detail? Through me, you can send Isaac Ivanov to attack any dungeon of your choosing you are basically purchasing the right to use the sword known as Isaac Ivanov. That the ability to make use of the sword known as Isaac Ivanov would be incredibly attractive to the Lightning King. Would he attack any dungeon? That depends on the price Isaac Ivanov won't move for free instead, it should be attractive enough for him to want to attack the dungeon. So he will attack any dungeon I choose as long as the price is right? Yes. And how much do I have to pay? We accept anything items, cash, bonds, skill pages if you give me poison skill pages I'd be sure to help you get a good deal. The Lightning King was silent for a moment after listening to his explanation. After a while, the Lightning King finally spoke. I'm not really interested. Tuck. And with those words, the Lightning King hung up without hesitation. Well. At the same time, Shakira, who had been standing in the corner, walked towards the door. Then she opened it and pointed towards the sprawling landscape of the Amazon rainforest. Adios. Go away. When he saw this, Kim Woo Jin easily rose to his feet and walked to the door without a word of complaint. Then he handed a note to Shakira and said. The deal remains valid please contact me on this number. Shakira laughed as she received the note. So you just left. In a hotel in Fortaleza. In this place which had been brilliant in the past but now looked more like an abandoned ruin, Kim Woo Jin recounted his meeting with the Lightning King. How unfortunate. Lee Jina clicked his tongue. This reaction was natural. After all, wasn't this a situation where the agreement had fallen through? But it's better this way there's no need for us to go into the Amazon rainforest and suffer hardships let's go to Sao Paulo, do some samba dancing, then return to Korea. Moreover, Lee Jina seemed to be very happy with that fact, to the point that he didn't even try to hide it in front of Kim Woo Jin. Samba. However, Kim Woo Jin's expression remained calm as he looked at Lee Jina. It was an expression that seemed to say that everything was going as he expected. In fact, everything was going smoothly. There's no way he'd turn down a card he could use against the Messiah Guild. 
there were many people in the world who hated the Messiah Guild. Nevertheless, there was no force who dared to claim to be the Messiah Guild's rival. No one needed to think deeply to imagine how the Savior's rival would be treated by the rest of the world. That was the reason. There is no Johann George this time. That the King of Undead, Johann George, had been able to receive the support of countless people in the past. Among them, the Lightning King was the King of Undead's greatest supporter. From what Kim Woo Jin knew, various skills and items, including the Summon Lich skill, had all been given to the King of Undead by the Lightning King. He will definitely take the bait. Kim Woo Jin had given the Lightning King the ability to control Isaac Ivanov. There was no way he would give up such a chance. Of course, he himself wouldn't bite the bait. The Lightning King will definitely bite the bait. He won't bite it, it's already fallen through. Then shall we make a bet? Bet? I bet that I will receive a call by tomorrow morning. Li Jina laughed at his words. Since you're betting that you'll receive a call, I'm betting that you want. If you win, I'll buy you whatever you want to eat. Really? On the other hand, if the call does come in, then you're the one who has to buy. Sure. The moment he heard the bet, Li Jina's thoughts began racing. You're finished ill fill my stomach with caviar and foie gras. It was then. Woo Woo. The phone in Kim Woo Jin's hand began vibrating, and Kim Woo Jin answered right away. Yes, this is Kim Woo Jin yes, that's good let's meet up to confirm the details. Then, after ending the short call, Kim Woo Jin spoke. I won. What? Li Jina's rose an octave as he was shocked the bet had ended so quickly. What nonsense are you talking about? Are you kidding me? You planned this with Brother Seichan didn't you? It's a simple matter to check if it's real or not in any case, you owe me a meal. Li Jina looked at Kim Woo Jin in shock. However, his shocked expression didn't last very long. It's been a while since I've had caviar. The moment he heard those words, Li Jina's face became white and shouted out loud. A dash, are you serious? I don't play around with food. With those words, Kim Wu Jin rose up from his seat. Chapter, 205 Our leader rejected your offer but I think differently it's attractive enough in my opinion so how about this? Make a deal with me first after that, if your ability is verified, you can make a deal with my boss. In his second meeting with Shakira in a restaurant, this was what she suggested. That they make a personal deal between them. Then she said. Of course, I need to verify your ability first can you really control Isaac Ivanov? She wanted to see if Kim Woo Jin was bluffing, or if he could really decide Isaac Ivanov's next move. Target this dungeon. Along with those words, Shakira placed a document envelope on the table. Kim Woo Jin picked it up while saying. Isaac Ivanov doesn't move without payment. The payment is the same skeleton magician mastery instead, it's the location that changed instead of the unicorn's horn, I need you to get something else. What about my pay? We don't doubt Isaac Ivanov's abilities all we doubt are your claims, and you still want to get paid? While she was saying that, Kim Woo Jin opened the envelope, pulled out the document inside, and began to peruse its contents. The conversation paused for a moment, then Kim Woo Jin looked up and said. It's D rank. The document inside was a dungeon report. And it's five floors. The report for a D rank five floor dungeon. With the results that Isaac Ivanov has shown to the world, this much shouldn't be a problem, right? Shakira said those words with a smile. It was a vicious smile. For players active in four-floor dungeons, challenging a five-floor dungeon was like a hiker who had only climbed two zero-zero-meter-high mountains changing to a four zero-zero-meter-high mountain. In other words, it wasn't something that could be done easily. And it's the perfect stage to see how well you can control Isaac Ivanov if Isaac Ivanov makes his debut in five-floor dungeons when you say so there would be no reason for us to doubt you, no? On the other hand, it was a proposal that was sufficiently possible. After all, Kim Woo Jin had said it. Isaac Ivanov would challenge any dungeon they wanted. If that was true, then wouldn't it be possible for him to do something like this? 
In response to her words, Kim Woo Jin simply placed the document back in the envelope and handed it back to her. Is this a rejection? Kim Woo Jin answered. I have no desire to do your little test without pay. So it is a rejection. With those words, Shakira collected the envelope. I heard rumors that Thunderbird has an A-rank 5-floor dungeon that appeared in the Amazon rainforest. Then, Kim Woo Jin said something else. Shakira's eyes shook. I also heard that you're forming a team to attack that dungeon. There are all sorts of rumors about the Amazon rainforest you shouldn't believe everything you hear. Shakira fixed her expression and denied Kim Woo Jin's words. However, without paying attention to what she was saying, Kim Woo Jin continued speaking. I will get Isaac Ivanov to attack that dungeon of course, this is a deal, not a test so please prepare the suitable payment for Isaac Ivanov, and for me. Shakira's expression hardened considerably. Then she spoke in a cold voice. You want to target an A-rank dungeon when you don't even have experience in five-floor dungeons? Did I hear you correctly? There's nothing that can't be done if the price is right. As he was saying this, Kim Woo Jin was thinking about a dungeon. I'm sure you guys have the burning forest. Burning forest. There was one reason why Kim Woo Jin remembered this a rank 5 floor dungeon. And the fourth tail is in that dungeon. And that was because the fourth tail of the nine tailed fox was in that dungeon. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't bring up the burning forest dungeon just to obtain the tail. Let's stop the act. This was not something that Shakira could handle with just her authority. It was something that absolutely required the permission of none other than the Lighting King himself. If Shakira had come of her own volition like she'd said, then she would have gotten up and left without hesitation. But now, she was only glaring at Kim Woo Jin without moving from her seat. Bring out the Lightning King. This was proof that she didn't come on her own. A man approached Kim Woo Jin from behind. He placed his hands on Kim Woo Jin's shoulders and said. You really are a funny guy. Then he pat Kim Woo Jin a few times on the shoulders before moving to sit on an empty chair at the table. It was a blonde man with an extremely pale face. His appearance didn't quite suit the weather in the Amazon rainforest. Lightning King. He was the first spiritualist to contract a spirit of lightning, and after numerous achievements, obtained the nickname Lightning King. Of course, Kim Woo Jin paid no attention to his appearance. He had quite painfully learned, the moment he had been betrayed by Lee Se Jun, that what he saw wasn't always the truth. So, if the price is right, you'll attack an A-rank, five-floor dungeon. I know Isaac Ivanov's level is around 130 which is certainly high enough but that's a lot of confidence well, I also did a lot of crazy things at that level. Then the Lightning King asked. Then what's the price? To that question, Kim Woo Jin gave the answer he prepared. First of all, I'd need to hear what you have to offer Isaac Ivanov won't make a move simply because of an expensive item instead, it has to be an item that would be useful for him he'd be willing to move even if it's a rare item. TL, rare in terms of the rank. The Lightning King shook his head when he heard those words. That's a question Isaac Ivanov should answer, not you. Kim Woo Jin's eyes narrowed at those words. The Lightning King lifted his finger before saying. What I want to know is your price. Then he twirled his finger around before pointing it towards Kim Woo Jin. Then, a waiter, who had been waiting at the side, approached the table quietly and placed a covered plate in front of Kim Woo Jin. After calculating, I found that it would be much more convenient to recruit you rather than pay for each separate request. In the meantime, while the Lightning King continued speaking, Kim Woo Jin only gave him half an ear as he lifted the cover from the plate. Then, he saw a skill page made completely of obsidian sitting on the white plate. Vampire. Condition, Emissary of the Underworld. Rank, Legendary. Effect, you can transform into a vampire while using this skill. Vampire. The Lightning King smiled and spoke to Kim Woo Jin who was still looking at the skill page. I want to trade for you with this. It was the moment when the Lightning King had proposed a trade. Unlike the quiet, boring days in Fortaleza, the nights in this port city were quite passionate. Firstly, the sounds were different. Tat on. Arg. As if they wouldn't allow for silence to fall, 
the sounds of gunshots echoed without end, and whenever the gunshot went off, they would be followed by a scream. Boom. Crash. Sometimes, there would even be the sounds of explosions or of cars crashing. It was almost impossible to sleep in a night filled with these sounds. However, the cacophony wasn't the reason Li Jina couldn't sleep. You're really amazing, huh? The reason was the story Kim Woo Jin had told him about what happened in the restaurant in Fortaleza earlier that day. After all, Kim Woo Jin's story was very shocking. This wasn't just for Li Jina. Some people have to sign slave contracts just to get one skill, but some people are able to get them on a plate with a few words. Not just Li Jina, anyone would be shocked to learn of how easily Kim Woo Jin was offered a legendary skill. Getting legendary skills was not common. For players, it would be a heart-pounding moment, and something that would stir many waves in the player world. However, Kim Woo Jin's expression wasn't that of someone who had just received great fortune. Instead, he had a pensive expression. Li Jina, who saw his expression, clicked his tongue. Well, since you betrayed Park Yong Wan, you'll certainly have to pay the price now. This was because Kim Woo Jin had accepted the Lightning King's offer, as well as the skill page. If Park Yong Wan found out about it, he would definitely cause a ruckus. That meant that he had betrayed Park Yong Wan. Ah, uh, not that I'd tell Park Yong Wan about it absolutely Li Jin Ah is a man who would never sell out his friends of course, a guy who scams me out of my money is definitely not my friend for example, if I had to buy a meal, a friend would never decide to get something expensive like caviar. If Park Yong Wan found out about this, there was no guarantee that he would leave Kim Woo Jin alone. In any case, you'd be in trouble Park Yong Wan wouldn't rest until he sees your corpse with his own eyes. It was almost certain that he would take action against him. Kim Woo Jin also knew this fact. It's not difficult. Huh. And he had prepared countermeasures for that as well. We can tell Park Yong Wan about this deal. What? Kim Woo Jin intended to tell Park Yong Wan about what had happened that day and that he had accepted the deal. What do you mean? My relationship with Park Yong Wan currently is similar to that of a large company and a subcontractor. It's based on profit, not loyalty. As long as I can guarantee Park Yong Wan's interests, he won't cut off our deal. If he told Park Yong Wan about it, he would certainly understand. Well, he'd definitely try to get rid of me someday. Of course, although he understood, that didn't mean he would leave Kim Woo Jin alone. As Kim Woo Jin had said, Park Yong Wan would one day try to deal with him. But Kim Woo Jin didn't pay too much attention to it. It doesn't matter. Betrayal only hurts when it is done by someone you trust, not by someone you don't. In other words, Park Yong Wan wasn't the reason why Kim Woo Jin was pensive at that moment. The Lightning King is a very suspicious man. The reason was the Lightning King. As far as Kim Woo Jin knew, he wasn't someone who offered trades easily. This could be seen just by the way the Lightning King had hidden his intentions while dealing with Kim Woo Jin this time. During the satellite call, he had said he wasn't interested, then he sent Shakira in his stead. This was what Kim Woo Jin had expected. However, the Lightning King had then appeared in person and made an unconventional offer to Kim Woo Jin. It was possible. There has to be a reason. But he wouldn't have done it without a reason. If so, what was the reason? That was what Kim Woo Jin was currently pondering with a solemn expression. However, no matter how much he pondered, he could not think of a reason. What the hell is it? Wu Wu. Suddenly, one of his phones began vibrating. Is it Brother Se Chan? It was a call from O Se Chan. Kim Woo Jin picked up the cell phone, and Li Jina walked over to him when he saw that. I don't like the rice here. Ask Seichan to send some kimchi if you tell him Isaac Ivanov's gift, hell send it without a peep make sure it's mature kimchi let's make kimchi jigi. Ignoring him, Kim Woo Jin pressed the call button and put the phone to his ear. Then he heard Oh Seichan's voice. Breaking news there's been a terrorist attack in Paris. Chapter, 206. It's the last drop of water that makes the glass overflow. The same was true for the world which had been transformed into a game. In Kim Woo Jin's memory, it was in 2025 that the last drop, which had driven the confused world into one filled with chaos, had fallen. 
It was the year that Park Yongwan sold out his country and went to Japan, which then led to the war between Japan and the Messiah Guild. But Park Yongwan's actions hadn't been the last drop that caused the glass to overflow. Instead, it was a drop caused by a different action. The terrorist attack in Paris, France. In the new year of 2025, a terrorist attack was carried out in Paris, France. An attack orchestrated by Islamic extremists. In the chaotic world, humans' belief in God had descended into madness. In truth, acts of terrorism had become quite common in this time, and it wasn't just Muslims, even Christians were involved. What was strange were the victims of the attack. The headquarters of the third largest guild in France, the Esprit Guild was destroyed in the attack and 32 players were killed. The victims of the terror attack were none other than the players themselves. Naturally, the impact of this terror attack shook the whole world. The level of shock exceeding even that of the 911 terrorist attacks. But it was only after the attacks that the pandemonium truly began. The Esprit Guild called on the French government to impose a special player protection law following this event. In addition to protecting the players' human rights, the protection law included granting them immunity in cases where the players might need to utilize their abilities in public for self-defense. This request was approved by the French government. They did not bother to check public opinion before accepting the request. This bill, which benefited certain groups while ignoring public opinion, was quickly passed by the government in a hasty manner because of the interests of certain high-ranking officials. This had happened in none other than France, the country of revolution. Protests took place and debates began. Unsurprisingly, there were protests, which spread across France, then Europe and then the rest of the world. Public opinion spread like wildfire at the players were enjoying excessive while neglecting their duties. Then they said that the players should all act like the Messiah Guild. The wildfire spread to Korea. This public opinion quickly spread to Korea, where the Messiah Guild was located, which then led to Park Yongwon's defection to Japan. It was the moment when the water overflowed from the glass and the situation in the world accelerated towards chaos. Players acted as they pleased, political and economic turmoil grew out of control, the number of dungeon attacks decreased, which naturally caused the rate that the monsters escaped the dungeons to increase, and the world eventually became a miserable place filled with monsters. And in that world, the Messiah Guild was revered as the only savior. The Esprit Guild headquarters in Paris, France has just been attacked the victims haven't been identified yet, but it's clearly not a normal situation. But that incident had happened now. There were no warning signs it's highly likely that they prepared for this long in advance damn it, it's a mess if this was really an attack on players, it will definitely have a huge impact on the world. About a year earlier than Kim Woo Jin remembered. Are you listening? I'm listening. What that meant was simple. What do you think? Does it look like the Messiah Guild? It's okay if it's only a guess, I just want your opinion. It doesn't matter who it is what's important is how we will deal with the Messiah Guild's actions after this even if they're not behind it, the Messiah Guild will definitely take advantage of it it's important for us to be prepared for that. The Messiah Guild had moved much sooner than Kim Woo Jin expected. What do you plan to do? Kim Woo Jin's response to that was simple. We need to secure the power to counteract the Messiah Guild as soon as possible. To sharpen their teeth much more than they had originally planned. In a sense, the deal with the Lightning King had come at an opportune time. So I'll be targeting dungeons in the Amazon for a while. In the Amazon? Why? Because there is no other place that doesn't have an owner that has as many dungeons that I can attack as I please. There was no place better to sharpen his teeth than the Amazon rainforest. For how long? Until I get to level 150. After hearing those words, Oh Se-chan silently thought for a moment before saying. Media activities are virtually impossible in the Amazon rainforest it would be hard to play the media in that place in other words, news of Isaac Ivanov's activities would go on a temporary hiatus. Isaac Ivanov's reputation wasn't just because of his dungeon attacks, but also because of Oh Se-chan's expert media play. In such a situation, taking a break was definitely not a positive factor. The Messiah Guild won't miss this opportunity they will definitely push Johan George and the Ten actively in the media when you leave Brazil, they will definitely stand in your way. 
Following Oh se chans words, Kim Woo Jin's reply was quite simple. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because when I become level 150, I will deal with Johan George whether he's standing in my way or not. There was another moment of silence as Oh se chan thought of Kim Woo Jin's words. You're going to declare war. It's better for us to declare ourselves as a rival rather than get swallowed by the Messiah Guild. Oh se chan no longer asked any questions. It wasn't that he was scared. That was impossible. Okay. After all, Oh se chan was the first to learn about the true face of the Messiah Guild and prepare to fight against them. Then I'll prepare accordingly TL, Oh se chan is like the best wingman. That was the end of the conversation. After the conversation, Kim Woo Jin closed the phone and turned his head. Lee Jin Ah was staring at him with a blank expression before he finally spoke in amazement. Were you two talking about something important just now? The situation has changed. That's pretty serious. At that moment, Lee Jin Ah was no longer playful. However, no one working under Oh Se Chan had a light heart. Good. He had enough determination and talent to embrace such a situation. The time has come to abandon the playfulness and become serious. Kim Woo Jin smiled slightly at Lee Jin Ah's fierce expression. How reassuring. Right, there's no man as reliable as I am so what do we do? Kim Woo Jin answered that question easily. Firstly, we need to make your blessing of the river sticks skill reach transcendent rank. Ah, transcendent rank. Right, my blessing of river sticks skill. At that moment, Li Jin Ah realized he was saying something weird. Hey, the blessing of river sticks skill only goes up when I'm injured. There's no need to worry. I don't have to fight with the soldiers and knights you summon, do I? You don't. Hearing that, Li Jin Ah was once more filled with vigor. Good, then there's no problem so what's the next dungeon? A five-floor dungeon. Ha! Huh. I'm Roberto from Thunderbird, who will be helping Isaac Ivanov's party this time in addition to this dungeon, I will also be assisting you in the future. Roberto. This level 140 player from Thunderbird introduced himself to Isaac Ivanov's party during their first meeting. I will tell you in advance the Amazon rainforest is far more dangerous than any dungeon there are no monsters shooting guns in dungeons, but there are many monsters shooting guns in this rainforest so please follow my orders at all times. He gave a warning. If you don't comply, I will use force the boss said to put your safety before anything else. A warning that he would take the initiative in the event that they did not do as they were told. Don't forget that this is also a test of your abilities. At the same time, it was a warning that drew a clear line between who was above and who was below. Isaac Ivanov didn't respond to his warning. Instead, he was reading the dungeon report. Black Swamp. Floors, 5. Difficulty, D. Maximum number of entries, 195. Requirements, level 150 and below. Conditions, defeat the master of the Black Swamp. Reward, none. Roberto then said to Isaac Ivanov. There will be a total of 75 players in this dungeon, including your party the estimated time is 40 to 49 days. Isaac Ivanov spoke up for the first time. We can get it done in three weeks. The sudden sentence made Roberto's expression freeze. In that time, he realized the ridiculous words he'd just heard. That doesn't make any sense. A player who was lower level than him that he could finish a dungeon that he, a level 140 player, estimated would take 40 days, in three weeks. It was similar to a college sprinter who could run 100 meters in 10 seconds hearing a high schooler say he could do the same in 8 seconds TL, world record for 100 meter sprint is 958 seconds. It was ridiculous. Isaac Ivanov then gestured with his chin to Kim Woo Jin, who was standing beside him. So Kim Woo Jin spoke instead. Why don't you go inside and see if it makes sense? When responding, the look in Kim Woo Jin's eyes was clearly different from normal. This is the last year I can no longer run while looking at the passing scenery. The times had changed. It's time to sprint at full power. Chapter, 207 There was an analogy commonly used among players. 
If four-floor dungeons were long-distance runs, then five-floor dungeons were marathon. Five-floor dungeons were quite different from four-floor dungeons. Many new monsters appeared, and among them, there were many who were quite powerful and many that were troublesome to deal with. The changes were so great that it was almost as though the genres had been changed exactly. Nevertheless, the reason for this analogy was simple. Players who were capable of clearing four-floor dungeons had the ability to hunt monsters they hadn't seen before. In truth, there weren't any monsters in AD rank or below five-floor dungeons that players who were active in four-floor dungeons couldn't kill. The key was time. If there was enough time, there weren't any monsters that they wouldn't be able to hunt, which meant that they needed time to hunt the monsters. Therefore, players attacking five-floor dungeons for the first time tried their best to secure enough time. As stated in the comparison above, the players prepared as if they were about to run a marathon. 40 to 49 days. That was why Roberto estimated that it would take at least 40 days. It would take at least 8 days to clear one floor. D rank dungeons usually take about 50 days. And even that could be considered pretty short. For players attacking 5 floor dungeons for the first time, it wouldn't be strange if it took them more than 10 days to clear each floor. He had only made such a low estimate because of Isaac Ivanov. It wasn't just because of his successes, Isaac Ivanov had created numerous miracles, so he had mentioned 40 days. That's common sense. Kim Woo Jin also didn't intend to deny that it was common sense. Did you say three weeks? As Roberto had said, to say that they could complete it in three weeks was quite unorthodox. Nevertheless, the reason he'd said it was simple. You have become a vampire. Vampire. It could be said that Kim Woo Jin now had an unusual skill at his disposal. Your thirst for blood increases. The power of your blood increases. Your control over blood has been strengthened. All senses have been increased to the maximum. The moment he transformed into a vampire, Kim Woo Jin's appearance began to change. His face became pale, the shadows under his eyes darkened, the whites of his eyes became red, and his canines became larger and sharper. At the same time, Kim Woo Jin's senses were enhanced. A being with blood stimulates your senses. Just like a snake with its heat sensing ability, information about creatures who had blood in their bodies was being delivered to Kim Woo Jin in real time. The presence and location of the creatures that filled the lush forest could be clearly felt by him. Then Kim Woo Jin's eyes shined with golden light. Horus eyes have opened. Then, detailed information about all the creatures Kim Woo Jin was sensing, appeared before his eyes. The synergy is much greater than I expected. This was the reason Kim Woo Jin had said three weeks. Kim Woo Jin had gained the ability to grasp the existence and information of monsters faster than anyone else with the help of the vampire skill. There's no longer a need to move separately in order to gather information. For Kim Woo Jin, this meant that the process of gathering information was now completely unnecessary. Now, he just needed to figure out a way to hunt the monsters. I can start hunting right away. And for Kim Woo Jin, such a task was easier than anything else. Hunt 33, 11 monsters to move on to the next floor. Everyone's in. Roberto smiled before giving a dirty smile to Kim Woo Jin. All right, Isaac Ivanov. Show me your skills. I want to see if you really can clear this dungeon in three weeks. And so, Kim Woo Jin's debut in five floor dungeons had begun. Paris is colored by screams. 21 dead. 121 wounded. 34 of the casualties are players. Complaints from the players are overflowing. It didn't take long for the terrorist attack on Francis No. 3 Guild, the Esprit Guild, located in Paris, France, to gather attention. Terrorism again. Was it committed by Muslims? Obviously. Damn it, Muslims are ruining France. Many expressed their outrage over the acts of terrorism. Up to that point it was no different from the response incurred by other acts of terrorism. But why did they target a guild? However, the fact that the target of this attack was none other than a guild began to create a different reaction. That's because the players of the Esprit Guild are all pieces of trash those guys are all a bunch of bastards, aren't they? 
Many of the players in the Esprit Guild have committed crimes, but not all of them are guilty. Moreover, the Esprit Guild was infamous in France due to their bad reputation. Honestly, isn't this justice instead of terrorism? That's right wasn't one of the guys who died the one who caused an accident because he was drunk driving? The one that hit that child? Fucking bastards, they deserve to die. A friendly public opinion toward the act of terrorism began to form. The problem was the media's reaction. None of the media dared to reveal the opinions put forward by the ordinary citizens. Are attacks on players okay? A special law is needed that will protect the players. Will the French government pass the player protection bill? Instead, the media only threw up articles that supported the players as though they had drunk too much and started vomiting profusely. Something else will pop up sooner or later. In the Brazilian branch of the Thunderbird Company located in Fortaleza, Brazil, a place that didn't even need terrorism to be chaotic, the Lightning King let out a laugh with his pale face. Hearing it, Shakira shot him a questioning gaze. Pop. In response to Shakira's question, the Lightning King simply stretched his hand out. Crackle. Then, some sparks of lightning danced on his palm before exploding. Pop. Something else will pop. Are you saying the terrorist attacks will continue? There's no way there won't be an encore. But how did you figure that out? At Shakira's question, the Lightning King laughed. I was lucky enough to overhear it from some people I know. Who could that? If their prices start rising, they'd certainly be very happy about it like oil for example. The Lightning King got up from his seat. Anyway, if there is another terrorist attack, the players will definitely strike in the future. As he said this, his expression became hard. The number of dungeon attacks would drop sharply, and the number of monsters would naturally increase the fear the ordinary people feel would definitely reach its peak and so would their faith in the Messiah Guild. The Lightning King was certain that if everything continued on the way it was, the Messiah Guild would naturally become the leaders of the world. A world where the Messiah Guild is in charge doesn't benefit players like us. And he believed that such a world had nothing to offer someone like him. So we have to prepare a rival that can counter the Messiah Guild as soon as possible. A rival for the Messiah Guild. I hope Isaac Ivanov is worth raising. And now, he had a candidate in Isaac Ivanov. Shakira clicked her tongue at the Lightning King's words. Then it would have been better to not stick him with Roberto he's the worst judge we have even if they get 100 points, he would forcefully reduce it to 50. The Lightning King laughed at that. The more the situation devolves like this, the more strict the assessment should be. As he said this, the Lightning King checked the date. It's been 18 days since they entered the dungeon, they should be on the third floor by now. Chapter 208. Impossible. Roberto. As one of the Lightning King's right-hand men, and a member of the Thunderbird Company, he already had the ability to create a guild under his name. He was basically on the guild master level. This didn't just mean that he was a strong player. To become the head of a guild, one not only needed to have excellent skills, but also the ability to deal with people, and a good eye for people. This was part of the reason why the Lightning King had taken Roberto as one of his right-hand men. Then Roberto was given an order. He was asked to check if Isaac Ivanov had the ability to confront the Messiah Guild. Frankly, he thought it was a ridiculous order after all, going against the Messiah Guild was like going against the entire world. It cannot be done. He felt that it was impossible for anyone to even try to rival the Messiah Guild. That was why he was so shocked now. The conditions to clear the fourth floor of the dungeon has been achieved. Is it really possible to clear a dungeon so quickly? Because in front of his very eyes was a player who could rival the Messiah Guild. How? The eyes of the startled Roberto were currently following Isaac Ivanov's party, who was walking behind an army of skeletons. His power is at the expected level. Roberto never had any intention of doubting Isaac Ivanov's combat power. After all, it was impossible for him to question the combat power of a player who had cleared a hatchling dungeon with just his party. However, dungeons weren't things that could be cleared just with combat ability. The thing that truly shocked him was the fact that Isaac Ivanov's party didn't just hunt one-sidedly with force. How can they hunt so efficiently? 
The party had been using accurate and efficient hunting methods that perfectly matched the characteristics and habits of the monsters they faced. How can they do it without properly collecting information? But the problem was that there was no information gathering done during that process. This was why Roberto was shocked. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't care about Roberto's thoughts. From the start, before even entering the dungeon, Kim Woo Jin had come to a decision. He had to reach level 150 as quickly as possible in the Amazon rainforest. In other words, for Kim Woo Jin, this place wasn't a test stage. Your level has increased. It was just a hunting ground to level up faster. For Kim Woo Jin, the only thing that was important was how fast he was growing. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 122. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats, Health 365955, Stamina 2439, Magic Power 3832. Achievements, 107. Extra Points, 3. The level up speed is as expected. And now, the speed with which he was leveling up matched Kim Woo Jin's expectations. Of course, others might have been frightened if they saw this. In this dungeon alone, he had raised his level five times. It was a pace that seemingly transcended common sense. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin's expression as he judged the situation was not very good. The problem is. The emissary of the underworld is interested in you again. The reason why his expression was so bad was none other than the notification he'd received upon leveling up. This notification. His halo, which would usually applaud his growth or give him a pleasant reward, had given him a different notification than usual. In addition, Kim Woo Jin knew exactly what this meant. Johann George must have gotten stronger. The king of undead. It was proof that he, who had been deprived of the emissary of the underworld's favor because of Kim Woo Jin, was once again showing remarkable growth TL, fighting for Sugar Daddy's attention there like consorts in a harem. It seems the Messiah Guild decided to support him fully. It was also proof that the Messiah Guild was supporting Johann George to such an extent that Kim Woo Jin could hardly keep up. This wasn't very welcoming news. Kim Woo Jin also would not accept this fact. Of course, he had no intention of backing down from this fight. After all, he didn't have a reason to back down. It's been a long time since I acted like a hunting dog. This was because he was the hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin, who could not even be given a proper nickname because of his ridiculously fast growth. Roberto. This Kim Woo Jin then turned to look at Roberto who had been watching them from afar. Isaac says there are three days until three weeks ends. Roberto didn't respond to him. Instead, he just made an expression as though he had awoken from a nightmare. All rights to a dungeon were owned by the government of the country the dungeon appeared in. This was a law that had been passed in most countries. The same was true for Brazil their laws clearly stated that all rights to the dungeons belonged to the government. However, such laws could only be enforced when the government was the one in power. In Brazil, a country where the government basically had no role to play, this law was basically ineffective. Of course, dungeons that appeared in the Amazon rainforest had no owners. It didn't matter who found the dungeon first, or who was inside it. And there was nothing wrong with dealing with the players after they cleared the dungeon. It's the 20th day. In the Amazon rainforest, a place filled with a terrible heat where someone could be killed just for breathing loudly, a group of well-armed people in camouflage laid in wait. When did their supply unit arrive? About a week ago. What's their power? About 50 people. Red Wolf. It was one of the many anti-governmental groups active in Venezuela, who were known for their rather radical actions. And naturally, money was needed for anti-governmental actions. That was why they were there. Are you sure Roberto went in? I'm certain. The dungeon gate they were targeting now was the one that the Thunderbird executive, Roberto, had entered. It was a good chance for them to hit a jackpot. The items that were owned by Roberto would certainly not be normal, and even his men, who were also elites of the Thunderbird company, would all have equipment that were rare at least. Most of them would also be level 100 and above items. Moreover, most players would be wearing their best items as they left the dungeon. 
After the battles ended, and the dungeon was cleared, players usually wanted to get out the dungeons and rest, and rarely put their items back in their inventories before they did so. That's why, there was a high probability that the items the players wore when they left the dungeon gate were the best they had. What about the bounty on Roberto's head? Still active. At the same time, there was a bounty on Roberto's head. It wasn't just Roberto. South America was filled with criminal gangs, anti-government groups and the mafia. Becoming so powerful in such a place meant that Thunderbird had certainly stepped on some toes. So one could earn a lot of money just by killing one of Thunderbird's executives. The time has finally come to avenge our brothers. Even if there wasn't a bounty, the Red Wolves were determined to kill Roberto. Therefore, they would not miss such an opportunity. We'll capture the dungeon gate in three days. They were going to take control of the dungeon gate, then deal with Roberto as he left. Everyone get ready. Just as everyone began preparing their nerves. Yuek. A sickening sound came from somewhere. Yuek. And it immediately began to spread like a ripple. Kuek. After a while, the disgusting sound suddenly changed. Ku. Eventually, the sound came to a stop. Carlos, who was in charge of this mission for the Red Wolves suddenly shouted with all his might instead of pausing in surprise. Enemy attack. He knew that in the Amazon rainforest, the moment someone stopped in surprise, they were dead. Tututu. His shout was immediately followed by a barrage of gunfire. Return fire. Carlos immediately ordered the counterattack as he directed the muzzle of the rifle he was carrying in the direction that the bullets were coming from. He tried to pull the trigger right away. SK dash, skeletons. But when he aimed his rifle and saw skeletons wielding guns, he couldn't help but freeze for a moment. Naturally, the aforementioned logic applied to him at that moment. In the Amazon rainforest, the moment you paused in surprise, you were dead. 2 2. Bullets soon hit Carlo's body. When Roberto, who was resting with a towel soaked in cold water on his face, heard the sudden gunshots, he immediately sprung to his feet. Prepare for the enemy attack. It was then. A man walked into his tent and spoke. You don't have to worry about it. This man was none other than Kim Woo Jin. That's the sound of Isaac Ivanov's skeletons dealing with the problem. At Kim Woo Jin's words, Roberto's expression stiffened slightly. This response could be considered strange after considering the fact that Roberto was an executive from Thunderbird, the Lightning King's right-hand man, and brutal enough that he had a bounty on his head. Gulp. Kim Woo Jin's words made Roberto so traumatized that he even gulped down some saliva. It was that bad. It was Roberto's experiences during the past 20 days that made him react in such a way. Since he was repeatedly attacked in Japan, Isaac has become pretty sensitive to things like this. And the person who had shocked him the most wasn't Isaac Ivanov, instead, it was Kim Woo Jin. His fighting power was much higher than Isaac anticipated. The combat power of the skeleton soldiers was quite formidable and the level of skill displayed by the skeleton knights made his jaw drop. But they were still in an acceptable range. After all, he'd already heard about Isaac Ivanov's reputation. However, Kim Woo Jin was different. As far as he knew, Kim Woo Jin's reputation was practically non-existent. No, in fact he was currently known to the world as a dead man, wasn't he? At first, Roberto had dismissed Kim Woo Jin as just Isaac Ivanov's assistant. But he wasn't. He wasn't an assistant. Instead, it was Kim Woo Jin who created the strategies and tactics for Isaac Ivanov. Not to mention his horrifying poison. Monstrous bastard. Monster. That was the evaluation Roberto had given Kim Woo Jin. Please contact the Lightning King. Only. When he heard those words, Roberto paused. What would he say to the Lightning King? How many points would he give Isaac Ivanov and his party for what they had shown him? These creatures that surpassed common sense gave Roberto a headache. But one thing was clear. Ah, and give me the skill page you promised Isaac Ivanov hates people who can't keep their word. They still had plenty of room to grow. Chapter, 209 After the terrorist attack on the Esprit Guild, 
the flow of incidents went exactly as he expected. The Special Player Protection Act has been put forward to Congress. The players move to protect their interests. The Esprit Guild declares indefinite strike. And they began to make power plays in order to achieve their goals. It will pop soon. Terrorism was a ruthless and extreme act of violence carried out in order to assert the attacker's will. In the case of this act of terrorism, it was done to express dissatisfaction with the inhumane and selfish behavior of the players and guilds TL, I don't like that the author is trying to rationalize this. But the players' response to the attacks was inhumane and selfish. So of course, there would be more attacks. If there is a second attack, the bill will be passed unquestionably if that happens, players from other countries will also demand something similar from their governments if not, they will strike. And the players were more than willing to use the powerful weapon known as strike, in their hands as blackmail. However, the Messiah Guild will choose another path. But the Messiah Guild would use this as an opportunity to appear more noble. Everything is progressing as I expected. He didn't believe anything would change this time. Furthermore, he had already expected this to happen since early on. It's a good thing I didn't deal with money from the start. That's why he wasn't very interested in money with numbers in it and instead bartered for items. In the era he expected to come, it was clear that bullets created in an unnamed factory would be worth more than paper issued from the government. That was why the Lightning King wasn't very surprised by the terrorist attack or the subsequent situations. In other words, it wasn't the terrorist incident nor its aftermath that caused the Lightning to furrow his eyebrows at that moment. If I subtract Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov. He was the reason the Lightning King was pondering so heavily at that moment. The Lightning King had never once doubted his ability. After all, hadn't the fact that had hunted the hatchling alone, hunted the hellhound alone, and even had the ability to revive the hellhound proved what he was capable of already? That was the reason he'd invested so boldly. He'd even taken out a legendary skill page from his collection and given it to a man, Kim Woo Jin, who claimed to be able to order Isaac Ivanov. I didn't expect him to be that good. But when he'd actually lifted the lid, Isaac Ivanov was much stronger than had expected. Kim Woo Jin. In particular, the strength and ability Kim Woo Jin displayed made them understand just why he was able to be a member of Isaac Ivanov's team. I didn't think he'd be the commander. Kim Woo Jin was the commander for Isaac Ivanov's party. There's nothing stopping them from being the Messiah Guild's rivals. What was clear to him was the fact that even in his current state, Isaac Ivanov was capable of rivaling the Messiah Guild. That was the reason for his concern. So how do I make him into the Messiah Guild's rival? Making Isaac Ivanov stronger and pitting him against the Messiah Guild was another story. Moreover, Isaac Ivanov's path seemed to coincide with the Messiah Guild. If Isaac Ivanov hadn't targeted Lee Sejun's weaknesses and the twin-headed Cyclops dungeon, the Lightning King wouldn't have been interested in him. I'll have to communicate with the Phoenix Guild's master. Therefore he felt that he would need to contact Park Yongwan. Of course, he had no intention of talking to him directly. As expected, it was really smart to buy Kim Woo Jin. After all, he'd already bought a spy close to Park Yongwan. In an abandoned electronics store in Fortaleza. Kim Woo Jin was talking on the phone in this place that had been looted so thoroughly, he didn't even have to clean it up. Right, so let me get this straight. Of course, the person on the other end was Oh Se Chan. The Lightning King wants Park Yong Wan to help him make Isaac Ivanov the Messiah Guild's rival. Right. What did Park Yong Wan say? He said to first pretend to listen to the Lightning King's orders from Park Yongwan's perspective, it's beneficial to have a double spy working under the Lightning King. The Lightning King had given Kim Woo Jin a simple order. Get Park Yongwan to agree to make Isaac Ivanov act in a manner that would aggravate the Messiah Guild. Kim Woo Jin delivered this information to Park Yongwan as is, and Park Yongwan also gave him orders. Firstly pretend to obey the Lightning King's order. Damn, that's so complicated. It was just as complicated as Oh Sechan said. That's why Korean beef is expensive in Korea. Right in the end, the distributors make all the money. And that was exactly what Kim Woo Jin was aiming for. Honestly speaking, bolstering Isaac Ivanov's power was not difficult. 
Isaac Ivanov had already become an irreplaceable trump card. He could receive an enormous amount of support simply by joining one of the five top guilds, except the Messiah Guild. Even in the case of the Lightning King, if Isaac Ivanov bowed his head to him directly, he would directly receive the same amount of support that the King of Undead received. After all, Kim Woo Jin now had power similar to the King of Undead of the past. In other words, such treatment was natural. And because it was natural, Kim Woo Jin wasn't satisfied with it. In this case, the guy known as Kim Woo Jin will earn the most. So he complicated the process. As Oh Se Chan had said, it was a complicated distribution process, and Kim Woo Jin had set himself up as the distributor. So what will they give you? In other words, in order to get Isaac Ivanov to move as they wished, either Park Yongwan or the Lightning King had to pay a price to Kim Woo Jin as well. As a result, Kim Woo Jin also intended to acquire the power of another person from his past other than the King of Undead. I won't wait for what they give ill let them give me what I want. Then my question was wrong so what is it that you want? Things related to blood poison. The King of Deadly Poison. Kim Woo Jin was planning to use this opportunity to get it. What are Johan George and the Ten doing now? They headed to France. Then? It's obvious if you look at the current situation, right now, the French players and the Esprit Guild are about to go on strike if they attack the dungeons they abandoned then Tata. They'll gain recognition it seems that their power isn't normal. Of course it's not normal he managed to take my Halo's favor for a while. Favor? From you? Oh Seichan was surprised. He also knew the personality of the Emissary of the Underworld as well as how serious the information Kim Woo Jin had just shared was. However, Kim Woo Jin wasn't surprised. It's nothing strange. The King of Undead had become a player before Kim Woo Jin and he had enjoyed the Halo's favoritism before Kim Woo Jin picked the Emissary of the Underworld as his Halo. Furthermore, in a world filled with chaos, even Lee Se Jun and he would feel a sense of crisis. Such a person had received the support of the Messiah Guild, so it would be strange if his power didn't increase substantially. Isn't that dangerous? But that didn't mean that Kim Woo Jin was worried about it. Doesn't matter he'll receive the Halo's favoritism again in the next dungeon. What's the next dungeon? The Burning Forest. Because he was going to nail this opportunity. As soon as your five-floor debut ends, you jump into an A rank usually it takes about half a year to adjust to five-floor dungeons, your speed is simply ridiculous anyway, I'll send you a gift before then. Oh Seichan intended to happily attach wings to the tiger known as Kim Woo Jin. We got the blood cloud skill you mentioned. Blood cloud. Kim Woo Jin smiled when he thought about the skill that made a cloud of blood that even rained blood down. Excellent. It was really hard to obtain you should buy a meal for me to make up for it. Li Jina owes me a meal, let's eat together then. Really? Then I'll eat caviar with a tablespoon so how should I send it? When he heard that question, Kim Woo Jin answered without hesitation. Send it through Park Yong Wan. Park Yong Wan. Kim Woo Jin responded calmly to Oh Se Chan's question. Distribution is complicated. Now I'm definitely sure that Park Yongwan sold out his country in his past life otherwise, there's no way he would have met a human like you. Chapter, 210 It had been a month since the terrorist attack on the Esprit Guild in Paris, France. The chaos caused by the attack didn't subside, but instead had grown much larger than a month before. Will the Special Player Protection Act be passed? The reason for this was the Special Player Protection Act. This is nonsense. Players already enjoy enough privileges. This is like putting a police badge on a criminal. They're getting paid to indulge. The ordinary citizens raised their opposition, saying that the bill was an excessive benefit for the players. The same was true for the players. They too began using any means to protect their interests. The Esprit Guild declares indefinite strike until the bill is passed. The French Guild Federation discussed general strike. Some players and guilds began pulling out the strike card. The aftermath of this came sooner and larger than they expected. The number of escaped monsters soars. France is in danger. It didn't take that big of a crack for the dam, which had already reached its limit, to break completely. 
This fact terrified the non-player citizens. The players are on strike so France will be destroyed. I think we have no choice but to listen to the players. Damn it, listen to the players. And this horrific situation frustrated the French citizens as well as people all around the world. After all, if the Special Protection Act was passed in France, it was obvious what the players in other countries would ask for. It was around that time. Johann George successfully clears dungeon. Johann George does what the Messiah Guild couldn't do. Johann George and ten new heroes appear. Johann George and the ten revealed themselves to the world by clearing a dungeon the Messiah Guild had given up on. It was the moment when a new hero had appeared in the turbulent world. Moreover, the new hero didn't stand still after appearing. Johann George and the Ten immediately start attacking another dungeon. The next dungeon is an A-rank dungeon the Messiah Guild gave up on previously. They only rested for one day. After only a day's rest, which was actually more like travel time rather than rest, they immediately attacked another dungeon. What was that? They only rested for a day before challenging another dungeon. Are they crazy? It's not just dungeons, but dungeons that the Messiah Guild couldn't clear, right? Could Isaac Ivanov even do something like this? The world was astonished because no other players had ever moved at such a ridiculous pace. Is this possible? The same was true for Li Jina. He was currently reading an article about Johann George with a shocked expression on his face. Didn't they say that they'd been in the previous dungeon for a month? Taking a break after clearing a dungeon wasn't just for physical recovery. Instead, it was the mental recovery that was needed the most. The stress accumulated after spending such a long time in a dangerous place like a dungeon, wasn't something that could be gotten rid of by just a few days rest. Are they insane? Li Jina turned to look at Kim Woo Jin, who was also reading the same article as him. However, his expression wasn't the same as Li Jin AHS. In fact, Kim Woo Jin wasn't surprised at all. Johann George isn't a person who would get stressed out by a dungeon attack. First of all, the Johann George that Kim Woo Jin knew was a madman. Rather than getting stressed in a dungeon, it was more accurate to say he used dungeons as stress relief. Nevertheless, it's different from back then. However, that was only valid when Johann George possessed the terrifying combat power that gave him the name King of Undead. I've already taken a lot from him. There was no way that Johann George, who had already been deprived of many things by Kim Woo Jin, could be as strong as in the past. In fact, this was part of the reason that Johann George had been so silent beforehand. But if he managed to take away the Halo's favoritism for a while. Yet in such a situation, he had managed to display a performance like this? It was clear. It looks like the Messiah Guild supplied him with a lot of items. The amount of items the Messiah Guild completely surpassed the other four top guilds. Moreover, Johann George now had a team of ten people. Enough to fill the inventories of his entire team. The roles of these ten was most likely that of supporters and inventory. And there should be more. Besides that, there should be more players who would also be used as support. If they used their inventories, then the number of items they had would certainly be enough to completely crush Isaac Ivanov. They might have even opened Lee Sejun's vault. It wouldn't be strange for them to move at such a pace if the Messiah Guild gave them an item that came directly from Lee Sejun's stash. Lee Sejun's vault. When he thought about that, Kim Woo Jin smiled. And with that smile, he took out his smartphone and sent a message. Seeing this, Lee Jina couldn't help but ask with a curious look. Who are you texting? The Lightning King. The Lightning King. What for? Johann George's appearance has filled Isaac Ivanov with competitive spirit. Competitive spirit? Yes, a competitive spirit strong enough to challenge an A-rank dungeon for free. Woo Woo. A text message came from the Lightning King, telling them his answer. I'll prepare the stage. Kim Woo Jin smiled when he saw that. And nobody in this world hates free things. It was very difficult to defend dungeons in the Amazon rainforest. There were many monsters there that would make even the most dangerous predators a meal, as well as the Amazon's unique environment which made even standing an arduous task. One of the ways was to choose dungeons close to the edge. 
The other was to secure the dungeon so that others wouldn't be able to touch it. Once a dungeon was found, the finder would leave traces so that they were able to find it, then they would set up traps around it. After this is the minefield. And among the traps, the one that was used most frequently was mines. The installation was simple, the cost per unit was cheap, and most importantly, the effect was good. This was one of the reasons that the Amazon rainforest was considered hell. Of course, even this wasn't perfect. Be careful, others might have left new mines here too. Sometimes, if one's luck wasn't good, hostile forces might interfere with their route by placing new mines down. Then, before we begin, I'll give you a debriefing. While the Thunderbird Company's workers secured the route to the dungeon gate, Roberto spoke to Kim Wu Jin, Li Jin Ah, and Isaac Ivanov, who he had created using the alter ego skill. The dungeon we're about to enter is the A-rank, five-floor dungeon, Burning Forest. Together with those words, Roberto handed them the documents he was holding in his hands. Burning Forest. Floors, 5. Difficulty, A. Maximum number of entries, 299. Requirements, level 159 and lower. Conditions, defeat the master of the burning forest. Reward, skill stone A. Honestly, not much information could be gathered from the dungeon's title, but the fact that the reward was a skill stone meant that it wouldn't be simple. But that wasn't bad. If a legendary item is found in a dungeon, then it will unconditionally belong to Thunderbird. After all, regardless of what they find in the dungeon, it would belong to Thunderbird. That was the condition that Isaac Ivanov's party had to agree to in order to join the dungeon attack. We have no objections. Had it not been for that condition, there was no way the Lightning King would have let Isaac Ivanov's party into the dungeon unless he was stupid. In addition, Roberto was joining the attack in order to ensure the conditions were fulfilled. Damn it. But from Roberto's perspective, this wasn't a good thing. No, this was a situation that had already surpassed bad. The possibility of them clearing the dungeon was by no means low. If it's these guys, they could chew through a dungeon like this one. The power Isaac Ivanov's party displayed far exceeded common sense. In fact, Roberto was certain that the monsters in the dungeon would just get bullied by Isaac Ivanov's party. That was the reason. If these guys changed their attitude. This powerful party was not something Roberto and his men could even wish to stand up against. After all, wasn't it a dungeon? They'd chew us up too. No matter what happened in the dungeon, there was no way for the outside to know. Therefore, if Kim Woo Jin was to kill Roberto and say it was an accident, there was no way to confirm or deny his statement. Of course, the Lightning King would definitely punish them for it. After all, the Lightning King had never let off someone who crossed him. Damn it. But none of that would matter to the person who died. That was why Roberto was fearful of Isaac Ivanov's party. We've secured the route. At that time, the men who went to check the path to the dungeon gate, came back and reported, so Roberto nodded and stood up. Everyone, let's go into the dungeon. No one knew what could happen in the Amazon rainforest, so there was no break before entering the dungeon. Then Kim Woo Jin spoke to Roberto. We'll go in first. When Kim Woo Jin said that, Isaac Ivanov and Lee Jin Ah were standing behind him. Roberto was startled by their appearance. Usually, in cases like this, the Watcher was the one who entered the dungeon first, and Roberto was the Watcher in this case. However, it was clear that Roberto did not even want to enter the dungeon in the first place, and was hesitant to go first. Then Kim Woo Jin spoke as though he was warning him. If we hit you in the back of the head after following you into the dungeon, we'll be punished anyway. Even when saying such words, there wasn't a change to Kim Woo Jin's tone. Possibly as a reaction to the threat, Roberto no longer cared about what would happen afterward. Do whatever you want. In any case, if Isaac Ivanov's party had malicious intentions, there was nothing he could do about it in the dungeon. Then we'll go ahead. Thus Kim Woo Jin, Isaac Ivanov and Lee Jin Ah began moving along the path designated by the Thunderbird staff. Before long, a dungeon gate dug into a huge tree greeted them. They didn't hesitate. Li Jin Ah then Isaac Ivanov entered the dungeon one after another. 
and just as Kim Woo Jin reached the dungeon gate. Boom! Suddenly, an explosion rang out, causing everyone to turn to the direction it came from. Immediately afterwards, two more explosions rang out. It was the sound of mines exploding one after the other. Something is coming. In other words, it was an announcement that something was moving through the minefield. Roar. Before long, a terrifying roar swept through the Thunderbird Company's team. It's an ogre. Ogre. As this wounded beast rushed through the minefield, it roared. Ugh. Ah. This roar caused the non-players to stumble. They were instantly incapacitated by its tremendous power. Roberto was also shocked at its appearance. Why is an ogre here? It was harder to see an ogre in the Amazon rainforest than it was to see a jaguar. Of course, it wasn't the ogre's appearance itself that was strange. Why didn't I sense it? However, it was definitely strange for an ogre to suddenly appear without any warning whatsoever. In particular, there had never been an incident where an ogre had ignored its injuries to charge through a minefield. Although they were slow creatures, an ogre was still smart enough to know that after stepping on a mine, it should not continue in the same direction. Of course, he didn't have that long to question it. Once an ogre began to run wild, it was hard even for high-level players to kill it. Furthermore, the ordinary soldiers would be virtually useless against it. We have to kill it. At that moment, only Roberto and his men were capable of dealing with the ogre, so Roberto immediately grabbed an assault rifle from his side. This was proof that he was adequately prepared for whatever might happen in the Amazon rainforest. In other words, it couldn't be helped. Ah! Only then did he remember the dungeon gate. Find the red tree to move on to the next floor. The notification showed that no more players were allowed to enter the dungeon. What's going on? Li Jina was shocked to see the notification. What happened? Why did the notification suddenly appear? Then Isaac Ivanov and Kim Woo Jin appeared. The two of them spoke at the same time. It looks like there was an accident. The same words. However, their actions were different. The real Kim Woo Jin removed a ring from his finger and put it in his inventory. Solomon's ring. Upon seeing this, Li Jina shouted. Did you use a monster to cause an accident? When Kim Woo Jin shrugged instead of responding, Li Jina spoke with a ridiculous expression. Hey! Please tell me about stuff like that in advance. It was an accident. It doesn't sound like an accident. This is why you don't have friends. Kim Woo Jin stretched out his hand to the angry Li Jina. Aegis shield and Nemean lion skin. Ha! Huh. Li Jina, whose expression was just filled with anger, became stiff when Kim Woo Jin asked for the two items in his possession. Only. After a while, Li Jina spoke fearfully. N dash, no matter how wrong I was, it's still a bit much to make me go naked in an A-rank dungeon. He felt that Kim Woo Jin was going to make him do something ridiculous to increase his skill rank. Kim Woo Jin spoke simply. You don't have to do anything in this dungeon. Then his gaze deepened as he continued. Because I will clear this dungeon alone. Chapter, 211 There are many interesting stories about games. There were stories about users who found their way on a map with low visibility because of a bug simply by pressing a single directional key. Or like the story of players defeating boss monsters in a week when the developers boasted that it would take a month. There were many people who risked their lives in games like that. But when they were forced to play the real game, the skills that people displayed weren't the same as in the games they played. The game begins. When this notification was heard, and dungeon gates, monsters and players began appearing in the world, people risked their lives to find a way to clear this game. They risked their lives to fight monsters, then they studied the items they gained while risking their lives, and they also researched and improved how to acquire and use skills. There must be some pattern or characteristic to getting the sponsorship of a halo. In addition, the study on the patterns, methods and characteristics of receiving the sponsorship of a halo was also done. And it was none other than the Messiah Guild that took the lead in this study. As had been mentioned previously, there was no one who would risk their lives as much as the Messiah Guild in a situation where they could get valuable items as a result. 
The same goes for the emissary of the underworld. The same was true when the Messiah Guild decided to back Johann George with all its might. They already knew just what the emissary of the underworld, which was well known for its favoritism, liked. The emissary of the underworld favors players who hunt a lot of monsters. How many monsters could you face at once? In other words, players who could take care of many monsters were more likely to obtain the emissary of the underworld's favor. The Messiah Guild made the decision to firmly latch on to that point. That was the reason why they added 10 players to Johann George's team. They realized that the head count was more important than anything else at the same time, they were certain. I might not be certain about anything else, but with this much power I could never lose to Isaac Ivanov when it comes to the number of monsters I can handle at one time. Your level has increased. A pleasant notification sounded in Kim Woo Jin's ear. But Kim Woo Jin paid no attention to the notification. It wasn't because he was in combat either Kim Woo Jin's eyes were filled with the sight of countless corpses created by his skeletons. Ugh. Li Jina was the only one there to react to this fact. I'm really getting goosebumps now how the hell did you handle two zero zero monsters at once on your own? This was not a small number in fact, it was almost impossible to imagine fighting such a large number of enemies. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin's skeletons had not retreated even an inch when facing such a large number. No, it wasn't just that they didn't retreat. You are probably the only human in history who deliberately attracts all the nearby monsters to hunt. It was extremely rare for a single species to move together in a group so large therefore, Kim Woo Jin had to attract monsters of multiple species in order to amass a group of two zero zero. Li Jin Ah said it was a large number. There's no notification from the halo. Nevertheless, the halo didn't show any reaction to Kim Woo Jin in this battle. This didn't mean that the halo no longer paid attention to Kim Woo Jin, instead. Its attention was already grabbed by another battle. The halo's attention had been taken by something else. That means the number of monsters I just fought was still less than Johann George. In other words, it meant that Johann George had just faced more than two zero zero monsters. Two zero zero isn't enough. That was quite terrifying. Wasn't it hard enough to imagine fighting two zero zero monsters at once? Moreover, it couldn't have been that he hunted a few more than two zero zero. Perhaps he hunted close to three zero zero foot. It was highly likely that Johann George and the Ten had hunted close to three zero zero monsters. And he must have prepared a way to make the Ten's exploits his own. In addition, Johann George almost definitely had a way to make the kills the Ten gained, his own. Kim Woo Jin had no idea what that method was. But the only thing that mattered was that Johann George had done it somehow. It won't be easy. And it wasn't easy to surpass such results. Of course, that didn't mean he would give up. Next time I'll hunt three zero zero. Li Jina was shocked by those words. Hey, is that even possible? Kim Woo Jin responded calmly to Li Jina's shock. It's difficult. It's not just difficult, it's insane. When the number of monsters you're dealing with increases by two times, the perceived difficulty increases by four. It was in a completely different dimension. I know. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew that. It'll be hard to gather three zero zero monsters. Naturally. Gathering three zero zero monsters huh? Li Jina who was just about to agree with Kim Woo Jin, paused and tilted his head as he realized that there was something wrong with what he said. Then, realizing just what he'd heard, he turned back to Kim Woo Jin with a shocked expression. Kim Woo Jin looked at him with a serious expression and said. It'll take some time to gather three zero zero. On a vast plain, over three zero zero monsters were gathered. The types of monsters there were also quite diverse. Orcs, goblins, kobolds, lizard men, and even trolls. Kahung. Ku. Gur. The monsters gathered also showed hostility towards each other. Hell this word matched this scene quite well. However, they didn't fight each other. In a normal scenario, if a group of trolls happened upon a group of goblins, they would attack and eat them without hesitation, but this time was different. Keek. Instead, 
It was the group of goblins who showed hostility to the trolls without any hesitation. Kara. And surprisingly, the group of trolls retreated instead of roaring in anger. After all, existing providence or food chains were nothing in front of overwhelming numbers. The ones who made the first move were usually the ones who were eaten first. For this reason, all the monster groups simply observed each other without making any moves. Then, the skeletons arrived. Rattle. When the group of 100 skeletons arrived, the attention of all the monsters were gathered on them. And all the monsters' eyes said the same thing, if you continue to act recklessly, we will crush you. But the skeletons paid no heed to the fearsome appearance of the monsters, and moved without hesitation. Then a battle began immediately. The first battle was between the skeleton soldiers and a group of orcs. Shook. A sharp bone blade wielded by a skeleton cut into the body of an orc, and using that as the signal, the other skeletons began cutting through the orcs without hesitation. Rather than a battle, it would be more accurate to call it a massacre. Puff. The hot scent of blood swept across the battlefield on which there was nothing but combat and murder. The smell of blood drove the monsters into a frenzy. KRNG. Key. Various monster groups began rushing towards the group of skeletons like waves crashing against a beach. A monster wave had started. In the face of such a wave, the skeleton soldiers' progress was bound to stop. Thud. The moment their progress stopped, the monsters rushed over to the skeletons aiming to attack them. Nevertheless, the skeletons endured their offensive. Naturally, the monsters began accumulating in front of the skeleton soldiers. Hiaha. And it was at that moment that the skeleton wizards made their move. There were ten. These skeleton wizards, whose number had reached double digits with the help of skeleton magician mastery, threw the fireballs in their hands into the large group of monsters without hesitation. Pop. These fireballs exploded upon contact with a monster and scattered their flames to the surrounding monsters. Roar. Screech. These scattered flames then ignited the fur of these monsters, causing them to cry out loudly. The effect was amazing. The damage itself was high, but the monsters struggling in pain also hampered the flow of the wave. They were like cars that had made sudden stops on a road filled with traffic. This was invaluable assistance to the skeleton soldiers who had been fighting against the waves. But the real help was on their way. Kyaha. A group of skeleton knights appeared opposite the skeleton soldiers. The number of skeleton knights had risen to six. And each skeleton knight was riding a skeleton wolf and was fully equipped and armored. Among them, the most notable one was the skeleton knight sitting at the front. This skeleton knight was sitting proudly on his wolf mount with the Nemean lion skin draped over its shoulders, Aegis shield in its left hand, and Percival's spear in its right. Such an equipment set was something executives from top guilds could only dream of. The skeleton knight then charged down to the battlefield while emitting a blood-red aura, proof that it had become the incarnation of the battlefield. It was impossible for the monsters, who were focused on their battle with the skeleton soldiers and wizards, to properly prepare for the skeleton knight's attack from behind. The subsequent battle could only be called a slaughter. Limbs of monsters were scattered everywhere like branches that had been pruned, and screams were abundant. In no time at all, the battlefield had been drenched in blood. The blood cloud has begun to bleed. And blood even began to fall onto it as a scarlet cloud released its burden upon the battlefield. Blood poison has taken effect. Blood poison. It was the moment when blood filled with deadly poison had appeared. Moreover, the bodies of the monsters, which had numerous scars on them, absorbed the blood poison like dry ground absorbs water. Screams once again filled the battlefield. In fact, it could be considered good that they were even able to scream. Some monsters simply collapsed onto the group, unable to let out a single sound before their death. Key. The monsters who witnessed this scene, hastily tried to avoid the blood rain. It was around that time, that the blood golem, which had been staying in a blood puddle, revealed itself. The blood golem began a crazed attack as soon as the monsters trying to avoid the blood rain appeared. No, it didn't even need to attack crazily. The moment when monsters began retaliating against the blood golem, its blood body splattered in all directions, 
covering any monsters nearby. When they saw that, the monsters became shocked and terrified, completely losing their ability to fight. Ah! Li Jina, who was watching this scene from a distance, was also shocked. He couldn't help but turn his eyes to Kim Wu Jin who was standing next to him. Merlin's staff continuously supplies you with mana. The mana from Merlin's staff made Kim Wu Jin's eyes become a terrifying shade of blue-green. Of course, while it was a bit horrifying, Kim Wu Jin's appearance made him relax a little. This was natural. This scene clearly showed him that Kim Woo Jin had squeezed out everything he could it was the limit of Kim Woo Jin's power. This is my limit with my current magic power. Of course, it was just the limit of his magic power. If Kim Woo Jin had more magic power, he could perhaps summon the Hellhound, which would have certainly made the fight easier. If this much is not enough then it can't be helped. In any case, from Kim Woo Jin's perspective, there was nothing else he could do if even this much was not enough to surpass Johan George. Kim Woo Jin finally heard the awaited notification. However, he didn't pay attention to it, instead, Kim Woo Jin waited to see if any other notification would follow. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your abilities. The Emissary of the Underworld bestows some power to you. The rank of the Skeleton Wizard skill has increased by one. Then he heard the notification he was waiting for. That's good. Kim Woo Jin smiled at the notification. Then I won't need to kill Johan George for now. It was a smile that said he would no longer need to get rid of the competition like he planned. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't forget. Then all that's left is to get the tale. What the real purpose for entering the dungeon was. Chapter 212 The thoughts of everyone who saw him for the first time were always the same. Was this pale man with a sleepy expression and a skinny, sickly body that looked like he would collapse at any time really be the Lightning King? But anyone who actually knew the Lightning King would never doubt his identity. Instead, they would think that there was no one else suited for that title. Furthermore, they would know that the title, Lightning King, didn't come just because he had contracts with Lightning Spirits. Lightning King. That was because this title represented a tyrant who was more ruthless than anyone else. You let only the best players enter the A-rank dungeon. That was the reason that Roberto, who was standing in front and listening to the words of the Lightning King, was sweating profusely. I never expected you to tell me those words. Roberto was well aware of how terrifying the Lightning King could be. Moreover, this incident was his own fault. As the Lightning King had said, he had basically given Isaac Ivanov and his team the A-rank dungeon for free. It was literally free. The Thunderbird Company had no way of knowing what occurred in the dungeon if Isaac Ivanov chose to hide it, and if he didn't want to hand over whatever he might have obtained, they had no way to retrieve it. If it was a legendary item, the loss would be indescribable. What Roberto should have done was throw himself into the dungeon gate, even if he was the only one. No, instead, throwing himself into the dungeon would have been the correct course of action. After all, wasn't it common in the Amazon rainforest for players to throw themselves into dungeon gates in order to survive? There was absolutely no excuse for it, and Roberto had no intention of making any excuses. Instead, he tried to apologize. I'm so. However, the apology got stuck in his throat. This was because he was afraid of what the Lightning King would do. Seeing this, the Lightning King's eyes became cold. Eventually, the Lightning King lifted his head, and when Shakira saw the look in his eyes, she couldn't help but gulp. Gulp. The Lightning King didn't react to her fear, and instead gave her some instructions. Plant mines around the dungeon gate. As the Lightning King continued speaking, his voice became colder and colder. So that they could never escape on their own two feet and spread the information around. Information. Information that Isaac Ivanov's party is currently in that dungeon. The Lightning King's eyes became yellow, and sparks of electricity shot out of them. They'll have to turn to me if they want to live. Your level has increased. The Emissary of the Underworld applauds your growth. Kim Woo Jin looked up as he heard the notification. Under the blood cloud, formed using the blood from countless corpses, that was continuously raining down skeleton soldiers were finishing off the last of the monsters who were still breathing. 
It was truly an appalling sight, but it didn't impress Kim Woojin at all. There should be about a hundred left. Instead, he was just crunching numbers in his head. Then he received another notification. Eleven monsters remaining. It was a notification that stated there were eleven monsters remaining until they cleared this floor. As expected. Kim Woo Jin was satisfied when the number remaining was similar to what he had just calculated. That was the way Kim Woo Jin was. He didn't feel any sense of joy or accomplishment in battle, he didn't want to. All he wanted was to finish his tasks perfectly, similar to a program. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin was satisfied with this situation, which was only calculations without any emotion. Li Jina. Kim Woo Jin called out to Li Jina. But Li Jina didn't answer instead, his gaze was focused upon the gruesome scene created with a combination of Kim Woo Jin's skeletons and poison. It was truly a sight. In this world which had turned into a game, those who wanted to fulfill their desires would be horrified by this sight, and those who wanted the game to end would be thrilled. It was a scene that would cause anyone to feel strong emotions. Of course, Li Jina wasn't included in either of those groups. Munch munch. The reason Li Jina couldn't turn his head was because he was currently eating a chocolate bar. After Kim Wu Jin called his name for the second time, Li Jina turned to look at him with his cheeks swollen like a chipmunk. He then swallowed everything before saying. What? Li Jina's voice was filled with dissatisfaction as had been disturbed while eating. Kim Wu Jin couldn't help but smile slightly at that fact. He really is an amazing guy. Li Jina was probably the only human in the entire world who could face such a scene calmly while eating. Get ready. However, even the dissatisfaction on his face swiftly disappeared after he heard those two words. Right, it seems the time has come for the amazing and masculine Li Jina to help with this A rank 5 floor dungeon. After all, it was an A rank 5 floor dungeon. There would be nothing strange if the 5th floor was very dangerous. It definitely wouldn't be easy to defeat a 5th floor boss without me. It was even possible for a dragon to appear. A real dragon was much more powerful than the hatchling Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina had defeated before. That's not what I'm talking about. Of course, that wasn't something Kim Woo Jin would worry about. The difference between Kim Woo Jin's power in the past and now was mind-boggling. Kim Woo Jin could rest assured. I can handle the fifth floor on my own. At this point, Kim Woo Jin was able to hunt anything in a five-floor dungeon on his own without worry. It was also not a problem to finish the hunt quickly. The quantity and quality of the skills and items he had obtained were vastly different. The vampire skill is really helpful. Among them, one of the greatest abilities he'd obtained was none other than the vampire transformation. Its abilities which provided an overwhelming merit in his information gathering ability allowed Kim Woo Jin to have faster and stabler hunts. Of course, the greatest power was Kim Woo Jin himself. The most helpful thing is that I managed to obtain Ganjang and Makya, TL, soy sauce. With the items he had right now, Kim Woo Jin was confident that he could hunt any monster that could appear in a five-floor dungeon. Then what are you telling me to prepare? Are you telling me to prepare food? In other words, there was no danger to him in a five-floor dungeon. I mean, get ready for when the attack is done. After the attack. What's out there? If there was any danger, it could only come from outside. The Lightning King won't let us go. The Lightning King was a threat. The Lightning King. Li Jina looked shocked as he asked that. This wasn't just because the Lightning King was one of the first players. He was a monster. A monster whose name could be mentioned in the same sentence as the savior, Li Sejun. In fact, he had officially cleared nine six-floor dungeons and there were rumors that he was preparing to tackle a seven-floor dungeon. No matter how great Isaac Ivanov's reputation was, there was still a long way to go before he could be comparable to the Lightning King. That Lightning King wouldn't let them go. Why? Why would the Lightning King attack us? There had to be a reason. Because we're the only ones to enter the dungeon. And in fact, the reason was obvious. Wasn't that an accident? The fact that it was an accident or not doesn't matter to the Lightning King all he cares about is the fact that we might have something that belongs to him. 
How is it his? You haven't even obtained anything yet, have you? No, didn't you say that the Amazon rainforest didn't have an owner? There is no owner, so if a strong person decides to take something, they become its owner. It was common to take anything you wanted in the Amazon rainforest, as long as you were strong enough. So from a certain perspective, it wasn't wrong to say that everything in the rainforest belongs to the Lightning King. And the Lightning King is a tyrant who makes use of his power whenever he wants to. In addition, the Lightning King wasn't some warrior who concealed their power and acted low-key. He was a tyrant whose title was more fitting than anyone else's. Ho ho! Li Jina let out a laugh at those words. But not long after, Li Jina's expression became fierce. Kim Wu Jin knew that Li Jina was never the type of person who tolerated being threatened to hand over something he'd claimed. Instead, he was the type of person who would do whatever it took to make sure whatever he gained remained his. Then we'll just fight the Lightning King. He was a man who was willing to fight even the Lightning King. Right, we'll just have to fight that Lightning King guy. TL, from the flow, it seems Li Jin Ah said it and then confirmed it, Kim Wu Jin wasn't the one to say it or agree in case you might have been confused. Li Jin Ah willingly accepted this fact and began to steady his determination. And as he did so, his expression became more serious than ever before. Is that so? Kim Wu Jin had a slight smile on his face as he asked Li Jin Ah this question. There's no need for us to do something so crazy like fighting the Lightning King. Ha! Huh. Even if the two of us work together, we still couldn't beat him. Kim Wu Jin knew that the Lightning King's current power was not something they could handle. At that point, he was already strong enough to handle seven floor dungeons. Moreover, the power the Thunderbird Company he leads has is no joke it wouldn't be wrong to call them an army. Furthermore, the Lightning King wasn't alone. Beneath him was Thunderbird, the world's leading civilian military company. They treated automatic rifles as toys and they had enough military power to make use of heavy machine guns and even tanks if necessary. Fighting the Lightning King outside of a dungeon was, as Kim Wu Jin had said, crazy. Plus the Lightning King isn't going to kill us. Most importantly, the Lightning King didn't intend to kill Isaac Ivanov. Didn't you say he was targeting us? He wouldn't be more than put a few mines around the dungeon gate and maybe spread the news about our attack had probably put a sniper and some machine guns nearby. How is that any different from killing us? If he wanted to kill five floor players then he'd prepare napalm one, bombs, not a few mines. The Lightning King knew that it was impossible to kill players who could clear an A-rank five floor dungeon by themselves with mines and a sniper. All he wants is to tie us down or make us go to him. He simply wanted the people who had his possession to willingly go to him. So that no one in the rainforest would belittle him. If Isaac Ivanov were to do whatever he wanted, then the terror the Lightning King drove into people's hearts would slowly begin to diminish. And that was not something the Lightning King wished to see. So if Isaac Ivanov requested assistance from the Lightning King, he would offer it without hesitation. Rather, it could be said that he wanted it, so that they would rely on him more. It was like throwing them in the deep part of a pool and then saving them. Then will you do what he wants? Of course not. Of course, even though he knew that, Kim Wu Jin had no intentions of cooperating. We're going to run away. Run away. To where? And luckily, there were many places to escape. To a dungeon. This was the biggest reason why Kim Wu Jin had chosen this place as his leveling spot. Napalm can cause death by burns or asphyxiation Napalm bombs generate carbon monoxide while simultaneously removing oxygen from the air. Chapter 213 Gur The fifth floor of the dungeon was a forest that was on fire. The trees in this forest looked the same as normal trees except for the fact that the trunks, branches, and leaves were all made of charcoal. Fire Trees this was a forest made from this mysterious type of tree that could only be found in dungeons. It was an indescribably terrifying forest. This forest was one that couldn't be inhabited by normal living creatures because they would be choked by the stifling heat of the flames till their lungs dried out. And in this forest of fire trees, a dog could be seen walking slowly. 
This dog, which was made entirely of fire, soon stopped in front of a fire tree, that, unlike the others, was burning with blue flames. CHCH. After that, the dog's body began changing. This small dog suddenly became a lizard with a long neck, which used its long neck to eat the flames of the blue fire tree. Foxfire. This was a monster that only appeared in five floor dungeons and above, which had the ability to transform into any other monster. Naturally, as it was a monster made of fire, physical attacks had almost no effect on this monster, and even magical attacks were not very effective. Proof of its formidability came from the fact that no other creature dared get too close to the foxfire. For the first time in a long time, something dared to appear in front of the foxfire. And it wasn't just an appearance. Who? The short breath this person exhaled revealed clear hostility and killing intent towards the foxfire. Naturally, the person who appeared was none other than Kim Woo Jin. Dressed in anemian lion skin, Kim Woo Jin stood in front of the monster with Gan Zhang and Makya in both hands. When Kim Woo Jin appeared, the bizarre sound was heard once again as the foxfire changed its appearance. Surprisingly, it took the form of a dog again. A hunting dog that could quickly escape at any time. It was quite eerie. The moment he exposed a flaw, the foxfire would transform into a huge monster, and all he'd be able to do was scream in pain as his body was burned by its flames. However, there was no sign of fear or hesitation in Kim Woo Jin as he looked at the foxfire with golden eyes. Those were by no means the eyes of a warrior prepared to die. The fourth tale of the nine tailed fox. Rating, Legendary. Required level, level 1 or higher. Description, The fourth tale of the nine-tailed fox it contains mysterious power if all nine tails are collected then the user will be able to unleash the power of the nine-tailed fox. All stats 5%. Greatly increases fire resistance when equipped. With this, I just have two left. Instead, they were the eyes of a hunting dog who'd found the prey. I just need to get those two from the Messiah Guild. Kim Wu Jin, the owner of those eyes, muttered quietly. Protection of the Sun. TL, descriptions below. Gawain's necklace emits the protection of the sun. Protection of the sun skill activated. Then he heard another notification. King Arthur's ring buffs the power of Gawain's necklace. The protection of the sun skill becomes even stronger. It was a notification of the start of the hunt. The burning forest. Kim Wu Jin, who was standing alone in this forest slowly put the swords in his hands back into his inventory. Li Jin Ah, who had watched everything from a distance with eyes filled with astonishment, couldn't help but voice his thoughts. Crazy bastard. His fearful voice reached Kim Wu Jin's ears. Your level has increased. Earn the achievement Foxfire Hunter. Earn the achievement Solo Foxfire Hunter. Inventory increased by 5 spaces due to the achievement's effect. And he also heard the notifications signifying the end of the dungeon. The emissary of the underworld has fallen in love with your ability. The rank of the vampire skill has increased by 1. The rank of the book of the dead skill has increased by 1. Then he received the notifications filled with favoritism. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't read the notifications. In fact, he paid no attention to them at all. He simply picked up the burning tail in front of him and placed it in his inventory. It was then. The dungeon has been cleared. You have cleared the dungeon A skill stone A has been awarded. When he heard the notification, the look in Kim Woo Jin's eyes changed and he shouted. Li Jina, get ready. Then a dungeon gate appeared in front of them. Surprisingly, rumors did not spread very well in the Amazon rainforest. In this place without an owner, the value of information was very high. However, there was no such thing as cooperation in this place. Even if people could work together or share information, they usually wouldn't because betrayal was commonplace in that place. This place was like a mud pit where the reckless would never be able to survive. How long has Isaac Ivanov's party been in there? It's been three weeks now. In other words, this meant that the few who had gathered to the dungeon gate Isaac Ivanov was in were not reckless. They were sufficiently prepared and informed in order to catch the prey they were after. What about the gate? 
There are thousands of mines some of them were planted by us. It was a basic tactic to prevent the prey from running by covering the location with landmines. What about sensors? Have you installed any surveillance sensors? I barely managed to do it with a drone. They had even installed surveillance and alarm sensors over the minefield with drones. The problem was that we weren't the only ones. They had already gone to such a level, so no one had any doubt. At this point, it's impossible for Isaac Ivanov's party to escape. He'll definitely get caught. No matter how powerful Isaac Ivanov and his team were, they would have no choice but to become helpless prey in this situation. Oh. They came out. Then, the signal came. Isaac Ivanov is out. It's time to be hunting dogs. At that moment, the would-be hunters became filled with excitement. If we catch him, we'll get at least three legendaries. That's about three A-ranked dungeons. This once-in-a-lifetime opportunity made them go crazy. There seemed to be no place for reason. Ha! Huh. But it didn't take long before cold water was poured onto their heads. Why are they moving so fast? What? Ah, uh, wait. They disappeared. The Amazon Rainforest. When talking about the dangers of the Amazon Rainforest, many people compared it to a dungeon. This analogy wasn't exactly wrong. Monsters and outlaws with weapons are everywhere and regardless of what happens, the world would never find out. This was because the Amazon's ecosystem wasn't very different to dungeons. However, they were only similar there was a clear difference between the Amazon rainforest and a dungeon. The Amazon rainforest was actually far more dangerous than a dungeon. This was because you could use all the cutting-edge equipment you couldn't use in dungeons, like guns or tracking equipment, to your heart's content. From a certain perspective, having to deal with armed personnel was simply hell. The Lightning King's disciple, Shakira, knew that fact better than anyone. It was almost impossible to escape in the Amazon rainforest if you were being hunted. So, after leaving the dungeon gate, they bypassed the minefield without any issues? Yes. And after that, despite the countless pursuers and surveillance equipment, they disappeared like ghosts. That's correct. But now, Isaac Ivanov's party had done just that. After exiting the dungeon gate, they evaded their pursuers in an indescribably perfect manner. The next thing you found. Were traces of a meal. And even during this escape, they still had time to eat, and even left evidence of it. From Shakira's perspective, this wasn't good news. The Lightning King had said it clearly. Bring him Isaac Ivanov, or bring him his corpse. It was a second chance for Roberto there would be no third chance after the second. In addition, Shakira would also not get a third chance if she failed. Ha! <laughs> Nevertheless, she couldn't stop herself from laughing. A meal saw a man who was able to completely erase all his tracks in the Amazon rainforest left behind the traces of a meal. That was how ridiculous this situation was to her. All I can do is laugh. At that moment, she wasn't even thinking about the fearsome Lightning King. Instead, there was just one thing on her mind. What the hell are you planning? Gawain's Necklace. Rarity, Legendary. Available for level 22 or higher. Description, The Necklace Worn by Gawain, One of the Knights of the Round Table It is Protected by the Sun. 40 Health When Equipped. Only. 40 Magic Power When Equipped. 40 Stamina When Equipped. Increased Damage by 10%. Increased Defense by 10%. Increased Resistance by 10%. Protection of the Sun Activatable Ants Daily. Protection of the Sun Increase All Abilities by 20% Including Stats, Defense, Resistances, Even Attack Power and Skill Effects. Chapter 214. What the hell are you doing? Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin bit a well done piece of grilled meat off a skewer and chewed it. The juices of the lizard meat filled his mouth with flavor. Lee Jin Ah, who had already ripped through a mountain of skewers, glared at Kim Woo Jin, who took just one of them, but he soon forgot that as he asked the question that had been plaguing him for a long time. This isn't Jungle Book, what kind of man knows the forest better than animals? That was the extent of Kim Woo Jin's familiarity with Amazon rainforest's environment. 
their immediate disappearance was the greatest proof of this. In a place like the Amazon rainforest, filled with numerous hunters with advanced weapons, the two of them had escaped without a single scratch. Their condition was also extremely good, with a few dirt stains on their pants being the only indicators of where they were. This was also proof that the two of them hadn't even had to fight anyone yet. It defied common sense. Of course, something like this wasn't very hard for Kim Woo Jin. This kind of chase is like a game among children. Kim Woo Jin had spent years in places filled with monsters and hostile players similar to the Amazon rainforest. It wasn't just that. He'd lived in such a world while going against supreme predators like the King of Undead, the Dragon Slayer, the Lightning King, Trinity, and the Swordsman TL. The author used swordsman here instead of sword saint so I'm not sure if it was just a slip or if it's actually a different person. And he'd survived. So for Kim Woo Jin, the pursuers in the Amazon rainforest were nothing more than a group of children, to put it bluntly. What's more, the abilities Kim Woo Jin had now, far surpassed those that had had in the past. When he transformed into a vampire, he was able to see every creature that had blood in a certain range, and with Horus' eyes, he was able to see anything that might have been hidden. Honestly, they didn't even need to escape. If Kim Woo Jin wanted to kill those chasing them, he could have done so without leaving a trace. By the way, why are you being so passive? Wouldn't killing them be more eye-catching? Li Jina was also wondering about something else. It wouldn't matter if he killed a few hunters in the Amazon rainforest. In fact, it would be even better. The hunters would certainly become more defensive if they realized that they had become the prey. Kim Woo Jin answered his question. We don't need to catch the Lightning King's attention like that. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin pulled out a note wrapped in plastic from his pocket. What's that? You've been putting them in trees for a while are they letters for Seichan? No, these are from Kim Woo Jin to the Lightning King. The Lightning King. This is the only way for Kim Woo Jin to lead him to Isaac Ivanov. Ha, that's good, I guess I thought you were telling Brother Seichan the dinner menu. Li Jina helplessly stuck his tongue out at Kim Woo Jin's words. Wait. Then, Li Jina, who had finally grasped the situation, asked. Not Seichan, the Lightning King. Haven't you been leaving a trail this entire time? Didn't Kim Woo Jin's words mean that he was giving the pursuers from the Lightning King information? I've been doing that consistently. In fact, Kim Woo Jin had been steadily leaving traces, like breadcrumbs for Hansel and Gretel to follow. Lee Jina had thought it was for Oh Se Chan before, so he hadn't paid much attention to it. Isn't that dangerous? No matter how skilled he was, it was still dangerous for Kim Woo Jin to leave such traces. After all, there was a large difference from finding a clue every now and then to finding traces steadily. With that information, the pursuer would be able to draw a line of movement, and if they knew their line of movement, they could then go ahead of them to catch them. Most importantly, this isn't a dungeon. No matter how good Kim Woo Jin was, it was impossible for him to hide from infrared sensors that could be used as much as the pursuers liked. Moreover, with drones, the pursuers would be able to completely ignore the terrain. It is dangerous. Kim Woo Jin knew these facts better than anyone else. After all, it would be impossible for him not to after fleeing for his life from thousands of drones. We'll get caught tomorrow. He expected that if the chase continued as it was, by tomorrow, they would be faced with a siege they would not be able to escape from. That's why we're entering a dungeon today. That was why he intended to enter a dungeon that very same day. When he heard that, Li Jina picked up a skewer and said. Then this will be the last meal I enjoy in reality. Then, with a sense of duty, he began devouring the skewers at a fast rate. Kook. The skewers magically disappeared as if a spell had been cast. Kim Woo Jin, who saw this, got up and said. Did you enjoy your last meal? I'm not really satisfied because I haven't had any dessert yet, but where would I find sweet fruits? Are there any coconuts around here? I also like mangoes and watermelons. After hearing his playful remark and seeing him pat his stomach, Kim Woo Jin pondered for a moment before finally saying. I saw a papaya tree on our way here, I'll get it for you it's wild though, so I can't guarantee the taste. Huh. 
When he heard that, Li Jina quickly stood to his feet with an extremely shocked and cautious expression. Why Dash, you are really going to give me dessert? If it's for your last meal, I can do that much. Only then did Li Jina realize. Last. The next dungeon that Kim Wu Jin intended to attack didn't seem to be one where he would be able to laze around like last time. It might really be a terrifying place which meant that this meal might actually be his last. A dash, are you serious? This also meant that the dungeon would be more dangerous than the dungeon they just cleared. In other words, a dungeon more difficult than an A rank 5 floor dungeon. And there was only one dungeon like that. Six floors. Kim Wu Jin nodded to answer Li Jina's question. What Ash, wait a minute. However, Li Jina was so shocked he couldn't help but shout out. What do you mean six floors? We could attack a five floor dungeon, but any dungeon below B rank would be a waste since we wouldn't get any legendary items, it would be an inefficient waste of two weeks. For Kim Wu Jin, who intended to spend his time as efficiently as possible, there was no need to attack a low ranked five floor dungeon. For Kim Wu Jin, this was a valid reason, but of course for Li Jina, it couldn't be more ridiculous. Hey, we're not even level 150. Currently, Kim Wu Jin was level 135, and Li Jina was level 129. At our level, we should still be attacking four floor dungeons. Considering the fact that the highest level that could enter four floor dungeons was 140, it was already insane for normal players that they were attacking five floor dungeons. And in five floor dungeons, the highest level that could enter them was level 180. In other words, this meant that the players who attacked six floor dungeons were usually over level 180. In truth, six floor dungeons were the stages for level 200 players. They were places where top guild masters like Park Yongwan were active. It's possible for us to clear it. However, Kim Wu Jin had confidence in their attack. And he had evidence. For one, our attack power is sufficient. One of the reasons was that their combat power had long surpassed anyone else on their level. In particular, when Kim Wu Jin went into battle, the strength he showed was in no way lacking when compared to a level 200 player. Our ability to collect information far surpasses any other party. In addition, their ability to perfectly obtain information without needing to take risks, perfectly covered the shortcomings of there being only two of them. In other words, there was no reason why they wouldn't be able to hunt the monsters in a six-floor dungeon. And finally, as long as the tank works hard, there's nothing we can't do. As long as the tank could buy enough time. That fact made Li Jina's face turn white. Kim Wu Jin tapped Li Jina's shoulder as he said. I'll get the papaya for you know, cacao would probably be better don't you like chocolate? Turbulent times created heroes. And with that being the case, 2024 was the perfect year for heroes to be born. At that moment, the atmosphere caused by the terrorist attack against the Esprit Guild was not enough to call it turbulent. The Special Player Protection Act is pending. However, the chaos started when the Special Player Protection Act, which had been proposed after the attack on the Esprit Guild, failed to pass legislation in the French Parliament. The European Guild Federation resolves to hold a general strike. 77% of French guilds join the strike. The Esprit Guild, we want protection. A massive strike was held by the European players. These guilds' declaration of a strike, which was made during a time of strife, was enough to cause panic not only in Europe but also the rest of the world. Damn those player bastards for threatening us with this. This proves that it is too dangerous to give such benefits to these ridiculous bastards. But won't we be in danger if we don't give in? It was a turbulent situation that could be overcome by normal people. Johannes George's team successfully attacks. They cleared a five-floor dungeon in 18 days. Johann George's team achieves the new record for the shortest time to clear a five-floor dungeon. And for these people, the news of Johann George's team clearing a dungeon was hope in itself. Oh my god, a new record. 18 days. For a five-floor dungeon. He's such a ridiculous monster where did this monster come from? They cleared a five-floor dungeon in the shortest time. The world was astonished by his ridiculous results. Johann George's party attacks a new dungeon. 
three consecutive dungeon attacks. But the world was even more shocked at the news that followed. He headed into another one. Consecutively. Is it even possible to attack three dungeons consecutively? That speed is ridiculous. Even though him clearing a five-floor dungeon, where people could earn fame and fortune just by attacking them, in the shortest time was shocking, entering a third dungeon without rest defied common sense. It was something that only those who defied common sense could do. Johann George, maybe a new savior has been born. That doesn't seem too far from the truth. Regardless of whether he's a savior or not, even the Messiah Guild couldn't attack dungeons like this we have to at least admit that. It was the moment when a new hero had emerged in the turbulent world. When this happened, the world began wondering about its other hero. What about Isaac Ivanov? Has there been any news about Isaac Ivanov these days? What was Isaac Ivanov doing now? And the question was answered. Isaac Ivanov is dead. As he said this to his subordinates, O oh Seichan's expression was very serious. The faces of his subordinates were also serious. This wasn't something that one should talk about while eating ramen at night. How is that for a title? Regardless, O oh Seichan continued talking. If we try to play the media in a sloppy way, it'll never work let's just announce that he's dead and then, when he appears later, won't everyone be excited? After saying this, O oh Seichan smiled. And maybe we'll get some nice gifts for announcing his death do you think anyone would send Yukajang one, as a gift? I haven't had Yukajang and rice in a long time. His subordinates couldn't help but think. I thought it was strange when he decided to boil several different flavors of ramen together but. I think he might have gone crazy since no one has sent any gifts to Isaac Ivanov in a long time. In his current condition, boss. Oh Seichan was a person who would really do a ridiculous thing like he'd just mentioned. Fortunately, this situation didn't last for long. I got it. An employee brought Oh Seichan some good news. I got the lich summoning skill. When he heard that, Oh Seichan put the empty ramen bowl on the ground. Really? How? Was someone actually selling that? Some European brokers put up some of the things they had to get a feel for the market. Oh Seichan clenched his fist when he heard that. The lich summoning skill would certainly be a great help. There was no reason not to get excited about an item that would give them even more of an advantage. Suddenly, another subordinate rushed in. B- dash, boss. The look on the subordinate's face let everyone know that they had bad news. What is it? Ki- dash, Kim Woojin left us a note. He wasn't surprised by that since they had agreed to the note beforehand. Then why is your face like that? Was there bad news in the message? Did he see the card statement? Did someone check the accounts? That they're entering a six-floor dungeon. Six floor. At the number six, Oh Seichan tilted his head slightly before he shot to his feet and shouted in horror. Six floors. It wasn't just Oh Seichan. All of the subordinates who were eating ramen looked up in shock. By sixth floor, is it the sixth floor I think it is? Oh my god, didn't they recently enter five floors for the first time? If they attack a sixth floor dungeon. The word sixth floor didn't just represent a dungeon of high difficulty. In the end, a subordinate couldn't help but ask. Why did they enter a sixth floor dungeon? For a player who'd entered five-floor dungeons for the first time just a few months before, them entering a six-floor dungeon was like a person who'd just gotten their driver's license going to a racetrack and expecting to win. Naturally, there was no way Kim Woojin would do such a crazy thing for no reason. Oh Seichan began to think. What's the reason? Then someone said. Isn't he doing it to level up? Level up? Isn't it an overrun? TL, overrun feels a bit weird to me, but the Hangul is. Overrun. This was an act of trying to level up quickly by attacking a dungeon much higher than the player. This was commonly used by large guilds when they raised promising prospects it was done by equipping a low-level player with many items that only had a level 1 requirement, and placing them in a three-floor dungeon together with capable players. In addition, this method was proven to help players level up faster. There's never been a case of overrunning in a six-floor dungeon. 
Of course, no one had ever dared to use a six-floor dungeon to overrun. Only then did Oh Seichan realize something. Get ready for a press play. That Isaac Ivanov is dead. These words frightened Oh Seichan so much that he anxiously shouted at his subordinates. Hey, why the hell would you say something like that? Only. Then. That he will confront Johann George. Oh Seichan explained as his subordinates expressed their confusion. Johann George definitely wants to kill Kim Woo Jin, so we will provoke him until he gets impatient. Chapter 215 Your level has increased. The undying fighter admires your growth. A notification sounded in his ear, but Li Jina didn't pay any attention to it. Mu. Instead, all he could hear was the strange cries of the bull's warriors surrounding him. Mu. The bull's warriors, who were basically miniature versions of minotaurs, with a cow's head which rested upon the body of an orc, began to charge towards Li Jina. Li Jina didn't avoid the charge. Dressed in the Nemean lion's skin, he charged toward one of the bull's warriors with a body that was not much smaller than it. The bodies of the two monsters collided fiercely. Clang! Then with a loud sound, the body of the bull's warrior that collided with Li Jina was sent flying. Mu. The bull's warriors were stunned by this and couldn't help but stop. Using this chance, Li Jina hit the body of another bull's warrior and made it stumble back. Then, as he looked at these monsters, Li Jina roared. Skeletons, help. Help. TL, this made me laugh so hard, I was not expecting it. Rattle. Then, as if waiting, skeleton soldiers poured in from the sides. The fallen bull's warriors could do nothing but cry out under the skeleton's attacks. Li Jina couldn't help but grit his teeth as he watched this scene. There is no end to this, no end. It was the tenth day since they'd entered the sixth floor dungeon. The past few days had passed like a blur to Li Jina, who now stood on the third floor of the dungeon. Every day was filled with never ending battles. At that point it was impossible for him to estimate how many monsters he had killed since entering the dungeon. But the leveling speed is no joke. Only the ridiculous speed with which his levels rose gave him a glimpse of how many fierce battles he'd fought. Of course, he didn't even have the time to feel happy about that fact. Because the sixth floor dungeon never gave him the chance. PRR. The Minotaur's fear begins to spread. Fuck. Minotaur. It was the moment when this ridiculous monster, boasting a height of over 5 meters, made its appearance. This was common for six-floor dungeons. Medium-sized monsters, which would be boss monsters in other dungeons, could appear without any signs or warning. And even then, he was lucky that it was medium-sized. I'm glad it's not a large one TL, some say flag. For six-floor dungeons, it would be nothing strange even if a large monster made a sudden appearance. He had already experienced this on the second floor. At least this is better than the giant lizard from the second floor. Giant lizard. From Li Jina's perspective, compared to the giant lizard with a 70 meter long body against whom Head had to play the role of Jerry from Tom and Jerry, the Minotaur was a welcome sight. But what the hell is that bastard, Kim Woo Jin, doing? Hey, skeleton. What the hell is your master doing? Taking a shit. Of course, the most welcome thing was the fact. Roar. Ha. Huh. The Minotaur's horn has been cut off. The Minotaur lets out a pained cry. The Minotaur has been weakened greatly. Oh my god. The fact that his boss was the one who could turn a Minotaur into a lump of meat in an instant. He's the real monster. From Li Jina's perspective, that was the most welcome fact. In one smooth motion, Kim Woo Jin cut off the Minotaur's horn, and then cut its body into large pieces with the Ganjang in Makya as he fell to the floor. It was a pleasant notification. But Kim Woo Jin didn't pay attention to it. Instead, he spoke to Li Jina through the skeleton beside him with the Grim Reaper's mask. Retreat. Hearing this, Li Jina couldn't help but ask back. Retreat? We hunted them all, didn't we? Aren't you going to take their leather? Kim Woo Jin didn't repeat himself. He didn't have to. Kia. 
A wyvern is looking at you. There were five wyverns. These hyenas of the sky cried loudly as they were drawn to the sweet smell of blood. This was what six-floor dungeons were like. A place where predators could become prey in an instant. It was a place where one had to prioritize survival over securing their hunts. And that was the reason that Kim Woo Jin had decided to retreat without hesitation. The same was true for Li Jina. Li Jina, who confirmed the presence of the wyverns, spoke to the skeleton connected to Kim Woo Jin beside him. Hey, why aren't you running away? At the same time, the rest of the skeletons retreated, and Kim Woo Jin also prepared to retreat from the battlefield. This is the fourth time. In addition, this was the fourth time that the prey they hunted had been stolen by the wyvern group. They're tailing us. The wyverns were now waiting for Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah to attack before swooping down for the spoils. It wasn't something pleasant. How troublesome. What was even more annoying was the fact that Kim Woo Jin currently had no way to deal with this wyvern group. Wyverns were strong monsters. They had strong defense, so flimsy attacks would do nothing to them, jaws and teeth that could bite through steel, and claws that were unimaginably sharp. But the trickiest part was the fact that they could fly very fast. They were much faster than the hatchling. The only way to kill a wyvern was to end it as soon as it touched the floor. If it was just one or two then it wouldn't be that big of an issue. Of course, that was something Kim Wu Jin was capable of. If there were just one or two of them, Kim Woo Jin would have been able to deal with them. The rest would be hard. However, this group consisted of five wyverns. Even if he did kill two, he had no way of dealing with the other three. And if he did kill their companions, the wyverns would attack him ceaselessly until one of them ceased to exist. Should I use the skill stone to raise the mastery of Skeleton Knight? Currently, Kim Woo Jin's Skeleton Knight skill was B rank, and through the buff from the plus ring, it had become an A-rank skill. That meant that if he raised the rank of the Skeleton Knight skill with the skill stone, it would reach S-rank. That's enough. From his estimations, Kim Woo Jin knew that the S-rank Skeleton Knight skill was enough for him to defeat the Wyverns. More importantly, as the number he was able to summon changed, the range of tactics that he could use increased as well. Is it worth it to hunt Wyverns? But from a different perspective, it could be said that using the skill stone A, just to defeat a group of wyverns was an excessive investment. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin had many skills that were B rank. The Book of the Dead, Vampire, Blood Golem, and Dullahan, which he currently only had the skill page for. Of course, the Skeleton Knight skill was worth upgrading. Kim Woo Jin thought about it for a moment before he decided to stop worrying. A skill stone A, has been used. The rank of the Skeleton Knight skill has increased by one. The number of Skeleton Knights that can be summoned has increased. Kim Woo Jin decided to use the skill stone. If I encounter the Wyverns again, I won't need to think about it four times are already more than enough. He chose to leave. You have slain a Minotaur. Earned the achievement Minotaur Hunter. While Kim Woo Jin made up his mind to get rid of the Wyvern, they began feasting on the chopped up corpse of the Minotaur. I'll have to forget about the Minotaur's leather. It was the moment when the excellent material, Minotaur's leather, which could be used to make great armor, had been wasted. Right, I will definitely kill these guys. At the same time, it was the time when the Minotaur had become bait for the Wyverns. The emissary of the underworld admires your achievements. Then he heard another notification. Due to the effect of the plus ring, the skeleton knight skill has reached the transcendent rank. The Skeleton Knight's riding skill has been activated. At that moment, the look in Kim Wu Jin's eyes changed. Li Jin Ah. Then he immediately gave a signal. Distract the wyverns for a bit. What were the trickiest monsters to hunt in dungeons? When asked this question, even if it was a hundred people, the answer would always be the same. Flying type monsters were the trickiest. It wasn't just monsters. Even for mankind, flying had completely changed the game called war. After all, weren't missiles equipped with nuclear warheads the things that could end any human war? It was natural for players to consider flying-type monsters as tricky. And in fact, monsters were the same. 
Flying monsters were still troublesome targets for monsters that couldn't fly. That was the reason why the level 120 skill fly that players with the Keeper of Knowledge Halo could learn was so valuable, even though it was only a rare skill. The Skeleton Knight has used his riding skill to tame the wyvern. Kia. Kyaha. It was also the reason why Li Jina looked at the Skeleton Knight who was riding a wyvern with a look of shock. In truth, the scene that Li Jina was looking at wasn't so much shocking as it was horrifying. Li Jina had rushed towards the five wyverns who had been eating the Minotaur and distracted them long enough for the Skeleton Knights to appear and use their newly gained riding skill. Only three of them were successful. The remaining two managed to break free, and tried to escape crazily, but they ended up decorating the ground with their blood after Kim Wu Jin killed them with his swords. In other words, the two wyverns now lay on the ground in pieces. Keek. The sight of a skeleton knight letting out its bizarre howl in conjunction with its wyvern mount was horrifying no matter who saw it. They're fucked. Li Jina turned to look at Kim Wu Jin. Even Li Jina could easily imagine what kind of extraordinary scene this combination would bring. What would happen if Kim Wu Jin, who used tactics and strategies that ordinary people would never think of, was given such a strategic weapon? Li Jina didn't even want to imagine it. But one thing was clear. Only. Every monster in this six-floor dungeon is fucked. This was not good news for the monsters living in the six-floor dungeon. Who dash, huh? We'll change strategies. And Kim Woo Jin had no intention of keeping this news to himself. Prepare the body. Chapter, 216. Ivory Boar. This was a medium-sized monster that appeared in four-floor or higher dungeons with trunks and ivory tusks similar to elephants. In addition, they usually lived in groups of about ten. When entering a battle, all ten of them would make bizarre cries before rushing towards their enemy, something that was a nightmare for all tanks. Kung Kung. And now, a herd of ivory boars was lazing about on the ground while occasionally eating some fruit. In addition, this herd had reached the astonishing size of around 30 members instead of the usual 10. It was a frightening number. If 10 of these creatures could be called a nightmare, then 30 of them could only be called a disaster. They weren't targets you could hunt instead, what you should do is avoid them if you ever encounter them. In fact, even other monsters avoided this herd of ivory boars as best as they could, and the herd knew that. And that's why they could laze around while leisurely using their trunks to pick up and eat fruit. Keek. This herd of ivory boars didn't even lose their composure when they heard a wyvern's cry from above them. They were confident that no wyvern would dare attack their group, and their confidence became a reality. Kia. The wyvern's cry faded into the distance. And the small amount of interest that the ivory boars had directed to the wyvern gradually faded as well. Poot. Suddenly, something large fell among the group of ivory boars. Krung, krung. Kwong, kwong. In no time, the cries of the ivory boars became angry roars, and the atmosphere changed significantly. The ivory boars' rage and killing intent seemed to fill the surrounding area in an instant. At the same time, the ivory boars positioned themselves so that they could charge at the enemy at any time. It seemed the tanks had finished loading their shells. But their momentum didn't last for very long. Kung Kung. Kung Kung. The ivory boars realized that the thing that had fallen among them was actually the corpse of a monster the moment they realized that, the ivory boars immediately relaxed. At that moment they all had the same thought. That wyvern must have dropped the prey that it was carrying. And now it wouldn't get it back. The relaxed ivory boars once again began picking up fruits and eating them. Kia. Suddenly, the cries of a wyvern once again came from the sky. But the thing that fell this time was different. Unlike before it had managed to land on the body of an ivory boar instead of on the ground. The biggest difference was what happened after it landed. Pop. As soon as it hit the ivory boar's body, the thing that fell suddenly exploded, causing blood and other pieces of viscera to cover the ivory boar. Kahung. And in the next moment, a cry of pain came from the mouth of the ivory boar. A deadly poison began to spread. This fact caused the ivory boar's rage to reach unprecedented levels. Kahung. 
They let out loud roars in anger that seemed to cause the entire forest to shake. Naturally, this caused all the sounds in the forest to stop. This silence was then broken by another body falling onto an ivory boar and exploding. And these attacks kept coming one after another. Every time these attacks happened, an ivory boar would scream in pain before collapsing to the ground. After falling to the ground, these ivory boars' eyes would begin to roll and they would start gasping for breath. Seeing this, the other ivory boars began panicking. Kung. What the hell was happening in the sky? This question that they couldn't learn the answer to caused the ivory boars to become even more terrified and confused. And for these ivory boars, it was impossible for them to escape this situation. The fear that if they left the group they would become like the corpses falling from the sky caused them to cluster up even tighter. The ivory boars had gotten so close that they were all rubbing against each other. Once again, a corpse fell upon an ivory boar and exploded. The ivory boar who had become covered in gore screamed out, but nonetheless, the ivory boars didn't scatter. Instead, they seemed to try to get as close to their companions as possible. This is the first time in my life that I've ever felt sorry for ivory boars. As he watched this scene together with Kim Woo Jin from a distance, Lee Jin Ah couldn't help but comment on this scene. Your level has increased. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin heard the notification indicating a level up, so he decided to check his status window. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 139. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats, HP 4161155, Stamina 2499, Magic Power 31032. Achievement, 120. Extra Points, 3. Level 139. This was the result of his explosive growth rate. Did you level up? Li Jina threw out this question as he saw Kim Woo Jin's reaction. It's really relaxed isn't it weird to level up like this? Li Jina shook his head while asking. Isn't it? A real man has to work hard and sweat to achieve a sense of accomplishment. When he heard that, Kim Woo Jin let out a laugh. In fact, before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin was also someone who felt a sense of accomplishment like that. He used to get an indescribable sense of accomplishment in the fact that he had used his sweat and blood to help save the world. In other words, he only gained a sense of accomplishment by saving the world, and not by hunting. That fact was true even now. I need to find a more efficient way. At this moment, Kim Woo Jin was still devising more comfortable and efficient ways to achieve better results without needing to sweat or bleed. Hey, are you listening to me? If you want to sweat so badly, then I have no choice but to let you sweat. Huh? I'll send you to the battlefield right away so you can sweat. Keek. Kyaha. At that moment, a skeleton knight and a wyvern appeared to collect another body to throw, and Kim Woo Jin gestured towards them with his chin. It'll be much faster by air. Terrified, Li Jin Ah hurriedly said. What's the point of sweating? All you'll do is feel and smell sweaty, that's all. After saying that, he took a step back. I'll go scout around a little. He quickly escaped because he felt he really might experience what it was like to be thrown into a group of monsters by a wyvern. Looking at Li Jin Ah, Kim Woo Jin had a slight thought. When the blessing of River Styx reaches transcendent rank, the resilience of the user would also transcend common sense in that case, it would definitely be possible to throw them into the middle of a group of monsters with a wyvern, even if it's a bit unreasonable. It would be an indescribable merit to be able to quickly reach the heart of an enemy camp, and Kim Woo Jin had no intention of letting go of that merit. The moment Li Jin Ah's blessing of River Stick skill reaches transcendent rank, our tactical capabilities will increase drastically. While Kim Woo Jin was thinking about how best to use Li Jin Ah with his new aerial abilities, the herd of ivory boars had already fallen to single digits. Li Jin Ah, who had gone to scout the area, came back to Kim Woo Jin and said, Look what I found over there. There was a human skull in his hand. It was very simple to tell whether players had entered a dungeon gate or not. If the dungeon's title information appeared when a player reached out to it, that meant that there was no one alive in the dungeon on the contrary, if the dungeon gate felt like a wall, and there was no notification, this meant that there were living players in the dungeon. This was common knowledge that all players were aware of. 
common sense that couldn't be overturned in any way. Are you sure it was here? But Shakira couldn't accept that common sense at that moment. After asking that, she reached out her hand to the dungeon gate that appeared inside a huge tree trunk. The dungeon gate looked like a rift in space that would suck her hand in immediately. Tuck. However, her hand, as if blocked by a wall, could not enter the dungeon gate. Are you certain? Afterwards, she turned to look at her subordinate who nodded firmly. W- dash, without a doubt. Can you bet your life on it? Can you bet your life on your words? When Shakira repeated her question, the subordinate shut their mouth quickly. Seeing this, Shakira spoke. If this is true, I will have to risk my life to pass this information on to the boss, so can you bet or not? When he heard that, the subordinate hesitantly opened his mouth. I dash, I'm sure a dash, all the evidence shows that Isaac Ivanov entered this six-floor dungeon. After hearing that, Shakira immediately lifted the satellite phone in her hand, and made a call. It was picked up immediately. What's the situation? It was a call to the Lightning King. Shakira then spoke with certainty. Isaac Ivanov's party entered a six-floor dungeon. Six-floor dungeon. Even the Lightning King couldn't help but confirm in a surprised tone when he heard that. For the Lightning King, he couldn't even imagine that Isaac Ivanov, who had recently made his debut in five-floor dungeons would attack a six-floor one. Yes, I'm sure it's clear that they entered the E-rank six-floor dungeon, Black and Forest. Along with those words, Shakira looked down at the document in her hands. Black and Forest. Floors, 6. Difficulty, E-rank. Maximum number of entries, 281. Requirement, level 200 and below. Challenge conditions, take care of the leader of the Black and Forest. Reward, none. Only. It was a dungeon report for the six-floor dungeon, Black and Forest. In addition, the report showed many signs of being read. This was proof that this wasn't just a dungeon the Thunderbird Company had information about. This was also why Shakira's expression was so stiff. Didn't Isaac Ivanov know what kind of dungeon it was when he entered it? And that was also the reason why the Lightning King's voice was so strange. I can't believe he entered the dungeon the traitor escaped into. Chapter, 217 The current era was one where players controlled the fate of the world. And in such an era, there was no one who thought that the fights and competitions among players were clean, fair, or just. The reality was that there were all kinds of hidden power struggles that made it seem like the world had re-entered the World War or Cold War era. However, those who were not within the circle of these struggles would never know they were happening. And in this era, it would be strange if there were no spies in the various, influential player organizations around the world that were outside the respective government's reach, like the Thunderbird Company. Numerous spies had been sent by many nations and powers to steal things or even to do harm to the company. The Lightning King knew this fact very well. As you know, there are countless spies from different countries and guilds among my men but if I get rid of them then the company would never be able to grow on the other hand, the funny thing is that because they're spies, they're all very good at buying my trust. Moreover, he even used this as a way to increase his power. So I made a rule I don't care who works for me, all I need are their abilities and results however, if I catch anyone playing any tricks, that's the end. However, the Lightning King punished every spy he caught severely. So I will say it again if you really do get caught betraying, you will wish for death. It was a punishment so cruel that it might be better to get eaten alive by monsters. And this is part of the reason he earned the name Lightning King. He used fear to stop his organization from collapsing and unbelievably, it worked. It even caused some spies to betray their guilds and countries and turn to the Lightning King, which caused the company to grow even more explosively. Of course, there were also those who firmly performed their designated tasks, despite the sheer horror of the Lightning King. If you can accept that, Carlos, then from now on, you're one of my men. Carlos Perez was one of those people with a strong will. Carlos. Amazing, you're really amazing. He hid his identity for as long as two years, risking his life for the Lightning King, and even becoming one of the Lightning King's right-hand men. However, his identity was later found out. 
and he knew that the Lightning King would definitely catch him before he could get too far. So he made a decision. He'll catch me no matter what. If I get caught then everything will be lost. Worst of all, I might reveal too much information due to torture. It's better to seal everything than let him find out. Instead of waiting for the Lightning King to catch him, he stole an item from the Lightning King and entered a six-floor dungeon in the Amazon rainforest together with his teammates. To get back this item he'll at least have to attack this dungeon personally, so he'll have to risk his own life. The Lightning King himself would have to enter the six-floor dungeon together with his strongest players in order to retrieve the item. I need to go as high as possible. I can't leave it on the first floor. Even after entering the dungeon, Carlos Perez began climbing the dungeon floors together with his 19 teammates. The third floor. They cleared the first and even the second floors before finally reaching the third floor. It was actually an incredible feat that 20 players had managed to reach the third floor of a six-floor dungeon, even if they were players who were active in five-floor dungeons. It was a feat that couldn't be explained with anything other than skill and luck. It was the sense of duty that Carlos and his team had that allowed them to accomplish this miracle. Carlos, in order to save the world, please become the Lightning King's right-hand man. End this game and save the world with me. A sense of duty to save the world under the banner of the Messiah Guild and the Savior. When he reached the point of Carlos Perez's conversation with Lee Sejun, Kim Woo Jin closed his eyes. Right, the Messiah Guild must have wanted to create a dagger with which to stab the Lightning King in the heart from behind. Kim Woo Jin wasn't surprised by Carlos Perez's story. In fact, this was quite natural for him. To save the world. Under that banner, the Messiah used every means and method it was able to, including the alpha hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin. Furthermore, it would be strange if Kim Woo Jin who had seen the true face of the Messiah Guild was surprised by Carlo's story. Nevertheless, this is pretty amazing. What was truly surprising was the item that Carlos Perez had stolen from the Lightning King. Kim Woo Jin turned his head to look at the haft of a hammer in his hand. Sealed Hammer Haft Rating, Unique Physical Attack, 1 Description the haft of a hammer that has been sealed by a mysterious force a special power is required to undo the seal. It looked like an insignificant item, but Kim Woo Jin knew what this item really was. The haft of Mjolnir 1. Mjolnir. It was the hammer that represented the god of thunder, Thor, who everyone knew about, and was a weapon that had the strength to make it rank in the top 10 of all weapons obtained from dungeons. Unfortunately, this weapon had never appeared in the world TL then how does Kim Woo Jin know? Similar to the nine-tailed fox's tails, Mjolnir was not a weapon that came complete. Instead, one would need to obtain the hammer haft and hammer head, before paying a heavy price to unseal it. Until then, it was just a useless item. More than that, by leaving it in a dungeon like this, it means the Lightning King doesn't know the true value of this item. In fact, he was certain that the Lightning King had absolutely no idea just how valuable this item was. If he knew that it was the haft of Mjolnir, he definitely would have taken the risk to enter the dungeon and obtain. This is better than I expected. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, this was truly an unexpected jackpot. Other than Mjolnir's haft. Of course, there was also another jackpot. Secret information about Thunderbird and the Lightning King. Carlos Perez had been completing life-threatening missions for the Lightning King for more than two years. He was practically the Lightning King's hunting dog. By acting as a hunting dog, he had been able to learn many of the secrets the Lightning King was hiding. I didn't think he'd know so much about the items the Lightning King has hiding away. He obtained information about the types of items the Lightning King had stored away, and where exactly he was hiding them. It's a shame. Unfortunately for Kim Woo Jin, it could only be taken as a stake in a painting. To try to touch those items was the same as declaring war on the Lightning King. For Kim Woo Jin, who still intended to obtain things from the Lightning King, war was not a good option. War with the Lightning King can be put on hold until I get the Lich Summoning skill. Lich Summoning Thinking about this powerful skill, Kim Woo Jin put aside thoughts of war for now. When Kim Woo Jin finally opened his eyes, there were no signs of hesitation or worry in his eyes. 
Li Jina, it's time to start hunting. There was only the cold gaze of a hunting dog. Then, the attack on the sixth floor dungeon continued. How many days has it been? A subordinate answered Oh Se Chan's question. Today is the fortieth day. The fortieth day. It was the fortieth day since Li Jina and Kim Wu Jin had entered the sixth floor dungeon. The two of them were still in the process of clearing the dungeon. This is the most time Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina have taken to clear a dungeon. It also signified the most time the two of them had ever spent in a dungeon. What does it mean? Of course, this meant something for Oh Se Chan. The fortieth day. After repeating it one more time, he entered the number 40 into a program he had created over these 40 days. See this, his subordinate couldn't help but ask. What are you doing? I was bored, so I made a program. A program? A program that will calculate Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina's current level. The subordinate was amazed. Is that even possible? It's not impossible given the amount of data we have collected so far while we might not have any information about the dungeon, we still have plenty of data from Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina of course, the error rate would still be quite large, but it should give us an approximation. The others began paying attention to their conversation as well. After all, it was quite an interesting subject. Currently, the speed of growth that Li Jina displayed defied common sense. They were sure they'd get a surprising result. What are the results? Another subordinate couldn't help but ask. It takes some time to calculate. After giving that answer, Oh Se Chan paused for a moment before continuing. How about we bet our snacks, huh? The person whose choice is closer to the right number will get all the snacks. Oh Se Chan's suggestion made all his subordinates slump slightly. Isn't that heavily in your favor, boss? Are you thinking about taking away our snacks now? Won't the boss take the snacks and sell them secondhand for money? It was obvious that Oh Se Chan, who created the program, would have the most advantageous position in the bet. In response to his subordinate's words, Oh Se Chan opened his desk and removed an item with a smile. If you agree to bet, I will bet this. What he took out was a shell shaped chocolate that could be found in the duty free stores in airports. Everyone was shocked by the appearance of such an expensive chocolate. Oh my god, are you serious? You would give up a chocolate bar like that? Are you really the boss? Their expressions were the same as if they heard the world was about to be destroyed. One of them asked the important question. Where did you get that from? You couldn't have bought it yourself. Ah, it was a gift, a gift. Everyone's expressions stiffened and they heard the word gift. A gift for Isaac Ivanov. Why didn't you leave it alone? You'll get in trouble if you eat it. This was because he had a lot of experience getting in trouble after eating gifts for Isaac Ivanov. Don't worry about that. But Oh Se Chan gave his subordinate some good news. Because this is Li Jina's. The moment they heard that, the subordinate's expressions changed. Level 138. Level 139. Immediately, they began to call out numbers one after another. In fact, several numbers were being called at the same time. Finally, Oh Se Chan gave his bet. Level 146. Before entering the sixth floor dungeon, Kim Wu Jin was around level 130. Even if he did overrun, it was still absurd for him to reach level 146. Isn't it six floors? Would he focus on clearing the dungeon or hunting monsters? Above all, they were certain that Isaac Ivanov would try to efficiently clear the dungeon since it was his first dungeon attack. Oh Se Chan smiled and tapped his finger against his bald head. I programmed it my prediction is definitely as good as the computer's. His subordinate's expressions became stiff at his confident words. After all, I didn't intend to give it to you anyway. I don't want to eat it alone, so I made a bet and cheated a bit. Oh Se Chan had just been looking for a justification for eating the expensive chocolate. Beep. Okay, it's done. The calculation was finished Oh Se Chan turned to the monitor with a triumphant expression on his face. What the hell? At the same time, Oh Se Chan's eyes widened as he shouted. Level 150. How does that make sense? Usually, Kim Wu Jin didn't really care if he leveled up or not while hunting. 
your level has increased. The emissary of the underworld admires your achievements. But this time was different. Level 150 foot. The moment he heard the notification that he'd reached level 150, he had no choice but to stop paying attention to his hunting. I never expected to get so far. Moreover, achieving level 150 was completely unexpected for Kim Woo Jin. The Skeleton Knight skill reaching transcendent rank was a big help. If the Skeleton Knight skill hadn't reached transcendent rank, he would not have been able to tame the wyverns. Of course, that feeling didn't last very long. Now I can use Dullahan. Kim Woo Jin could finally learn the Dullahan skill now that he'd reached level 150. He tried to calculate just how much his strength would increase with the help of that skill. Then Kim Woo Jin heard another notification. The emissary of the underworld sends you a special gift. It was a notification telling him the emissary of the underworld had sent a gift to congratulate him for reaching level 150. It was a pleasant notification. It felt like receiving a birthday present. Oh, oh, oh. Suddenly, he heard Li Jina's voice through the skeleton soldier he was connected to. Yo. Kim Wu Jin cleared his mind after hearing Li Jina's shouts and asked. Li Jina, what's happening? Kim Wu Jin prepared to rush to the battlefield as he asked that question. Li Jina responded with a cry of joy. It reached transcendent rank. The blessing of river sticks reached transcendent rank. Ha ha ha. Kim Wu Jin smiled at those words. Congratulations. It was a smile filled with sincere joy. Chapter 218 The Blackened Forest Everything in this vast, vast forest was dyed black, be it the trees, rocks, and even the ground. Whoosh! A fierce gale blew through this forest. And then, in the places where this wind blew, the true face of the blackened forest, which was originally an ordinary forest, was revealed. It turned out that this forest was actually made black, instead, everything in the forest was covered in black powder. And it wasn't ordinary powder either. Black powder flutters. A terrible poison scatters, TL, I feel like a poet. Instead, this black powder was actually a terrible poison that could destroy a person's lungs just by being breathed in. Who? And in this black powder, Kim Woo Jin took a deep breath, sucking this black powder directly into his lungs. He immediately heard a notification. You have been afflicted with a terrible poison. The notification emphasized the terribleness of this poison. Upon realizing that fact, a player's face would have become white with fear in an instant. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't do that. Apophis power activates. The effect of the poison is negated. No poison could work in front of the power of Apophis. The black powder poison accumulates in your body and strengthens blood poison. Instead, the poison integrated with Kim Woo Jin's body and made his blood poison even more horrific. It was a very terrifying scene. Main orangutans, monsters whose manies put lions' manies to shame, were known for their power and ferocity. They always moved in groups of around 100, but it was possible for that to increase if a boss monster spawned among them. In that case, the groups could even reach 10,000 members. That was the reason. Main orangutans have been afflicted by blood poison. Main orangutan stats have been greatly reduced. Main orangutans have lost their senses because of blood poison. The reason why hundreds of maned orangutans, giant two-meter-tall monkeys, had their eyes roll up and their mouths foam as they collapsed to the ground basically waiting to die. Moreover, these maned orangutans had poison resistances strong enough to resist the forest's black powder. How could one possibly fight these creatures when even breathing was a risk? This was the level of difficulty one expected from a sixth floor. It's easier than I expected. But now, this place had become a walk in the park for Kim Woo Jin. I thought it would be harder than this. This was neither a bluff nor arrogance. It was simply a fact that the sixth floor of the dungeon was much easier than Kim Woo Jin initially expected. The blood poison will be a great help. Thanks to its strengthening by the black powder, Kim Woo Jin's blood poison had reached a stage where it could easily destroy the main orangutans despite their strong poison resistance. That was why Kim Woo Jin found the situation to be unexpected. 
And there was one more unexpected situation. Gua. Dullahan has taken another life. Dullahan's energy becomes stronger. Dullahan's abilities are much stronger than I expected. Dullahan. This new skill that Kim Wu Jin had acquired turned out to be much stronger than he initially expected. This was the reason he found the sixth floor to be a walk in the park, and why he stopped paying attention to the sixth floor dungeon. Li Jina. Yeah. We're leaving. He just looked at the dungeon gate with a mysterious gaze. Good to see you. It was Shakira's voice that greeted Kim Wu Jin as he stepped out of the dungeon gate. That was it. Only her voice and nothing else could be heard. The sounds of automatic rifles being loaded, the sounds of guns being fired or the sound of people crying for them to put their hands up, could be heard. What about Isaac? As soon as she asked that question, two more people left the dungeon gate. They were Kim Wu Jin's alter ego wearing the mask of Isaac Ivanov and Li Jina in his mask. After seeing it was them, Shakira nodded. Then, curious, Kim Wu Jin couldn't help but say. You're acting much more hospitable than I expected. Why didn't they attack? When she heard this, Shakira gave a big smile, showing off her pearly white teeth. It's natural to treat a valuable force who can clear a six-floor dungeon in this way. Kim Wu Jin narrowed his eyes at that answer. It wasn't wrong. It was truly a historical event for Isaac Ivanov's party of three to clear a six-floor dungeon as it showed that they had the power of a large guild's elite team. Therefore this amount of hospitality was natural. This isn't like the Lightning King. However, the Lightning King that Kim Woo Jin knew was never a person who paid attention to things like that. If at least one limb isn't missing. In this situation, Kim Woo Jin expected the Lightning King to only want to talk to them after making them bleed a little. Naturally, he noticed this immediately. Something must have happened. Something must have happened while he was inside the dungeon. Oh Seichan must have done something. He was sure that Oh Seichan had done something from the background. Something concerning the Messiah Guild. And it had to be something to do with the Messiah Guild. Otherwise, there was no reason why the Lightning King would behave in this way. After realizing this, Kim Woo Jin relaxed a bit, then he turned to Isaac Ivanov and said. I'll talk to the boss. Isaac Ivanov nodded. Then, as if she was waiting, Shakira handed a satellite phone to Kim Woo Jin. First I need you to answer a question. Then the Lightning King asked his question immediately. Could you win in a fight against Johan George? Kim Woo Jin answered that without hesitation. Isaac Ivanov isn't the type to back down from a fight. Give Shakira the phone. Kim Woo Jin threw the phone back to Shakira who caught it, put it to her ear and immediately started talking. Soon after, she turned to Kim Woo Jin and said. Congratulations, you'll be able to escape the Amazon in perfect condition. Afterwards, she beckoned with her hands and the troops that had been waiting behind her immediately began to move. It was a shocking number. From what they could see, there were hundreds of people there, and when they all moved, the sound was shocking. Tu 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 tu. At some point, even the sound of a helicopter could be heard. It was a force large enough to wage war. Now, withdraw. As Shakira shouted, the seemingly messy army began moving in an orderly manner. It was at this moment that Thunder proved just why they were able to dominate a place like the Amazon rainforest. Then Shakira beckoned for them to get on the helicopter. How fortunate. Looking at this scene, Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but feel that they were a bit lucky. It wouldn't have been possible to quietly escape from this number. If there was a fight, it would have been impossible for them to escape safely like they did last time, and in the end, a bloody war would have ensued. I'm glad we didn't have to kill all of these people and start a war with the Lightning King. As Kim Woo Jin boarded the helicopter, he once again thought it was fortunate everything was able to end peacefully. Shakira handed a pair of headphones and a newspaper to Kim Woo Jin as he entered the helicopter. Let me explain to you what happened. When a new hero appears, people will naturally cheer a lot at first. But this usually didn't last very long. At some point, the cheers would twist into suspicion and envy, which would eventually lead to hardships. This was why those heroes in heroic stories always faced countless hardships. 
The same was true for Johann George and the Ten. Johann George and the Ten successfully cleared three consecutive dungeons. When Johann George came out of the third dungeon, he appeared before the public for the first time. Three five-floor dungeons finished in 72 days. The dungeon destroyer has appeared. A new savior is born. Cheers and praises came as usual. But not long after, the spear of envy and doubt was pointed towards Johann George. Among them, there was one suspicion that stood out. Is it true that Johann George attacked three dungeons? Did Johann George and the Ten really attack those dungeons by themselves? Johann George refused to share any information about the dungeon, could this all be a scam? Doubts began to surface about whether Johann George and the Ten truly cleared three five-floor dungeons in 72 days as they claimed. In fact, it was natural to doubt. In a world where one could obtain tremendous wealth and fame simply from clearing a dungeon, there were naturally numerous cases of fraudulent dungeon attack reports. Honestly, it's hard to believe does something like that even make sense. Plus it was way too fast there were no press conferences and no dungeon briefings the process was too opaque. Maybe they weren't five-floor dungeons, maybe they were four-floor dungeons that they lied and said were five-floor. It makes no sense that they'd be able to challenge three five-floor dungeons in two months. Furthermore, even if the process had been transparent, it would still be questioned as it was simply too unbelievable. Of course, ordinary people were just suspicious. The players were different. Isaac Ivanov alone is a headache we can't let another guy like that run around. Nothing good would come of it for us if the public opinion of this Johann George guy increases. It was impossible for the players to accept the appearance of a third savior after they already suffered losses from the Messiah Guild and Isaac Ivanov. The public's opinion is already bad. More importantly, the appearance of a new savior was certain to cause problems in the path of the new Special Player Protection Act's passing. The problem was how. It was impossible to hinder Johann George, who was already rolling on numerous successes, with just a few doubts. In the end, he's still below Isaac Ivanov. Instead, what they decided to do was compare him to Isaac Ivanov. He can't do anything on his own can he? In the end, Isaac Ivanov is still the best. Not just below, Johann George is just copying Isaac Ivanov. Right, Johann George is just a copycat. They did whatever they could to make him fall into a ditch. This was the situation that greeted Kim Woo Jin after he cleared the sixth floor dungeon. In this situation, the Lightning King gave him an order. Isaac Ivanov and Johann George, make them fight. It was literally an order. An order that couldn't be refused. That's why Kim Woo Jin simply asked. What happens after Isaac Ivanov fights against Johann George? As if satisfied with his attitude, the Lightning King shared some information with him. Johann George is backed by the Messiah Guild. After hearing that, Kim Woo Jin's eyes narrowed. Is that true? After Kim Woo Jin asked that question, the Lightning King smiled like he had been expecting it. Of course, he didn't explain how or why he knew that information. This was not something a king needed to do when he gave his official an order. In this situation, if the relationship between Isaac Ivanov and Johann George turns sour, it will naturally cause the Messiah Guild to go against Isaac Ivanov. Instead, it would just be a one-sided discussion. Then. So even when Kim Woo Jin tried to speak, the Lightning King ignored him and continued talking. So if Isaac Ivanov kills Johann George in a fight, he would have long crossed the Rubicon. After the Lightning King said these thunderous words, silence fell upon the room for a moment. Kim Woo Jin carefully opened his mouth in that silence. Isaac Ivanov will not try to kill him unless Johann George tries to kill him first there's nothing I can do about that. It was an understandable statement. However, despite this cold water-esque statement, the look in the Lightning King's eyes didn't change. It seemed he really wouldn't let him refuse his order. In fact, the Lightning King then spoke in a clear voice. Then you kill him in any case, there wouldn't be a difference from the Messiah Guild's perspective. There was a fierce light shining in the Lightning King's eyes that seemed to tell Kim Woo Jin one thing. If you want to live, kill Johann George. When he saw that, Kim Woo Jin grit his teeth. He thought for a long time, but the Lightning King didn't hurry him. 
Understood. Finally, Kim Woo Jin nodded. I will kill Johan George. When he heard the expected answer, the Lightning King nodded. Then Kim Woo Jin continued. If I kill him, you have to give me something. The Lightning King gave a murderous smile when he heard this. Do you think you're in a position to ask a price? The moment I kill Johan George, Park Yong Wan would definitely become suspicious of me moreover, there's a high probability that I would be expelled from the Phoenix Guild. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't back down. So please give me a key position in Thunderbird. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin displayed a look of determination, and upon seeing this, the murderous smile dropped from the Lightning King's lips. Fine, if you succeed this time, I will give you the position as my number two. Chapter, 219 Really? Fortaleza was a lawless city where there were constant sounds of gunfire and screams. However, Li Jina, who had just returned to their accommodation, which when compared to the Amazon rainforest could be called a paradise, didn't pay any attention to the sounds from the outside as he asked in surprise. Are you really gonna kill that Johann George guy? Ah. He was so surprised that he hadn't noticed the chocolate ice cream he was eating from a large spoon slip off and fall to the floor. Ah, damn it. My ice cream. The ice cream that fell to the floor began to melt, and the stifling atmosphere in the room seemed to melt with it. Of course, even in such a situation, the tenseness in Kim Woo Jin's eyes did not decrease at all. The task this time is important in many ways it'll be an important turning point for our future. This time it wasn't just about preserving Isaac Ivanov's reputation. The moment Johann George dies, our war with the Messiah Guild will officially begin and it'll be a war that won't end until one side is destroyed. Kim Woo Jin expected it to be an incident comparable with the shooting of Sarajevo, which caused World War I. No, he was hoping it would. Then I'll get to see Lee Sejun's neck. It was natural for hunters to wait patiently for their expected prey to appear. In many ways, the atmosphere had no choice but to be serious. Lee Jina. Why dash, yeah. You're not really going to lick up something that fell to the floor, are you? However, when he watched Lee Jina crawl to the puddle of ice cream that formed on the floor, Kim Woo Jin couldn't stop his body from relaxing. When he heard Kim Woo Jin's words, Lee Jina spoke up hurriedly. Ah, uh, what do you take me for? Hey. Do you really think I'd eat something like this? I was just trying to clean it up before it makes a mess I definitely didn't plan to eat the top of it or anything. Although he said this, Lee Jina's eyes were filled with regret. And he was acting this way despite the fact that there were still two large buckets of the same ice cream in the refrigerator. Kim Woo Jin could only shake his head. After cleaning up the ice cream with a look of regret on his face, Lee Jina finally said. So what does Seichon think? I haven't managed to talk to him yet. Yet? I went to the contact site but no one was there. Isn't that dangerous? The communication itself wasn't the problem. It was slow, but there was the internet, calls, and even satellite communication was available for a fee. The problem was that if they weren't careful, a trail could be left. And as Li Jina said, it could be dangerous. If we rush it'll be even more dangerous. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew that the truly dangerous thing would be to behave recklessly. Just wait, he'll contact you Oh Se chans abilities are amazing. Above all, Oh Se chans capabilities were truly top-notch. After all, the Messiah Guild killed Oh Se chan for a reason. Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but wonder if part of the reason why the Messiah Guild was able to do what they wanted was because they killed Oh Se chan He's the best partner. He was without a doubt the best partner anyone could ask for, so Kim Woo Jin wasn't in a hurry. And regardless of what it is, all we have to do is prepare to fight Johan George in the future. Fight. Li Jin Ah couldn't help but give a bloodthirsty smile when he heard that word. We're going to fight. Under the assumption that the information released was true, the strength of Johan George and the Ten should be really high. After all, it was amazing that they managed to clear three five-floor dungeons in 72 days with a party of 11. We've reached six floors. If so, were they capable of clearing six-floor dungeons? Most would give the same answer. We're not on the same level. 
they were on completely different levels. That's why the Lightning King wants us to fight them, isn't it? It would be hard for us to lose. As Li Jina said, that was exactly why the Lightning King had made the proposal. In truth, if Johann George knew that Isaac Ivanov and his team were already capable of clearing six floor dungeons, the fight would never happen. However, this fact was only known to the members of Thunderbird. It was like cheating in a martial arts tournament by joining a lower weight class. Isn't that it? That's right. Kim Woo Jin was also aware of that. But even if that's the case, Johann George definitely wouldn't confront Isaac Ivanov easily. The Johann George that Kim Woo Jin knew was not careless. He hasn't taken back the Halo's favoritism since I took it last time, so he definitely noticed. After all, there was a very clear point of contact between Isaac Ivanov and Johann George, the Halo's favoritism. It won't be easy to create a stage. Because of this, Kim Woo Jin believed Johann George wouldn't easily fight against Isaac Ivanov. Oh Se Chan should be working on that already. That was probably why a media play was taking place at that moment. Through the media play, the public opinion was becoming that Johann George was a pathetic dog who didn't dare fight. Brother Seichan will definitely lose some hair trying to organize this fight oh wait. He doesn't have hair to lose. Ha ha ha. While Li Jina was laughing about oh Seichan's hair, Kim Woo Jin's phone began vibrating. Thunderbird. It was none other than the phone the Lightning King had given to Kim Woo Jin. After checking the smartphone, Kim Woo Jin confirmed that he had received a text message. Johan George is asking to face off against Isaac Ivanov. There was nothing more fun in the world than watching a fight. Johan George is confident he is better than Isaac Ivanov. Johan George, I will not avoid a confrontation with Isaac Ivanov. Johan George, I'll accept any competition in good faith. In that sense, Johan George's declaration was enough to heat up the entire world. Are they really going to go against each other? A fight between Isaac Ivanov, who can clear anything in Johan George, who can clear faster than anyone else. It's a really big match. Isaac Ivanov and Johan George, which of the two was the best? They wouldn't kill each other, would they? That shouldn't be the case didn't Johan George say he was accepting the competition in good faith? Regardless of what competition they decide to have, it's most likely going to be in a dungeon. Would it be something like who could clear the dungeon the fastest? Naturally because they're real players. Above all, it was a competition that would bring everyone hope regardless of who won or lost. This was the reason why everyone welcomed this competition. Of course, the person who welcomed it the most was none other than Kim Woo Jin. I, the fish asked us to put the hook in its mouth before we even got a chance to pick up our rod. Just as Li Jina said, wasn't this a situation where Johan George had created the stage for them that they were still struggling how to make? All that's left is to fight. Naturally, there was no reason for them to step away from the already set up table. Why? But Kim Woo Jin wanted to know the reason. Why did he do it? He wanted to know why Johan George had made such a decision. Johan George was never a man who'd make a hasty decision. At least the Johan George that Kim Woo Jin knew was not someone who would make a move without a specific reason. It has to be profitable in some way for him to do it. He would not move unless he could gain something from it, even if it meant losing the fight. Because it's still possible to get a profit after losing. Li Jina looked at Kim Woo Jin, who was thinking seriously, and asked. Why do you look like you want to take a shit? Kim Woo Jin answered his question. I'm trying to figure out why Johan George is acting like this. Isn't that obvious? Obvious? Looking at the surprised Kim Woo Jin, Li Jina couldn't help but speak with a smug voice as if to say, you don't even know that? You said he was sponsored by the Messiah Guild, didn't you? So they must have given him a good weapon your confidence rises when you get a good item, doesn't it? And the Messiah Guild isn't a group that is short of good items coup, I envy him I wish I had that kind of support. As if intoxicated by his excitement, Li Jina continued speaking. Ah, now I want my own weapon not that battery-like dragon sword, but a sword that actually deals damage. He wanted a good weapon too. Still immersed in his feelings, Li Jina turned to look at Kim Woo Jin. Then he saw. Huh. 
Kim Woo Jin was staring at him without any expression on his face. At that moment, Lee Jin Ah couldn't help but feel that his gaze was eerie. Ah, that doesn't mean that I'm dissatisfied with the legendary items I got or that I'm dissatisfied with you. Then Kim Woo Jin spoke. That's it. Ah, it's fine. You don't need to. I just need to work harder. Kim Woo Jin ignored Lee Jin Ah who was trying to appear as submissive as possible. He wants to use this fight to rip off items from the Messiah Guild. It was then. Woo Woo. Kim Woo Jin received a text message on his smartphone. It was nothing but a spam text that had arrived, but after checking it, Kim Woo Jin got up and quietly got dressed. I'm going to talk to Oh Se Chan. It's been a while since I heard your voice have you been? Not too bad. It seems you've been well. Oh Se Chan smiled as he spoke to Kim Woo Jin for the first time in a while. A lot has happened in that time would it be fine for me to give you a brief report of the situation? As he spoke, Oh Se-chan picked up a fairly thick pile of documents from the desk in front of him. I think we can just skip the report. Skip it? There's something more important than that to discuss. When he heard that there was something more important, Oh Se-chan slowly looked down at the stack of documents in his hand. He seemed to feel despondent about the fact that his hard work would have been for naught. Of course, the subordinates who knew Oh Se Chan's personality knew what he was actually thinking about. He's regretting spending money for ink and paper. He's lamenting the fact that we'll have to scrap the payer, making it a waste. Why else would Oh Se Chan make that kind of expression? Is it really important? With that expression still on his face, Oh Se Chan asked to confirm. The Lightning King gave me the order to kill Johann George. When he heard that, Oh Se Chan threw the documents in his hand aside without any hesitation. Isaac? Or Kim Woo Jin? Kim Woo Jin? The Lightning King must have confirmed the contact between Johann George and the Messiah Guild, that's why he let Isaac Ivanov go without a fight. He plans to pit Isaac Ivanov against the Messiah Guild. With just the little information he obtained from Kim Woo Jin, Oh Se Chan was able to piece together the whole situation. Because it's an order, it would have been impossible to refuse, so you must have demanded a price you must have asked for something else since the Lightning King wouldn't give you an item even if you asked for it what did you ask for? If I kill Johan George, Park Yongwan might abandon me, so I asked for an important position in Thunderbird he said he'd give me the number 2 position, so I agreed. Naturally, the moment he heard that, Oh Se Chan immediately saw through Kim Woo Jin's intentions. You want to eat Thunderbird too? There's no harm in having a backup. You're a sniper. Oh Se Chan's expression changed to one of amazement. He couldn't help it. Does he really intend to eat Thunderbird? The Thunderbird Company was a military group with basically no influence from any government. Eating this group was not the same as securing legendary items. Is he confident he can kill the Lightning King? More importantly, to eat Thunderbird, he'd have to first kill the leader of Thunderbird. It meant that Kim Woo Jin was determined to do just that. Anyway, we'll get to that later, the immediate concern is the challenge with Johan George. Oh Se Chan smiled at that. We didn't have to do much since he came to us on his own. Then Kim Woo Jin said. Johan George doesn't intend to beat Isaac Ivanov. What? He wants to use this confrontation to receive more support from the Messiah Guild. That was enough. Ah. With the information Kim Woo Jin had just provided him, Oh Se Chan was able to get a firm understanding of Johan George's plan. Amazing. And he felt admiration. He's trying to eat the Messiah Guild. Eat the Messiah Guild. From the perspective of Oh Se Chan, who knew the true face of the Messiah Guild, this was truly a chilling realization. Moreover, this was clearly not an impulsive action by Johan George. That's why he attacked three dungeons in a row. Johann George had previously attacked three dungeons in the shortest time. Johann George was already thinking about confronting Isaac Ivanov at that time, and he planned to make it a challenge of challenging dungeons consecutively. And it was highly likely that that was the way he would choose to compete against Isaac Ivanov. That way, there's more to eat. With one dungeon, he could only receive support once, but if it was three times in a row, he would be able to receive three times the support. 
and if it was a close competition, he would receive even more support. What if there was a near tie during the competition? No matter how upset the Messiah Guild would be, they wouldn't be able to abandon Johann George at that point. From the Messiah Guild's perspective, they would have no choice but to continue to invest in Johann George. So in the end it will be a time attack. After deducing that, Oh Seichan relaxed in his seat. So what are you going to do? I have to accept it. Are you confident? It won't be easy. What do you mean? Oh Seichan made a strange expression when he heard that. You even cleared a six-floor dungeon, five-floor dungeons shouldn't be any trouble, right? No matter how many five-floor dungeons were cleared or how quickly, they could never compare to a six-floor dungeon. Kim Woo Jin explained to him. I'll have to predict how long it would take Johann George to complete them in order to make it a close game. That's why it wouldn't be easy. Surely. Oh Se Chan then realized. You too. There's no reason for me to watch Johann George eat his backers. That was Kim Woo Jin's intention. I need you to help me contact Park Yong Wan. That was the end of the conversation. The call ended, then Oh Se Chan's subordinate spoke to him. Only. The line disturbance is done there were no trace attempts. When he heard that the communication had ended safely, Oh Se Chan clicked his tongue instead of answering. That damned guy. After clicking his tongue, Oh Se Chan then realized one thing. Oops. That he'd forgotten something. I forgot to tell him about the lich skill. Chapter, 220. Johann George, I want to compete against Isaac Ivanov. After Johann George made his declaration, the world became concerned with just one thing. Will Isaac Ivanov accept this challenge? What was Isaac Ivanov's answer going to be? So everyone waited for Isaac Ivanov's response. Is there still no reaction from Isaac Ivanov's side? Why haven't they said anything? Where is Isaac Ivanov? But as time passed, there was still no response from Isaac Ivanov regarding Johann George's challenge. Upon realizing this, strange rumors began to spread. Isaac Ivanov has been stuck in a dungeon for over two months already. Isaac Ivanov is dead. Is Isaac Ivanov's death a conspiracy theory or the truth? From rumors that Isaac Ivanov was trapped in a dungeon just waiting for death, to rumors that he had outright died. Naturally, these were rumors that people would scoff at normally. Is he really dead? There has to be a reason why there hasn't been any news so far. That's right this is the first time that Isaac Ivanov has been quiet since his debut, isn't it? No way I don't believe it. But Isaac Ivanov's current and unannounced hiatus had given these rumors a lot of weight. Isaac Ivanov is still silent. And they grew heavier the longer Isaac Ivanov remained silent. Just as the world was starting to become terrified by Isaac Ivanov's silence, he expressed his opinion through a spokesperson. Isaac Ivanov has given me his opinion. It was Park Yongwan who spoke to the frightened world as Isaac Ivanov's spokesperson. He will accept Johann George's challenge. Isaac Ivanov has given me his opinion he will accept Johann George's challenge. Kim Woo Jin, who was watching Park Yongwan's press conference on the TV on the CNN channel, pressed on the remote. Immediately, the TV switched to the BBC channel, and Park Yongwan was also being broadcasted there. However, he has a condition it can't be a valueless competition he doesn't want to compete just to clear one dungeon. Then the screen changed again this time, it was on Al Jazeera. Also, the only condition will be to clear dungeons in this era, the players should target more dungeons it is their duty and for whatever reason, they refuse to do that duty. Finally, it was put on KBS. If those conditions are met, then he will agree to any type of competition Johann George wants that's what Isaac Ivanov said in addition, I intend to support Isaac Ivanov. Tuck. When Park Yongwan's speech ended, Kim Woo Jin turned off the TV with a small smile on his face. That was a lot better than I expected. Kim Woo Jin had been the one to propose this to Park Yongwan. He told him that there was a way to experience fame unlike any he'd ever experienced before. And now it was done. Thanks to Isaac Ivanov, Park Yongwan would be able to do something he couldn't do even when he first cleared a six-floor dungeon. 
there had been an incredible spotlight on Park Yongwan after he attacked a six-floor dungeon for the first time. Moreover, it was not the same kind of fame that Park Yongwan received before. Park Yongwan could certainly be called a celebrity. The problem was that the attention he received wasn't good. In the end, regardless of what he did, he was always compared to the Messiah Guild savior, Lee Sejun. And the assessment he received after that, was naturally never good. It would only be for a moment, but his popularity would become comparable to Lee Sejun. But now, no one disparaged Park Yongwan, some even went as far as to compare him to Lee Sejun. And from Park Yongwan's perspective, this was the greatest harvest he could possibly obtain. For Park Yongwan, it would be worthwhile even if he had to pay a high price. Naturally, Kim Woojin demanded exactly that. In return for achieving something he'd never achieved in his life, Park Yongwan fully supported Kim Woojin with unique grade items that he and his teammates used when clearing six floor dungeons. To be precise, he had given them to support Isaac Ivanov, but that didn't make a difference to Kim Woojin. Moreover, the unique items he gave them were not simple items. These unique items were created using the material from monsters found in five and six floor dungeons the government also helped in the creation of these items. They were items worth far more than the armor Kim Woojin had made with the hatchling's leather. Park Yongwan had given him ten such items. I could get more, but... Of course, Kim Woojin had no intention of stopping with just those. This incident had led the world to understand that Park Yongwan was the irreplaceable spokesperson and sponsor of Isaac Ivanov. So naturally, when Isaac Ivanov officially requested something, Park Yongwan wouldn't be able to refuse easily. That's why Kim Woojin was not in a hurry. All that's left is to deal with Johan George. Johan George. Kim Woojin prepared for war against this man who he still considered the king of undead in his mind. The response should come soon. Woo Woo. Kim Woojin smiled slightly and checked the text message that just arrived. After all, he isn't a gentleman. Johan George had given a response. Johan George replied to Isaac Ivanov's proposal. Three five-floor dungeons. The player who clears three dungeons the fastest wins. All dungeons must be at least be rank, and selected randomly. He wanted to have a match where the one who cleared three dungeons the fastest was the winner. In many ways, it was unprecedented. At the same time, no matter how one looked at it, it was a competition between heroes. No matter who wins, 6B rank 5 floor dungeons will be cleared amazing. Right this is how real players compete. Players should clear dungeons. Real players are really different. Who wouldn't want players to compete by clearing dungeons? Win or lose, both of them deserve to be saviors. That way, even the losers deserved applause. By the way, who do you think will win? Isaac Ivanov is probably the best player in the world but doesn't Johan George have the record for fastest clear time? Because they are picking at random, luck is also a factor there are a lot of variables. In that case, luck could also be considered a skill. I'm really looking forward to it. Moreover, the fact that no one knew what the dungeons would be made the competition more obscure, and made the onlookers even more enthusiastic. And support was given to match the enthusiasm. Boeing is willing to provide all transportation, including private planes and helicopters in the face-off between the two. Airbus is willing to provide private planes for the match. Mercedes-Benz is willing to provide all vehicles needed for the competition. Rolls-Royce is creating a special sedan for the two players. The world's leading companies all began competing to support the competition between these two players. There was one thing left. Where will the confrontation take place? Where will the confrontation of the century take place? Where could they get 6B rank 5 floor dungeons? They still needed to find a place to have their competition. Of course, their discussion didn't last very long. Isaac Ivanov, if it's South Korea, we would be able to compete with confidence. Johan George, if it's South Korea which is the home of the Messiah Guild, I agree. Korea would be the location where the match of the century would take place. Most dungeon attacks five floors and above were placed under a glaring spotlight. This was because attacking dungeons had now become a huge business. 
There were even cases where players intentionally used and exposed their sponsors' products before heading into a dungeon, or even outright advertising their products, most of which were considered legal. For ordinary broadcasts, the performers wore clothes or tags that had the names of their sponsors written on them, but if players, who appeared in the news used their sponsors' products or advertised them directly, there were no legal restrictions. However, it was different for Kim Woo Jin this time. In front of the dungeon gate, Kim Woo Jin's surroundings was astonishingly calm. There were no broadcasting company officials, or even soldiers, who were supposed to be on standby, let alone reporters. One minute until you can enter the dungeon. Only one person, the judge who would be keeping track of the time, was there with them. Then the judge said. The fight has started. And with that, Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jina entered the dungeon. The battle of the century, Isaac Ivanov vs. Johann George, had officially begun. Hunt 30,001 to move on to the next floor. After seeing the clearance notification, Lee Jina stretched and said. It's always nice when just the two of us enter a dungeon cause we don't have to speak Russian. He was completely calm as he said those words. This was natural. Now then, shall we have some fun? After all, the two of them had cleared a six-floor dungeon together. It would be strange if they could feel anxious or tense in a five-floor dungeon. I'd like to find a monster that could kill me now Li Jina the Immortal. Furthermore, for Li Jina, whose blessing of the river stick skill had reached transcendent rank, it was virtually impossible for him to feel the fear of death. Ah, uh, is it too early? We need to adjust our pace right. Moreover, they didn't even need to overdo it in this dungeon. On the contrary, Kim Woo Jin had to slow down their pace in order to match Johann George. They would gain the most support only when it was a close competition. It's that it? Kim Woo Jin didn't respond to Li Jin Ah, instead, he said something else. Book of the Dead. Instead of answering, he'd summoned the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead has been summoned. Now that it had reached C rank, the book had become very large and could store a total of 30 undead summons. Kim Woo Jin pulled pages from the book one after another. Summon Skeleton Knight. Summon Skeleton Soldier. Following the Skeleton Knights, the Ogre and Hellhound Skeleton Soldiers were also summoned from the Book of the Dead. In an instant, a large group of skeletons surrounded Kim Woo Jin. And he didn't stop there. The power of Osiris Ring has been activated. You have used Resurrection. A Wyvern has been resurrected. With the Resurrection skill, a Wyvern Skeleton Soldier which had been just bones began to regain its original appearance. Kia. The wyvern then flapped its wings, showing that it had regained the ability to fly. Wadash, wait. Isn't this too much? Li Jina, who was shocked by this turn of events, couldn't help but shout. Aren't we adjusting our pace in order to get a close match? Kim Wu Jin answered the question while attaching a saddle to the wyvern's body. That was an option. Then he frowned slightly. In fact, Kim Woo Jin had also thought of acting as Lee Jina said. If he did it like that, he would be able to get more sponsorship from Park Yong Wan, or even the Lightning King. It was also clear that it would be easier for Johann George to obtain items from the Messiah Guild. But after thinking about it, I realized it wasn't easy. But that wasn't an easy task. We would lose if we tried to match Johann George's pace when we don't know what could be in the dungeon. Moreover, Isaac Ivanov would lose more than a few items if he were to lose the competition. Fortunately, there is a section in this little race that allows us to control our pace. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin decided to change his method. A section. After clearing a dungeon, whether we take a day off or ten days, it's up to us. They would adjust their pace outside the dungeon. Wait, so in the dungeon. We'll sprint at full speed. So it's the race between the rabbit and the tortoise? Kim Woo Jin smiled at that analogy. Seeing this smile, Lee Jin Ah couldn't help but ask. Wouldn't Johann George just give up if the difference is too large? It's better to be a tortoise who worked hard to complete the race than a pathetic dog with its tail hanging. With that said, Kim Woo Jin, who'd finished putting on the wyvern's saddle, summoned another monster from the Book of the Dead. Summon Dullahan. Dullahan brings terrible fear to every living creature. 
Dullahan brings immense joy to the dead. Dullahan. A knight with a severed head which exuded a bitingly cold aura. Kim Wu Jin then spoke in a cold voice. We'll clear this dungeon within fifteen days. Then he looked at Li Jina. Bring the monsters. With those words, Li Jina rushed forward, his expression no longer as relaxed as it was before. Kim Wu Jin's expression also became serious as he saw that. In fact, Kim Wu Jin didn't make that decision simply because it would be hard to control the pace. This confrontation gave him the opportunity to make a really big profit if he planned it out well. I didn't think he'd managed to obtain the Lich skill. However, the moment he heard that Oh Se Chan had obtained the Lich summoning skill, Kim Wu Jin's plan changed. Now that I have the Lich skill in hand, I don't need to pretend with the Lightning King for too long. The need to work hard for the Lightning King in order to get the Lich skill had disappeared. After dealing with Johann George, Kim Wu Jin's plan was simple. Reach level 180 foot. After dealing with Johann George, he would get to level 180 as quickly as possible in order to learn the Lich Summoning Skill TL, so discombobulating when he calls it Lich Skill, then Lich Summoning Skill LOL. After that, get rid of the Lightning King. Then, by removing the Lightning King, Thunderbird would become his. And after dealing with the Lightning King, Lee Sejun will be next. Chapter, 221 the world went wild because of the confrontation between Isaac Ivanov and Johann George, calling it the match of the century. And the arguments were just as fierce as the enthusiasm. There were fierce debates about the fairness of the confrontation. Isaac Ivanov's team has two people while Johann George has eleven, don't they? That's so unfair. In that case, is the number of legendary items that Isaac Ivanov has fair? Aren't just the number of legendary rings on his hands are more than the number of legendary items people have. Johann George can get legendary items. You don't even need legendary items if your skills are good enough. If that's the logic, then if you're unhappy Johann George has a team of 11 people, Isaac Ivanov should also get a team of 11 people. Of course, those weren't the largest debates. So who do you think will win? It depends, who do you think can clear the dungeons faster? Who would be the winner of the match? Of course it'd be Isaac Ivanov. Definitely Isaac Ivanov is the best player who can clear any dungeon. Is there any idiots who think it's possible for Isaac Ivanov to lose? I've already bet my entire fortune on Isaac Ivanov. In terms of percentage, the number of people who expected Isaac Ivanov to win was incredibly high. This was a judgment based on the things Isaac Ivanov has done so far. After all, wasn't Isaac Ivanov the only person who was qualified to become a savior after Lee Sejun? But the number of people who believed Isaac Ivanov would win the fight wasn't overwhelming. If it was a competition about perfectly attacking a dungeon then Isaac Ivanov would definitely win, but Johann George is the one that holds the current record for fastest five-floor dungeon attack. That's right. Johann George is the record holder for the time attack this time they will be attacking three dungeons in a row Johann George has already shown us that he can clear three dungeons in 72 days. Is that so special? I don't think Isaac Ivanov has a 100% chance of winning in dungeons with unknown variables. Many people still believed that Johann George had a high chance of winning. We have to keep the recent blank space in Isaac Ivanov's activities. Looking at Isaac Ivanov's actions so far, there is no way he was silent for nothing. Wasn't there a rumor that he took a break because of an injury? There's a rumor that he's still injured now. Moreover, the rumors that arose because of Isaac Ivanov's mysterious hiatus worked in Johann George's favor. Of course, this was only because they didn't know that Isaac Ivanov had actually cleared a six-floor dungeon in that time. In that sense, only the Lightning King and the members of Thunderbird who knew what Isaac Ivanov had been doing during his hiatus could accurately predict the outcome. Johann George has a slightly better chance. And the Lightning King believed that the winner would be Johann George. Not Isaac Ivanov. Shakira, who was shocked and confused by that unexpected conclusion, couldn't help but ask. The Lightning King calmly explained. 
If the competition was to clear a six-floor dungeon, Isaac Ivanov would win without a doubt however, attacking five-floor dungeons, and three of them consecutively at that, are completely different just like the way a marathon and a 100-meter sprint are different. He clearly said that Johann George would win. But Shakira couldn't easily accept that. But it's Isaac Ivanov, isn't it? He is. She knew that Isaac Ivanov was a ridiculously overpowered monster. A monster that defied common sense. He's a monster. The Lightning King didn't intend to deny that fact either. He's a monster on the same level as the Messiah Guild's Lee Sejun. Moreover, he believed that Isaac Ivanov's presence and abilities were comparable to those of Lee Sejun. That was the reason. The problem is that Lee Sejun is the one supporting Johann George. Johann George was backed by the Messiah Guild, which belonged to Lee Sejun. Johann George is the hunting dog the Messiah Guild raised to hunt Isaac Ivanov and now the time to hunt has arrived do you think the Messiah Guild would let the dog go off the leash without any support in this kind of situation? They might not want to, but the Messiah Guild has to support Johann George. After saying that, the Lightning King rubbed his temples. On the other hand, Isaac Ivanov can't take a dead man with him on such an official stage. Ah! Only then did Shakira realize what the Lightning King meant. Isn't that bad? Then she became concerned. If Isaac Ivanov is defeated. It wouldn't be good if Isaac Ivanov, who was backed by the Lightning King was defeated by Johann George, who was backed by the Messiah Guild. The Lightning King responded without a change in expression. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses in fact, it would be even better if Isaac Ivanov lost. Rather than not changing his expression, his face seemed to say he didn't care whether Isaac Ivanov lost or not. And if Johann George, who is competing against Isaac Ivanov dies, it would be the best. After saying that, a small smile came to his lips. With that smile, he made a prophecy. Something will happen that will surprise the world sooner or later. And his prophecy became a reality. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, calling the year 2029 the end of a century was not an exaggeration. At that point, there were only two options in the world, which had already crumbled to the point of ruin. Whether you listen to the Messiah Guild or not. With those two choices, living as a player in this world was not easy. Even entering a dungeon gate was not a simple task. It was normal to have to face numerous obstacles before one could enter a dungeon gate. In some cases, players were forced to enter dungeon gates when others failed to clear them. It was also not rare to encounter an enemy attack while entering a dungeon. That was why Johann George was such a thorn. The King of Undead. That was the reason why he became a monster that even the Messiah Guild was unable to contain. Because he could clear dungeons by himself. He was able to attack dungeons by himself with the help of his mighty undead army. Thanks to the Lich and Death Knight. Especially the Legion centered around the two ridiculously powerful monsters, the Lich and Death Knight. Thanks to that he didn't even have to choose dungeons. He didn't even check what dungeon it was until after had entered it. Parties that targeted dungeons usually wanted to balance physical and magical damage, that was the reason why the number of members in parties were so high. But the King of Undead was able to do it all by himself. The Death Knight had physical attacks and the Lich had magical attacks, and with the help of these two monsters, Johann George was able to clear dungeons perfectly. But now, one of those two pieces had fallen into Kim Woo Jin's hands. Summon Lich. Conditions, Emissary of the Underworld. Required Level, 180. Effect, Summon a wizard who can't die by offering 100 monsters as sacrifice. Of those, the lich is in my hands. Summon lich. Now, the only thing left is the death knight, but. The only thing was for Kim Woo Jin to obtain was the death knight. Of course, those who knew Kim Woo Jin's true capabilities would ask themselves one question. The hunting dog Kim Woo Jin or the death knight, who was better? Of course, the answer was obvious. I could use the death knight to cover me. You have cleared the dungeon. The dungeon gate opens. Lee Sejun will notice me now. Kim Woo Jin decided to start sprinting at full speed from now on. 
when it was decided that the confrontation of the century would take place in Korea, the next thing people asked about were the judges. Who could guarantee fairness in this confrontation? The answer was simple. If it's Korea then it should definitely be the Messiah Guild. There's no one we can trust more than the Messiah Guild. Who would doubt the Messiah Guild's judgment? The Messiah Guild. The world did not doubt them, believing that there could be no fairer judgment, and the Messiah Guild was more than willing to answer the world's call. I brought coffee. Thanks. John Young Su, a player from the Messiah Guild, was drinking coffee outside of a dungeon gate located in Diojiangu, Goyang Si, Jiangidu TL, I honestly am never sure whether to actually put province, city, district, or do, Si, Gu I always end up pondering for a few minutes. I never thought I would be standing outside of a five-floor dungeon drinking coffee like this. In addition, John Young Su was a pretty talented player. Right, the only time John Young Su Nim is in front of a five-floor dungeon gate is when you're about to attack it. That's right. John Young Su was level 156, and he was quite experienced when it came to attacking five-floor dungeons. He had cleared five-floor dungeons not once, but four times. Up to that point, he had only stood in front of dungeon gates like this one was when he was prepared to risk his life. Therefore, the experience of standing in front of a five-floor dungeon gate while drinking coffee was quite special. How long would it take John Young Soon Im to clear it? Then the person who brought the coffee posed a question. It was natural to want to hear the opinion of someone who was experienced with five-floor dungeons when the debate over the winner of the competition was still quite fierce. John Young Soo answered without any hesitation or need for calculation as though he was used to this type of question. Well neither of them have average skills, so it wouldn't take more than a month it depends on the situation I believe they will be finished in at least 22 days, and at most 26 days. Isn't 21 days the record? It's the record, but it's not easy to beat just like the record for 100 meter sprint isn't broken in every Olympic Games. Then how amazing is it to clear a dungeon in 22 days? My fastest time was 32 days, and that was only because of a stroke of luck on the fifth floor. John Young Soo clicked his tongue before continuing. But to do it in 22 days that would mean I had to clear each floor two days faster. Amazing. Looking at the dungeon gate, John Young Soo's gaze became cold. That's why I'm here. In fact, it was obvious that the Messiah Guild didn't need to send someone as strong as John Young Soo to be a judge after all no matter how one looked at it, it was a waste. There were many personnel in the Messiah Guild who could replace John Young Su. Nevertheless, the reason they sent him was simple. Isaac Ivanov, I will understand your level more clearly. It was to better understand Isaac Ivanov's abilities. Of course, the best way to do so was to enter the dungeon with him, but it was also possible to measure his skills to an extent by observing his appearance upon leaving the dungeon. Moreover, in the case of this dungeon challenge, it was a time attack. This meant that they were sprinting to complete the dungeon as quickly as they could. In other words, there was no better stage to gain an understanding of his power. It was possible to have a relatively good understanding of the opponent by how long it took them to clear the dungeon and how they looked upon exiting the dungeon. Because that way we can send an assassin capable of killing you. The Messiah Guild intended to use this information to get rid of Isaac Ivanov. Park Shinhai has already made a decision. This was the decision of none other than Park Shinhai. In addition, John Young Su had a guess. And if we do decide to hunt Isaac Ivanov, I will probably be on that team. Because it was Park Shinhai herself who had given him the surveillance order. I didn't expect to have another opportunity as a hunting dog. John Young Su had once been a hunting dog who had removed obstacles that got in the way of the Messiah Guild. The person who brought him coffee then spoke again. Then there is still some time, it's only been almost 15 days. It was at that moment. Just as John Young Su was about to agree that they had about a week left, the dungeon gates started rippling. And John Young Su and the other man could not help but stiffen when they saw that. It wasn't just their bodies that were stiff. Ha! Huh. After making that short sound, they were longer able to even breathe loudly and that was a sound that had been made subconsciously. It was the words of a man wearing a skull mask that broke them out of their stupor. How long were we? John Young Su replied subconsciously. 
14 days. It was a moment when he'd witnessed something ridiculous. Chapter, 22 While Isaac Ivanov and Johann George were having the battle of the century, and when the public was the most enthusiastic about it, someone threw out a strange question. How fast could Lee Sejun clear a five-floor dungeon? The question itself was not even funny. Lee Sejun and the Messiah Guild were still the only ones to attack a seven-floor dungeon even though it was almost halfway through 2024. This was like asking a student who'd just entered the most prestigious university how many points had scored in a middle school level test. Why would five floors matter when he's already clearing seven floors? I'm not sure though dungeons aren't places you can clear quickly just by being strong, are they? I wonder how fast he would be. Nevertheless, people still had in-depth discussions on this question. But why are questions about the Messiah Guild suddenly appearing? Well the two are already in the dungeons, so what else would we talk about? This is just a way to pass time. The reason why they were discussing it so seriously was because the two protagonists of the confrontation of the century were currently in the dungeons and they had no way of knowing their progress. It's impossible to know in the first place, isn't it? After all, Lee Sejun can't attack five-floor dungeons anymore. Moreover, the debate was even more controversial since it was a question that couldn't be answered. Even so-called experts argued over the fact. It depends on the situation, but it would take at least 10 days to clear since it would take about 2 days per floor, including rest days. If there's more than one survival quest, it could take more than 15 days. The conclusions the experts reached were as follows. Unless there are 3 or more survival quests, it wouldn't take more than 20 days. Also, it wouldn't be easy to clear the dungeon in 10 days. If he attacked 10 dungeons, it should take 14 days on average to clear each dungeon. Of course, there was another conclusion to the debate. 14 days. Aren't you looking down on Lee Sejun? Lee Sejun can attack 7 floor dungeons. For a 5 floor dungeon, he only needs 5 days, 1 day per floor is enough. It was around that time. Isaac Ivanov cleared the five-floor dungeon in 14 days, 3 hours and 22 minutes. The breaking news that Isaac Ivanov, who was participating in the confrontation of the century, succeeded in clearing the five-floor dungeon in 14 days drew the attention of the world. In a tranquil villa located on a mountain in Siagwapo Si, Jeju Island with a better view of Mount Halasan than the sea, a man appeared at dawn with a cup of coffee while looking at the thick fog that covered the area TL so much happening in this sentence. The man, who appeared to be in his late forties and looked like a successful businessman, sipped his coffee in a relaxed manner. But the look in the man's eyes wasn't that of a businessman. Instead, those were the eyes of a predator eyes similar to those of an experienced and bloodthirsty hunting dog. And it was these eyes that revealed that it was actually Kim Woo Jin who was currently disguised as this man in his mid-forties. Things are getting a little interesting. Kim Woo Jin, who was wearing a mask and sipping coffee, recalled the present situation in his head. The world had been shocked and Isaac Ivanov cleared the five-floor dungeon in only 14 days. And this was exactly the effect Kim Woo Jin expected. No, it was what he was aiming for. I did expect it to provoke Lee Sejun in this way. However, even Kim Woo Jin didn't expect that Isaac Ivanov would have been compared to Lee Sejun after that. 14 days. Moreover, the time of 14 days kept getting brought up whenever the story was mentioned. Since it was estimated that it would take Lee Sejun's party 14 days to clear a five-floor dungeon, the fact that Isaac Ivanov's party had been able to do so meant that they were comparable to Lee Sejun's party. That's not likely. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew that this was merely a hypothesis proposed by those who didn't actually know anything. Lee Sejun can definitely clear faster than I can. The Lee Sejun that Kim Woo Jin knew was definitely a player who had the ability to actually save the world. Well, it doesn't hurt that they are talking like this. However, Kim Woo Jin had no reason to complain about the situation. In the first place, it had always been Kim Woo Jin's intention to make Isaac Ivanov a figure that Lee Sejun had to care about, so this was, in fact, good news. But for now, Johann George is the priority, so I won't think about that. Above all, Kim didn't forget what he really needed to focus on at that moment. 
Being able to focus only on the prey in front of them is one of the characteristics of a good hunting dog. Hey! At that moment, someone appeared behind Kim Woo Jin. It was a man who appeared to be in his fifties, but his huge size and the chocolate bar in his mouth showed that it was actually Li Jina. Li Jina, who had walked up to Kim Woo Jin then asked. Can we really mess around and eat like this? Kim Woo Jin's response was simple. It doesn't matter how much you play or eat until Johan George comes out. From the perspective of Li Jina, who was always crying out for breaks, this was amazing news, but Li Jina didn't seem to be pleased by this news. But the public opinion right now isn't good, is it? After saying that, he showed Kim Woo Jin the screen of the smartphone he held in his hand. The title of an article there caught his eye. Arrogant Isaac Ivanov despises Johan George. Then, with the swipe of his finger, Li Jina showed him the comments below the article. Isaac Ivanov should be respectful, regardless of his skills. It's not respectful to go to Jeju Island to rest. He is absolutely disregarding Johan George. Isaac Ivanov you bastard, send back my choco pies. The response wasn't very pleasant. Li Jina then spoke to Kim Woo Jin with a serious expression. In this way, it seems like we are the tortoise and the hare. Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin smiled. Hey, this isn't funny. People are really thinking we are like the tortoise and the hare. It was just like he said. After clearing the five-floor dungeon in fourteen days, Isaac Ivanov had been resting for five consecutive days. In a competition to clear three dungeons as quickly as possible, one team had been resting in one of Korea's most well-known resorts for five days. What could this be if not the story of the race between the tortoise and the hare in Aesop's fables? And almost everyone hates the hare. And of course, most people cheered for the tortoise. Therefore, the public opinion was currently flowing in Johann George's favor. Furthermore, there were people who pushed it even further. The desire for Isaac Ivanov to fall began to increase steadily. Therefore, it was natural for Li Jina to be concerned. Kim Wu Jin then said to him. We're the hare, but we'll see if Johann George is going to be the tortoise. In the Aesop fable of the tortoise and the hare, the hare was relaxed and let their guard down while the tortoise completed the race with an indomitable will. It wasn't yet clear whether Johann George would be the tortoise or not. If Johann George came out of the dungeon and decided to give up after being briefed about the situation, the story of the tortoise and the hare could not be achieved. On the other hand, Li Jina was convinced. What do you think he'll be? A tortoise or a dog? Johann George wouldn't give up after he was briefed on the situation. It would be better to be defeated like a tortoise than be a dog. He would lose too much if he just gave up here. Kim Woo Jin was the same. Right. He too believed that Johann George and the Messiah Guild had no choice but to become the tortoise, rather than a pathetic dog. Johann George has to become the turtle. No, he had forced them to do so. Because the hare needs the turtle to take him to the Dragon King's palace. What? It was then. Woo Woo. Their phone vibrated. Kim Woo Jin checked the text then smiled. The turtle has entered the water. Because attacking dungeons meant being completely cut off from the outside world, many players were sometimes afraid of doing so. They worried that the world might be irrevocably changed or that they would receive bad news when they came out. Johann George successfully clears the five-floor dungeon in twenty days and seven hours. That was why many people sympathized with Johann George after hearing that he'd successfully cleared the dungeon. I feel sorry for him. Maybe Johann George will give up. Isaac Ivanov was too cruel this time. They pitted Johann George, who would be faced with terrible news as soon as he exited the dungeon. Johann George responded to the public's pity. Johann George starts attacking the next dungeon right away. Johann George won't give up. The confrontation isn't over until the end. He would not give up. The world applauded Johann George's actions. Hey, Johann George is alive, he's alive. One of them was Oh Se Chan. Upon hearing the news about Johann George, Oh Se Chan got to his feet and began applauding loudly. His subordinates could only shake their heads at the sight. Then he said to them. Now, let's get to work. 
one of his subordinates raised their hand when they heard the word work. Are we going to start manipulating the media? However, when Oh Se Chan asked a question of his own, the subordinate tilted their head. Media play. What about media play? I'm talking about media play in response to the criticism towards Isaac Ivanov. The subordinate who said these words wondered if he'd said something wrong with a strange look on his face, he turned around to look at his colleagues. Looking at his colleagues' expressions, he was certain that he hadn't said something wrong. Encouraged by that fact, the subordinate soldiered on. Negative opinions about Isaac Ivanov has been infesting the world for a while now. This was natural. Isaac Ivanov's actions had been too shocking, his five days of rest was seen as a provocation and a lack of respect. Neither of these was fitting for a savior. It was clear that with Johann George's actions, the public opinion would shift towards Johann George which would certainly lead to more criticisms towards Isaac Ivanov. I'm also certain that the Messiah Guild has a hand in this. This was a flaw that the Messiah Guild, who were trying to find any means to crush Isaac Ivanov, definitely wouldn't let go of. It was already clear that the public opinion about Isaac Ivanov's actions was flowing in a bad direction. This meant that they had to do a media play, something that Oh se -chan and his subordinates were good at. Oh se -chan waved his hands at his subordinates' words. You don't have to worry about that we don't need to do that we have an even more important task to complete. Another task? Oh se -chan laughed at the question. I haven't given you guys a quiz in a while what's the most expensive dungeon at this point? The subordinate answered without hesitation. That would be the Sphinx Dungeon, an A-rank six-floor dungeon that appeared in Egypt. The Sphinx Dungeon. Just by looking at this dungeon one would be able to understand its unbelievable value. First of all, it was a six-floor dungeon, and an A-rank one at that, this meant that only the top guilds in the world could attack it. The value of the dungeon was high enough just with that fact alone. A Sphinx has never been hunted before the only thing that we're sure about is that it's not simple. Crucially, the title of this dungeon itself was Sphinx, so even ordinary people could tell that the boss of this dungeon would be a Sphinx. The dungeon all but guarantees legendary items and materials. It was a dungeon with a guaranteed jackpot as long as someone was able to clear it. Therefore, all the guilds in the world, including the five great guilds were waiting to bid on this dungeon. Of course, the Egyptian government, which owned the dungeon, was currently raising its price as high as they could. It was no exaggeration to say that it was currently the most expensive dungeon in the world at that moment. That's right. Oh se -chan was the same. It truly is a valuable dungeon. He also believed that it was currently the most valuable dungeon. Of course, he didn't intend to just value it. All we need to do is make the Sphinx dungeon Isaac Ivanov's next target. Instead, he preferred to claim the value for himself. Ha! Huh. All of his subordinates were shocked by Oh se -chan's words. Boss, that dungeon. As mentioned before, there was currently no one who had successfully bid for the Sphinx dungeon, including the five great guilds. Could Isaac Ivanov really get a dungeon that even the Messiah guild was currently negotiating over? No matter who looked at it, it seemed to be an impossible task. That's why we need a story. Oh se -chan explained to his surprised subordinates. The tortoise keeps running to the finish line even though he knows the hare is looking down on him, then the hare suddenly appears before him, stretches out his hand, and says. Oh se -chan who was talking loudly, coughed and changed his voice. I'm sorry for testing you, but I've come to realize that you have an indomitable will so won't you join me? Then Oh se -chan, who spoke like he was acting a play laughed. And then the tortoise and the hare hold hands and walk towards the new finish line together with the thunderous support of everyone around the world on their backs. Then Oh se -chan, who had finished speaking, covered his eyes with his hands. Cool. I feel like I'm going to cry from this tsunami of emotion hey, get me some tissues. After finishing his little act, Oh se -chan spoke to his subordinates again. Now then, I've already told you the scenario, so you know what to do, don't you? Let's get to work. Then a subordinate walked up to him. Here, I brought tissues. When he saw his subordinate bring tissues, Oh se -chan made a strange expression. Of course, it wasn't because his subordinate didn't understand that he was acting and really brought him tissues. Hey, 
don't you know I don't use the tissues in the box? Instead of this, bring the tissues I stole from that coffee shop the other day. Chapter, 223 Johann George enters the second dungeon at 4 a.m. on the 21st day. Johann George takes the lead. On the 21st day of the challenge, Johann George entered the second dungeon first. However, no one really paid much attention to that fact. The contest is basically over. Isaac Ivanov has basically won already. It was much easier to compare who was faster in a situation with a tortoise and a hare. Of course, that didn't mean that the public's interest had diminished. On the contrary, the attention given to this competition by the world increased greatly. I still hope Johann George can create some miracle. Right, I hope Johann George can do something. A hero who received unconditional support from the world had appeared. I'm so disappointed in Isaac Ivanov I never thought that he'd act like this. To be honest, this is the right way to win in any case, Isaac Ivanov just needs to clear the dungeon a second ahead of Johann George it's common sense for him to take a longer break if he's sure of his victory. Still, isn't this too much? Shouldn't he at least show some respect for his opponent? If you put it in a good way, it's clever, if you put it in a bad way, it's mean. And the villain who was fighting against this hero also appeared. In truth, the so-called battle between good and good, a battle of goodwill, wasn't very interesting. After all, didn't villains appear in movies, stories and even professional wrestling because it's fun and interesting? Moreover, there was never a movie where a sudden reversal was anticipated by everyone watching. Isaac Ivanov enters the dungeon at 5 a.m. on the 21st day. And so, the confrontation once again drew the attention of the world. Eliminate the steel rhinoceros to move on to the next floor. The moment he saw the notification for the quest to clear the first floor of the dungeon, Li Jina spoke with a serious expression. We were lucky. At those words, Kim Wu Jin turned to look at him. Nevertheless, Li Jina remained relaxed under his stare as he continued. What? We were lucky, weren't we? If we're not lucky enough we might actually lose to Johann George. It was just as Li Jina said. The current situation might appear as though Isaac Ivanov had an overwhelming advantage, but that wasn't necessarily the case. Even if we only get three survival quests, 40 days could pass really quickly. In the case of survival quests which required the players to survive for a certain period of time, it would be impossible for them to finish quickly, no matter how skilled they were. In such a situation, it was not impossible for there to be a reversal. So we were lucky to get a designated hunting quest on the first floor. In that sense, they were indeed lucky to receive a quest to hunt a specific monster in order to clear the floor. Kim Woo Jin couldn't doubt that fact either. You know it well. Therefore, he nodded and showed his agreement. He easily admitted that Li Jina was right. When he saw that, Li Jina shrugged his shoulders with a proud look on his face. Kim Woo Jin then said to him, Anyway, let's begin. The Book of the Dead has been summoned. You used resurrection. Immediately after Kim Woo Jin summoned the wyvern skeleton soldier from the Book of the Dead, it regained its former appearance thanks to the resurrection skill. Keek. The wyvern then let out a screech before Li Jin Ah, who was looking at it carefully, opened his mouth. I want to ride one too. Kim Woo Jin turned to look at Li Jin Ah, who had an expression similar to a child looking at a fun amusement park ride, and said. The steel rhino has a good sense of smell without a skill from the silent hunter, it would be impossible to approach it without getting caught however, it makes no sense to encircle it even a golem would be shattered by the horn on its nose with just a single charge. Okay. Although he responded, it was clear that Li Jin Ah wasn't actually paying attention to Kim Wu Jin's words as he kept staring at the wyvern. He looked like he really wanted to ride it. Kim Wu Jin continued his explanation without caring about Li Jin Ah's disinterest. There are two ways to hunt the steel rhino one is to hide in the ground and wait for it to pass before attacking from below the other is to fly in the sky to avoid its sense of smell. No matter how good its sense of smell was, it would be impossible for it to smell something flying high in the sky. However, Li Jin Ah interrupted Kim Wu Jin's explanation in order to ask one question. But wouldn't it be useless if a wyvern approaches because of the sound it would make? Keek. 
As if to prove Li Jina's point, the wyvern screeched loudly. That's right. Kim Woojin nodded. As Li Jina had said, the scent could be hidden, but the steel rhino would still be able to hear the wyvern coming. As soon as the wyvern appears, the steel rhino will chase after it. Naturally, a chase would ensue. Then, when you notice an opening, you will jump from the wyvern's body onto the steel rhino. Just like the main character in an action movie chasing a train with a car and then ditching the car to jump onto the train. That's a perfect analogy. In response to Kim Woo Jin's praise, the corner of Lee Jin Ahs lips rose to form a smirk on his lips. Before I became a player, my goal was to be a movie star and actor like Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible. Kim Woo Jin had a simple response to that. Then you're lucky. Ha. Huh. You'll fulfill half of your wish today. What was the most influential part when attacking a dungeon? First of all, it was skill. If you weren't skilled enough, then it was impossible to clear a dungeon, no matter how lucky you were. However, if your skills were good enough, then your luck would also play a role when attacking the dungeon. The outcome of this confrontation is still hard to estimate. That's why John Young Soo said that he didn't know who would win this challenge. But isn't Isaac Ivanov's party stronger than Johann George's? When he heard that, the man who brought John Young Soo coffee couldn't help but tilt his head. It's not just Johann George, his strength defies common sense. Clearly, the power displayed by Isaac Ivanov's party completely surpassed what common sense dictated. Most people only heard that Isaac Ivanov cleared the dungeon in 14 days, but not many knew his condition when he exited the dungeon. He didn't even get hurt in a five-floor dungeon. John Young Soo, who had seen it all firsthand, naturally had a better idea about Isaac Ivanov's power. But I'm still not sure. Nevertheless, John Young Su still could not estimate the victory or defeat in this second leg of the confrontation. If Johann George is lucky, he can clear the dungeon faster than Isaac Ivanov. As had been said earlier, luck was also a factor that couldn't be ignored. Of course, some would also say. Then isn't it possible for Isaac Ivanov to also get lucky? Then what if the goddess of luck smiled upon Isaac Ivanov instead? John Young Su gave a mysterious smile at that question. Then we might witness something truly ridiculous for example, something like Isaac Ivanov's party walking out of the dungeon today. When he heard that, the employee beside him checked the watch on his wrist. It was 6.12 on the 29th that was enough for him to gather that it had been about 8 days since Isaac Ivanov's party had entered the second dungeon. As John Young Su said, if Isaac Ivanov's party came out now, that would mean they cleared the dungeon in eight days. That's impossible. Holding his coffee, John Young Soo gave a bitter smile when he heard that. Despite his bitter smile, however, John Young Soo's eyes were cold. Regardless of the outcome, the next step is to deal with Isaac Ivanov. As he thought this, John Young Soo recalled what had happened a week ago. A plan had finally been drafted. A plan to eliminate Isaac Ivanov as soon as the second attack was over. As soon as Isaac Ivanov exits the dungeon, I'll give him this letter. And it was Johann George's letter, which was currently in John Young Su's possession that would set the plan into action. As soon as the letter was delivered to Isaac Ivanov, an irrevocable trigger would be pulled. Then Isaac Ivanov will immediately die. John Young Su was currently holding the trigger that would lead to the death of a world class hero. It has to be handled perfectly. Therefore, John Young Soo sharpened his concentration even beyond its peak. At that moment, John Young Soo was confident that he could perform his task without any issues. It must be done with confidence. He wouldn't be shocked even if a lightning bolt struck the ground in front of him at that moment. Of course, that confidence didn't last very long. At that moment, the dungeon gate in front of them rippled and a man wearing a skull mask stepped out of it together with another large man. John Young Su and the other employee couldn't help but freeze at that moment. John Young Su only remembered one thing that happened after that. How long was it? And that was the question the man raised at that moment. There were more stories about villains winning than one would initially expect. And there were even many people who would want the villains to win. Therefore, when watching movies or professional wrestling, it was often the villains who won in the end. But if they won by too much,
then it would be a problem. That was Isaac Ivanov's current situation. Isaac Ivanov clears the second dungeon in eight days. Isaac Ivanov's second dungeon attack, which ended in only eight days sent shockwaves through the world, to the extent that there weren't even any debates for a while. Of course, people knew. It was possible that Isaac Ivanov had simply gotten lucky. Isaac Ivanov, I was very lucky. Isaac Ivanov receives the blessing of the goddess of luck. Isaac Ivanov himself didn't try to hide that fact. He didn't receive any survival quests and the dungeon clear process was rather simple and easy. This was definitely something that couldn't happen without a godly amount of luck. This is no longer a contest. Even though it's just luck, isn't the difference that's overwhelming? He cleared a five-floor dungeon in eight days, some parties take eight days just to clear a single floor. What was certain at that point, however, was that it was pointless for Johann George to even struggle. In the end, Isaac Ivanov is still the strongest. Because Isaac Ivanov proved that Johann George wasn't comparable to him. And Johann George responded to that fact. Johann George left a letter to Isaac Ivanov before entering the second dungeon. In the letter, he said. If Isaac Ivanov clears the second dungeon faster than me, I will admit defeat. If he couldn't even clear the second dungeon faster than Isaac Ivanov, he would admit defeat. At the same time, I'd like to ask Isaac Ivanov a favor I think you're good enough to entrust my back to, so I'd like to partner with you in order to clear dungeons together. And he asked Isaac Ivanov to accept him as a teammate and subordinate. The letter Johann George left shook the world. Oh my god, so Johann George tested Isaac Ivanov to see if he was worthy enough to be his boss. Well he can't just be the boss on account of his fame. No, but I never thought someone would test someone to see if they could be their boss like this in the end, Johann George is still amazing. Really amazing. It turned out that the confrontation wasn't just to see who was the better player. This news took the world by storm. So the two of them will become a team. A monstrous dream team. Five floor dungeons would be completely annihilated now. Why would they do five floor dungeons? With the two of them, they could even tackle six floor dungeons. What six floor dungeons? They could be targeting seven floor dungeons by the end of the year. The fact that the two heroes might become one and save the world together caused everyone to burn with excitement. Will Isaac Ivanov and Johann George's first challenge be the Sphinx dungeon that appeared in Egypt? Will the Dream Team challenge an A rank six floor dungeon? It was rumored that the next dungeon the two would attack wouldn't be a simple six floor dungeon but the Sphinx dungeon, an A rank that far surpassed ordinary dungeons. It's different from the original plan but in the end, the stage was still set for us to get rid of Isaac Ivanov. After confirming a few things, Park Shinhai placed her tablet back on her desk. Sitting in front of her was the Bao God, who also had a tablet in his hand. The expressions on their faces were quite different. Park Shinhai was smiling slightly, while the Bao God had an uneasy expression on his face. Finally, the Bao God opened his mouth. Certainly, if you used the Hades ring that you gave to Johann George, you could turn Isaac Ivanov's skeletons against him. Hades ring. After thinking about it for a moment, the Bao God shook his head. But even after preparing properly, we still weren't able to catch him to be honest, I do not believe that this is enough to catch him now. In the past, when the Bao God had tried to get rid of Isaac Ivanov, he had believed that their preparations were enough. Nevertheless, they'd failed. And the only one that ended up dying were his subordinates. Yes, I understand the concerns you might have whenever you were convinced you could deal with Isaac Ivanov, you failed. Park Shinhai also knew that. Lee Sejun feels the same way. Lee Sejin knew as well therefore, they had prepared even more. We've prepared the Cap of Invisibility 1. Only. The Cap of Invisibility. Hearing this shocked the Bao God greatly, and Park Shinhai spoke confidently when she saw that. Shouldn't that be enough to slit Isaac Ivanov's throat? He had no more questions about their preparations. All he could do was nod. Chapter, 224 Johann George bows his head to Isaac Ivanov. Johann George's letter gained the admiration of the world. 
And with that admiration, everyone turned to look at Isaac Ivanov and asked the same question. So what will Isaac Ivanov do? Will he join hands with Johann George? How would Isaac Ivanov respond to Johann George's letter? Moreover, Isaac Ivanov had already cleared the dungeon and returned to reality. So everyone waited for Isaac Ivanov's answer. Why is he taking so long to respond? Isn't Isaac Ivanov already outside of the dungeon? However, despite their expectations, Isaac Ivanov had yet to respond. The reason was simple. I didn't expect this to happen. Kim Woo Jin had yet to reach a clear conclusion. Above all, Kim Woo Jin was certain about one thing. Johann George definitely doesn't have good intentions. The Johann George whom he knew, was not a man who was willing to go under anyone in order to save the world as the letter led everyone in the world to believe. The King of Undead. Because, just as the name suggested, he considered himself to be a king. And the Messiah Guild even more so. And it was currently none other than the Messiah Guild who held the reins for Johann George. Something's going on. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin was certain that it was a trap. Johann George was definitely a poison that they intended to inject directly into Isaac Ivanov's body. Without a doubt, this is a trap. It was so obvious that even Li Jina realized that it was a trap. Their goal is obvious there's no way we can refuse, is there? The problem was that it wasn't easy to escape this trap. It was already clear what kind of answer the world expected. Isaac Ivanov would agree to Johann George's proposal, form the dream team and go on to clear dungeons. So all that Isaac Ivanov could do was give them the fixed answer. If you refuse here, it would be impossible to kill Johann George like you promised the Lightning King. Furthermore, the Lightning King was involved with this issue. If Isaac Ivanov shouted an L here, then he and Johann George would never enter a dungeon together. This meant that it would be impossible to deal with Johann George. If you don't do it, the Lightning King would kill you. If that actually happened, the Lightning King would definitely try to punish Kim Woo Jin in some way. That was the way he was. A tyrant who could give one chance, but never two. You can't refuse. Therefore, there were many reasons why Kim Woo Jin couldn't reject the proposal. Nevertheless, he still had yet to actually agree to the proposal. Because Kim Woo Jin wasn't a man who would agree to something simply because he had no other choice. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin analyzed the situation more carefully. I'm sure Lee Se Joon did something. Moreover, Isaac Ivanov had already grown enough to attract the attention of the great savior, Lee Se Joon. In other words, Lee Se Joon would definitely make a move in order to get rid of Isaac Ivanov. If he opened his hidden vault, that meant that the savior would probably open up his secret stash. This meant that any of the powerful legendary items Lee Se-joon had collected so far could be used to take Kim Woo Jin's life. How terrifying! Kim Woo Jin felt his back become a bit cold. Lee Se-joon and Park Shin Hai were the only ones who knew exactly what items were hidden in the Messiah Guild's hidden stash. It wouldn't be strange if they had some ridiculous weapon that Kim Woo Jin didn't know about. It's already too late to step back. Naturally, the answer Kim Woo Jin would give had long been decided. Above all, there was one thing that Kim Woo Jin was certain about. Lee Se Joon can't enter the sixth floor dungeon. As long as Lee Se Joon himself didn't enter the dungeon, there was no reason for him to lose to others. There's no reason to refuse. Only then did Kim Woo Jin finally give his assent. However, there's no reason to just accept it. Kim Woo Jin's eyes shined like a hungry beast. What will Isaac Ivanov's choice be? Isaac Ivanov finally gave a response to this question. Isaac Ivanov begins his attack on the third dungeon. Only one day break. Isaac Ivanov runs till the end. Silently complete the competition that was Isaac Ivanov's response. The world was confused by this. What's going on? Why did he enter the dungeon without responding? He didn't take a break this time. What does this mean? This was completely unexpected, and because of it, people began debating Isaac Ivanov's actions. Is he refusing? Is he saying that he doesn't care about a dog that admitted defeat? Maybe he's just ignoring it. It could be that he already made a decision, 
or he's just being polite after all, they're still in the middle of a competition. Well, this is Isaac Ivanov after all. Even if the loser gave up, he'll still finish the race if nothing else, at least they cleared all the dungeons. Some people thought it was a sign of rejection, while others saw it as acceptance. Of course, there was one thing that was obvious. There must be a reason why he did this. There must be a reason behind Isaac Ivanov's actions. Li Jina was the same. Survived for six days to proceed to the next floor. The moment he heard the notification signifying the start of the third dungeon attack, Li Jina turned to Kim Woo Jin and asked. Why did you enter the third dungeon right away? Kim Woo Jin tilted his head to the side when he heard that. Why? Li Jina continued. Hey, come on I know you're up to something what are you planning to do this time? Li Jina poked Kim Woo Jin in the side with his elbow as he said those words, causing him to frown. Our plan is the same as I told you earlier we'll go to the Sphinx dungeon with Johann George then get rid of him there. What other plans would they have? Li Jina frowned slightly. Then why did we come here? Naturally, to level up. Level up? Is there any other reason to enter dungeons? That. Kim Wu Jin's words weren't wrong. The fundamental reason why players entered dungeons was to level up, increase their skill ranks, and obtain items. And it was also the only way to end the game and return the world back to its original state. You really came here just to level up. However, Li Jina didn't accept those words so easily. Kim Wu Jin spoke to Li Jina as though it was obvious. Isn't it natural to raise our levels before our confrontation with Johann George? Along with those words, Kim Wu Jin looked at his status window. Kim Wu Jin. Level, 166. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats, Health 5001325, Stamina 2581, Magic Power 31232. Achievements, 149. Extra points, 0. I won't be able to use the Lich in the fight against Johann George. After checking his level, Kim Wu Jin turned to look at Li Jina. But I'll do my best to raise my level as high as possible. Thus, as he looked at Li Jina, Kim Wu Jin began formulating plans and strategies in order to level up quickly. It'll be like a pig trying to eat a human ah. Uh. Only then did Li Jina realize. This third dungeon attack would be much more taxing when compared to the other two. Kim Wu Jin then spoke to Li Jina. Let's start with 10 zero, zero monsters. Werewolf, werebear, were tiger many humans who had body parts similar to monsters were gathered. The number seemed to have long surpassed 500. Zero, zero. It was truly a horrific sight. Rattle. The presence of an army of skeletons brandishing their weapons and charging at the group over a pile of corpses made it even more terrifying. And the centerpiece of this army was the Dullahan holding its severed head in the center of the group. Kaya ha ha ha. The Dullahan's head let out a strange cry, making the scene that was already terrible, seem hellish. And even these cries weren't simple sounds. The Dullahan consumes the energy of the dead. As soon as the sound spread, blue smoke began rising from the piles of corpses, which then seeped into the Dullahan's body. The Dullahan's curse becomes stronger. At the same time, the flesh of the corpses near the Dullahan hardened as though they were frozen. Your level has increased. While this was happening, Kim Woo Jin heard his 169th level up notification. This notification was much longer than others. Reached level 170 inventory increased by 34 spaces. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your growth inventory increased by an additional 34 spaces. The Emissary of the Underworld bestows some power unto you. The rank of the Vampire skill has increased by 1. The rank of the Blood Golem skill has increased by 1. The Emissary of the Underworld sends a special gift for you. You have acquired skill Stone A. There were so many that the sounds rang out for a long time. But Kim Woo Jin didn't really pay attention to that. You have slain all the monsters that were cursed by the moon. Cleared the dungeon. Kim Woo Jin didn't even pay attention to the fact that had cleared the five floor dungeon. It didn't seem like he was interested at all. Fuck, never again. I'm never partying with you again. 
Fuck, I'm on strike too. I'm going to tell Seichan that I'm on strike. I can't live like this anymore. You can find a new workhorse. Despite the cries of Li Jina, who had experienced many days of suffering, Kim Wu Jin, who normally would have said something, remained quiet. Instead, he was doing calculations in his head. 17 days. This time, the attack took 17 days. It was much longer than the two previous attacks. The reason for this was the survival quests they got on the first and third floors. Of course, Kim Wu Jin wasn't anxious or worried because they took 17 days. There was only one thing that he was currently interested in. He's probably waiting outside. This was more than enough time for Johann George to complete his dungeon attack and come to wait for Kim Woo Jin. And due to this fact, a thought came to Kim Woo Jin's mind. Johann George. The King of Undead. The last enemy who fought against the Messiah Guild, and even forced Lee Sejun to make compromises. The most powerful, cruel and amazing prey that Kim Woo Jin had ever hunted. Only. Thinking this, Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but smile slightly. Now that I think about it, I only got to see Lee Se Jun's real face after killing him. There was one simple reason why Lee Se Jun killed Kim Woo Jin. With the death of the King of Undead, he no longer had any rivals. Kim Woo Jin wondered what would have become of his relationship with Lee Se Jun if he didn't manage to kill the King of Undead. How would the story have flowed if he spared him instead of killing him? As he asked himself this question, Kim Woo Jin headed to the dungeon gate. Chapter, 225 When Kim Woo Jin exited the dungeon gate, he was greeted by an almost deafening silence. Whoosh! At that moment, the sound of the wind became more pronounced than ever before. However, the scene that Kim Woo Jin was looking at did not match this silence at all. A lot came. There were a large number of barricades surrounding the dungeon gate, and beyond those barricades was an enormous crowd of people. If he was to give a rough estimate, Kim Woo Jin would guess that there were more than 10, 0, 0 people gathered there. It was then. It's Isaac. Following this cry from someone in the crowd, the silence was immediately shattered. Whoa! A huge cheer seemed to shake the entire area. Following that shout, the dungeon gate began to fade as though it had been scared away, causing them to scream even louder. It was a shout filled with such joy and excitement that it seemed like the crowd had lost their minds. It was so loud that even Li Jina, who had exited the dungeon after Kim Wu Jin, froze upon hearing it. But Kim Wu Jin himself was unmoved by these shouts. Crunch, crunch. Only the sound of approaching footsteps filled his ears. His eyes were the same. In this place filled with countless people, Kim Wu Jin's gaze was only focused on one person, who was approaching them. It was a pale, blue-eyed man with short, blonde hair in truth, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say this man was as beautiful as a woman. Johann George. This man, who was unforgettable in many ways, came to a stop in front of Kim Woo Jin. There was no need for a long conversation. There wasn't even a greeting. Instead, Johann George simply extended his thin, fragile-looking hand to Kim Woo Jin. Suddenly, Silence once again filled the air that had just been shaken by screams. Gulp. The only sound that remained was the scattered gulps from the crowd. Is he really going to reject him? While everyone was wondering what he would do, Kim Woo Jin simply extended his hand and shook Johann George's. Then, Johann George bowed slightly. It was the moment when two heroes who utilized undead joined hands. Only one sentence was needed to describe the conclusion of the greatest confrontation of the century. Isaac Ivanov and Johann George join forces. The two heroes who had participated in the confrontation of the century actually joined forces. This was an ending that no one in the world expected. In fact, it was much much better than anyone in the world could have expected. And because of this, the world went wild. The two strongest necromancers are going to work together. The dream team is born. And at the same time, they ask the same question. Isaac Ivanov and Johann George join to form the strongest necromancer party. What will be the dream team's first target? What would the dream team do next? Naturally, they'll debut in a six-floor dungeon. 
Definitely Isaac Ivanov's party alone was able to clear a five-floor dungeon in eight days, and now, Johann George's party has been added. For them, attacking a five-floor dungeon would be the same as a high schooler taking part in a middle school sporting event it has to be six floors. More importantly, they wouldn't be afraid of a challenge. Naturally, no one questioned the fact that their first challenge would be a six-floor dungeon. Then, which dungeon will it be? It wouldn't be an ordinary six-floor dungeon, would it? Will they attack at least AC rank? They just wondered what kind of six-floor dungeon it would be. Isaac Ivanov answered that question without hesitation. Isaac Ivanov, I'm not interested in dungeons that other people can clear. Isaac Ivanov, our target is the Sphinx's tomb. There was currently only one A-rank six-floor dungeon, the Sphinx's tomb. And that was the first stage that Isaac Ivanov wanted to step on together with Johann George. Everyone in the world was absolutely gobsmacked by this proclamation. This included Li Jina. Kirk. The moment he saw the article, Li Jina choked on the chocolate he was eating. Cough, cough. Afterwards, he coughed several times before checking the article on his smartphone once again. He reread it several times before heading to other news sources to check their articles. Nevertheless, he still turned to Kim Woo Jin with a disbelieving expression. Hey, is this real? Kim Woo Jin nodded. Are you serious? Li Jina asked again so this time Kim Woo Jin spoke with a definite tone. It's real. Only then did Li Jina, who realized it really was real, close his eyes and mutter in a pained voice. We only cleared one six-floor dungeon and yet you want to take on an A rank did I sell out the country in my last life? Ha! Huh. A multitude of complaints poured out of his mouth. This was natural. As Li Jina said, he and Kim Woo Jin had only cleared one six-floor dungeon so far, so it was unreasonable for them to just jump to a rank six-floor dungeons, even if they added Johann George to the equation. No, there was one more problem. Damn it, and we still have to deal with that girly bastard. The purpose of entering the dungeon with Johann George wasn't to clear the dungeon, but to deal with him. If that was considered, then the difficulty of this dungeon had surpassed a rank. I'd rather dive into the pits of hell. It was clear that anyone would have concerns about entering a dungeon like that in those circumstances. This is the only way for it to make sense. That was also one of Kim Woo Jin's objectives. What? If Johann George's party was wiped out in what was considered to be an easy dungeon, the world would be forced to wonder what happened. It was almost guaranteed that the world would question it if Johann George died in a dungeon that was considered to be easy. Besides that, there were a few other reasons. I must attack the dungeon before the Frontier Guild does. Before Kim Woo Jin returned to the past, the Frontier Guild's team cleared the Sphinx Tomb Dungeon in July 2024. That meant that there was almost no time until they attacked the dungeon. But the biggest reason was. Because if the Frontier Guild got a hold of one of the Nine-Tailed Fox's tails, it would be too troublesome. One of two remaining tails of the Nine-Tailed Fox was currently in the Sphinx Tomb Dungeon. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, it was not a dungeon he could let others clear. Well, Johann George's decision is still important. Of course, this still depended on whether Johann George's side agreed to the attack or not. Li Jina snorted at that remark. He already bowed his head, he doesn't have a choice. As he'd said, since Johann George had been the one to approach him, he couldn't decide to change his mind now. Johann George has to do it. Kim Woo Jin's thoughts were the same. Johann George had no other options. But his backer might think differently. However, since the Messiah Guild was involved, they couldn't afford to feel assured just yet. The cards they prepared wouldn't be enough. It was all but certain that the Messiah Guild had already prepared a number of cards in order to get rid of Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina. In such a situation where the location was being changed to the Sphinx Tomb Dungeon, they would have to prepare even more. It must be quite the headache. Of course, Kim Woo Jin had no intentions of just leaving it at that. Then I'll make it worse. Sphinx's Tomb. Floors, 6. Difficulty, a rank. Maximum number of entries, 100. Requirement, level 209 and below. 
Challenge conditions, destroy the treasure protected by the Sphinx. Reward, seal breaker single use. The Sphinx's tomb. As she read the dungeon report, Park Shinhai's expression was not very good. Of all places. With that expression on her face, she turned to look in front of her. There, Johann George's face, which was in no way lacking when compared to Park Shinhai, who was considered a goddess, came into view. Unlike Park Shinhai, Johann George's expression was quite relaxed. Park Shinhai observed him for a moment. Why did he look so relaxed? She silently threatened. Only then did Johann George open his mouth. I'm already following the Messiah Guild's orders I will do whatever the Messiah Guild orders me to do. Park Shinhai nodded at those words. Right it's not your problem. After saying those words, Park Shinhai put down the dungeon report with a more relaxed expression on her face. Of course, it was all an act. Such a headache. At that moment, she was more troubled than ever. I never thought he'd ask for the Sphinx dungeon. Sphinx dungeon. It was natural that Park Shinhai knew dungeons like this well. These dungeons were some of the most difficult dungeons below seven floors. The situation had already become one such that all the top guilds in the world were currently bidding for this dungeon. Even the Messiah Guild had been negotiating with the Egyptian government for quite some time, and the dungeon report currently in Park Shinhai's hands was an item they received during these negotiations. And he wanted to use that dungeon as his stage. There was nothing that could be done. Especially when considering the fact that with the abilities Isaac Ivanov displayed together with Johann Georges, they were qualified for the challenge. They have the qualifications. No, it was better to say that the conditions of the Sphinx Tomb Dungeon made it quite favorable for Isaac Ivanov. Moreover, the maximum number of entries is 100 foot. Moreover, unlike other six-floor dungeons, the Sphinx Tomb Dungeon was a place that only allowed 100 players in. It was a dungeon where quality was far more important than quantity. And Isaac Ivanov, who could play the role of dozens of players alone, was bound to be valued highly. If it's that guy, he could probably clear it. In fact, she had almost no doubt that Isaac Ivanov could clear that dungeon. On the other hand, we can't clear it without him. However, the chances that they could do so without him was incredibly low. In other words, they had to wait for Isaac Ivanov to hunt the dungeon's boss. In the first place, we wanted to kill him as soon as he tried to finish the dungeon. Of course, that had been their plan from the start. The Messiah Guild had intended to kill Isaac Ivanov as soon as he killed the boss monster in the dungeon, and it was also what they prepared for. But if we want to do it now, we'll have to invest much more. However, if it was the Sphinx dungeon, they would have to invest much more just to ensure their player survival. Legendary. This wouldn't just be an investment, it's a decisive investment. Simply surviving in itself was a hard task in an A-rank 6-floor dungeon. In Park Shinhai's mind, which was currently calculating the amount they'd have to invest, the words give up seemed to flicker. Of course, we still have a way to completely neutralize Isaac Ivanov. Johann George spoke up and showed the ring on his finger. With the Hades ring, Isaac Ivanov's undead will be completely ineffective. Hades ring. The effect of this ring, which contained the power of the god of the underworld, was quite simple. To completely obey the wielder of this object. As long as it was an undead, regardless of what it was, it would have to obey the commands of the person wearing that ring. Whether it was a boss monster in a dungeon or a monster summoned by a player, it didn't matter. Whether it's his skeleton knights or something else. That was why Johann George was made into the hunting dog who was to take the lead in hunting Isaac Ivanov, and why he had ten other necromancers in his team. And I also have a reason to kill him. Moreover, Johann George exposed his motives. The emissary of the underworld is known for his favoritism if I don't kill Isaac Ivanov, I will never be able to progress further that's why I so readily accepted the Messiah Guild's proposal. Park Shinhai gave a bright smile as though Johann George had helped assuage some of her fears. That's reassuring to hear. Of course, that smile was also an act. Johann George would also become an obstacle someday it wouldn't be too bad if we used this opportunity to get rid of both of them. 
Just as another option came to Park Shinhai's mind, she received a text message notification on her phone. She immediately took it out and checked the message. Then her facial expression hardened considerably after she read the contents of the text. Seeing this, Johann George couldn't help but say. What happened? You look as though the dead came back to life. Park Shinhai responded with a cold expression. That's exactly right, the dead came back to life. Chapter, 226 When Isaac Ivanov's party declared their desire to attack the Sphinx dungeon, it was naturally the Egyptian government that expressed the most displeasure. The Egyptian government is currently negotiating with Isaac Ivanov. At present, the value of the Sphinx dungeon was increasing by the day, and giving such a valuable dungeon to Isaac Ivanov would be a major loss to the Egyptian government. What is the Egyptian government doing? Isaac Ivanov said he'd be willing to do the dungeon for free. Are they trying to make money? Are the Egyptian higher-ups trying to take bribes for dungeons? Moreover, it was the Egyptian government officials, and not the ordinary citizens, who had the most to gain. From the perspective of the ordinary people, they hoped that the hero, Isaac Ivanov, would remove this threat from their country sooner. Naturally, this forced the Egyptian government to come up with other reasons. The Egyptian government chose a fairly simple method to deal with this situation. The Egyptian government raises doubts on Isaac Ivanov's team's ability to clear the dungeon. The Egyptian government demands a more robust verification from Isaac Ivanov's team. Either they show their ability by clearing another six-floor dungeon, or by recruiting additional power that was recognized by everyone. This was what they suggested in their media play. They also gave themselves a way out. The Egyptian government says that if Isaac Ivanov meets these conditions, they will give him the next chance to attack. This way out said that, while they were unsure of the first attack, they would definitely give him the second chance. The Egyptian government had used this so that they would still be able to sell the Sphinx's tomb dungeon. All the guilds that were trying to get the dungeon, hurriedly began making their moves so that they wouldn't lose the dungeon to Isaac Ivanov. Boss, this is such a headache. The situation suddenly took a bad turn for Isaac Ivanov. It seems the negotiations with the Frontier Guild are almost complete if Isaac Ivanov doesn't do something fast, those Frontier Guild bastards will definitely get it. And for Oh Se Chan, who was playing the media for Isaac Ivanov, it was definitely going to be a headache. What should we do, boss? However, Oh Se Chan had a surprisingly calm expression compared to his panicked and anxious subordinate. In that case, we'll use a magic trick. Magic trick? Yep, a magic trick that will surprise everyone. The subordinate couldn't help but wonder what kind of weird things Oh Se Chan was thinking about this time. He made a strange expression. All right, I'll tell you what to do. Oh Se Chan continued. Listen carefully and write exactly what I tell you. The order he gave was simple. Isaac Ivanov adds a new member to the team. This surprised his subordinate, who couldn't help but ask. Who's the new member? Oh Se Chan smiled. Kim Woo Jin. Papa Pat. Oh Se Chan couldn't help but click his tongue as he heard the thunderous sounds of hundreds of cameras taking pictures of a man standing on a stage at the same time. They really gathered like dogs. A subordinate next to him agreed. They are a pack of dogs they are hunting dogs sent to the press conference to get the article by every single media company. Many of those who were embroiled in controversy would usually try to settle the controversy through press conferences. But that wasn't always the case. Depending on the situation, the press conference might become the cause of further controversy. Is Mr. Kim Woo Jin really okay? This was the case for Kim Woo Jin, who had returned from death to help Isaac Ivanov. He was the most delectable prey for reporters. I think it would have been better to not accept some of those news outlets, even if it might cause a problem. As such, Kim Woo Jin's press conference could not be doctored or directed for Kim Woo Jin. It can't be helped, we're calling it a press conference, but it's practically a hearing at this point fucking five great guilds. The ones who had raised the controversy had a much larger influence than Kim Woo Jin, which was why they had no choice but to go through with this. Because they couldn't direct the conference under the sharp gazes of the major powers. In any case, Kim Woo Jin has to figure out how to deal with it somehow and he knows that too. 
The only option was to break through from the front, and Kim Woo Jin knew that, which was why he was currently standing on the stage. At that moment, one of Oh Se-chan's subordinates couldn't help but ask in a slightly worried tone. Do you think Kim Woo Jin will be able to handle the media? Instead of answering immediately, Oh Se-chan frowned slightly. He's not a celebrity, he wouldn't know. Dealing with the media wasn't the same as dealing with monsters. In truth, Oh Se-chan did not have much hope in Kim Woo Jin's ability to handle this kind of situation. And that was why Oh Se-chan and his subordinates were currently watching the press conference in real time. He just has to hold the angle if there's a problem, well do our best to cover it up immediately. Understood. If a problem came up, they'd be able to give feedback immediately, and if it couldn't be fixed like that, then they would fix it after the fact. What was the reason for faking your death? Then the question and answer segment began. Naturally, every camera was focused on Kim Woo Jin at that moment. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't immediately answer instead, Kim Woo Jin carefully examined his surroundings. What's going on? Is something wrong? Just as everyone began to question his answers, Kim Woo Jin stopped and opened his mouth. Currently, I'm still at risk of suffering a terrorist attack An attack against me could happen even at this very moment in such a situation, it's impossible to make an official appearance. When they heard that a terrorist attack could happen at any moment, tension swept through the audience. Oh se -chan couldn't hold in his laughter when he saw that. That was a good question. Then, the next reporter in line to ask a question spoke up. If you are in such a dangerous situation why have you made an appearance now? The answer for this question came immediately. Isaac Ivanov asked for my help so here I am. There was absolutely no hesitation, instead, it was a statement filled with determination and loyalty to Isaac Ivanov. For Isaac Ivanov, he's not afraid of any terrorism what a great fellowship. It was an answer that touched even the hearts of the reporters who were prepared to launch attacks after hearing his answer. Suddenly, another reporter raised their hand. Isaac Ivanov announced that he would add Mr. Kim Woo Jin to his team in response to the Egyptian government's request for credentials. Then they proceeded to ask their question without waiting for permission. Who is that? Would there be any reporter there who would start saying something like this if they weren't from the Frontier Guild? Probably not. Currently, the ones who had the greatest sense of crisis and dissatisfaction with the progress of Isaac Ivanov's party was the Frontier Guild, which was most likely to win the bid for the Sphinx Dungeon. Unsurprisingly, the Frontier Guild intended to highlight Isaac Ivanov's team's unsuitability to attack the Sphinx Dungeon. However, most people in the world have doubts about whether Mr. Kim Woo Jin has such abilities. The question of the reporter, who was practically the Frontier Guild's representative in this press conference, was sharp and powerful. Moreover, you haven't been attacking dungeons with Isaac Ivanov, so your level is definitely not as high as Isaac Ivanov's, is it? Maybe if you had a hunting ability similar to Isaac Ivanov. And since the Frontier Guild was behind him, he continued talking without fear. He's good. He's really good. Kim Woo Jin, your abilities must be trash. Oh se -chan and his subordinates were tongue-tied and they heard the reporter's words which were tantamount to pulling back a veil. Of course, it wasn't that the question was really difficult. Moreover, Isaac Ivanov recruited you not just because you were a former teammate, but for your abilities so everyone in the world believes that you should prove that you are capable of being Isaac Ivanov's teammate, like Johann George did. He's hitting where it hurts. The problem was that there was no way to avoid the question. Isaac Ivanov didn't just reveal Kim Woo Jin to show that his teammate was alive instead, he basically proclaimed that with the addition of Kim Woo Jin, he would be able to clear the Sphinx dungeon. And there was only one real way to prove this. I believe that you should at least clear a six-floor dungeon in order to qualify. Prove your abilities against monsters. That means he'd have to enter a dungeon. The only way to prove your abilities was through dungeons. As expected, they're trying to buy time if Kim Woo Jin enters the dungeon to prove his ability, he'd be gone for at least a month. If Kim Woo Jin really entered a dungeon to prove his ability, it would take about a month or so. And in the present era, anything could happen in a month. By that time, the Frontier Guild would have already entered the Sphinx dungeon. A subordinate beside Oh Se-chan couldn't help but ask. What are we gonna do? 
To prove his capabilities, he would have to enter a dungeon, but if he did so, it was almost guaranteed that they would lose the opportunity to enter the dungeon to the Frontier Guild and the other guilds. Then I'll prove my ability. Kim Woo Jin's face filled the screen as he answered the question. I'll show you in real time with monsters that came out of dungeons. Tututu. The rotors of 3AH-64, otherwise known as Apache helicopters, made loud noises as they prepared for takeoff. And a short distance away from these helicopters, a soldier was being interviewed in front of a camera by a reporter holding a mic. Currently, more than 900 monsters have been identified in the Jackson State Forest among them are 12 giant orcs which appear on the fifth floor and higher. It was quite terrifying information. The fact that over 900 monsters were moving in a group meant that a boss monster had appeared to lead them as for the giant orcs, they were monsters that players disliked encountering because of how tough they were. Of course, that was only the case in dungeons. In real life, where they had access to modern weapons, these monsters weren't as much of a threat. For the US military, in particular, these monsters were in no way a threat. Together with the Apache helicopters they were about to board, Lt. Col. Michael, who was being interviewed, would be able to turn these monsters into bloodstains in no time. That was the United States was able to maintain its status as the world's strongest they were the only country with an army capable of perfectly defending their vast territory. Nevertheless, Lt. Col. Michael's expression wasn't good at that moment. And now, Kim Woo Jin is heading to those monsters' location. Just like he said, Kim Woo Jin was going to prove his ability against monsters in reality rather than in a dungeon. This fact made the world go wild for many reasons. For one, actually seeing players hunt monsters in reality was much rarer than one would initially expect. After all, the players had no need to risk their lives fighting the monsters when they had the great power of modern weaponry behind them. And even when they did step forward, they only did so in situations where they could make use of modern weapons unless they had no choice but to use their own ability against the monsters. In simple terms, they had no reason to put down their guns and pick up knives. However, the opportunity to see a player fight like they were in a dungeon in real life had finally come. As said before, if Kim Woo Jin fails in his attempt, our troops will take care of it. In other words, Lt. Col. Michael's troops would be cleaning up after a player this was why his expression wasn't very good at that moment. Damn it. The US military, which was one of the most powerful forces in the entire world, was being made to clean up after a Korean player. Isaac I thought we'd gotten rid of him. More importantly, Kim Woo Jin was a teammate of Isaac Ivanov, who had wounded America's pride before, and he was doing this for Isaac Ivanov. This made him feel even worse. Lt. Col. Michael, do you believe Kim Woo Jin will succeed? The reporter asked this question to Lt. Col. Michael T.L., don't answer Michael, it's a trap. At that question, Lt. Col. Michael showed his displeasure by displaying a blatantly mocking grin. Hunt those monsters on his own. Then he turned to look at the helicopters firing up behind him. These three Apache helicopters would be needed to clear out that group of monsters. It wouldn't be too difficult for the three Apache helicopters to deal with the group of monsters. In other words, Kim Woo Jin was trying to take on the role of three Apache helicopters. There's no way a single player could do that. And for Lt. Col. Michael, who knew the power these helicopters possessed better than anyone, it was insulting that such a thing was even suggested. I just hope nothing goes wrong. As he said that, his expression clearly showed that he didn't believe Kim Woo Jin was capable of doing it. Then the report came. Kim Woo Jin has begun hunting. The interview ended immediately. When Lt. Col. Michael beckoned, fully armed soldiers began boarding the helicopter, and the reporter followed them. Then, before long, the helicopters roared loudly as they quickly headed to the location where the monsters were. Giant Orc a giant orc over three meters naturally, the strength that this huge body could showcase was beyond description. They could tear a troll apart with their bare hands, and when they were in a group, they wouldn't even avoid fighting an ogre. But the really scary thing about giant orcs wasn't their physical ability. The truly horrific thing about them was their troll-like vitality and the fact that once they found a prey, they would not stop pursuing them until they died. Some players even said that if you encountered one when on your own, it would be better to just kill yourself on the spot. 
Gurgle. It was this very giant orc that fell to the ground with its eyes rolled back in its head, struggling to breath. This creature on the ground in no way resembled the one that drove fear into the hearts of players everywhere. Crunch, crunch. Then a man appeared in front of this giant orc. Kim Woo Jin stared at the orc before him with a blank expression. This was a sight that players, who knew what the giant orc was capable of, would find hard to believe. Was there anything to fear from a giant orc when it was struggling to breathe? Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin simply looked down at the giant orc with bloody eyes. That was it. He didn't stab a sword into its defenseless body, he didn't use a spell or skill, and he didn't appear to be cautious of it either. He didn't even seem that interested in it. Instead, after a short while, he lifted his head and looked around. There wasn't much to see because of the thick poisonous fog and the black rain that was falling from the sky. And all that could be heard was sounds similar to those from the giant orc coming from every direction. After listening for a moment, Kim Woo Jin lifted the camera in his hand and spoke. Hunt complete. Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin moved the camera around, making sure to show everything that was happening as he continued. I've shown everything I am willing to show if you are still unconvinced after this, you can come see for yourself. Only. Finally, Kim Woo Jin turned the camera to himself. Otherwise, please allow Isaac Ivanov's party to attack the Sphinx's tomb dungeon. It was the moment when the third undead came back from death and was added to Isaac Ivanov's party. I'll start with the latter the word I translate to undead following the previous translator is which is a combination of morphemes that has a meaning like undying or immortal the same word is used in Johann George's title King of Undead which in Hangul is this is what makes the sentence confusing for me since the Kim Woo Jin persona doesn't actually use undead. The third part makes it even worse, cause I'm not sure what it might be referring to. I second guessed myself quite a bit in this last sentence tt. Chapter 227. In the current era, many people were interested in the dungeon attacks carried out by players. Because of this, whenever players entered dungeons, there would always be people who lamented. Ah, I really want to see what it's like for players to attack dungeons. If dungeon attacks could be broadcasted, wouldn't players take up the top 100 spots of the world's rich list? Is there really no way to make it work? I just want to see a video, it doesn't have to be live. They wanted to see the players fight. Of course, this was nothing strange. Instead, it would be strange if no one was interested in watching fights against monsters that transcended common sense using just the power of their bodies and mysterious items without the help of modern weapons. There should be a broadcast like that, right? Watch Man and Monster. In fact, many broadcasts, videos, and other content were produced for that purpose. Things like fake documentaries or fighting against monsters in a controlled setting were quite popular, and among them, Man and Monster, was a huge hit. I want to see real players, not that crappy acting. They have to direct it to put it out besides, aren't they just cowards who ran away from attacking dungeons? Fake, it's so fake. Of course, most players who took part in such broadcasts were called losers by the rest of the world. Those players who without courage were no longer able to attack dungeons so they decided to turn to acting for fear of losing what little fame they had. To compare them to the real players who fought on the front lines was an insult to those players, so people wanted to see the hunts by real players instead. But it was impossible. Say something that makes sense it would be really risky for a player who's attacking a five-floor dungeon to try something so stupid. It's already enough for players to risk their lives just to clear the dungeons. It also wouldn't be cheap for them to ask real players to make content to be broadcasted. Kim Woo Jin, I will prove my abilities with monsters in real life. The stage is California, USA. A player throws himself into a group of monsters. Therefore, the world went wild when Kim Woo Jin said he would use his powers against the monsters in real life. Is this article true? Wow, a five-floor player is attacking monsters in real life without the help of modern weapons. It was a craze that transcended common sense, and even those who had not been interested in it began to pay attention. An unprecedented stage had appeared, and Kim Woo Jin appeared on that stage to show the world. Kim Woo Jin is completely overpowering the monsters. 
just how powerful a frontline player is. Wow, this is crazy. I can confidently shout now monsters can't do anything in front of poison. Is this the birth of a poison king? Moreover, people were incredibly surprised by the power Kim Woo Jin displayed with his poison. But the players didn't just stop at surprise. Kim Woo Jin wasn't supposed to be that powerful, was he? This is crazy, isn't this just poison? Could poison really make a giant orc just collapse like that? His poison is powerful, but it's his skills that are terrifying. In all honesty, Kim Woo Jin had already disappeared from people's memories, and before that, he was only considered to be one of the supporting roles for the main character, Isaac Ivanov. No one had ever considered him to be on the same level as Isaac Ivanov. However, it was clear now that Kim Woo Jin's ability was not lacking when compared to Isaac Ivanov. Poison and undead, that's the worst combination imagine fighting against Isaac Ivanov's skeletons while in the poison fog horrific. And now there is an extra addition. And now Johann George was added to the equation. Naturally, no one could raise any more doubts about their power. They would definitely be able to clear the Sphinx dungeon. It may not be enough. They deserved the opportunity. And the Egyptian government had no choice but to give a response. The Egyptian government gives Isaac Ivanov the right to attack the Sphinx tomb dungeon. Permission had been granted. The moment this breaking news was released, Li Jina had one reaction. Fuck. After hearing that, Kim Woo Jin turned to look at him. You must be in a good mood to swear. Li Jina turned to look at Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin smiled slightly. Just as expected. The current situation was exactly what Kim Woo Jin wanted. He would now be able to enter the Sphinx dungeon together with Johan Gerg. And Kim Woo Jin had one more goal. Now the Messiah Guild has to choose. The Messiah Guild would not have expected the power of the Poison King, Kim Woo Jin, when they estimated Isaac Ivanov's power. But now, things had changed and the Messiah Guild was forced to do one of two things. Give up or continue the race. Fold or call. Regardless of what they picked, it would be good for Kim Woo Jin. If they give up, then it'll be easier to get rid of Johann George. If they gave up on trying to kill Isaac Ivanov and let Johann George enter the dungeon anyway, it would be easier for Kim Woo Jin to get rid of him. If they don't give up then they'll have to give him better treasures. On the other hand, if the Messiah Guild decided to increase his power with Kim Woo Jin in mind, Kim Woo Jin would be able to obtain more. Regardless of what they picked, Kim Woo Jin only stood to gain. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew exactly what they would choose. They will definitely call. If Isaac Ivanov cleared the Sphinx tomb dungeon, what would his next target be? The answer was obvious. Seven floors. Isaac Ivanov's next target would definitely be a seven-floor dungeon. And if that happened, the world would really start comparing them. Because if they don't, Isaac Ivanov will definitely be considered a rival to Lee Sejun. Lee Sejun. Lee Sejun, the savior and one and only conqueror of a seven-floor dungeon would be placed on the same starting line as Isaac Ivanov to see who would save the world first. And that would be absolutely unacceptable. That was something the Messiah Guild wanted to avoid at all costs. The Messiah Guild would do anything to make sure there was only one savior, even killing their most powerful and loyal hunting dog. Therefore, only one question remained. Did Kim Woo Jin really have the power to be the hunter and not the prey? But Kim Woo Jin didn't even think long about this question. All that's left is to hunt the hunter that wants to hunt me. Because there was still one trick he had hidden away. When you think about the cost of monster corpses, the desert is like a gold mine. A place where you could easily find monsters. On the other hand, the sub-Saharan desert was devastated by monsters, but you know that's just a repository of resources, right? We just had to mine this resource so where would we build our headquarters to do so? Well, we had no choice but to build outposts in Egypt, in North Africa, where the Nile River is located. At the same time, as southern Africa became embroiled in turmoil, companies and other forces aiming for the scattered resources were forced to settle in North Africa, and most of them settled in Egypt. Since people who did business relating to monsters gathered, it was natural that their ability to fight monsters increased. 
And when the security stabilized, people and capital began gathering as well and with such a virtuous cycle, Egypt grew to be the strongest power in Africa. Well, that doesn't mean the Egyptian citizens benefited from it. Of course, it was only the so-called high-ranking officials who enjoyed the becoming of a powerful nation. Under the title of a wartime situation, the Egyptian citizens were living lives that weren't even as good as before. That was the scene that Kim Woo Jin was witnessing at that moment. The Egyptian government official who came to greet them did so with a large fleet of Rolls-Royce Phantoms. What's more, these vehicles had all been heavily modified. It was a scene that one would only expect to see from the oil magnates in the Middle East, as there was even a mini fridge in each vehicle filled with expensive alcohol worth millions of one per bottle. On the other hand, the scene outside the window was an incredibly stark contrast. Beyond a fence topped with barbed wire, refugees from all over the country who had lost their homes could be seen around the horribly disorganized temporary dwellings they'd created. Under the name of an emergency, a dictatorship was created this world is really sick isn't that right? After saying that, Li Jina turned his head to Kim Wu Jin who met his gaze while saying. It seems you studied hard. Study? For a brilliant guy like me, this amount of knowledge is basic, basic. Li Jina's denial reminded Kim Wu Jin of the scene on the plane, where Li Jina was trying hard to memorize something. However, Kim Wu Jin didn't pay too much attention to it. Instead, he once again turned his head to look out the window, taking in the horrible scene on the side of the road. This scenery was the reason. I said I would change the world. The reason Kim Wu Jin willingly bowed his head and became a hunting dog and a pawn for Li Se Jun and the Messiah Guild. He believed they could change the world. I thought he would be different. Only. He believed that Li Se Jun wouldn't be like those power hungry and greedy people, but instead, he turned out to be the most greedy and dangerous monster in the world. Li Jina broke Kim Wu Jin out of his reverie as he said. Hey, the pyramid is really big we haven't even arrived yet and I can already see it. Kim Wu Jin then turned his head to look, and just over the horizon, the tip of a pyramid could be seen. Looking at it, Kim Wu Jin had a thought. Li Sejun, I will meet you before this year ends. There wasn't much time left until his revenge. Chapter, 228 Before entering a dungeon, there was a lot of preparation that needed to be done. Especially when the party involved was Isaac Ivanov's. This had already experienced numerous terrorist attacks and they had been in countless deadly situations. Access is denied to reporters. Therefore, it was natural that Isaac Ivanov's party would demand thorough surveillance, security and supervision ahead of their attack on the Sphinx's tomb dungeon. Those who do not cooperate will be shot. That's why the reporters did not act recklessly in the face of the Egyptian army's words despite the huge story that was in front of them. If you make a wrong move you'll really get shot. Now is not the time to take risks. Isaac Ivanov's party had no choice but to do whatever they could to ensure their dungeon attack wasn't hindered, even if it meant using brutal methods. It was under this strict supervision that Isaac Ivanov's party gathered in front of a dungeon gate which had appeared in the center of the Pyramid of Khafar. They were made up of Isaac Ivanov's team of three and Johann George's team of eleven, for a total of fourteen players, who were making their final preparations before entering the dungeon. Check your inventories one more time and make sure you have all the items we need. And among them, Johann George and his ten teammates were the busiest Johann George repeatedly shouted at them to check their inventories. Kim Woo Jin watched quietly from the side. There's no indication. Kim Woo Jin was holding a small device in his hand. It was an alarm that was connected to all kinds of surveillance equipment that Oh Se Chan had installed in this place a long while before. It was given to Kim Woo Jin so that he would be able to tell if anyone was trying to secretly approach them. And this alarm was currently silent. That means nothing was detected on the infrared and ultrasonic cameras. This meant that nothing had been detected by the sensors so far. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin's eyes became golden. Horace's eyes have opened. Horace's eyes could see through everything. The moment he opened his eyes, the view of the world that Kim Woo Jin had, immediately changed as information of all kinds became visible. They prepared a lot. Even information on the items Johann George and his party had brought with them was visible. 
but Kim Woo Jin couldn't find anything strange. Horace's eyes can't see anything. There was also no indications anywhere else. If so, that was why Kim Woo Jin was certain. It looks like they brought out the cap of invisibility. That this was the item the assassin who was targeting him was using. Kim Woo Jin was also satisfied by this fact. Then all the preparations are complete. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin spoke up. We'll enter the dungeon soon. The dungeon attack had commenced. Cluck cluck. From its appearance, there wasn't much of a difference between these chickens and normal chickens. These chickens looked quite similar to chickens that one could find on a chicken farm, except for the fact that they had black spots and stripes on their bodies and beaks. A hundred such chickens were gathered, tapping their beaks against the floor and from a distance, one might even think they were a group of chickens who were pecking the feed that had been thrown on the floor. But if one were to get closer, they would never believe that these were normal chickens. First, they were many times too big. Every single one of these chickens had a height above two meters when they stood straight. P.U.K. P.U.K. What was more surprising was that the things they were pecking at were actually trolls. Roar. These chickens weren't even pecking at the trolls and eating them ravenously, instead, they were slowly peeling the trolls' flesh back and pecking at them tl, bruh these chickens are metal. Feral chickens. They were monsters who could only be found in five-floor dungeons and above these monsters were known for their cruelty, ferocity, viciousness and cleverness. Moreover, because they lived in large groups, they were monsters that even veterans, who were experienced with attacking five-floor dungeons, would get cold sweat if they encountered them. That's why they were nicknamed Chicken Run. This was because whenever players encountered a large group of feral chickens, they would run away like cowards. But now a group of people were approaching these chickens without even trying to conceal their presence. Rattle. They even made a lot of noise and revealed their might. Coo, coo. At the sound, the feral chickens looked up from the trolls they were pecking at and observed the group that approached them with hostility, with eyes filled with ridicule. Co. The eyes of these chickens then became filled with murderous intent. They intended to smash the heads of these fools who dared to interrupt their meals and peck at their brains. Co. But the eyes of the feral chickens shook when they finally got a good look at the group who were approaching them. Coo. The ferocious feral chickens immediately became terrified. The fear of encountering a group of over 500 skeletons was not something that could be explained. Moreover, it wasn't just an army of skeleton soldiers. Hiaha. A group of skeleton wizards, who were poised to throw fireballs at any moment were moving alongside the group of skeleton soldiers. Kyaha. And at the front, the line of skeleton knights gave off a horrifying momentum. But the one that drew the most attention was the Dullahan, the headless knight who stood at the helm of the army. The eerie cries coming out of the Dullahan were enough to make the meat on the feral chickens' bodies harden. Kayahahaha. The Dullahan's head's cries filled their ears. The Dullahan's cries stuns the feral chickens. Following that ear-piercing shriek, the feral chickens subconsciously took a step back. And it was at that moment that the hunt had come to an end. What followed could only be called a massacre. Amazing. Johann George exclaimed with a sincere expression on his face. The scene in front of him was already coming to a close and there were only a few feral chickens left. Clap clap clap. He couldn't help but clap when he saw six skeleton soldiers move like a well-oiled machine in order to take down a feral chicken. Every time I see Mr. Ivanov's skeleton soldiers I can't help but feel admiration. Of course, this was only possible because Isaac Ivanov's skeletons were truly different from others. It's really different from my own skeleton soldiers. This was proven by the fact that the way Johann George's skeleton soldiers attacked was really different. While the skeleton soldiers with shields blocked the feral chickens' attacks, the skeleton soldiers with spears stabbed the chickens' bodies at the same time. There was no glamour, only simplicity. Honestly, Compared to the prowess displayed by Isaac Ivanov's skeletons, it was a sight that would make one shake their head rather than applaud. It's still the same, without any flaws. Instead, it was more compact because of its simplicity. Moreover, Kim Woo-jin knew better than anyone just how effective this compactness could truly be. 
that's what made Johann George so fearsome. Johann George's skeleton army was more like a wall of despair than a spear. A wall of despair so high that even the Messiah guilds was forced to give up its conquest. It's not that much now. Of course, that was only the case before Kim Wu Jin had returned to the past. It was natural for the current Johann George's abilities to be much weaker since Kim Wu Jin had effectively stolen many important skills from him since his return. Your Book of the Dead is quite shocking no matter how many times I see it. More importantly, Kim Wu Jin had even managed to obtain skills that even Johann George didn't have before he returned to the past. Of course, that wasn't the case for everything. I'm envious of your boatman Sharon 1, skill. It was a skill that allowed the user to make a deal with Sharon, the ferryman who took the dead to the underworld. Skeleton soldiers, skeleton knights, and even Dullahans and death knights could all be traded for as long as the appropriate price was paid. And the price here was magic power as long as he had magic power, Johann George would be able to maintain his skeleton army without needing new corpses to sacrifice. It's a horrific skill. It was one of the skills that bothered Kim Wu Jin as it had a hand in the creation of the King of Undead. It's such a shame that there could only be one skill page. Of course, since it was a legendary skill, it wasn't possible for more than one person to have it. If I had another one, I'd definitely give it to you without hesitation. Isaac Ivanov laughed at Johann George's words. Suddenly. Kui. A painful screech could be heard. Sheba. Followed by a shout that sounded like thunder. Who? Johann George let out a short whistle at the sound, turning his head in Li Jina's direction. What he saw was Li Jina beating up a feral chicken with nothing but his fists. Even in a place like a dungeon which was much more brutal than reality, such a sight was still quite shocking to behold. That guy is really amazing. Johann George sincerely expressed his admiration, and Kim Woo Jin let out a laugh. Clearing this dungeon will definitely be easy. When he heard that, Johann George subconsciously rubbed a ring on his finger and said. It's a pleasure. Then he smiled at Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin smiled right back at him of course, it was completely different on the inside. Hades Ring. This was the first time that Kim Woo Jin had seen this item. I never thought there could be something like this. Moreover, the effect of this item was so powerful that it shocked even Kim Woo Jin. As long as he engraved a sign on them he would be able to make any undead monster his this kind of robbery could only be possible with an item. It was a double-edged sword-like item for all those who had the emissary of the underworld as their halo. Firstly, the merit was incredible. Being able to take undead from others meant that it was possible for him to use an undead army that far surpassed his summoning limit. This was the reason why Johann George had a team of ten other necromancers. At the same time, it presented a risk factor if there was one item that could do this, it was possible for there to be others that had a similar effect. It would have been easier to get rid of Johann George with this item. If the Hades ring had been in the Messiah Guild's hands in the past, he was almost certain that Lee Se Jun would have hunted the King of Undead himself. It's such a headache. In other words, it was something that could be fatal to Kim Wu Jin, who was no different from the King of Undead. This meant that as long as the imprints were engraved at that moment, then even his skeleton knights and Dullahan would be stolen away. And if that happened, Kim Wu Jin would be forced to make sacrifices in order to summon new ones. What if there was nothing to sacrifice? That meant that he wouldn't be able to summon anything. The most troublesome part is that he revealed it himself. Johann George had directly informed Kim Wu Jin about the Hades ring. In a way, this could be seen as Johann George expressing his sincere loyalty to Isaac Ivanov as though he was saying I have nothing to hide from you. But Kim Wu Jin knew the truth. It's a difficult threat to ignore. This was done to tie Isaac Ivanov's feet if Johann George and Isaac Ivanov were to have a confrontation, Isaac Ivanov wouldn't have a choice but to be mindful of the Hades ring's effect. Sometimes, revealing something was much more useful than concealing it. That's Johann George's style. That was the King of Undead style. He was the type who profited from revealing his power rather than gaining something by hiding it. In fact, by deliberately revealing Hades' ring, Johann George would be able to hide his true power more easily. 
then I'd have to deal with the assassin wearing the cap of invisibility while focused on the ring. In that situation, it would be almost impossible for him to notice the presence of the assassin wearing the cap of invisibility which hid the wearer's presence from the very world. Moreover, it was impossible for him to identify just who the assassin wearing the cap of invisibility was. There are restrictions, but... As much as it had amazing power, it also had many restrictions. Once the cap was equipped, the wearer could not attack anything, and once they took it off there would be a 24-hour cooldown before they could equip it again. And finally, no food could be consumed while wearing the cap. In truth, it wasn't an item suited for assassination. Instead, for Lee Sejun, who was the owner of the cap of invisibility, it was more of a survival tool that could be used in the event of a bad situation. It was one of the last items to protect he who should never die. That doesn't mean it can't be used. Of course, as long as the shortcomings were covered for, there was no better tool for assassination. The assassin's success would be all but guaranteed. Kim Woo Jin was also certain. There's no way to prevent their attacks. Kim Woo Jin was certain that if the assassin tried to attack him, he would be unable to prevent it or avoid it. Of course, he had already prepared for that scenario. Two twenty-two feral chickens have been killed. Proceed to the next floor. Then they received the notification to head to the next floor. When he heard the notification, Johann George gave Kim Woo Jin a smile. Time for the second floor I want to reach the sixth floor as fast as possible. Kim Woo Jin nodded. Me too. The dungeon attack truly began in earnest. Chapter 229 For Isaac Ivanov's team, the dungeon attack was not difficult at all. Rattle in front of the skeleton army made up of over 600 skeletons, there were no monsters who could stand against them. It's Kim Woo Jin's poison. Stand back. And even if there were any enemies who could face the army, they were still forced to kneel in front of Kim Woo Jin's poison. There were no pauses, and no hesitation. Proceed to the next floor. Therefore, on the 21st day since they entered the dungeon, Isaac Ivanov's party and Johann George's party successfully cleared the fifth floor of the dungeon. Only one floor is left. And now only the sixth floor remained. Tensions were high for these players who were about to enter the sixth floor for the first time. I think it'll be harder than we expected. It wasn't just the tension that came with the fact that it was the last floor left. Because it hasn't been easy up to this point. The dungeon's difficulty rating hadn't been a lie which meant that the last floor would be much harder to deal with than the previous floors. This is the end. It's coming to an end. Most of all, everyone present knew that only one of the two parties would be able to survive the sixth floor. For some, the sixth floor would be their grave. Maybe that was why it was hard for him to not say something. Now then. Suddenly, Johann George spoke out. The only thing he could see was the air, yet he smiled anyway. Let's go hunt that monster. With those words, the world around them changed, and a new world welcomed them. P.U.K. The first thing that greeted them was fine sand that reached their knees. It's a forest. It's a jungle. T.L., a.k.a. dense forest. The next thing that greeted them was a lush jungle that was growing out of the sand. Uh. Ha. Huh. It was then. I'll give you a notice. As soon as everyone entered, Isaac Ivanov addressed the group. From now on, we are going to pause the attack indefinitely until we catch the assassin targeting us. It was none other than Johann George who reacted first to Isaac Ivanov's words as soon as they entered the sixth floor filled with tension. To be precise, it was Johann George's skeleton soldiers that attacked Isaac Ivanov's skeleton soldiers without hesitation, creating the loud sound of bones sounded out. Clang! Immediately afterward, the thunderous sounds of weapons colliding filled the area as the skeleton soldiers became locked in combat. The battle between Johann George and Isaac Ivanov's had begun. Capture! Then Johann George began shouting orders in a terrifyingly cold voice to his ten necromancer subordinates. Get the skeleton knights first, so they don't get away. Lock down the skeleton knights. Johann George had already seen the core. I can't get Isaac Ivanov. It was impossible for them to catch Isaac Ivanov's party at that moment. 
Isaac Ivanov's skeleton knights are already raised, so if he loses them he can't regain them. Even so, they should at least prioritize the skeleton knights, which was Isaac Ivanov's core power. It takes a long time to rebuild the stacks for ruler of the battlefield. More importantly, the skeleton knights Kim Wu Jin was using were those who had already been buffed to the limit before being sealed into the Book of the Dead. Taking them down would be the same as disabling the other side's state of the art equipment. It was something that had to be done even at the risk of their lives. Don't pay attention to the skeleton soldiers. Just get the skeleton knights. It's fine even if you use more skeletons. We have more than double their number. In other words, they couldn't take the time to focus on the skeleton soldiers now. Johann George noticed it quickly. And Kim Woo Jin also knew that. But it's too late. Knowing that the most important thing to do in this situation was protect the skeleton knights, Kim Woo Jin had been using the skeleton soldiers as decoys from the start in order to get away with his main force. And his skeleton soldiers performed their task perfectly. They managed to stall Johann George and the ten skeletons, which were three or four times their number for quite a while. And taking advantage of that advantage, Kim Woo Jin, his alter ego, Lee Jin Ah, and the skeleton knights, began escaping under Johann George's vengeful gaze. Seeing this, one of his subordinates couldn't help but ask. Should we follow them? Johann George's answer was simple. I don't know about an all-out battle, but it's insane to even try to chase after Isaac Ivanov's party. Then, Johann George said to the heir. It looks like he guessed our plan. Dullahan has been sealed in the Book of the Dead. When the sandstorm that swirled around the Dullahan's body died down, a large stone slab could be seen in its place. Kim Woo Jin then took the stone slab and placed it into the large Book of the Dead. That was the last one. Thirty pages are currently available. Soon after, he received a notification, but Kim Woo Jin ignored it and pulled out a stone slab from the book. At that time, Lee Jin Ah walked up to him. I don't think anyone is following us. Instead of answering the question in Russian, Kim Woo Jin gave a signal by covering his mouth with his finger. Lee Jin Ah shut his mouth and nodded, understanding that there might be an invisible pursuer. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin summoned the skeleton soldier from the page he pulled out of the Book of the Dead. Summoned Wyvern Skeleton Soldier. The one summoned was none other than the Wyvern Skeleton Soldier. Used Resurrection. The next step was, of course, using the Osiris Ring's resurrection skill. The body of the Wyvern, which had only been bones before, became covered and filled with flesh, skin, and blood. Kia. The Wyvern, which had returned to life, revealed its feelings without hesitation. Kim Woo Jin then climbed onto the wyvern's back this time, the usual saddle wasn't present. When Lee Jin Ah tilted his head after discovering this fact, Kim Woo Jin beckoned to him. Get on. Lee Jin Ah froze for a moment before responding. It's a bit strange to ride behind a man. Kim Woo Jin shot an eerie gaze towards Lee Jin Ah, who said these words with a sincerely serious expression. You better get on before I make it carry you in its mouth. At those words, Li Jina turned to look at the wyvern's snout, and as if it had been waiting, the wyvern yawned, revealing rows of sharp teeth. Seeing this, Li Jina climbed onto the wyvern's back without another word. Ah, wait what about that guy? The only thing left was Kim Wu Jin's alter ego, but there was no more space for him to sit. However, his worries didn't last for long. Keek. The wyvern began flapping its wings with a loud cry, and when Kim Woo Jin's alter ego stuck out its arms, the wyvern grabbed a hold of them. Crunch. It seemed that the wyvern was ready to crush Kim Woo Jin's frail arms with its sharp, powerful claws. At the same time, the wyvern started flying. Now, no matter who it was, it would be impossible to follow them. It's done. Only then did Kim Woo Jin speak in Korean. What? Our job is finished. Li Jin Ah tilted his head at that. What are you talking about? Isn't it just beginning? It had been less than an hour since they entered the sixth floor of the dungeon. And from now on they would have to hunt Johann George's group while dealing with the monsters here. In terms of a marathon, this should only be the starting line. It wasn't a situation where the word end would be used. It is the beginning. 
then. But we don't have to do anything else. What are you talking about? Johann George will take care of everything. Kim Wu Jin closed his mouth after saying that, a slight smile on his lips. It's obvious that Johann George is going to make his move here. The Johann George, who Kim Wu Jin knew, was a man who could never be truly loyal to the Messiah Guild. It was obvious just what choice he would make in the future. That choice, I'll help you make it sooner. Kim Wu Jin was determined to prepare the conditions to help Johann George make that choice faster. A terrible feeling of fear approaches. Get ready, Li Jina. Kim Wu Jin, who felt something with the help of his enhanced senses from the vampire skill, warned Li Jina. Just as Li Jina asked this, a huge shadow covered the wyvern that was in flight. The creature that appeared had a lion's body, a snake's tail and a human face. A sphinx. It was the master of this dungeon, who naturally wouldn't allow wyverns to fly around in its territory. Kahung. It let out a warning roar to the intruders. The wyvern loses its sense due to the sphinx's roar. Key. And with that notification, the wyvern let out a high-pitched shriek before squirming violently in action which inevitably caused it to fall from the sky. Then Kim Wu Jin spoke again. Get ready for the crash landing. Li Jina only had one response to those words. Fuck. Li Jina swore loudly as he forced his left wrist back into the proper position. Crunch. Along with that eerie sound, a vein throbbed on Li Jina's forehead. Li Jina gingerly touched his injuries and swallowed his pain before turning to Kim Wu Jin. Couldn't you give me a proper warning before we crashed? Huh? Did you really have to tell me only just before it happened? The scene from before flashed in Li Jina's mind. While they were flying on the wyvern, a sphinx suddenly appeared, and the wyvern, terrified by the sphinx, fell from the sky. Thinking about the crash again made Li Jina tremble. Damn, I don't even think I could go on a plane for the time being. As Li Jina said, it was truly horrifying. On the other hand, the fact that Li Jina had experienced the crash and only got his wrist broken was, in itself, amazing. Li Jina. Of course, the thing that was even more amazing was the fact that Kim Wu Jin, who had gone through the same ordeal as Li Jina, and who didn't have the undying fighter as his halo, hadn't gotten any injuries at all. Naturally, that was due to Kim Wu Jin's skill. You'll have to learn to cope with falling. What the hell are you talking about? A technique to minimize damage and impact to the body when falling from a flying monster. Literally that from now on, there will be numerous scenarios where you'll fall from the sky without warning. In addition, it was a skill that every player who challenged sixth floor and higher dungeons should have. Because like the Sphinx from before, monsters will never give you a warning before making you fall. Because these dungeons had numerous large, flying monsters like Sphinxes and Dragons. Li Jina fell silent at those words. There was nothing he could say to refute what Kim Wu Jin had just said and now wasn't the time to have such an argument. Can we really catch that monster? Could they really catch the Sphinx? That was the first Sphinx Li Jina had ever encountered. Just the fact that he'd asked Kim Wu Jin if they could really hunt it showed how shaken he was. The pressure given off by the Sphinx was enormous. And it wasn't just because it was huge. It appeared without a sound. What was surprising was the fact that such a giant monster had appeared in an instant. This showed that the flying ability of the Sphinx was very different from that of the hatchling that they'd hunted before. Moreover, its roar appeared to be even stronger than a dragon's fear. After all, didn't the fierce wyvern fall to the ground with only a single roar from the Sphinx? It won't be easy. Kim Wu Jin also knew that Sphinxes weren't easy opponents. This boss of this a rank 6 floor dungeon was a powerful entity strong enough to rank in the top 5 of all monsters that could be encountered in a 6 floor dungeon. In all honesty, even if every player in the world created parties, there wouldn't be more than 10 parties that could actually defeat the Sphinx. Therefore, Kim Wu Jin was certain. I'm the only one in this dungeon who can hunt it. The only person in that dungeon who could actually hunt that monster was Kim Wu Jin himself. And now Johann George has realized how terrifying that monster really is. And Johann George now knew that too. That was why Kim Wu Jin was convinced. 
I'm the only one who can hunt the Sphinx, so Johann George's options are simpler. Of what choice Johann George would make after seeing the Sphinx. The roar of the Sphinx, a monster which had only appeared in myths, rippled through the entire forest of the sixth floor like a storm. Even Johann George's party was not free from the sudden eruption. Oh my God! Oh dear God! The sound drove fear into the hearts of Johann George's men, and they subconsciously called out to their gods. That was the extent to which the Sphinx surpassed common sense. On the other hand, Johann George looked at the Sphinx's shadow with a grim expression. His expression seemed to mirror that of those around him, but his eyes were burning more fiercely than ever before. In that state, Johann George said. Let's change the plan. He received no answer, but Johann George continued anyway. Let's just kill Isaac Ivanov. For the first time, he received an answer. An English sentence was scratched into the sand beneath him. What do you mean? To that question, Johann George continued. Isaac Ivanov guessed our plan he realized that there was an assassin, and he realized that the assassin would try to target him after he defeated the Sphinx therefore, he forced the situation if he doesn't attack the Sphinx then there's no reason for him to be attacked. The text below him immediately changed. So you want to kill him? Then should we just let Isaac Ivanov pick us off one by one? After saying that, Johann George shook his head. We only have two options left either we die by Isaac Ivanov, or we die with Isaac Ivanov what is clear is that killing him is still our best bet. It was certainly a valid statement. How? Because of this, the hidden assassin asked how he would do it instead of questioning him further, and to that, Johann George responded. I'll use myself as bait I'm sure that they'd try to kill me, or at least I'm sure Isaac Ivanov would it's a war of attrition otherwise. After saying that, he played with the Hades ring on his finger. Firstly, Isaac Ivanov can't effectively use his skeletons against me in the end, it's up to you to decide that's why I'm here. The hidden assassin then wrote. Only. I'll leave it to you. In response to that, Johann George said. Then let's take a break first as far as I can tell, there's a high chance that this will turn into a long-term battle. A smile spread across his lips. You should take off the cap and rest first you haven't taken a proper break in over 20 days, and I think you'll need a proper break in order to ensure everything goes smoothly. Then he called the hidden assassin's name for the first time. Don't you agree, Miss Miyazaki? Chapter, 230 A hunting dog's primary purpose was to bite the throat of its prey with its sharp fangs. But things didn't always go as planned. What if you can't find a way to hunt the prey after entering the dungeon? If you couldn't hunt the prey you were aiming for in the dungeon, then it was virtually impossible to bite that prey's neck. What was important was to have a backup plan in case something like that really happened. Kim Woo Jin had the best plan for such a scenario. It's simple, just die together. Guerrilla Tactics Buying time by running away and prolonging the dungeon attack, eventually making it impossible for the target to clear the dungeon. That was the best alternative that Kim Woo Jin had. And in fact, Kim Woo Jin had successfully completed several hunts using that method. To explain it further, you become a runaway in a dungeon, the chances of survival decrease as the attack time increases and if the target ignores you and tries to attack anyway, then you have a chance to survive. Naturally, he knew better than anyone else just what skills were needed to be a good runaway. So exactly what skills were needed? When you're a runaway, the most important thing is to never stay in the same location. A good runaway would never stay in the same spot. After all, even if you didn't want to, it was almost impossible for the human body to leave absolutely no traces. Instead, it's okay to leave a trail as long as you keep a good distance from your pursuers the environments in dungeons always have variables. In fact, even if you left traces that the enemy could follow, as long as you kept your distance, those tracks could actually help you even more. If you're smart, you could even use your tracks to create a path for your pursuers. Of course, Kim Woo Jin would never simply run away. Since the pursuers are usually forced to follow the runaway's trail. He deliberately left marks in order to control his pursuers' movements. This was the reason Kim Woo Jin purposely left traces behind with Lee Jina on the third day after entering the dungeon's sixth floor. Hey, by the way. 
After listening to his explanation, Li Jina couldn't help but ask. Why the hell are you explaining it to me so kindly? Kim Wujin smiled without answering. Li Jina was a bit frightened when he saw that ominous smile. You're not telling me to go into dungeons and kill people like that are you? Even to that question, Kim Wujin didn't answer. And his smile disappeared not long after. Seeing that, Li Jina didn't say anything more. Then they heard a voice. It's Johann George Isaac Ivanov, I'd like to make a deal. After finding the traces left behind by Kim Woo Jin, Johann George stepped forward and raised his voice. Of course, Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina didn't respond. Instead, they held their breaths and watched Johann George and their surroundings carefully. They were prepared to retreat at a moment's notice. This is a gift for the negotiating table. Then, Johann George removed a black helmet, similar to the ancient Greek bronze helmet worn by soldiers, from his waist, raised it up, then placed it on the floor. I'll step back first there's no need to be suspicious. As he said, Johann George stepped away from the helmet, and upon seeing this, Kim Woo Jin put on the Grim Reaper's mask. Connected to skeleton soldier. Then he moved the linked skeleton soldier over. When the skeleton soldier neared the helmet, Kim Woo Jin's eyes in the mask glowed gold. Horus' eyes have opened. Then he saw it. Cap of Invisibility. Rating, Legendary. Required level, level 100 or higher. Description, Hades helmet it can completely hide the wearer's existence. Reduces all defense by 30%. Activates perfect transparency. Food and water cannot be consumed. There is 24-hour cooldown when removed. The Cap of Invisibility. Hades helmet was an item that made perfect hiding possible. This is my first time seeing it in real life. This was one of the saviors that even Kim Woo Jin hadn't been able to see before returning to the past. Because of this, he became certain at that moment. Johann George betrayed them. Between the Messiah Guild and Isaac Ivanov, Johann George had chosen Isaac Ivanov. You won. The first thing Johann George said to Kim Woo Jin, who was Isaac Ivanov's representative, during their meeting on the fourth day since they entered the sixth floor of the dungeon was a declaration of surrender. From now on, I'll cooperate with whatever you want to do I just need you to guarantee my survival. Johann George spat out all the words he knew Isaac Ivanov would want to hear. Johann George. Of course, Kim Woo Jin expected this to happen. He's definitely a man whose personality is not suited for bargaining. Johann George had always been like that. He wasn't interested in weighing every detail and at the same time, he was good at making large deals. That was why Johann George could become a big shot. If he cared about weighing each and every small detail then he never would have become the king of the group fighting against the Messiah Guild. He's decisive. And he was a man who knew how to make every decision quickly and decisively. For now, he'll come to my side. Knowing Johann George's personality, Kim Woo Jin knew that Johann George wouldn't betray him in this dungeon. For now. Of course, he was also aware that that loyalty wouldn't last very long after all, Johann George had wanted to kill Isaac Ivanov in the first place, and the reason he wanted to survive was so he could crush Isaac Ivanov and become king. What was clear was that Johann George would never betray him in this dungeon. That's why he accepted Johann George's offer. Isaac Ivanov's will remains the same as long as we get rid of the assassin, he will continue the attack. And Kim Woo Jin also didn't want to fight unnecessarily. How is the assassin armed? Now, it was the time to get rid of the assassin. Johann George answered the question without hiding anything. The assassin came with three special items one is the cap of invisibility Hades helmet. Hades helmet, which would perfectly hide the assassin's presence. But that wasn't enough to maintain their stealth and mobility so they also added Hermes boots. The Messiah Guild had also given the assassin Hermes boots. Kim Woo Jin was surprised to hear that. They pulled out all the stops for Isaac Ivanov. Hermes boots, the boots of swiftness that allowed the user to walk without touching the ground, were priceless. I can't believe Park Shin Hai also used her treasure. In addition, it was one of Park Shin Hai's key items. As a wizard, 
she was able to showcase amazing firepower with the maneuverability given to her by the boots. And the compatibility between the cap of invisibility and the boots of swiftness was on a completely different level. A quick assassin who was invisible and leaves no footprints. They would have the ability to assassinate any target. Of course, there was still one thing left. No matter how fast they were, if their fangs weren't sharp then they would be nothing but a butterfly or a mosquito. The weapon is. And there was no way they would attach weak fangs to those two treasures. Of all the legendary items they had, the weapon would definitely be the grand prize. Naturally, his prediction was correct. Ama no Murakumo no Tsuruji won. Heavenly Cloud Sword The Messiah Guild had taken out the Heavenly Cloud Sword in order to perfectly erase Isaac Ivanov. The Sword Saint's Treasured Sword They had taken out one of the Sword Saint's three treasured swords in order to deal with him. That was why Kim Woo Jin was able to immediately make a guess. Miyazaki, she is the assassin. The assassin who'd come to kill him was none other than the Sword Saint's most talented disciple, Miyazaki Sakura. In a jungle filled with knee-deep sand no matter where you stepped, a figure could be seen moving at an incredible speed. Who? It was none other than the Sword Saint's disciple, Miyazaki Sakura, who moved at a high speed while walking on air. Key. The hordes of monsters chasing after her made angry cries, but that was all. It didn't take long for these monsters to become dots on the horizon as they were slowed down by the fine sand. Pot. Suddenly, a huge wall rose up in front of Miyazaki Sakura. Then upon closer inspection, this wall was revealed to be none other than a golem. Woo woo. And it wasn't an ordinary golem, instead, it was a black golem which was said to be quite hard to deal with among golems. It was a monster with the nickname Sword Killer, as it was considered a nightmare for any player who used a bladed weapon. However, Miyazaki Sakura didn't even pause for a second after seeing the black golem. Sut. Instead, with a soft sound, the black golem fell to the ground in two halves. She bypassed the destroyed golem and continued to move quickly. It was truly an amazing sight however, even though she was the one who had done something so amazing, her expression was still exceptionally grim. Damn it, he betrayed me. On the first day on the sixth floor of the dungeon, after Isaac Ivanov's team fled, Johann George came to her and said. Let's get everything ready. And with those words, she took off the cap of invisibility for the first time this was so she could regain her best condition since she had gone without food, water or rest for over 20 days and had been using the turtle breathing technique to hold it together. But the moment she took off the cap of invisibility, Johann George had collected it before shouting. Isaac Ivanov. When she heard it, she thought that Isaac Ivanov might have come back, so she fled without hesitation. I was tricked. It was only after running for a long time that she realized she'd been tricked by Johann George. Since then, her situation had been the same as it was at that moment. She was now alone in the dungeon and had become a runaway. I can't end it like this. Of course, even at that moment, Miyazaki Sakura didn't think about giving up or anything of the sort. This was proven by the fact that she'd decided to be a fugitive. I'll survive somehow as long as I have the boots of swiftness, they'll never catch me. She was confident as long as she had the Hermes boots. If I manage to leave somehow, I can get help. Furthermore, she was convinced that she'd get help as long as she could leave the dungeon gate. Otherwise, we can just die together. In the worst case scenario, she was already prepared to die here. However, she soon encountered the worst scenario for a runaway. Chapter 231. The Cap of Invisibility. The biggest drawback of this cap, which was also called Hades' helmet, was that you couldn't eat anything while wearing it, and after you took it off, you would need to wait a day before putting it on again. Of course, that didn't mean that there weren't ways to overcome these drawbacks. There was an item called the Naden One, of the human-faced turtle TL, mistranslated this earlier, it gave me a lot of trouble to figure out I originally called it turtle breathing, kinda, as a last resort. It was like candy, and just by keeping it in your mouth, you would be able to survive without eating. The problem was that even though it allowed the user to survive without having to eat, it didn't remove the feeling of hunger or thirst. With it, one would be able to live as long as they wanted without needing to eat, 
but as time went by, they would also suffer from intense feelings of hunger and thirst. How much would someone be able to maintain their vigilance on the target while keeping up their guard in a world filled with monsters in that state? This was something that could not be attempted without exemplary willpower. Miyazaki Sakura Therefore, the Messiah Guild chose Miyazaki Sakura, the Sword Saint's disciple, as the assassin for Isaac Ivanov. For one, she had all the necessary power and capability. At the same time, they had a clear motive. Because of Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin. In the entire world, the one who was the most shocked to hear this name was none other than the Sword Saint himself. After all, it meant that all the assassination attempts that they'd made so far had ended in failure. Most importantly, when Kim Woo Jin reappeared, there was only one place on the planet that the Messiah Guild turned towards. They must have told them to take responsibility. They must have asked the Sword Saint Sai to make up for their failings. It was also highly likely that they didn't just demand them to fix their errors, instead, they would have demanded that the Sword Saint show sincerity in their actions. In that situation, what was the best way to solve that problem? If it's the Sword Saint's own disciple, there would be no need to question their skill or loyalty. From the Sword Saint's perspective, there would be no better card than his first disciple in addition, the Messiah Guild would definitely not raise any objection in that case. Especially if the Sword Saint added his treasured Heavenly Cloud Sword to the mix. Kim Woo Jin could speak with certainty. Their preparations were perfect. The Messiah Guild had definitely prepared a trump card good enough to kill Isaac Ivanov. There was only one problem. It's terrifyingly perfect. Isaac Ivanov was a man who'd been betrayed by none other than their savior. And now that guy was wearing a helmet. The world can no longer see you. Then I'll catch Miyazaki Sakura first. It was the moment Kim Woo Jin had truly become a hunting dog. The public opinion towards the sword saint was indescribably high. The biggest reason for this high praise was the fact that the sword saint was usually the one to land the final blow on the final boss in a dungeon. He approached those monsters that transcended common sense, and stabbed his sword into their necks. To put it into football terms, it was similar to the way the strikers on the team usually received more praise than the other players. The Sword Saint's disciples also followed the footsteps of their master. Except for one. About thirty have passed here looking at the depth of the footprints, they're probably skeleton soldiers. Sakura Miyazaki, the Sword Saint's first disciple, also had a role that differed from the Sword Saints. The reason for this was because she, who usually attacked dungeons together with the Sword Saint, had no need to be like the Sword Saint. After all, was it wise to have another one that was the same as the best and that could not beat the best? So her role became one of preparing the best stage for the Sword Saint to act. To put it simply, she was a cleaner, but usually, she was called the commander who grasped and controlled the battle situation. They're creating a perimeter around me. Therefore it wasn't surprising that she had more tactical and strategic knowledge than most players who entered dungeons. Therefore, it was natural for her to know the virtues a runaway should have better than anyone. Following the traces I left. Therefore, she deliberately left traces while running away. She knew full well that an excellent fugitive should leave behind a trail with which to influence their pursuer's movements. It's almost time and she knew better than anyone what a good runaway should do. Suddenly. Rattle. The sound of bones rattling came from behind her. As she turned to look at the sound, she found a group of skeletons heading her way. The number was quite large. Kyaha. And among these skeletons, she also heard the terrifying cry of a skeleton knight. However, Miyazaki Sakura didn't pay any attention to these skeleton soldiers or the skeleton knight. He's here. The thing that caught her eye was the large wall of a man who appeared with a large shield in his hands. It was Li Jina. The Aegis Shield. Miyazaki Sakura's eyes burned fiercely when she saw the Aegis Shield, which had originally belonged to the Sword Saint. Of course, common sense dictated that it would be very foolish to attack Li Jina at that moment in a fit of anger. Of all the people in the dungeon, Li Jina was probably the hardest to kill and from a runaway's perspective, it was like a dead end. Jerk. Nevertheless, Miyazaki Sakura's footsteps were headed towards none other than Li Jina, who was holding the Aegis shield. 
It was an action that completely went against common sense. It was something that no one would have imagined, including Lee Jino. And that was exactly the reason why Miyazaki Sakura chose to target Lee Jino. The other side is definitely a trap. No matter how anyone looked at it, it would be impossible for them to imagine that she'd go after Lee Jino, which meant that they wouldn't set any traps around him. There's no one around him. In other words, there would be no one around to watch Li Jina's back. It was just him. This is a chance to get rid of him. For Miyazaki Sakura, it was a golden opportunity to get rid of Li Jina. This was what Miyazaki Sakura had been aiming for from the start. No one else will be able to take over the role of tank in their group. Isaac Ivanov and Johann George were basically able to summon an inexhaustible army that was impossible to completely annihilate. Given enough time, they could make any number of alternative plans if one of them was incapacitated. However, their tank was one member of the team that couldn't be replaced. So if I kill him, the attack on the Sphinx dungeon will fail. That meant that Li Jina's death would probably lead to the failure of the dungeon attack. Even if it didn't, there was still plenty of merit for Miyazaki Sakura to kill Li Jina. Even if it doesn't, as long as he dies, there will be no one who can deal with me one on one. After Li Jina died, if any of the others encountered Miyazaki Sakura on her own, it would basically lead to their deaths. She didn't believe that Isaac Ivanov, Johann George, or Kim Wu Jin could survive an attack from her sword. And the basis for that was none other than the sword that was currently sheathed at her waist the Heavenly Cloud Sword. When in its sheath, the sword had an eerie aura, and when it left its sheath, it would be able to unleash one extremely powerful attack. Of course, the Aegis Shield was a legendary item capable of blocking any attack. If both the Aegis Shield and the Heavenly Cloud Sword activated at the same time, there was a high chance that the effect would be lackluster. Because of this, as soon as Li Jina narrowed the distance between them, she moved at her fastest speed. Hot. Her leap was indescribably perfect, despite being on sand. This sight was only possible with Hermes' boots, which lightened her body, and made it impossible for her to step on the ground. Her sword, which swung towards Li Jina in one smooth motion, headed for the crack between his helmet and chest armor. Sut. Then it cut right through the next with a soft sound. And Miyazaki Sakura watched the head begin to fall with her own eyes. It's done. This fact caused her eyes to shine. That was it. The last thing she would ever see. P.U.K. At that moment, a previously invisible assassin's sword cut through her neck in a replay of her previous actions. Miyazaki Sakura. A short memory passed through Kim Woojin's mind as he cut her head off. The second time. It was a memory of the hunting dog, Kim Woojin, killing Miyazaki Sakura in the war against the sword saint before returning to the past. Thanks to that, it was easy to read her plan. If it wasn't for that battle, he wouldn't have been able to tell her plan and create a trap in reverse. That was a fact. Kim Woo Jin had already known of Miyazaki Sakura's plan and that Lee Jina was her target. Therefore, he used Lee Jina as bait, and the result was before him now. Her head had been cut off. Uh, uh. Li Jina, who'd put his severed head back on his neck, looked around for a moment before finally turning to the right side of Miyazaki Sakura's body, where Kim Woo Jin was standing before saying. I felt like I was going to die. The other side. Then he heard Kim Woo Jin's voice coming from the left side of Miyazaki Sakura's body. Li Jina turned his body slightly to the left before talking again. I thought I was going to die. This wasn't something that a human would be able to say after getting their head chopped off. However, Kim Woo Jin wasn't surprised. Now he's finally worthy of the title Immortal 2. That was because for Kim Woo Jin, this was quite normal. Shook. Instead, Kim Woo Jin's focus was completely on the white sword that had taken from Miyazaki Sakura's hand. Heavenly Cloud Sword. It was a sword that had many nicknames, including Kusanagi's sword. One of the sword saint's treasured swords. However, the one nickname that Kim Woo Jin remembered it by was the sword saint's treasured sword. It was a weapon that he put back in his inventory even as he was about to die just so no one else would get it. In addition, it was a weapon that he wouldn't give to anyone, 
to the point of returning it to his inventory before he died. Because of that, this sword disappeared from the world to be precise, it disappeared together with the sword saint. In other words, this was Kim Woo Jin's first time. I never imagined I would get this. Heavenly Cloud Sword. Rating, Legendary. Physical Attack, 650. Required Level, Level 1 or Higher. Description, A sword with the power of Orochi the moment it is taken from its sheath it will reveal a surprising power. Attack power increases in proportion to user's level. 20% health when equipped. 20% stamina when equipped. 20% basic attack damage. 300% damage for the first attack after the sword is drawn from its sheath. Actually seeing the status screen for the Heavenly Cloud Sword with his own eyes. And he could immediately tell just how amazing it was. Damage is increased for one attack. In particular, the option that increased the damage of the first attack after the sword was quite surprising. This would be a nightmarish weapon in the hands of the Guardians of Holy Light. I'm half sure I spelt it incorrectly, and it might actually be Naiden which is pronounced the same way but all the Nadens I found in research referred to inner alchemy in general rather than a specific item so please tell me if it actually is Naiden, Naiden, or something else entirely. Chapter, 232 when a powerful attack was combined with a powerful weapon, it would become a nightmare for the person who had to face it. Kim Woo Jin who had experienced such scenes before, knew exactly how terrifying this nightmare could be. This isn't a good sword for me. In other words, this wasn't a very good skill for Kim Woo Jin, who didn't have any powerful attack skills. It would be better for him to just rely on Percival's spear, the ability of which could be strengthened by King Arthur's ring, or the Ganjang in Makya. Soon after, Kim Woo Jin pulled the sheath from its position at the waist of Miyazaki Sakura, and returned the sword to its sheath. Tsung. When he heard the sound of the sword entering the sheath, Li Jin Ah, who was watching the scene from the back couldn't help but exclaim. That sword and sheath are pretty amazing and that helmet is even more special if I had that than a women's bath o n dash, no, I mean I could fight monsters more effectively definitely I'm definitely not a man who would enter a women's bathhouse if he had the chance to become invisible. It was then. Poot. Kim Woo Jin threw the heavenly cloud sword in his hand to Lee Jin Ah. You dash, ah. Uh. Surprised, Lee Jin Ah stretched both hands to catch the heavenly cloud sword. Then he turned to look at Kim Woo Jin with wide eyes he was so surprised that he didn't even know what to say. Kim Woo Jin spoke to him. It'll be more useful to you than me learn to use it on your own. When he heard that it was being given to him, Li Jin Ah's eyes widened further before they became a bit shadowed. You probably want me to use this like that battery heavenly dragon sword, don't you? Hey, you already fooled me once, would I let you fool me twice? Wait, is this the third time? Even the stupidest man in the world wouldn't fall for the same trick three times. Kim Woo Jin didn't respond to Lee Jin Ahs words. Instead, he cut off Miyazaki Sakura's ankles and removed the shoes on her feet. Hermes Boots. Rating, Legendary. Required Level, Level 1 or Higher. Description, Boots that contain the power of Hermes allows you to walk without stepping on the ground. 30% Movement Speed. 30% jumping ability. Allows the user to move without touching the ground. These boots were also thrown to Li Jina. A huck. Li Jina looked greatly frightened as he received these boots together with the heavenly cloud sword. What dash, what do you want? To Li Jina, who asked this question in a trembling voice, Kim Wu Jin simply took off the cap of invisibility and placed it on top of the heavenly cloud sword and Hermes boots. When he saw this, Li Jin Ah looked like he wanted to run away as fast as he could at that moment. This time you'll use them. Then Kim Woo Jin finally gave him an answer. These are really for me. And he nodded to the following question without saying anything. After that, Li Jin Ah's blank and slightly frightened expression changed to one of surprise. Ku. You finally acknowledge my worth yes, a real man should have items like these. Even so, the fact that he'd been given three legendary items was quite shocking. He couldn't help but feel delighted. Come on, you can ask for anything. Then with great momentum, he continued. 
Right now I could even hunt that ugly sphinx bastard. He stopped there. Ah. Was that the reason Kim Woo Jin had given him these items? And what did he mean by saying he could use them this time? While Li Jina's shoulders dropped as he realized what head walked into, Kim Woo Jin picked up Miyazaki Sakura's severed head. Anubis' eyes have opened. I'm curious as to what you were planning. Now it was time for him to get the most valuable reward since entering this dungeon. I guess you're done. Rattle. Johann George called out as he led a hundred or so skeletons over to Kim Woo Jin and Li Jina with a bright smile. The bodies of every skeleton with him had the traces of battle. The other ten have been cleaned up. These were the traces left after removing his ten subordinates. This wasn't something Kim Woo Jin had asked for. I did it at my own discretion because I thought that was the best way to handle everything neatly their power wouldn't have contributed much to the Sphinx hunt anyway I brought you their heads so you can check for yourself, just in case. It was his own decision and action. An action that stemmed from the judgment that if they stir up trouble, it might affect his own plans. The tension in Li Jina's eyes reduced slightly at Johann George's words. Isn't this bastard too dangerous? Li Jina's instincts were beginning to tell him that Johann George was not a simple character. On the other hand, Kim Wu Jin didn't react to Johann George's appearance. Instead, as if he'd expected Johann George to do so, he didn't even ask any questions. It's time to hunt the Sphinx. Instead, he just gave an order. Li Jina and Johann George nodded. After all, it wasn't like they could disagree. As fast as possible. Then Kim Woo Jin added another condition. Eliminate the Sphinx as fast as possible and leave the dungeon. The reason he added this condition was because of something he'd learned from Miyazaki Sakura. On September 1st, the Messiah Guild will commence its second seven-floor dungeon attack and on the next day, there will be a terrorist attack in Korea this will drive the world to its last days so that the Savior can appear. It's finally starting. The Messiah Guild was finally moving to create the Messiah. Humans as calculating while living peacefully, the Savior is just something for them to use conveniently however, if their situation was to be pushed to the extreme, they would truly serve the Savior. It should be clear to the world that Lee Sejun and the Messiah Guild are the strongest saviors in the world therefore, in such a situation, the world will cry out to them. Originally, we had no intention of doing this we intended to use Park Yongwon to ignite the emotions between the Korean Peninsula and our Great Japan, and then use it as an excuse but the situation became twisted. Above all, Isaac Ivanov's growth is too twisted he is the biggest obstacle to our plan the savior should never have a substitute candidate therefore, we have to get rid of him. This is the heavenly cloud sword cut Isaac Ivanov's head off with this cut the bud that dares to stand in the way of our great Japan. The memories of Miyazaki Sakura's conversations with the sword saint were shocking in many ways. However, it wasn't very shocking to Kim Woo Jin. As expected. Instead, he already expected this to happen. No, he had already experienced it. He had already experienced the Messiah Guild playing its tricks in order to become the perfect saviors, and had even fallen victim to it. The Messiah Guild's best forces, including Lee Se Jun, will take part in the seven floor dungeon attack. There will be a terrorist attack right after that. In the end, they took out the card called Terrorism. Now, the screenplay has been changed a bit, but the content of the play remains the same. The Messiah Guild's headquarters will collapse. It depends on the situation, but there are two main options either a hijacked plane hits the HQ building, or the building is taken over by terrorists and the people inside are held hostage. The airplane attack will have a shorter, more intense reaction, while the hostage play would have a longer, lingering effect. It's the most disastrous scenario one could expect. Of course, the scale was slightly larger than he expected, but it was still within the scope of his assumptions. Frankly, this wasn't very inspiring news. It's horrible, just as I expected. Nevertheless, as he recalled the information he learned, Kim Woo Jin couldn't help but feel slightly nervous. The vengeful spirit, which might have died down in others by now, burned even bigger and hotter, completely drying and burning Kim Woo Jin's throat. Such vengeance made it hard for him to keep his cool. I have to be patient. Because of this, Kim Woo Jin forced himself to make rational decisions now more than ever. He demanded cool reason from himself. 
there is still work to be done. Work that required only judgment and action backed by cold reason. A huge shadow appeared above Kim Woo-jin's head as he was lost in his emotional turmoil. The Sphinx's fear overwhelms you. It was the body of the Sphinx, which was falling to the ground as a result of losing its right wing. Boom! Eventually, the Sphinx crashed into the ground, creating a huge explosion, followed by a typhoon of wind and an earthquake. Kim Woo-jin came to his senses. Begin the hunt. The Sphinx. A mythological creature that had the body of a lion, the tail of a snake, the face of a human, and a pair of wings. The Sphinx is amazing. Of course, this was an expression that could be used when describing mythological creatures. The important thing is its abilities. Different explanations were needed when expressing a Sphinx's appearance in a dungeon. As you may have experienced, it has an ability similar to Dragon's Fear. First, the Sphinxes that appeared in dungeons had an ability called Sphinx's Roar. The subject that was exposed to this ability which was comparable to Dragon Fear, if they were still alive, would tremble in horror and collapse. After a few experiments, it is clear that its hide is much tougher than the hatchlings. At the same time, the Sphinx's hide was incredibly tough and had a high resistance to magic. And its regeneration ability is also amazing it is comparable to a hellhound. In addition, it was impossible to talk about damage over time caused by small wounds since its regenerative ability was outstanding. Among its abilities, the most troubling one is definitely its ability to fly, which we've already experienced. However, among its myriad abilities, the most troublesome one was its ability to fly. If it starts flying, its speed and ability to turn rapidly are ridiculous. Disregarding the laws of physics, the Sphinx was able to fly up into the sky with one flap of its wings, and its speed and maneuverability were all mind-boggling. It is on an entirely different level from the hatchling. Naturally, it was different from the hatchling. First of all, unlike the hatchling, its wings aren't easily cut during the fight with the hatchling, we were able to disable its wings by cutting the skin, but the Sphinx's wings are similar to those of a bird so you'll have to cut the bone. Even the difficulty of cutting the wings was not on the same level. The most obvious thing is that it's impossible to catch that guy if he's flying. Nevertheless, without cutting its wings, it was virtually impossible to slay the Sphinx. That was why. We were lucky in that sense if you wear the Hermes boots and cap of invisibility, you'll be able to stick to the Sphinx unnoticed and with the Heavenly Cloud Sword, you can cut through its wings easily. Kim Wu Jin had given Li Jina the three items. Shiba. And that was also the reason why Li Jina was currently falling to the ground together with the Sphinx. With a loud explosion, the Sphinx, which had lost its wing crashed against the floor then, with a loud sound, Li Jina bounced off of it and rolled to the ground. And he continued rolling like a ball of dung being rolled by a dung beetle. This wasn't something that happened because of physical shock, instead, this was deliberate. Rather than forcing himself to stop, Li Jina was diffusing his body's momentum by continuing to roll. Soon after he stopped rolling, Li Jina stood to his feet, covered in small wounds but not seriously injured. It was the moment he'd learned how to fall. Shiba. TL, I'm not sure if this is intentionally of if the author wanted to use at this moment, seems more like a moment to me. It was also a moment when he really wanted to curse badly. It wasn't just the curse. Damn it, do I really have to live like this? At that moment, Li Jina began to seriously agonize over his treatment. It's not that I want to rebel, but look at this treatment. Should I really go on strike? Li Jina tried to calculate it properly to see if it was worth trying. And surprisingly, he found that it actually might be worth it. From the looks of it, I wouldn't die even if my head is cut off, right? Since his blessing of river stick skill had reached transcendent rank, he wouldn't die even if his head and all of his limbs were cut off. Literally, even if the Grim Reaper himself came for him, there wasn't a guarantee that head die. Encouraged by that fact, the look in Li Jina's eyes changed. Should I try it? Li Jina's eyes turned to the sword in his hand. The Heavenly Cloud Sword. The power of this sword, that even the sword saint was willing to take as one of his treasured swords, was much greater than Li Jina had initially expected. 
It had definitely shown its power against the Sphinx when it easily cut through the wings that other legendary swords would have struggled to. It was like the difference between cutting sashimi with just an ordinary knife and then with a sashimi knife. And even now, Li Jina was wearing Hermes boots. These boots, which allowed the user to run faster than a horse and gave the mysterious ability to walk on any flat surface, including water, could guarantee Li Jina's mobility at any moment. If it's this. Li Jina now had the confidence to try since he had such an amazing set of items on his person. Right, how much should a man endure? Kyaha. The eerie cry of a skeleton knight filled Li Jina's ears. It was the sound of a skeleton knight who was heading towards the sphinx that had fallen due to Li Jina's attack. And starting with the first one, skeleton knights began appearing one after another. Li Jina looked at the skeleton knights while calculating. If it's this much, I should be fine even if I fight against the skeleton knights. Fight against the skeleton knights. In the meantime, a new skeleton knight was added, and Li Jina naturally added it to the simulation fight in his head. One. 2, 3, 4. The number of skeleton knights soon reached 10. 11. Even so, the number of skeleton knights continued to increase with no sign of stopping. Ha! Huh. As he watched the number of skeleton knights quickly approach 20, Li Jina's eyes widened with fright. What dash, what's going on? The number of skeleton knights Kim Wu Jin could summon was 10, but now the number that appeared was double that. Ah! Hades ring. The secret to this was definitely the Hades ring. Theoretically, if there are two players with the summon skeleton skills and the Hades ring, the number of skeletons they could possess would be infinite. One person summons the skeletons while the other uses the Hades ring to take control of them. Of course, this was only theoretical after all, one still needed to have enough magical power to maintain the skeletons they stole. In any case, even with that limitation, it was still an amazing item for those who used undead summons. And the item belonged to Johann George. However, from the movements of these skeleton knights, it was clear that it was currently in Kim Wu Jin's hands. This meant that Johann George had handed the Hades ring over to Kim Wu Jin. Johann George waved his white flag. In other words, Johann George had completely surrendered to Isaac Ivanov. In fact, Kim Wu Jin had already told Li Jina about this plan. After killing Miyazaki Sakura, he would ask for the Hades ring, and if Johann George refused, he would take it as a sign of betrayal and get rid of him. But from the looks of it, Johann George had given it up without any hesitation. That strong willed guy. Li Jina was shocked by the fact that Johann George was willing to risk his life to save it. And Kim Wu Jin managed to make that strong willed guy into a sheep. On the other hand, when Li Jina recalled the fact that Kim Wu Jin was able to make Johann George make such a choice without any worries, he swallowed down the little determination he'd built up with a gulp. Let's not do anything just yet. While Li Jina was trying to control his emotions, Kim Wu Jin appeared behind him. Kim Wu Jin then stuck his hand out. The cap of invisibility and Hermes boots. At those short words, Li Jina showed his determination. Here you go. He quickly took off the helmet and placed it on Kim Wu Jin's hand before starting to take off his shoes. In the meanwhile, the skeleton knights and soldiers began their battle against the sphinx who'd lost its wing. This sight was similar to ants attacking a large rodent. Kahung. The sphinx roared loudly because of that, but the effects of fear did not apply to undead. For pure undead monsters, the fear effect was absolutely useless. Of course, this assault went just as well as one would expect. The offensive abilities of the skeleton soldiers and knights were naturally terrifying, but the Sphinx was immensely large, its regeneration abilities were ridiculous, and its resistances were too high. Even the fireballs from the skeleton wizards were unable to do much damage to the Sphinx. It was like a drizzle. It might wet the body a little, but it could never compare to rain. The drizzle was just annoying. Li Jina, who was looking at this scene couldn't help but say. This isn't going to be easy it's like we're just scratching it, isn't it? Kim Wu Jin didn't refute his words. Right, it's just a scratch. At that moment, Kim Wu Jin, who had already put on Hermes boots, put the cap of invisibility on his head, causing his figure to vanish. 
After disappearing, Kim Woo Jin shot towards the Sphinx's location like an arrow out of a bow. The Sphinx didn't notice Kim Woo Jin's approach, now would it care? The Sphinx was defenseless and could not move, so Kim Woo Jin immediately climbed onto its body without hesitation. After he got on, Kim Woo Jin put his hand into a wound, created by a skeleton knight, that was just beginning to heal. P.U.K. Bloodsucking. Then, he used the bloodsucking skill and began to absorb its blood. At the same time, blood began to flow from a wound on Kim Woo Jin's body. This blood immediately became mist-like. Blood fog spreads. The blood absorbed through bloodsucking was then spilled and transformed into blood fog. This blood fog was influenced by Kim Woo Jin's blood poison skill and had a frighteningly high toxicity. Blood poison has no effect on the Sphinx. Of course, in front of the Sphinx's poison resistance, Kim Woo Jin's blood poison's effect was negligible. Having known this already, Kim Woo Jin didn't pay much attention to it. A blood golem has been summoned. The blood golem absorbs the blood fog. In the first place, Kim Woo Jin's goal had just been to fatten the blood golem. The blood golem's stats has increased. The blood golem's toxicity has increased. The blood golem continued to absorb the blood fog from Kim Woo Jin's body, and as time passed, the blood golem, which was dark red in color, steadily became black. The blood golem can no longer grow stronger. As soon as he heard the notification that the blood golem could no longer be strengthened, Kim Woo Jin stabbed Percival's spear, which was in his other hand, into the Sphinx's body. The Sphinx let out a loud roar at the deep wound. It was the same as being hit by a piece of hail while standing in a drizzle naturally, the Sphinx's complete attention turned to the place where the Percival spear stabbed it as a result. Before long, the Sphinx turned to look at its back. And the angry Sphinx immediately spotted Kim Woo Jin who was no longer being hidden by the cap of invisibility since he'd made an attack. The Sphinx's rage boils over. At the same time, the Sphinx's eyes began to shine then, pure white rays shot out of them. Chick! These rays burned through the Sphinx's hide, and were even strong enough to boil its flesh. But that was all. The Sphinx had only managed to hurt itself with its attack. Who? Because Kim Wu Jin had already leapt off its back. It went in. And the blood golem had already entered the Sphinx's body through the wound left by Percival's spear. The Sphinx has been poisoned by black blood. Then Kim Woo Jin heard the notification he was waiting for. I got it. In fact, this notification basically marked the countdown to the end of the battle. Two days later. You have slain the Sphinx. Earned achievement Sphinx Hunter. Your level has increased. The emissary of the underworld's focus is only on you. Earned achievement the one backed by a halo. You have cleared the dungeon. As a reward for clearing the dungeon, gain seal breaker. To be precise, it took 49 hours and 33 minutes. That was how long it took the Sphinx to die after the blood golem entered its bloodstream. It was not a quite two days. The scene created by the Sphinx inflicted with the poison during these two days was similar to if a huge tornado ripped through the area. Even the number of skeletons that Kim Woo Jin had left wasn't high. Out of the skeleton knights, the number of which had reached 22, only 7 survived. It was a disaster. TL, seeing this now makes me feel like disaster would have been a better chapter name, since it's the same word cons of not reading ahead I suppose. At these words, Kim Woo Jin, who was wearing Isaac Ivanov's mask, spoke in a cold tone. The real disaster is only just beginning. As he said this, Kim Woo Jin's eyes were locked onto the Sphinx's corpse. Then he saw it. Eighth Tale of the Nine-Tailed Fox Description The Eighth Tale of the Nine-Tailed Fox It contains mysterious power If you collect all of them, you will be able to use the powers of the Nine-Tailed Fox. 5% to all stats. Rapidly heals any injury it touches. Now there's just one left. And the power to fight against this disaster was within arm's reach. Bloodsucking. Conditions, Emissary of the Underworld. Required level, level 20 or higher. Effect, absorb the blood of the target to recover your own as the skill rank increases, the ratio of amount absorbed from the target and amount recovered increases. 
Chapter, 233. Before a plane takes off, the passengers would have to listen to some rules and tips to remember in the event of an emergency. Most people didn't really care and didn't pay much attention to it, but there was no denying its necessity. The players had something similar. Before entering a dungeon, they would have to listen to some rules and tips in the event that they encountered bad situations. For example, as soon as you left the dungeon, if you saw a red flag, this signified that there was a military emergency in that case, you should immediately, and quickly cooperate with all the procedures that they were briefed to follow. Flap, flap. It was a red flag that first greeted Kim Woo Jin as he exited the dungeon wearing Isaac Ivanov's face. There was an emergency. It was a situation that would cause anyone to feel anxious to the extent that the hairs all over their body would stand up. But when Kim Woo Jin saw the red flag, he remained calm, and simply acted according to the rules. He picked up a flare launcher that had been placed near the dungeon and fired it into the sky. Pies hitch. The bright red flare with its tail of smoke shot up into the sky. Covering the surroundings in its red glow. Weeing. Immediately afterwards, the sound of sirens shattered the silence, and the sounds of heavy machinery starting up could be heard from every direction. From the tututu sound of helicopters, to the dragging sound that was reminiscent of tank treads. Amid those sounds, five military Humvees approached Kim Woo Jin and his party, and the logo on their hoods was clear. The United Nations Peacekeeping Forces. These vehicles came to a stop in front of Kim Woo Jin, and a blonde haired, blue eyed woman hopped off the first one. She was a soldier whose aura showed that she'd participated in many battles. I am Lieutenant Colonel Susan Glasgow of the United Nations Peacekeepers. After introducing herself, she then inspected the party behind Kim Woo Jin, realizing that there were only three of them. It was a scene that could be called a tragedy, but she only furrowed her brows slightly without showing any other emotions. It seemed that she had experienced situations much worse than this one. Is this everyone? After that, she asked a short question, to which Kim Woo Jin nodded, and it seemed she had no more questions. There's currently an emergency so we should move to a safer location. Instead, it was Kim Woo Jin who asked the question. What happened? The lieutenant colonel responded with a few words. The Messiah Guild was attacked. On September 1st, the Messiah Guild announced surprising news. The Messiah Guild begin their second attack on a seven-floor dungeon. They're challenging the C-ranked dungeon, Dragon's Breath. They announced the attack after it had already commenced. This wasn't particularly strange. After all, it was possible for them to be interrupted or disturbed while entering the dungeon. Therefore, it was actually considered wise for them to not reveal it until after the fact. A post-entry announcement. Well, things have been a bit restless recently, haven't they? The Messiah Guild probably wanted everything to go smoothly. Moreover, the Messiah Guild couldn't let their guards down in a time when there had already been several terrorist attacks against players. In any case, since Lee Sejun is the one entering the dungeon, they have to make sure everything is perfect. Honestly, since it's Lee Sejun, isn't it necessary to take all the proper precautions? Above all, the value of Lee Sejun's name was absolute. No matter how much Isaac Ivanov or Johann George shined, they weren't able to affect him in the slightest. Therefore, the public never raised any doubts about him. There were also no complaints. I only trust the Messiah Guild. Messiah Guild, please save the world. No one dared to complain. So, when everyone focused their hopes and prayers on the Messiah Guild's success, the effect of what happened next increased greatly. The Messiah Guild was attacked. On September 2, the Messiah Guild fell victim to a terrorist attack. A plane was crashed into the Messiah Guild headquarters. Hijacked, all the passengers on the plane died. The Messiah Guild's headquarters collapses. 982 casualties. It was something that far surpassed everyone's expectations. The world was completely shocked by this news. What was that? A terrorist attack. They hijacked a plane and crashed it. After that horrific event, the world became buried in terrible chaos. There was absolutely no order in their confusion. 
The media spewed all kinds of stories, and the public opinion became filled with all kinds of angry and murderous thoughts. Massive Riots in Eastern Europe The riots spread across to South America. And as this confusion fell, everything halted as no one knew what to do or how to proceed. This chaos was the perfect opportunity for terrorists, anti-government groups and criminal organizations that were laying in the shadows before. Sudanese rebels declare war. Civil war erupts in Slovakia. Martial law declared in Croatia. The terrible confusion quickly began to spread across the world. The last days. The only thing Oh Se Chan could do after seeing this situation was sigh. The end of the world. The same was true for his subordinates. No one knew what to do. Therefore, they just collected the information and kept track of the situation without saying anything. I knew they were going to do something, but I never expected it to be something like this. In all honesty, this situation had taken even Oh Se Chan by surprise. He already had the assumption that they would try something. To destroy their headquarters. But for this something to end up being an attack on themselves. This was something that he never could have imagined. No one would believe the Messiah Guild capable of self-harm. Furthermore, even he wasn't completely sure if this was actually a part of the Messiah Guild's plan. The bigger problem was that this was just the beginning. In such a situation, if Lee Sejun clears the dungeon and comes out. What would happen in a situation where Lee Sejun cleared his second seven-floor dungeon and came back to the world that was currently drowning in confusion? Only one thing was guaranteed. They would be able to do whatever they wanted. No matter what the Messiah Guild decided to do, the world would never oppose it. If the Messiah Guild expressed dissatisfaction toward a government system, and asked them to reform it it would still be tolerated. A new country no, even if it was the emergence of a power that transcended a country, the world would applaud them. The existence of a country that transcended other countries would cause existing borders to collapse and only one value would remain in the world. Would you fight to save the world or would you fight against it? A world where only this value remained. At that moment, those who don't conform to the Messiah Guild would instantly become the villains fighting against the world. Oh Seichan closed his eyes as he thought about the possible future. Has it finally reached this state? Although the process was unexpected, Oh Seichan had long expected the outcome. So he tried to stop it. However, although Oh Seichan tried to stop it, but it wasn't easy to do something like that. It's amazing that I didn't die and actually managed to even see this happen. In all honesty, he had believed he would be removed before that time, and he had long prepared for his death. Even now, he had many things prepared in the event of his death. It's all thanks to Kim Woo Jin. Nevertheless, it was because of Kim Woo Jin that he had been able to hold on for such a long time. And it was the same now. Now only Kim Woo Jin can do something. In this situation, Oh Se Chan decided to leave everything to Kim Woo Jin. I'll do whatever he wants. Regardless of what he wanted, Oh Se Chan decided to help him unconditionally without calculating profits. I'd even buy some beef if he wants it. Boss. For the first time since the current situation began, one of his subordinates shouted out excitedly. Kim Woo Jin is back. Only then did Oh Se Chan stand from his seat. It's time to work overtime again. One thing was always obvious. Nothing works properly in a panic. The same was true for the world which was devastated by the Messiah Guild terror incident. There was nothing that could stop the world from panicking. Johann George is dead. Sphinx Dungeon Disaster But the disaster that befell Johann George and Isaac Ivanov was completely different. What the hell are they talking about? Oh my god, Johann George is dead. Only Isaac Ivanov's party survived. The world, which was in a state of confusion following the terrorist attack, paused in the face of this new disaster. What happened to them? Wait, Isaac Ivanov's party survived and only Johann George's team died? Is that even possible? Did they fight and kill each other? Moreover, there were even those who looked at the situation, which appeared to be a simple disaster, with suspicious gazes and naturally, these people began to spout all kinds of conspiracy theories. Did Isaac Ivanov kill Johann George? Dungeon disaster, or dungeon massacre? 
what really happened inside that dungeon. Rumors began to come out that Isaac Ivanov's party killed Johann George's party. Naturally, everyone began to wonder. When will Isaac Ivanov reveal the truth? Why isn't Isaac Ivanov saying anything? They wanted Isaac Ivanov to say something about the situation. And tell them what to do in the future. It's been a long time. Then Isaac Ivanov finally talked to someone. It's been so long that it feels like forever. Of course, the one he was talking to was not the media, but an individual it was none other than Oh se -chan. Did you hear about the situation? Roughly. To be honest, I don't even know what to do right now if we let it continue like this then the Messiah Guild will win eventually and even if that's not the case, we will still have to fight an even tougher battle. In any case, Oh se -chan was more curious than the world. What are your plans? He also wanted to know what Kim Woo Jin planned to do in the future. There's no plan we only have about two months before the Messiah Guild clears the Seven Floor Dungeon. That's right. And the first thing that I need to do in that time is already clear. What do you need to do? Eat Thunderbird. Thunderbird. The world's number one private military company created by the Lightning King. That. The meaning of his eat was simple. Right, I'm going to get rid of the Lightning King. To kill the Lightning King. It was very extreme. There was no simple way to kill the Lightning King, however, killing him was one of the conditions for taking over Thunderbird. Of course, this didn't mean that he would be able to do that simply by killing the Lightning King. Obviously, it was a plan that required a lot of troublesome preparation. The probability of failure was also incredibly high. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't seem to pay any attention to that. It's time to prepare for war the Messiah Guild can't be stopped, so our only option is to fight furthermore, neither side would actually want to join hands with Isaac Ivanov. After clearing the Seven Floor Dungeon, it could almost be guaranteed that the Messiah Guild would not leave Isaac Ivanov alone. That's right, after they come out of the dungeon, there's a really high chance that they'll pick a fight with Isaac Ivanov. Rather, it was highly possible that Isaac Ivanov would be the first target of the Messiah Guild who would acquire the right to create a new order due to this event. Right so at least we need to get enough power to even the scales before the Messiah Guild makes a show of force not just player power, but also military power that can be used in real life. So before that, he needed to get his hands on more power, and the easiest and most attractive option was Thunderbird. No matter how great the Messiah Guild was, it would not be able to direct military power at will, nor would the forces it can move be as powerful as Thunderbird is at this moment. Well, good. Because of that, Oh se -chan didn't ask any more questions. Then tell me what you need. I need to meet the Lightning King. As who? As Kim Woo Jin. Okay. And just like he had decided before, Oh se -chan simply accepted Kim Woo Jin's words. From that point on, he would do his best to create a stage for the Lightning King and Kim Woo Jin to meet as soon as possible. The conversation was practically over at that point. By the way, if Park Yong Wan finds out that you met the Lightning King, he would be very upset, wouldn't he? That was why Oh Se Chan was able to make a little joke. They had already finished talking about the Lightning King, so he decided to end the conversation with a joke. Right, so Park Yong Wan will take part as well. Huh? However, Oh Se-chan was surprised by Kim Woo Jin's response to his joke. What do you mean? Park Yong Wan will attend the meeting as well. The Lightning King, Park Yong Wan, and Kim Woo Jin these three will sit at one table. Chapter 234 The terrorist attack against the Messiah Guild was the same as setting a time limit on the order that had been maintained before. And if Lee Sejun and his teammates successfully came out of the Seven Floor Dungeon, it was obvious that the world's power map would be rewritten. In such a situation, one of those who looked at this situation favorable was none other than the Lightning King. The reason was simple. The creation of a new world order meant that those with power were likely to lose said power. Therefore, the powerful people in that position had to prepare a way to escape in case there was an unforeseen event, and for them, Thunderbird, the world's number one private military company, was the perfect option. And this was exactly what the Lightning King wanted. He had waited specifically for such an era of chaos and confusion, 
an era where one's power was measured by how much ammunition he had rather than money. I'm busy. Therefore, it could be said that the Lighting King had gained the most from the terrorist attack against the Messiah Guild. On the other hand, there were many people who had suffered heavy losses due to the terrorist attack. I'm also busy. A young, Asian man was facing the Lightning King. Park Yong Wan. The master of the Phoenix Guild was one of the biggest victims of the terrorist attack on the Messiah Guild. It was pointless to even try calculating the damage. After all, the headquarters of the Messiah Guild was located in Korea, and when the incident, which drove the world to chaos, occurred in Korea, the nation declared a state of national emergency. Under such circumstances, it was obvious what the situation of the Phoenix Guild, which was also based in Korea, would be like. Right, you must be busy in many ways. Moreover, the Phoenix Guild had even been forcefully entangled with the Messiah Guild in many ways. There were even conspiracies and rumors that the Phoenix Guild was trying to get rid of the Messiah Guild. Others complained because the Phoenix Guild didn't try to use the terrorist attack on the Messiah Guild to pass a bill that guaranteed the players' interests like what happened in France. From the Phoenix Guild's perspective, they would be suspected regardless of what they chose to do, which meant that they couldn't actually do anything. In any case, one thing was clear. Are you trying to pick a fight? Fights only happen between people on the same level. Level? Do you think we're on the same level? There was definitely no way that the master of the Phoenix Guild and the Lightning King would meet each other for no reason. After all, the two of them were far from being close. Aren't we both on six floors? Are you saying that's not enough for a quick conversation? Right, thinking like that would definitely let you feel better. To be precise, they couldn't get close. In terms of reputation, the Lightning King was certainly a bit higher, but both players were currently targeting six-floor dungeons, therefore Park Yongwan's reputation wasn't too lacking. In other words, the two of them were rivals whose rankings were so close that they could change at any time depending on their performances. Therefore their relationship was bound to be filled with fierce competition. Nevertheless, the two of them were currently meeting in one place because of one person. You can fight after we discuss today's topic. Kim Woo Jin. Now that he was a six-floor player like the two of them, he was able to create this tripartite conversation. Of course, it wasn't just because of Kim Woo Jin. Because it's important to discuss Isaac Ivanov first. Isaac Ivanov, he was the biggest reason that this was currently happening. As proof of this, the moment Isaac Ivanov was mentioned, Park Yongwan and the Lightning King stopped pressing each other. Then, in the calmer atmosphere, Kim Woo Jin continued. If things continue to progress as they are, then the Messiah Guild will hold all the keys no one can be certain what they will do with those keys, but it's almost certain that it wouldn't be good for the two of you. The two of them didn't try to refute this statement. Even if they had their own ways to deal with the situation, they definitely wouldn't reveal it. In this situation, Isaac Ivanov is the most obvious umbrella and no matter how great the Messiah Guild is, it would be impossible for them to openly display their hostility to Isaac Ivanov. This was because there was no reason for them to refute. On the inside, the Messiah Guild wanted nothing more than to kill Isaac Ivanov. But on the surface, Isaac Ivanov was a savior candidate who could replace the Messiah Guild. Therefore, no matter how powerful the Messiah Guild was, they wouldn't be able to show their hostility. Therefore the expression umbrella was accurate in many ways. Of course, it's just a small umbrella that the two of you here can use. However, it was impossible for Isaac Ivanov to accurately guess the size of the typhoon that was to come. So you want to pick which one of us can use it. Are we here today to decide who will be able to use the umbrella? At least, the status of the umbrella couldn't be guaranteed, and they'd need to act accordingly. It was also the reason why this meeting was being held. And it was at this meeting that Kim Woo Jin said. I'm going to ask you a question. Park Yong Wan and the Lightning King turned to look at Kim Woo Jin when they heard those words. Does anyone here agree with Isaac Ivanov's values? And when they heard the question, the atmosphere in the room froze momentarily. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin continued asking his question. Does anyone here agree with his value of saving the world which transformed into a game? When they heard this question, the Lightning King and Park Yong Wan gave the same expression as though they had rehearsed beforehand. 
it was clear that they had no intentions of sympathizing with such values. Seeing this, Kim Woo Jin continued. Therefore it's too dangerous to leave everything to Isaac Ivanov alone. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin finally revealed the main point. Let's attack a seven-floor dungeon together. With those words, Kim Woo Jin looked back and forth between Park Yongwan and the Lightning King. Let the Lightning King and Park Yongwan attack a seven-floor dungeon with Isaac Ivanov? Lee Jin Ah, who was making a visit to Oh Se Chan's office, couldn't help but ask this question in surprise. Right. Will they accept the offer? They have no reason not to accept well, to be precise, they don't have a choice but to do so. Li Jin Ah tilted his head slightly at those words. He didn't quite understand what was meant by them not having a choice. Isaac Ivanov is currently under suspicion regarding the Sphinx dungeon disaster apart from the suspicion, there is still the belief that he is unable to clear seven floor dungeons after all, even Johann George was sacrificed during the six floor dungeon attack. Therefore, O oh Seichan explained it for him. In such a situation, Isaac Ivanov needs a more definite card in order to enter the dungeon in response to the public opinion. But are they willing to take the risk? O oh Seichan shrugged at Li Jina's question. Why wouldn't they risk it? Ha! Huh. It's an opportunity to attack a seven floor dungeon with Isaac Ivanov, this means they'd be on the same level as the Messiah Guild. Ah! Only then did Li Jina understand. Oh Seichan added. In addition, these two have always risked their lives by attacking higher dungeons they've long been ready to add seven floor dungeons to their lists of achievements in this situation, this is nothing but a good thing for them. After saying this, Oh Seichan smiled. More importantly, if Isaac Ivanov becomes a seven floor attacker, the situation would become even more chaotic Isaac Ivanov, Park Yongwan and the Lightning King are all six-floor attackers so there's no question as to who is at a higher level, but what if Isaac Ivanov became a seven-floor attacker? He would be on a different level. Right, Isaac Ivanov would become an unstoppable giant. The smile on Oh Se chans face became slightly mocking as he said this. Is there something else? Li Jina, who realized there was more to this smile, couldn't help but ask. Ah, uh, I can't tell you that. But when Oh Se Chan shook his head, refusing to answer, Li Jin Ah made a sullen expression. Meanwhile, Oh Se Chan suddenly said, I suddenly want to eat Jijangmian. Li Jin Ah's expression became ridiculous as he said, So that was your goal in the end, aren't you ashamed of yourself for trying to take advantage of your younger brother? Oh Se Chan, on the other hand, answered with an equally ridiculous expression as he said, Should I be ashamed when I can get something for free? In the end, Li Jina could only give up. So what else is there? After receiving the signal that he would get the Jijangmian, Oh Seichan continued explaining. Before entering this dungeon, they are all going to write wills, just in case. Wills? They have a lot of possessions, so shouldn't they decide who inherits their legacies in the event that they die? You don't mean? Oh Seichan nodded to the surprised Li Jina. Right. They are putting Thunderbird and the Phoenix Guild together if one of them dies, then it will naturally merge with the other and both of them will imagine good results because they both believe that Kim Woo Jin is on their side. Li Jin Ah couldn't help but be amazed by that. Incredible. Oh Se Chan didn't dare to say the real surprise. What's really surprising is the fact that it wasn't actually a tripartite conference. There had been one more person at that meeting. I need to think about it first. I'll make a decision by the time we meet again. The conversation with the Lightning King and Park Yongwan naturally wouldn't be concluded in one day. After all, it wasn't simple to conclude entering a seven-floor dungeon with Isaac Ivanov or the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird forming a strategic alliance that was close to a merger. Therefore, after the first meeting, the three headed back to their respective places. Kim Woo Jin entered the prepared luxury sedan. The driver greeted him. There are no surveillance or eavesdropping devices. Immediately afterwards, a voice came from the seat beside Kim Woo Jin. I heard everything. It was Johann George's voice. You have a really interesting relationship. Johann George had also attended the tripartite conference held by Kim Woo Jin. Naturally, he was wearing the cap of invisibility which was capable of hiding his presence from the world. 
In other words, it wasn't a tripartite meeting, but a quadripartite 1 TL, at this point I wondered if three-way would have been simpler. What do you think about my proposal? And this quadripartite meeting had been created for Kim Woo Jin's proposal. Kim Woo Jin spoke to Johan George. The proposal to gather forces and wait for Isaac Ivanov to self-destruct. For them to hold hands and bide their time under Isaac Ivanov. At first, Johan George naturally ignored the offer. He believed that it was Isaac Ivanov who was using Kim Woo Jin to see if he had thoughts of betrayal. So Kim Woo Jin showed him. He was actually the one who was using Isaac Ivanov, and could betray him at any time. Are you still suspicious of me? And Johann George had seen it for himself. I don't believe the two masters of Thunderbird and the Phoenix Guild would work together just to deceive me. At least, he believed that Park Yong Wan and the Lightning King wouldn't work together just to fool him. Then are you willing to join forces? Johann George paused for a moment instead of answering Kim Woo Jin's question. Silence fell in the car, and it lasted for quite a while. Hmm. After the long silence, Johann George then spoke in a slightly strained voice. I will only ask one question what is your biggest reason for betraying Isaac Ivanov? Johann George then continued before he could hear the answer. Of course, it makes a lot of sense fighting against the Messiah Guild and the runaway train known as Isaac Ivanov is crazy, moreover, you'll even have the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird as enemies. If one were to look at the circumstances, Kim Woo Jin truly had every reason to betray Isaac Ivanov. In fact, all of those were good reasons. But he was sure that a bigger reason existed. Kim Woo Jin answered his question. My halo is also the emissary of the underworld, like you. At that answer, Johann George fell silent once again before replying. Because of our halo's favoritism, we definitely have to walk a thorny path. Three days after Kim Woo Jin and Johan George joined hands, he received a response from Park Yong Wan and the Lightning King. If Thunderbird agrees to do it, I'll do it too. If the Phoenix Guild agrees, Thunderbird will as well. It was the moment when a team created to attack seven floor dungeons had been created. Chapter 235 The hero Johan George buried in the Sphinx Dungeon the attack on the Sphinx dungeon had led to the new rising star in Johann George and his ten teammates. Many felt sorrow and frustration because of the disaster. Then a question was asked. What exactly happened in the dungeon? Why is Isaac Ivanov silent? What the hell happened to Johann George in the Sphinx dungeon? The world repeatedly questioned the hero's death and asked questions. However, Isaac Ivanov did not give a clear answer to these questions. It was just silence. Naturally, the world didn't take too kindly to this silence. Did Isaac Ivanov really kill Johann George? Did he do something to get rid of his competition? Isaac Ivanov wouldn't. Even if he did or he didn't. Why the hell isn't he saying anything? That's right, it's obvious that he has something to hide. As the silence prolonged, the conspiracy theories about Isaac Ivanov began to increase. And during this time, they received a piece of news. The Phoenix Guild prepares to attack a seven-floor dungeon. See rank seven-floor dungeon, Goblin Lord's Kingdom. Park Yongwan finally takes on a new challenge. The Phoenix Guild's seven-floor dungeon attack. The public reacted to this news in its own way. It was literally in its own way. Are they finally challenging it? Isn't it too late to do it now? I think it's been a while since Park Yongwan attacked a six-floor dungeon. It's not just Park Yongwan it's already September 2024 and only the Messiah Guild has started challenging seven-floor dungeons. But can Park Yongwan even do it in the first place? I don't think Park Yongwan can do it except for the Messiah Guild, I don't even believe any of the other top five guilds can do it and the Phoenix Guild isn't even one of the top five guilds, is it? Although Park Yongwan's reputation had improved greatly as of late, this was mostly due to the fact that he was Isaac Ivanov's greatest supporter. It was true that the evaluation of his capabilities didn't reach that of the core players in the top five guilds. Therefore, it was natural that Park Yongwan's announcement of a seven-floor dungeon attack, something that even the top five guilds couldn't do, was met with suspicion and doubt rather than hope and joy. The Phoenix Guild joins a strategic alliance. 
Thunderbird joins hands with the Phoenix Guild. The Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird virtually merged. However, the people's reactions began to change when the successive news about the merger with Thunderbird was released. The Lightning King joins hands with Park Yongwan. The Lightning King and Park Yongwan will attack the Seven Floor Dungeon together. In the face of this news, it was impossible for the reaction to remain the same. Joining hands with the Lightning King. What's going on? This changes everything even the guild masters for the top five guilds would have to bow to him, wouldn't they? In a sense, the Lightning King is stronger than the top five's guild masters he's a player who reigns like an emperor in a lawless country. After all, the Lightning King's reputation was in no way lacking when compared to the five guild masters. It was around that time that the sensible people came to a realization. Wait, then surely. If by chance. Is this real? And their premonitions immediately became a reality. Isaac Ivanov, Park Yongwan and the Lightning King joined forces. Isaac Ivanov had joined Park Yongwan and the Lightning King. At that moment, no one had the suspicions about the Sphinx dungeon in their minds any longer. And no one dared to bring up any conspiracies about Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov is ready to step on the seventh floor stage with Lee Sejun. They just went wild for the new hope that was catching up to the Messiah Guild. What an enthusiastic reaction. The Lightning King couldn't help but chuckle lightly as he saw the news about Isaac Ivanov, who until a few days ago was being considered as the villain who conspired against the hero. It's clear now more than ever that the Messiah Guild's higher-ups aren't around. If the core members of the Messiah Guild were in reality and not in a dungeon, then it was clear that the public opinion wouldn't have flowed in such a direction easily. Kim Woo Jin was right, this is the only way to truly get a glimpse at the whole picture. At that point, it was clear evidence that this was the last chance for something huge to be allowed at this time when Lee Se Jun and his team were targeting the seventh floor dungeon. Then, Shakira appeared before him. When she appeared, she looked more disciplined than ever to the point where absolutely no flaws were visible. She seemed like she would willingly kill herself if she was ordered to die at that moment. While maintaining that momentum, Shakira spoke. All the preparations are complete. Along with those words, she handed an item over to the Lightning King. The item she handed over was none other than a rough spear. It was a simple spear with a rough, wooden shaft, and a pointed blade that appeared to be made of gold. However, when he grabbed the spear, the Lightning King's eyes shined brighter than ever. It's time to make use of the hidden items. Then he asked. What about the Phoenix Guild? They signed the agreement now, the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird are practically one entity. It seems he trusts Kim Woo Jin. Crackle. At that moment, lightning began dancing around his body. In this dungeon, we'll get rid of Park Yong Wan and eat the Phoenix Guild prepare all the power we can use. Then, after thinking for a moment, the Lightning King continued. And pass a message on to Kim Woo Jin if he needs anything, I will support him I'll even give him a gift. Thunderbird signed the agreement. Instead of responding to his secretary, Park Yongwan continued observing the sword in front of him. Outwardly, it seemed to be a normal sword however, as he looked at this sword, Park Yongwan's gaze became sharper than ever. Durandal won. After reciting the name of his most beloved item, Park Yongwan raised his head. Then, all kinds of miraculous items which filled his private armory filled his eyes. With just a sweep of his gaze, he could see the countless legendary items he had obtained. Legendary items that only he had enjoyed. Tell my guards. Ha. Huh. Take whatever they want from here today. And for the first time, he would let others enjoy these items. It was so surprising that his secretary couldn't even react properly to his words. However, after quickly regathering her thoughts, the secretary once again asked for confirmation. Should I really tell them that? This is an opportunity for us to eat Thunderbird, which belongs to the Lightning King, naturally it is a worthy investment. Are you really going to fight against the Lightning King? The Lightning King. His reputation was not in vain. Furthermore, the Lightning King had created his own force without the support of any government. No one considered Thunderbird to be weaker than the Frontier Guild, Great One Guild, or the Kunlun Guild. It wouldn't be easy for Park Yongwan to fight against such a figure. 
It'll be dangerous. Park Yomwan knew that as well. Nevertheless, he was confident. But since Kim Woo Jin is on my side, the winner has already been decided. Because he was convinced that he had a hidden card that would bring him victory. Of course, I'll need to pay a bit of a price first give that spear to Kim Woo Jin as a gift. Park Yong Wan then looked around before saying. And trade the remaining items, like that sealed hammer head over there, for weapons and armors through a broker you can also give them more money so that we can obtain more powerful items it's fine if we lose a little as long as we get a hold of items that will increase our power as quickly as possible. His secretary nodded at his words. Understood. Two of the same voices could be heard saying the same thing in a room. Duck. And then, the seemingly long conversations were cut off almost at the same time. The moment the call ended, Li Jina, who had been silently watching at the side couldn't help but speak up. I've seen a large number of strange things while in a team with you, but I never expected to see something like this. The two Kim Wu Jins laughed in unison at those words. It wasn't a difficult sight to explain. Kim Wu Jin had been contacted by both sides at the same time, and since he couldn't not take care of one side, he decided to do them simultaneously with his alter ego skill. Of course, from an outsider's perspective, this scene would have been quite mind-blowing. Ugh, I'm afraid that he'll have nightmares about this. Li Jina clicked his tongue. So, how important were those calls that you needed to take them at the same time with your alter ego skill? On the other hand, he wondered just how important those calls were to warrant such actions. In response to Li Jina's words, Kim Wu Jin and his alter ego once again spoke simultaneously. The Lightning King. Park Yong Wan. Li Jina frowned when the two answers, which were said in the same voice, overlapped. The sounds overlap, can't you just go back to being one? Kim Wu Jin nodded and released his alter ego skill. Then the second Kim Wu Jin slowly faded, becoming transparent before disappearing altogether. After that, the knowledge that the alter ego obtained appeared in Kim Wu Jin's mind. It's simple, really Park Yong Wan wants to kill the Lightning King, and the Lightning King wants to kill Park Yong Wan however, both sides know it wouldn't be easy to take down the other side, so they want to bring me to their side. After hearing this explanation, Li Jina went silent for a long time before an incredulous expression came across his face. To be honest, if I was the Lightning King or Park Yong Wan, I would rather die than let you know that. Kim Wu Jin didn't react to Li Jin Ahs words. Li Jina continued. So what will they give you? After knowing Kim Wu Jin for so long, Li Jina naturally knew that Kim Wu Jin would ask for a price in order to help them. The Lightning King offered the Barisada, and Park Yongwan offered the Jang Palzamo too. What's that? The Barisada is the Sword of Rajro, one of the Twelve Knights of Charlemagne, and the Jang Palzamo is a weapon that doesn't require an explanation. From what I can tell, isn't Park Yongwan's offer better? His does have more weight. Kim Wu Jin had obtained two powerful legendary items from doing nothing. And he was certain that Kim Wu Jin wouldn't be satisfied with this much. So which hand are you going to raise? In this situation, Kim Wu Jin would have to choose one of them. And the moment he picked one, everything that belonged to the other side would be eaten by Kim Wu Jin. This meant that he was currently hunting prey more valuable than any prey he had before, the Lightning King, and Park Yong Wan. Kim Wu Jin answered without hesitation. I'm getting rid of the Lightning King. Li Jin nodded when he heard that. Well, you have been partnered with Park Yong Wan longer than the Lightning King it turns out you're human after all capable of at least a little gratitude. After all, Park Yong Wan had been sponsoring Kim Wu Jin ever since he'd become a player. Although his intentions weren't the best, it couldn't be said that he wasn't Kim Wu Jin's benefactor. On the other hand, wasn't the Lightning King just a tyrant of a lawless country who would try to get rid of Kim Wu Jin if he stopped being useful? Kim Wu Jin didn't raise any objections to Li Jin Ahs words. I appreciate the fact that you think so. Naturally, it wasn't that Kim Wu Jin didn't pick Park Yong Wan because he was grateful to him. It was just that he'd concluded that it was far more advantageous to partner with Park Yong Wan than it was to partner with the Lightning King. If we don't have a chance, I could always change. Nevertheless, he didn't know how the situation might change. 
The Lightning King is more powerful than Park Yongwan. Even so, Park Yongwan was also not an easy opponent. To be precise, he was also being protected by the Messiah Guild. If the Messiah Guild hadn't been providing invisible support to the Phoenix Guild in order to make use of Park Yongwan, he would not have been able to reach the current position he was in. I don't know what the Lightning King has hidden. On the other hand, the Lightning King was a tyrant in a lawless land with no government support or supervision. This was a judgment made by none other than Kim Woo Jin, who had hunted both of them. If his power is too low, I might have to choose the Lightning King. In other words, depending on the situation, he might have to choose the Lightning King's side. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 176. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats, Health 530125, Stamina 2661, Magic Power 31332. Achievements, 158. Extra Points, 0. After I learn the Lich skill at level 180, if his powers are below my expectations, then I'll have to change my decision. In particular, the simulations that Kim Woo Jin was running in his head were made up mostly of scenarios after he reached level 180 and learned the Lich skill. Kim Woo Jin wasn't sure if the Liches he summoned would have the same fearsome prowess as Johan George's. Li Jin Ah approached Kim Woo Jin, who was measuring his power, and said, Hey. With that, he held out the phone in his hand. Seichan said he wants to talk to you. As Kim Woo Jin took the phone and brought it to his ear, Li Jin Ah suddenly said, Hey, ask Seichan to buy some meat it's been a while since we came to Korea, we should have some Korean beef. Hey, shut your bastard mouth. You eat beef so much you sound like a cow. Damn it. He said he would buy me Jajangmian so I ordered it, then he said he forgot his wallet. The next time you meet this bastard, he'll be dead. Kim Woo Jin only gave a small smile at Oh Se Chan's tirade. So what's going on? Ah, it's not that big of a deal. Park Yong Wan left some items with me. They want to trade other items for weapons and armors. It seems he's fully preparing for the Lightning King. Kim Woo Jin didn't need to think about it for a long time. There might be something useful for a long time. Let me take a look. Only. Sure, I'll send you the address as soon as the items arrive. After ending the phone call, Kim Woo Jin thought briefly. There shouldn't be anything amazing there, but maybe you'll get something. He hoped he could get lucky. Although it is in Korean my rough summary is that it's a length and a half spear that appeared in the story of the Three Kingdoms, and was said to be incredibly powerful. Chapter, 236 among the items that could be obtained from dungeons, the most valuable were, of course, legendary items. Ever since they first started appearing, their value went without saying. Even as the number of players targeting dungeons increased, the value of legendary items continued to increase, and by 2024, legendary items were things that could only be traded with other legendary items. In fact, the transaction of legendary items was something that rarely happened. Under such circumstances, it was naturally the sealed weapons that started to gain attention. Of course, the interest in sealed items was high even before that. After all, everyone believed that these items were bound to be valuable items. The problem was, no one knew exactly how to unseal them. It was the gastric juice of a golden dragon hunted by the dragon slayer that changed the situation. Due to the gastric juice that was capable of removing almost any seal, players were finally able to unseal the sealed items, which led to them realizing that these items were almost all legendary items. Because of that, a market for sealed items was created, and they began to be traded. At some point, they even began to act as a form of currency. He collected a lot. That was the reason Park Yongwon put a lot of sealed items on the market ahead of an important challenge. Rather than that, why is Park Yongwon doing business with Seichan? What would he see in such a cheap baldy? Does he not have anyone else to do business with? In addition, Park Yongwon delegated the disposal of the sealed items to Park Yongwon. The reason was simple. Because he would be able to get whatever he wants, whenever he needs it. Huh. When Park Yongwon was trying to find an item to give to Isaac Ivanov, it was Oh Seichan who supplied it to him before anyone else. 
In addition, when he made the deals with Isaac Ivanov and Kim Woo Jin, Park Yong Wan did so through Oh Se Chan. Not only the provision of items, when he had to launder money or prepare hideouts, Oh Se Chan was the one he turned to. Therefore, it was natural for Park Yong Wan to consider Oh Se Chan to be a reliable and helpful broker. Park Yong Wan definitely committed many sins in his past life. Of course, for Li Jina who knew the truth about the matter, he couldn't help but feel sorry for Park Yong Wan. Who, if I was in his position, I would rather shave my head and go to a temple than get sucked dry by you two leeches. While Li Jina was sympathizing with Park Yong Wan, Kim Woo Jin looked through the items one by one. In all honesty, Kim Woo Jin didn't know the identity of the sealed items just by seeing them. He was just checking to see if any of them overlapped with his memories. Moreover, despite his efforts, Kim Woo Jin only had two items he wanted to unseal. He could only narrow down the options as much as possible. It's not going to be easy. It took a very long time to compare countless items with those in his memories. It was a process that would definitely take more than a day. There was no time to waste, so Kim Woo Jin simply kept his mouth closed and kept inspecting every item. Hmm. Li Jin Ah also began following Kim Woo Jin and inspecting the items organized around them. If you're lucky, you could get a legendary, right? Of course, Li Jin Ah didn't actually inspect these sealed items too closely. How about this one? Li Jin Ah picked up an ordinary sword and asked, Doesn't this look like Excalibur 1? Naturally, Kim Woo Jin ignored him, but Li Jin Ah didn't mind it, instead, he grabbed a spear behind him and said, I got a good feeling about this one I'm sure it's Gungnir too, hey, let's unseal this one. Once again, Kim Woo Jin ignored him. Suddenly, Li Jin Ah stretched out his hand as though he'd found something. What he then picked up, was a steel square. In all honesty, if this item status window didn't say hammerhead, no one would actually think that it was a hammerhead. Holding this hammerhead, Li Jina then shouted. Wow! I'm Thor! Bring it on Thanos! When Li Jina started acting like Thor, one of the heroes of the Marvel Universe, Kim Woo Jin turned to look at him. Naturally, their eyes met. Kim Woo Jin's eyes were cold, colder than had ever seen them. Seeing this, Li Jina smiled awkwardly and tried to find an excuse. I dash, it was a joke, a joke huh, men play around like this sometimes, don't they? However, despite this excuse, Kim Woo Jin didn't turn away from him, instead, he approached him with the same expression. Gulp. Li Jina subconsciously swallowed his saliva when he saw this. Damn it, did I say too much? At the same time, Kim Woo Jin said to Li Jina. Li Jina. Why dash, yeah. Good job. What? Li Jina was surprised. Isn't this ironic? When Kim Wu Jin took the hammer head from him, Li Jina's blank expression became one of surprise. You're really lucky. After the world changed into a game in 2020, dungeons steadily and endlessly appeared in the world. And over the years, higher level dungeons appeared one after another. The highest floor dungeon that had appeared so far was the eight floor dungeon, Orc Lord's Kingdom which appeared in the Caspian Sea. When it came to the seven floor dungeons below that, there were nine of them. Isaac Ivanov's team will attack the Goblin Lord's Kingdom. Isaac Ivanov's team heads to Pakistan. Among the nine, the alliance between the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird, led by Isaac Ivanov had chosen the Goblin Lord's Kingdom, which was located in Pakistan. It was a place where rebels and terrorist groups of all kinds were constantly at war, a literal battlefield. In other words, this attack was mainly possible because that was the location. Entering a seven-floor dungeon in a country with a functioning government would require a lot of processes and costs. Among them, the most troublesome problem was the time. When attacking a seven-floor dungeon, it wasn't only about the public's attention that had to be kept in mind, it was also an unspeakable risk. In the event of a problem, it could be equivalent to a national disaster, therefore the approval wasn't given lightly. This was the most worrying aspect for Isaac Ivanov's team, who were currently in a race against time. Conversely, entering the seven-floor dungeon in Pakistan was comparatively easy. The Pakistani government approves of Isaac Ivanov's team's attack request. 
the government's approval could be easily obtained by handing over some money, and in truth, even that was unnecessary. If they had the confidence to enter the dungeon in this place that had turned into a battlefield, then they could attack the dungeon at any time. I got a call from the advance team. That was why Thunderbird's value was incomparable in the current era. The dungeon area has been cleared and the route has been secured. While other guilds had to wait on the government's forces, they could simply prepare the stage for themselves. Moreover, Thunderbird's ability to handle the terrorists and rebels far surpassed that of most countries' special forces. Their weapons were one thing, but they had also experienced countless battles in their journey to become the emperor of the most deadly place in South America. Great. A week after obtaining the Pakistani government's approval, even Park Yongwan was forced to acknowledge them when the news that they secured the seven-floor dungeon gate, which had been held by a terrorist group. I can't believe that an individual was able to amass this level of military power under a company. On the other hand, he had no choice but to increase his vigilance against the Lightning King, who was in control of such military power. If I eat Thunderbird, I'd gain all of that. At the same time, his greed for Thunderbird also grew. In any case, since the route to the dungeon had already been secured, all that remained was for them to walk the path. Before that, Kim Wu Jin checked the dungeon's details. Goblin Lord's Kingdom. Floors, 7. Difficulty, C rank. Maximum number of entries, 44. Requirement, level 239 and below. Challenge conditions, defeat the king of the Goblin Lord's Kingdom. Reward. Goblin Lord Sword. The Goblin Lord Sword. As he looked at the dungeon report, Kim Woo Jin, who couldn't help but recall some memories from his past, closed his eyes. Only. Then the Lightning King walked up to him and said. Isaac, let's start the attack. And so the attack began. Chapter, 237. Isaac Ivanov has entered. Of the 424 players attacking the dungeon this time, Isaac Ivanov was the last one to enter, and when he did so the dungeon sent the notification informing them of how to move on to the next floor. Kill 11, 11 goblins to advance to the next floor. The notification immediately silenced the atmosphere of the group as if it was a candle that had been blown out. I didn't hear that incorrectly, did I? This was the first time the players had ever encountered such a number in a dungeon. They were used to units of 10, 0, 0 monsters, but never once had the number surpass 100, 0, 0. Of course, considering the fact that their targets were goblins, this number couldn't exactly be called large. After all, while they might not be normal goblins, it was still better than facing dragons, hellhounds, or wyverns. They were able to comfort themselves by thinking in this way. This is no joke. But if they were to start comforting themselves in that way, then they definitely wouldn't have qualified to enter this seven floor dungeon. 110-00 on the first floor. After all, they were still on the first floor. The least challenging and lightest of the seven floors they were about to climb. Looking for comfort on the first floor. It would be strange if people who couldn't anticipate just how challenging the attack would be, were allowed to participate in the attack. It's a good number to warm up a rough estimate would be 300 monsters per person. If it's just goblins, it wouldn't be too challenging even if there were a million of them. That's why the Lightning King and Park Yongwan acted like it was nothing special when they saw the notification. They both already had the qualifications to attack seven floor dungeons between them, the Lightning King even had a bit of an advantage. Now, let's make some things clear. He spoke in a leisurely tone. As we agreed beforehand, we will split into three teams and move. Isaac Ivanov, the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird came to an agreement before they entered the dungeon. In general, unless there were any special circumstances, the three groups would act on their own. It had already been proven through countless cases that it was better for everyone to move separately and use their own strength than for the parties to form a rushed alliance and hinder each other. Lead actors don't need to share a stage. In a sense, Park Yongwan, Isaac Ivanov and the Lightning King could all be considered as aces. And the players they brought with them were those who specialized in supporting these aces. For them to be on the same stage would be the same as sending out three aces in one round of a game. In other words, it was an incredibly wasteful act that was beyond inefficient. 
let's play a game instead. Therefore, they needed something other than cooperation. How about we bet over who can catch the most in this dungeon? And in a sense, it was the best way for the three teams to have the highest level of synergy. Sounds like fun. Therefore Park Yongwan accepted the Lightning King's proposal without any hesitation. Then what shall we bet? A finger? Other people's fingers are useless unless you want to look at the pictures in their smartphone. Of course, the Lightning King was even more relentless. Let's bet a legendary item instead of chips. After saying that, the Lightning King jerked his chin toward Shakira, who immediately took an item from her inventory. I'll bet Achilles' sword. Achilles' sword. Park yong wans gaze became a bit cold when he saw the Lightning King reveal a legendary item without hesitation, the value of which was obvious just from its name. It was obvious that he had been planning this for quite a while. Kim Woo Jin, who was watching the scene, couldn't help but laugh inside. The Lightning King is certainly on another level. Park yong wan could be described as a beast raised in an animal sanctuary when attacking dungeons he only had the monsters as enemies, and he rarely had to care about any other variables. To put it simply, he never had to share a dungeon with a predator on the same level as him. On the other hand, the Lightning King was a wild beast that had been raised in a world with countless outlaws, without the help of any national power. He had shared dungeons with predators like himself numerous times, and had survived every single time. Therefore, the Lightning King, better than anyone, knew just how to take the lead in a dungeon where predators were gathered. The same was true even now. Would you play a game with legendary items as the stake? In all honesty, there was no reason to do so. It wouldn't be easy for Park yong wan to refuse. However, if he refused, he would be immediately placed in a lower position from the start. On the other hand, even if he refused, there would be no problem for the Lightning King. If Park yong wan accepts, it would be a good opportunity for the Lightning King to gauge his abilities. Since it was a bet with legendary items on the line, Park yong wan would definitely want to win, and there was a high chance that he would even take out a few hidden cards to do so. Therefore, it was highly possible for the Lightning King to learn more about Park yong wans skills. One of the basics of hunting was to grasp the abilities of the prey. For the Lightning King, it would be his first step towards hunting Park yong wan Good I'll bet a legendary item too. Park yong wan didn't hesitate any longer, deciding to accept the Lightning King's proposal. The Blue River Sword, do you need an explanation? Zhao Yun's sword, this legendary item which certainly didn't need any explanation, was added to the pot. It was the moment when two swords which belonged to legendary heroes, had become the stakes in a bet. It was then. Isaac Ivanov will also participate. Kim Woo Jin, who was watching their actions, spoke up with Isaac Ivanov standing behind him. Isaac Ivanov will bet Merlin's staff. Merlin's staff. The moment they heard the name of this item, both Park yong wan and the Lightning King were unable to hide their surprised expressions as they subconsciously turned to look at the staff in Isaac Ivanov's hand. The prize is huge. Such a strong bet. Soon, they hid their surprised expression and replaced it with a calm expression, but in truth, it was only an act. They weren't the only ones. He bet Merlin's staff. Oh my god. Park yong wan and the Lightning King's subordinates couldn't hide their surprise when they heard this ridiculous wager. Kim Woo Jin took in their expressions with a cold glint in his eyes as he thought to himself. If they covet Merlin's staff, they'll push themselves even harder. Kim Woo Jin was also a player who knew how to attack a dungeon with predators. To the extent that they'll reveal almost everything they have. A player who knew it better than anyone else in the world. That player's hunt had begun. There were many types of goblins that could be encountered in dungeons. From ordinary goblins that were very weak, to variants such as albino goblins and hobgoblins who were known for their incredible size and strength, to those like goblin champions and goblin knights, who were known for their skill with weapons. Usually, these goblins were considered as weak monsters. However, players who were active in six-floor dungeons knew even a weak goblin could knock down a player by grabbing their ankles, remove their armor and bite their flesh. So if a player died to a goblin at any time, it wouldn't be considered strange. 
and the more goblins one had to deal with, the more that reality became possible. Key. Kia. In that sense, the sight of more than three zero zero different goblins ignoring their fear and attacking with madness instead, was a scene that made even the most battle-hardened players feel a chill down their spines. So terrifying. Now that there are thousands of them gathered, these goblins don't even feel like goblins. In that sense, it was natural for the 213 Phoenix Guild players who entered the dungeon with Park Yomwan to feel uneasy as they faced off against this terrifying group of goblins. Of course, Park Yomwan was different. Dirty goblin bastards. Instead of shouting, Park Yomwan simply muttered a word of complaint before charging towards the group of goblins while pulling out the great sword, Durandal. He rushed to the battlefield by himself without bothering to give any orders. Poot. Like the tip of an awl, he pierced into the group of goblins and began cutting them down one after the other without any mercy or hesitation. This sight, which was like watching a weed whacker cutting grass, was so impressive and destructive that it sent a chill throughout the body just by looking at it. However, Park Yongwan's men weren't surprised by the sight. It's begun. He always does this. Because that was the type of player Park Yongwan was. Park Yongwan, who couldn't be called outstanding and was not lacking anything either, had always made the battlefield simple. He would plow through the monsters and create a path, and all his men had to do was follow him. And they would follow him once again. Even if nothing else was certain, they believed that Park Yongwan's path was something they could always follow. All out attack. There was no reason why it would change this time around. Attack. As it had been from the start, Park Yongwan's men began following the path he created. Amazing. The Lightning King's men, who were secretly observing Park Yongwan from the side, couldn't hold in their astonishment at the sight. Park Yongwan's skills are much higher than the public's estimation. He's suppressed by the Messiah Guild, but he's no weaker than the top five guilds. They were surprised that Park Yongwan, who hadn't even been given a proper nickname, was much stronger than they expected. But that was it. They were just a bit surprised. Well, he's still not much when compared to the boss. After all, their boss was none other than the Lightning King. By now, he's probably making a mess of the battlefield. Crackle. Followed by the sound of thunder, a bolt of lightning crashed into the horn of a hobgoblin. Keeb. The hobgoblin then became a pile of ashes without any way to defend itself. Key. Then, because of the hobgoblin's demise, reason began to return to the eyes of the goblins that had descended into madness. Kia. These goblins, who had regained their reason, could see warriors with heavy armors, and giant axes and hammers standing in front of them. At the same time, when they realized that all of these beings were releasing a bloodthirsty aura, fear crept into their eyes. Kia. Key. The goblins at the front used all their might to stop their legs from going forward before turning their backs to escape. Keek. But that only made things worse as they bumped into their companions, entangling and trampling them. At that moment it was clear that the goblins had been defeated before they could even fight. It was a very rare sight. They weren't that much. Wipe them out. However, the Lightning King's subordinates began to crush the goblins as though they were used to this sight. The Lightning King observed this scene with sparks dancing around his body. There was a mocking smile on his lips. I never would have expected to fight goblins. The Lightning King. The need for strategies were practically useless for him as he used lightning spirits, and it was virtually impossible to avoid his attacks. One who could handle any battlefield. In all honesty, he hadn't planned to make a move against the goblins. The bolt of lightning from before had actually come from his disciple, Shakira. Isaac Ivanov. But it was none other than Isaac Ivanov who made him do this. It's a completely different story now that Merlin's staff is involved. He had originally proposed the bet to stimulate Park Yongwan, but when Isaac Ivanov bet Merlin's staff, the bet became more than that. I have to get it somehow. Merlin's staff was something that the Lightning King would be willing to use some effort to obtain. Hey, tell those guys to step back. Yes, sir. After giving the order, the Lightning King lifted his palm, and electricity began dancing over it. 
Then, this spark of electricity transformed into a wolf, made entirely of lightning which then charged towards the fleeing goblins. Key. These goblins were then electrocuted by the lightning wolf and collapsed, twitching, to the ground, while foaming at the mouth. And the lightning king's men moved after the lightning wolf passed. What a harvest! Clean this up quickly. They began cutting the heads off the twitching, electrocuted bodies of the goblins that lay on the ground. They literally began reaping the goblins' lives. Gulp. Park Yongwan's subordinates, who saw this sight from a distance, couldn't help but swallow their saliva. The Lightning King is on an entirely different level. They don't even need tactics. This was a natural reaction when they saw how easily the Lightning King could wipe out a large group of monsters. Because of this, even Park Yongwan's men were forced to admit. Will the Lightning King win this bet? It would be difficult for our boss to win. The winner of this bet would probably be the Lightning King. Of course, that thought didn't last very long. There are 55, 55 goblins remaining. Ha! Huh. What was that? Uh. Half are already dead. The Lightning King only hunted about 10, 0, 0, didn't he? Because there was a real goblin slayer in the dungeon. Chapter, 238. Kyaha. A skeleton knight, which held the legendary long spear with a snake tongue shaped blade in its hands and rode on a skeleton wolf, made a loud cry as it charged towards a group of well armed goblins. Rattle. And following this skeleton knight was a group of skeleton soldiers who could easily be identified by the sound of their bones rattling. The battle was a one sided massacre. PUK. The skeleton knight used the long spear in its hands to pierce through the helmets and heads of these goblins, and the skeleton soldiers cleaned up those that the spear couldn't reach. In this melee battle, it was clear from the start which side had the advantage. Battles like this were nothing special for Isaac Ivanov. This was probably a level of battle that even those who had only heard of Isaac Ivanov's prowess would expect. Except that such battles were taking place in as many as ten different locations simultaneously. This was literal. Ten platoons, each consisting of a skeleton knight and twenty skeleton soldiers, were scattered in every direction, fighting their own battles. Kia. And the details for these battles was being relayed to Kim Woo Jin in real time by the skeleton soldiers riding wyverns high in the sky. This was the most ideal and perfect style of combat that Kim Woo Jin could currently display. First, he would read the battlefield with the help of the wyverns. The smell of blood of the living stimulates you. There are about 200 over there. Then, the moment he found groups of goblins with the help of his vampire abilities, he would configure the most efficient group to deal with them. One skeleton knight and 15 skeleton soldiers should be enough. Thus, Kim Woo Jin was able to make use of his power in the most efficient way. Therefore, it was natural that his pace was unrivaled. What was the strength of Kim Woo Jin's skeleton army? which could play the parts of hundreds of players in a fight, if their strength was drawn in the most effective way. The answer was hard to imagine. And even that wasn't all. The corpses of these goblins that were killed by the skeleton army became poisonous bombs in Kim Woo Jin's hands. And these poisonous bombs that were created were then carried by the wyverns to be dropped. The bombing began. Used corpse explosion. The poison fog spreads. The goblins have been poisoned. The moment these bodies exploded, and the screams of the goblins sounded out, the skeletons invaded. In that way, a scene was created. They've all gathered. As these goblins ran away in fear, they encountered the other groups of retreating goblins, and eventually became a huge pack. Li Jina. And when this large group of fleeing goblins finally neared 10,000, Kim Wu Jin revealed his final card. Finish this with the Dullahan. This was the reason Kim Woo Jin was able to hunt 30 0, 0 monsters before a day had passed. There are 1 11 goblins remaining. On the third day, after the three teams collectively hunted more than 100 0, 0 goblins, they decided to take a break. It was always good to take a break after long battles, but none of them laughed or even seemed happy about this fact. The reason was obvious. Did you hear the news about Isaac Ivanov? I heard it gave me goosebumps all over my body. 
He's such a ridiculous monster to be honest, when I first heard the news about Isaac Ivanov, I always thought they were exaggerating, but now it appears that they downplayed it a lot. Isaac Ivanov, he completely rewrote what the players all thought to be common sense. I didn't expect him to be such a monster. Even Park Yongwan, who didn't feel any pressure when the dungeon notification told them to hunt over 100 00 monsters, couldn't help but stiffen at that fact. It was the same on the other side too. Shakira. Yes, leader. What do you think of Isaac Ivanov? I think he's a monster. I'd prefer it if he was a monster. Huh. He's something far beyond monsters. Even the Lightning King couldn't help but feel a chill down his spine when he learned of Isaac Ivanov's power. The results that Isaac Ivanov had displayed had been strongly imprinted on their minds. To the extent that it would never be forgotten. Hey, wouldn't it be better to hold back a little? Thinking this, Li Jina couldn't help but throw out a question. After all, I know you're strong and all, but is it smart to show off your strength to people you plan to fight in the future? It was a reasonable and wise question. As Li Jina said, the Lightning King and Park Yongwan were practically prey for Kim Wu Jin. So he didn't have to show them everything he had, did he? This was true. But Kim Wu Jin wasn't the man that Li Jina thought. I don't have to show them everything. Li Jina tilted his head when he heard that. Then why? Kim Wu Jin didn't respond to his question. Because this isn't everything I have. In the first place, he hadn't shown everything. At that moment, Kim Wu Jin had gotten a weapon that would turn Isaac Ivanov into an even more terrifying monster. Your level has increased. You have reached level 180. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your abilities. The Emissary of the Underworld sends you a catalog as a gift. It's finally here. At this moment, another amazing weapon had been added to Kim Wu Jin's arsenal. That was the real trick. The more intense the impression I give them, the harder it is to imagine that there's more. Intense things could not be easily erased. No matter how powerful the Lightning King and Park Yongwan were, it was obvious that they wouldn't expect Isaac Ivanov to be able to show more intensity than he had shown already. And that fact would become a fatal weakness for them the moment he showed it. That's why Kim Wu Jin didn't hesitate. After taking out a skill page from his inventory, he tore it without hesitation. You have acquired the Lich Summoning skill. Earned the achievement Lich Summoner. When he saw this, Li Jina also realized what was happening. The Isaac Ivanov that had been seen before was completely different from the Isaac Ivanov at that moment. And that was why Kim Wu Jin had revealed himself. What a scary guy. Then, as Li Jina was still thinking about this fact, Kim Wu Jin took out the catalog he received from his halo. Then he saw it. It was a golden page. Kim Wu looked at the page. Banshee. Conditions, Emissary of the Underworld. Required level, level 150 or higher. Effect, summons the cursed soul, Banshee. Wow, that's ridiculous. It was at that moment that Isaac Ivanov had been completely reborn. You're amazing. With that brief remark, Park Yongwan handed Kim Wu Jin an elegant blue sword that he was holding in his hand. Really amazing. Immediately after that, the Lightning King handed over a silver sword that was obviously from the ancient Greek era, to Kim Wu Jin. Blue River Sword. Rating, Legendary. Physical Attack, 450. Required Level, Level 100 or Higher. Description, an excellent sword wielded by Zhao Yun of Sang San even when battling continuously, stamina will not decrease. 30% stamina. 50% stamina recovery. Recovers stamina when monsters are slain. Sword of Achilles. Physical attack, 400. Description, the sword that Achilles, the hero of the Trojan War, held until his final moments it contains a strong will. 20% to all stats. Skill heroes shout can be used. Increases attack power the more monsters hunted up to 100. This was proof. Proof that they had admitted they had lost the bet, and that they had recognized Isaac Ivanov's ability. Kim Wu Jin, who received this evidence, threw the swords into the air without any hesitation. 
swish. The sword, which went up into the sky for a moment, fell back to the ground. Cack. Two skeleton knights snatched the swords out of the air with ease. A feat worthy of applause. But no one applauded that fact. It's hard to find a skeleton knight without legendary items. How many legendary items does he have? The ten skeleton knights standing in a row made chills go down everyone's spines as they saw the legendary items in their hands. Shall we continue betting? No one said anything to Isaac Ivanov's Russian question. Instead, the sound of gulping was heard all around. I don't want to play a game you'll lose. I admit your abilities. Only Park Yongwan and the Lightning King answered Isaac Ivanov's question. They also smiled. However, they weren't able to hide the fact that it was all an act instead of genuine relaxation. Hunted all the goblins. Proceed to the next floor. In this situation, everyone heard the notification that they'd cleared the first floor, and the moment they heard the notification, the atmosphere changed once again. Now it's time for the second floor. Since we had to face 100 monsters on the first floor, the difficulty of the upcoming mission should be even harder. They had already had to face challenges that surpassed common sense in the first floor of the dungeon. Therefore, they steeled their hearts in order to not be surprised by what they would encounter. Then they received the notification for the second floor. Kill 22, 22 goblins to advance to the next floor. Oh my god. Whatever they had imagined, it was clear that they would have to face much more than that. Chapter, 239 the twelfth day after Isaac Ivanov's team entered the seven-floor dungeon. No news from the Messiah Guild yet. There is still hope for Isaac Ivanov. The attention of everyone in the world was focused on the two teams that were currently attacking seven-floor dungeons. Thanks to that, the chaos in the world subsided. Ah, I really hope both of them can clear them. Wouldn't it be a really big thing if both of them clear them? It would be amazing if they both clear seven-floor dungeons at the same time, then the seven-floor dungeons would all be cleared soon. The biggest reason why the world was able to regain order was because of the hope that the world would be able to return to its original state before becoming a game, and because there were still players running for that hope. And now these players were running at full force to clear the game. More importantly, instead of one, there were now two. But it wasn't just that there were two. If Isaac Ivanov and Lee Sejun joined forces, would it be possible for them to clear an eight-floor dungeon? It's not impossible. There's no reason for them to not work together. How much further could they go? The amount of hope the world felt at the appearance of a rival and partner for the Messiah Guild, who had been alone all this time, was not simply one plus one. Their hope was greater than ever, and the world's desire for it also became much stronger. Naturally, many people in the world began cheering for this, hoping that it would become a reality. Kia, the gifts are pouring in, pouring let's see, a box of choco pie. That's why the gifts began to pile up in the storeroom of Oh Se chans office after a long time. Ah, this. Holding a package in his hands, Oh Se chan turned to a subordinate and said. This one was sent to Li Jina. Along with those words, Oh Se-chan ripped the package open without hesitation, and looked inside. Is this homemade? It's homemade. What appeared was homemade cookies in ordinary wrapping paper. When he saw that, Oh Se-chan frowned and handed the parcel over to his subordinate. Huh. Since it belonged to Li Jina, the subordinate thought he would eat it, but when he saw this, he couldn't help but tilt his head to the side and ask. You don't want to eat it? It's not that I don't want to eat it, I can't. You can't eat it. Oh Se-chan then explained as if it was obvious. If this was handmade, and sent to someone with as terrifying an appearance as Li Jina, then it must be poisonous, no? After all, who but an assassin would send homemade cookies to Li Jina? But the person who sent this thinks Li Jina is a strongly built, blonde Russian, don't they? Ah. It was only then that Oh Se-chan, who realized his error, take the parcel back from his subordinate and put one in his mouth. Oh, it's delicious. Then he handed it back to his subordinate. However, the subordinate became confused when he saw the parcel being handed to him again. If he were going to eat it then eat it, why was this subordinate refusing to eat? 
why won't you eat it? I've had a sore stomach these past few days. Oh Seichan couldn't help but show his surprise when his subordinate replied with a glum expression. Why? And when asked the follow-up question, the subordinate responded as though it was obvious. Isn't it because of the Lightning King? They're in a seven-floor dungeon after all. They were going to get rid of the Lightning King in a seven-floor dungeon. The moment they heard this plan, all of Oh Seichan's subordinates felt like they'd been weighed down by an enormous pressure. It was natural. They might be able to take him down, but... It wasn't just the Lightning King. There was also his team of players who constantly challenged dungeons in all kinds of adverse situations. And if they kill everyone and come out. What was most troubling was the fact that Thunderbird's strongest powers are waiting for them outside. Armed with massive firepower that far surpassed a player's capabilities, would they welcome Park Yongwan and Isaac Ivanov with a smile if they came out of the dungeon without the Lightning King? It was a situation in which the worst case scenario was easily possible. More importantly, it's seven floors. The most important part was the fact that they were currently in a seven floor dungeon. A stage that even the Messiah Guild had to use their best powers to attack. No matter how amazing Kim Woo Jin's abilities were, there definitely wasn't a very high chance of success. Seeing his subordinate like this, Oh Seichan's reply was simple. Well, there's nothing to worry about. First off, that player, Kim Woo Jin, is way stronger than you think, plus, he's a lucky guy. A smile spread across Oh Seichan's face as he said that. And he's at least ten times more vicious, cruel and vigilant than you think. Then he let out a laugh. The only one that will die is the Lightning King. Kill 44, 44 goblins to advance to the next floor. On the fourth floor, the players couldn't even sigh when they received the condition to clear the floor. It wasn't just the players. We'll secure camp first. For the first time, Park Yong Wan, who had always been active and never backed down from a fight, ordered for them to secure the camp first rather than start the battle. It was clear that when faced with the current situation, Park Yongwan needed to use more cool-headed reason. What's more, the Lightning King made a gesture with his chin instead of mocking or provoking Park Yongwan as usual. He simply gestured for his side to listen to Park Yongwan's words. This was a sign that they were no longer picking fights with each other, but that they'd made a tentative alliance. Of course, the one who had the final say was neither Park Yongwan or the Lightning King. Isaac? What will Isaac choose? Everyone then turned to Isaac Ivanov, who would make the final decision. Isaac Ivanov responded after making brief eye contact with Kim Woo Jin. We'll move alone. They still had some time. This wasn't a big deal for Isaac Ivanov, but it was a shocking declaration for those who heard it. Here. Don't we have to hunt 44000? It was a stage where over 44000 monsters had to be hunted. A stage where the little over 400 players had to hunt more than 100 monsters per person. Will the fifth floor be 55000? Furthermore, if this trend continued, there was a high chance that the fifth floor would be 55000 monsters and the sixth floor would be 66000. In this situation, where the players should all learn how to fight alongside each other, Isaac Ivanov was still able to move with just his team. Monster. What's more, Isaac Ivanov's words weren't vaguely confident. Isaac Ivanov wasn't a bluffer, or a pretentious player. This meant that every word he said came from a firm will without any underlying intentions. Park Yongwan and the Lightning King narrowed their eyes at that fact. I acknowledge Isaac Ivanov's abilities, but can he really go on his own in this situation? Isaac Ivanov's abilities are certainly amazing but to move like this. The emotions in their eyes were the same as they realized something was about to start. And they both know just what that was. It's time. Looks like he'll make a move on the fourth floor. The time for hunting had come. The Goblin Kingdom. It took three days to clear the first floor, five days to clear the second floor, and eleven days to clear the third. So how many days would it take to clear the fourth? To that question, most would feel that the answer was easy. They would say either 22 or 23 days, and that it was a calculation that even a child could do. Kia. Key. 
However, when the screams and cries of as many as 440-00 goblins pierced the air, people stopped being able to do calculations that even a child could do. There are so many. Can we survive? This was because no matter how disciplined and well-trained the players were, it would be impossible for them to keep their composure when faced with so many monsters. Therefore, it was important to have a leader. We'll hunt 10 zero, zero a day just follow me, no matter what. We have enough food don't move until I set the stage, minimize the damage. The reason Park Yongwan and the Lightning King were able to have achievements comparable to the heroes was because they were leaders who could be trusted and followed, at least on the battlefield. And on the third day of the attack on the fourth floor, these two made judgment that showed they were good leaders. We should work with the Lightning King. The time has come for us to join forces. They decided to unite. It was a planned alliance. At first, they shared camp and got to know each other's faces, and in that way, they also began sharing battlefields, learning each other's fighting styles and abilities so that they could work together seamlessly when they finally made an alliance. In this way, any disagreements they had would be smaller, and their synergy would be much stronger. Therefore, Park Yongwan and the Lightning King joined forces and began to battle. Rattle. And a goblin skeleton was staring at this scene. This was Kim Woojin's scout. Everything is going according to plan. In addition, it was none other than Kim Woojin who had planned this alliance. Scary. Lee Jina walked up to Kim Woojin while muttering. If we showed up now, these two who are pretending to work together would definitely turn and try to kill each other, wouldn't they? Kim Woojin's plan was simple. He contacted both the Lightning King and Park Yongwan then told them that if they joined hands with their opponent, while fighting against the goblins, Isaac Ivanov would help him. They would hit them in the back of the head while fighting. This gives me chills down my spine this is why you can't trust people. It was an eerie plan. There's nothing more deadly than betrayal by your allies in the middle of a battle. This was a plan that would not only cause fatal damage physically, but also mentally. A plan that fully showcased the cruelty that humans were capable of. This is a plan that would make even Satan cry. It was something that couldn't be planned, handed over or executed without the help of the devil himself. Doesn't matter. When Kim Woojin calmly responded to his words, Li Jina couldn't help but stick his tongue out. Right, you're already a devil, so it doesn't matter. Only. NG is gonna come out anyway. After speaking, Kim Woojin turned his head to look at a mountain of goblin corpses. Because a new actor that no one expected is about to go on stage. Then he extended his hand towards the corpses. The bodies began to melt. The Lich, the Undead Wizard answers your call. Chapter, 240 The Lightning King said. We'll eliminate Park Yongwan on the fourth floor. And the day of the decisive battle had arrived. The plan is as follows. With those words, the Lightning King began explaining the plan. We'll battle the group of goblins together with Park Yongwan's side a battle so fierce that it's impossible to determine life or death then, Isaac Ivanov will appear, and the moment he appears, the signal will come as soon as you get the signal, attack Park Yongwan's men. Betrayal The Lightning King's plan could be summarized into that short word. But implementing this script was by no means easy. First, we have to get close to Park Yongwan it would be best if they trusted us enough to leave their backs to us. Betrayal stemmed from trust. And in situations like this one, trust wasn't something that was easy to obtain. Because there is no better way than to stab them in the back. In addition, it wasn't possible to put a knife into the back of a new partner after chatting and laughing with them for a long time without a strong resolve, even for the Lightning King's men, who had gone through all kinds of warfare. We'll also need a battlefield that is so intense that they'll be unable to maintain their guards constantly a battlefield so fierce that Park Yongwan and his team wouldn't be able to watch their backs. Moreover, the Lightning King chose the fiercest battlefield possible as the stage for his betrayal. It wouldn't be easy for them to maintain full focus against 50 zero, zero goblins. 50 zero, zero monsters. The Lightning King said a number that was hard to fathom just by hearing it. And on the fourth day since they entered the fourth floor of the dungeon, the Lightning King and his men encountered this stage. Key. Kia. 
An enormous army of goblins nearing 50 0, 0 in number, marched towards the players like a flood. It really was a hard number to fathom. But the part that made it truly hard to fathom was the fact that this number wasn't made up of just ordinary goblins. Kuh. Kua. The sounds of the cries were different, and the momentum that these cries carried was even more extraordinary. Yuo. Er. There were even mutated goblins that had grown to be as large as trolls. Thump, thump. Whenever these goblins walked, it felt like the earth was shaking. But these weren't even the scariest part. Kyo, Kyo. Ki, Ki. The goblin chief's magic resonates in all directions. All goblins lose their fear. All goblins become immune to pain. All goblins gain a thirst for blood. Goblin shamans were scattered throughout the army, and with their sorcery, the goblins lost their fear and feelings of pain, and instead became filled with bloodlust and madness. Crackle. Then, a huge lightning bolt, followed by an incredibly loud explosion of thunder, struck the head of the goblin chief. Kayat Dash. The goblin chief's cry was cut short as it collapsed to the ground, burnt black. That bolt of lighting was the signal that announced the start of the battle. Let's battle. Kiyo. And so, the terrible war between goblins and players began. 50 0, 0 against 400. In all honesty, these numbers were incomparable. However, it was the allied team of 400, led by Park Yongwan and the Lightning King, that had the advantage at the start of the battle. When the Lightning King's lightning burnt the goblin shaman's bodies black and paralyzed the goblins nearby, Park Yongwan and his men perfectly handled them. Follow me. The movement of Park Yongwan and his team, as they cut through the goblins, was like rubbing away a black mark with an eraser. They were basically wiping out the goblins. Of course, that was it. Although Park Yongwan and the Lightning King's performance was spectacular, the problem was that there were simply too many goblins. It wasn't just that there was no time to rest, as the fight progressed, they all realized the same problem. Shit, the goblin corpses. Watch out for the corpses on the floor. If you stumble, you'll die. The real problem was the goblins' bodies as they took away their maneuverability and mobility on the battlefield. The blood and other bodily fluids from the corpses turned the ground muddy, and the corpses themselves became obstacles that might cause the players to slip and fall at any moment. Naturally, the players would lose their lives if they were to fall in such a battle. Kia. Move back. We have to move back before they encircle us. The goblins began surrounding the players who lost their mobility. This wasn't a tactical move on their part. It was simply a similar phenomenon to putting one's finger under running water at first, the water would be blocked, but in time, the water would naturally surround and wet the entire finger. In other words, it was a natural outcome. Of course, since they knew this natural outcome, the Lightning King and Park Yongwan were prepared for it. Blow them up. Boom. As soon as the Lightning King gave the order, a loud explosion could be heard under the goblins that were charging forward to surround their group. It was the moment when landmine spells had been activated. Piss hitch. The explosion immediately created a cloud of black smoke. Key. The goblins, who were deafened by the sound of the explosion and blinded by the black smoke, couldn't help but make sounds of confusion. The next thing that greeted these goblins were solid-looking wooden barriers. Naturally, there was no way for them to avoid them. Crash. Keek. The goblins inevitably crashed into the barriers. And a series of crashes followed the charging goblins collided with the barriers one after another until a wall of goblins had been created. This was a sign that their strategy had worked perfectly. Unfortunately, it was only a strategy, and not a way to end the battle. The army of 50 0, 0 goblins was like a river. And when blocked, a river would simply find another path. We're surrounded. After a while, the allied team was inevitably surrounded by the goblin army. Naturally, the battle became even fiercer at that point. So everyone was tense. Coming. This wasn't tension because of the fierce battle with the goblin horde. The reason for this tension was because of their plans. He's coming. At the moment when the battle reached its fiercest point, 
he would appear. Isaac Ivanov is coming. It had been clearly stated in the script. When Isaac Ivanov appears the betrayal will begin. And the moment Isaac Ivanov appeared, the moment he sent the signal, the Lightning King and his men would immediately turn their swords on Park Yong Wan and his team, according to the script. It's Isaac. It's Isaac Ivanov. Just as the script said, Isaac Ivanov appeared during the height of the fiercest moment in the battle. It was the moment when the most important scene on this stage had begun. Now, all that was needed to reach the climax was the signal. Ha! Huh. W dash, WH dash, what the, what is that? However, at that moment, lines that weren't supposed to be in the script began to appear. One of them couldn't help but speak out. No way, is that a lich? Lich. The most noticeable feature about this undead monster was its height, which reached up to 4 meters. The next thing that stood out was the fact that its body was made up of all kinds of bones, and that it was wearing a robe made of black smoke. However, what really mattered wasn't the external part. The lich has inherited the summoner's abilities. The biggest, most unbelievable feature of the lich was the fact that it could use every skill of the player who summoned it tl oh my god. The lich summons a skeleton soldier. The lich summons a skeleton knight. It was possible for it to summon skeleton soldiers as well as knights. The lich summons a dullahan. Even the dullahan was included. In other words, summoning the lich was the same as doubling Kim Woo Jin's undead army with its summons. Kim Woo Jin by himself had already shown terrifying abilities, but double that? That was something that far surpassed common sense. However, the part that was even more surprising, was the fact that the lich's magic power was completely independent from Kim Woo Jin's. In other words, Kim Woo Jin didn't need to expend additional magic power in order to maintain the lich's summons. Rattle. In this way, the number of skeleton soldiers reached a whopping 400. Kyaha. The number of skeleton knights also reached 20. Hayaha. And among them, the best part was the skeleton wizards. The skeleton wizards receive more powerful spells from the lich. The skeleton wizards magic attack power has been greatly increased. The skeleton wizards magic attack speed increases significantly. Because it was the skull wizards who gained the most from the lich's appearance. Naturally, in front of Kim Woo Jin's troops, the goblin horde was nothing but loose sand. The banshee cries. The goblins lose their resistance to fear. Hi. The addition of the banshee, the cursed demon, made the goblins collapse on the spot. Key, key, key. The skeleton army, led by Kim Woo Jin and the lich, did not even give the goblins a chance to scream or escape. An overwhelming massacre began. Oh my god. What are we even looking at? The players were mesmerized by the sight, completely forgetting that they were currently locked in a fierce battle. Of course, there were some who were different. It's different. The Lightning King was not enchanted by the sight in front of him. Instead, he analyzed the situation with a cool head. It's different from what I want. The Lightning King questioned why Isaac Ivanov appeared with more power than he expected. Why did he reveal such a powerful force at that moment, at such a critical moment? To eat Park Yongwon perfectly? It was possible. But what if it's not? No, there was one thing the Lightning King questioned. Does Isaac Ivanov have any reason to join me? If he had that much strength, why would he want to join hands and eat the Phoenix Guild? If I had that much power, I would never work with other people. At least, he wouldn't be satisfied with eating the Phoenix Guild. I would eat both. He would feel satisfied eating both instead. In perfect condition. He wouldn't eat them after a fierce struggle, but instead make them bow their heads and walk into his stomach. Right, that's his purpose. Isaac Ivanov intended to subdue everyone by showcasing his overwhelming power at that moment. He planned to make both the owner of Thunderbird and the master of the Phoenix Guild bow their heads. Humph. After his thoughts reached that point, the Lightning King didn't bother to think any further. No matter what, the Lightning King had no intention of bowing his head to Isaac Ivanov and going under him. Because he was a king, a tyrant who would never bow their head to anyone. What I should do is kill Park Yongwon. 
The answer he got was to kill Park Yeonwon. If Park Yeonwon died, the Phoenix Guild's team would definitely ask questions, and the Lightning King would tell them the truth. That he had a deal with Isaac Ivanov. And if Isaac Ivanov denied it, then it would be a war. And if he kills me or my men, then everyone will die when they leave the dungeon. And if they cleared the dungeon after killing the Lightning King and his men, the soldiers of Thunderbird would unleash ruthless firepower at the survivors. So Isaac Ivanov would have no choice but to accept the plan that we agreed to. Knowing that, Isaac Ivanov would have no choice but to follow the script that they had already written. The script that said join hands with the Lightning King to eat the Phoenix Guild. Of course, there was one important part that needed to be completed for his plan to work. Was it possible to get rid of the surprisingly talented Park Yeonwon at that moment? That was why the Lightning King wasn't worried. Inventory The Lightning King removed a crude spear from his inventory. Gungnir recognizes your prey. Because the Lightning King had a hunting method that would never fail. Chapter, 241 Gungnir, the weapon of Asgard's all-father, Odin, was able to target any prey. There was no need for a long explanation of this weapon, which had appeared in countless movies and novels. It had been quite a long time since the Lightning King had acquired Gugner. To be precise, the first weapon that the Lightning King had ever obtained in a dungeon was, in fact, Gungnir. It was amazing. If this were known to the world, the Lightning King's evaluation would have been at least one level higher. Without a doubt, the Lightning King's name would not have been lesser when compared to the masters of the five top guilds. But very few knew of this fact. Only the Lightning King's most trusted associates knew of its existence as he had never used the weapon in public since had obtained it. He easily gave up such intangible values like fame. It would only be meaningful if the weapon was saved for the best moment. Instead, he saved it for a moment, a very important moment. And now, that moment had arrived. The Lightning King lifted Gungnir. Use Divine Judgment. Gungnir accepts the Divine Judgment. Then, he used Gungnir's skill Divine Judgment, which was the second strongest skill that the Lightning King had in his arsenal. There was no need to do anything else. There wasn't even a need to aim the spear at the target. The Lightning King simply threw the spear randomly, and Gungnir flew off on its own. Gee. With a piercing cry, the spear used the shortest trajectory to shoot towards Park Yeonwon's head. Park Yeonwon, who had been distracted by the Lich's appearance, only noticed what was happening at that moment, and when he turned his head, he saw Gungnir, which was covered in the light of divine judgment, only a few meters away from his head. Naturally, the Lightning King was certain. Park Yeonwon is dead. Park Yeonwon would die and Isaac Ivanov would be forced to stick to the script that they had agreed to beforehand. Suddenly. Boom. A flash of light exploded in front of Park Yeonwon. It was an explosion of light so intense that it turned the surroundings white in an instant, blinding everyone who saw it. Kung. Then a streak of white lightning fell from the sky, and collided with the white light. Crack. Coo. And following that lightning, was a groan. That was no joke. The one who'd made the groan turned out to be none other than Li Jina. And in Li Jina's hand, was the shield that could block anything, the Aegis shield. The Aegis shield blocked the attack, but the bones in my hand holding the shield were all broken if it had been left alone, Park Yeonwon's head would have been blown away. It was the moment when Li Jina, who had been waiting near Park Yeonwon, blocked the Lightning King's attack with his shield. I didn't think the Lightning King would actually make this choice. At the same time, it was proof. Ugh, he's more of a ghost than a ghost. Proof that Kim Woo Jin could definitely read the Lightning King's behavior. At that moment, Lee Jin Ah remembered the conversation he had with Kim Woo Jin a few hours before the showdown. The Lightning King is smart. On the day of the decisive battle, Kim Woo Jin spoke to Lee Jin Ah. So he will definitely act according to the script. What does that mean? He will try to kill Park Yeonwon. As soon as he appeared, the Lightning King would definitely kill Park Yeonwon without any hesitation. Is that smart? It's because he will think that Isaac Ivanov is trying to eat both Thunderbird and the Phoenix Guild at the same time. 
isn't that what you plan to do? Right, that's why he's smart. Kim Woo Jin's real purpose was indeed to eat the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird at the same time, and the Lightning King that Kim Woo Jin knew was clever enough to figure that out. In such a situation, the best choice he can make would be to kill Park Yong Wan after all, it still follows the script then, if he says that Isaac Ivanov ordered him to kill Park Yong Wan after doing so, the scenario would not play out the way Isaac Ivanov wanted. And in such a situation, a man who was smart enough to immediately realize what was going on was also smart enough to try to stop it from happening. Then my role is to. Of course, there was a flaw in the Lightning King's actions. Risk your life to save Park Yong Wan. If he failed to kill Park Yong Wan with his attempt, then it would be impossible to continue following the script. The moment the Lightning King stops after attempting to kill Park Yong Wan. Of course, from that moment on, a new type of play would begin. I'll put my sword in his heart. Keek. A loud clap of thunder rang out on the battlefield as the white lightning fell to the ground. While everyone's minds were still shaken by the intense scene that completely defied their common sense, the sound of something gently penetrating armor came to the Lightning King's ears. P.U.K. It was only after hearing the sound that the Lightning King realized something. Ah. That he was the one who'd been stabbed. Shook. As soon as he realized that fact, an ordinary sword flew through the air towards the nape of the Lightning King's neck. That was all. Looking back and seeing the assassin who stabbed him, or talking to the assassin. There was no such thing as the assassin telling the target their plan. Poot. Instead, there was only the sound of a sword cutting off the Lightning King's head. Crackle. Powerful lightning began surging in the Lightning King's body, who had been decapitated so perfectly that his head and neck still looked attached. Then, an enormous bolt of lightning fell from the sky and crashed into the Lightning King's body. Ack. Kook. The lightning, which fell to the ground then spread out in all directions like a spider's web, electrocuting everything around the Lightning King. Lightning God Indra is descending. Then, a thunderstorm surged in a place where the lightning fell, and soon began to take the form of a giant. An overwhelming sense of divinity spreads. Lightning God Indra. It was a legendary skill that was only available to those who utilized lightning spirits. It was a skill that broke free from the natural laws by strengthening the lightning in the user's body for a moment. It was the skill that created the Lightning King. It's too late. And the reason why Kim Woo Jin decided to assassinate the Lightning King. The Lightning King, who could summon the Lightning God, Indra, was not an opponent who could be defeated by normal attacks. Of course, that didn't mean that Kim Woo Jin's assassination was wrong. In fact, his assassination was perfect. As soon as the Lightning King focused completely on Park Yong Wan, he sneaked over with the cap of invisibility in Hermes boots, then, he stabbed his heart and cut his neck in the same instant. He had perfectly executed the fastest and most accurate way to kill a living being. The Lightning King's response. In that same instant, the Lightning King was amazing enough to have realized his situation and used the Lightning God's advent skill. But it's over now. Of course, at that moment, the game had basically ended in Kim Woo Jin's victory. As powerful as the Lightning God's advent was, it also had an equally powerful penalty. At this point, it would be considered long if he can maintain the Lightning God state for six minutes. First, the time limit was clear. According to Kim Woo Jin's calculations, it wouldn't be easy to maintain the Lightning God state for more than five minutes. After that, it's over. When that time limit ended, so would the fatal period. After that, he wouldn't be able to use lightning spirits for a number of days equal to the amount of time spent. If he used it for six minutes then he wouldn't be able to use it again for six days. And if he was unable to use lightning spirits, the lightning king was as good as dead. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, he would succeed in his hunt if he could run away for five minutes. I would have had to run if it was before. And that was exactly what Kim Woo Jin had planned to do at first. At that point, there was no other way. Against the lightning god Indra, his skeleton army was only bugs that could be used to stall for time since only legendary items like the Ninian lion's skin and the Aegis shield could block the lightning god's attacks. Even if he had such items, there was no reason to take the risk and fight. 
waiting for the god state to disappear was the wisest and most reasonable option for anyone to see. But now it was different. Mjolnir answers your call. But now, there's no reason to run away. Because Kim Woo Jin had gotten his hands on Mjolnir. In a situation where they were faced off against 50 zero zero goblins, a lich that they'd never seen before, led over 400 skeletons and joined the battle. And from that point, the situation failed to return back to the scope of common sense. But what if there was a sudden blinding flash of light and a huge bolt of white lightning followed by a loud clap of thunder? One thing was for sure. There were few people who could maintain their rationality in such a situation. Ah. That was all that the players who witnessed the lightning god's advent could say. Their expressions hardened as they watched this phenomenon, but their adult brains didn't register the fact that they should be fleeing at that moment. Among them was the Lightning King's men. What is that? Even his men, most of whom had never seen the Lightning King's advent before, could only stare blankly without fully understanding the Lightning King's transformation. Shit! Only the few who knew the skill were able to react more swiftly to the situation. Shakira was one of those few. She was well aware of the Lightning King's skill, and the tremendous power it had. The leader has no reason to use that right now. She also knew that in that state, the Lightning King's distinction between enemy and ally disappeared completely and only battle lust would remain. From now on, he will carry out a slaughter, regardless of ally or enemy. There was no way to stop the Lightning King when he was in that state. In other words, in order to survive at that moment was to run away as quickly as possible without looking back. Everyone, run away. Unfortunately, her cry was buried by the crackle of lightning. In addition, with this sound, a bolt of lightning flew from the Lightning King's fingertips and plunged into the body of a player. And the player immediately became a pile of black dust following a short scream. Boom boom. Even after that, the lightning from the Lightning King's hand did not stop until a large burn mark had appeared on the ground. The moment she saw that, Shakira no longer tried to get people to run away. It's over. No one could stop the Lightning King in his current state. Even Lee Se-Joon, the strongest man in the world, wouldn't be able to. With those thoughts in her mind, Shakira turned around. It was at that moment. When Shakira turned away from the Lightning King, a blonde man wearing a skull mask appeared before her. Isaac? Isaac Ivanov had appeared. That with a huge hammer in his hand. It's Danjero. Just as Shakira wanted to shout a warning to him, lightning erupted from the Lightning King's finger and struck Isaac Ivanov directly. The force of the strike shook the entire area, as if it was a tank shell that had struck, and naturally, heavy winds buffeted those nearby. The winds were so strong that Shakira had to use her full power in order to withstand them. He's dead. Naturally, Shakira believed that Isaac Ivanov was almost certainly dead after receiving such an attack. Of course, the Lightning King didn't take such things into consideration. Instead, the Lightning King continued to bombard the spot where Isaac Ivanov had been standing with lightning. A lightning storm began to brew. Quack! Noticing this, Shakira let out a shout and began running away as quickly as she could. Even that was only possible because she also used lightning spirits. Because of that, her resistance to lightning wasn't something that normal players could match up to. Ugh. This was proved by players, who were even further away than she was, collapsing, paralyzed after being electrocuted. Moreover, the lightning which was being thrown by the lightning king in the lightning god state was not ordinary lightning tl, sick of the word lightning. The rage of lightning god Indra strikes everywhere. It was lightning filled with lightning god Indra's anger. It was lightning that attacked everything in its range without any discrimination. Key. Facing the rage of the lightning god, the players and goblins all looked on, terrified. They knelt down before the lightning king. Only one person was relaxed in this situation. Egu. Looking at the lightning that was striking down repeatedly, Li Jina couldn't help but shake his head and let out a whistle. It must be fully charged by now. Mjolnir descends. A new notification appeared in the battlefield. Chapter, 242. 
The Messiah Guild's one-year plan began with Lee Sejun's dungeon attack. Lee Sejun would enter a higher floor dungeon that no one had ever attacked before in time for the new year, and only after he came out would the big picture be present of what he would do in the coming year. It was the same in 2024, when Lee Sejun organized a seven-floor dungeon attack. After completing the seven-floor dungeon attack, Lee Sejun gathered all the top officials of the Messiah Guild and said. From now on, we will put our priority on securing legendary items. In the future, legendary items would play a much bigger role than ever. Since then, the Messiah Guild used any and all means to obtain legendary items. It was around that time that the reputation of the hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin began to increase. In that way, Kim Woo Jin obtained a wide variety of weapons. From the legendary items that Park Yong Wan sold to Japan, to the items of the Sword Saint and Lightning King, to even the Dragon Slayer's best weapon. But he didn't have everything. In particular, he didn't have many items that stemmed from Northern European mythology. Gungnir, Megingjord 1, Brisingham and 2, items that you'd know the value of simply by hearing their names. He tried to secure such items, but couldn't. The Messiah Guild had a lot of regrets about that fact. Of course, when Kim Woo Jin was betrayed by Lee Se Jun, he realized that disappointment wasn't the feeling of being unable to clear the dungeon. Instead, he regretted the fact that there was still an unknown threat that was basically controlling the world. In any case, Kim Woo Jin didn't have much of a relationship with legendary items from Norse mythology. Mjolnir. Rating, Legendary. Physical Attack, 600. Required Level. Level 11 or higher. Description, God of Thunder Thor's weapon it has the power of thunder and lightning. All stats 200. 20% 20 damage when attacking. Triggers lightning when attacking. The power of the thunder god is unlocked and the power of thunder is stacked. Immune to all lightning attacks. I didn't think I'd obtain this like this. Now, Mjolnir, the weapon which was said to be the strongest in Norse mythology, had landed in Kim Woo Jin's hands. How lucky! He could only base the result on luck. It's the worst thing for the Lightning King. And it was something that could be called the worst possibility for the Lightning King. This was literal. Mjolnir's power protects you from lightning. One of the effects of equipping Mjolnir was a complete immunity to lightning attacks. It was like a poison that targeted the Lightning King perfectly. And that wasn't all. Mjolnir is filled with the power of thunder. The power of the thunder god is unlocked. The power of the thunder god. Originally, this was a skill that would be charged by the lightning that was discharged when Mjolnir attacked an enemy. However, now, thanks to the lightning king's attacks, there was no need to do that. The duration is 131 seconds. All stats increased by 30%. Movement speed increased by 30%. Thunderstorm attack is available. When the power of the Thunder God activated, Kim Woo Jin lightly struck the air with Mjolnir. Boom! Then, with the sound of thunder, the space hit by Mjolnir shook fiercely. So that's how it feels. Thunderclap. It was the moment when a terrifying skill which ignored the target's defense to cause immense damage had been activated. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin moved. Pot. Wearing the Hermes boots, Kim Woo Jin's movements across the ground were like lightning. In an instant, he reached the Lightning King who was in the Lightning God state. And even before he reached, he'd already begun to swing Mjolnir through the air. What happened was a clear-cut swing. However, following the loud sound of thunder, the Lightning Kings began to shiver like candles in the wind. The huge body of the Lightning God's advent also began to flutter, and the Lightning King's terrifying attacks naturally stopped. But Kim Woo Jin didn't stop. Kim Woo Jin, who stepped on the air and jumped, continued to hit the air again and again. The sound of thunder rang out with each swing, and the Lightning Kings shook continuously. The Lightning God is angry. Of course, the physical damage was not high. No, in the first place, the concept of damage did not exist for Lightning God Indra. It would be strange if it was possible to deal physical damage to a corporeal entity. Kim Woo Jin was also aware of that. After all, he was the one who had killed the Lightning King before. 
Therefore it was natural that his purpose wasn't to cause damage at all. The time should have reduced. Instead, he aimed at reducing the time for the lightning god's advent. Now, there shouldn't be much time left. That also meant that the lightning king didn't have much time left either. It's time to finish this. It's over. This is hell. Overwhelming fear. There was no time to feel any other kind of emotion. Ah. Kia. And there was no distinction between player and goblin. All living creatures had been crushed by fear. Rattle. In other words, this didn't have much of an effect on the army of undead led by the lich. Kyaha. Hayaha. For those who were literally dead, who wanted to feel the fear of death but would never be able to do so, the sight before them was undoubtedly a feast. A great banquet table filled with countless side dishes that wouldn't be able to do anything even if they wanted to stab them with a spear, cut them with a sword, or hit them with a hammer. Nevertheless, there was only one reason why they stopped their offensive in such a situation. The master's absolute command. Because of that command, the army of undead held their position, even in the presence of the scattered lightning. It was around that time. When the sound of thunder sounded once again. At the cry of a skeleton knight, the skeleton army began to move once again. Their movement was similar to a starving beast. It was much more aggressive and reckless than usual. On the other hand, the goblins, who were weighed down by fear, were much weaker and more desperate than usual. A massacre began. The blood golem's poison spreads in all directions. And this time, a new killer, who had not taken part in the battle earlier, also shared in the slaughter. The massacre began in this way. Like dust on the ground being swept away by a hand, the goblin horde disappeared as the skeleton army moved forward. There are two eighty zero zero goblins remaining. There are two seventy zero zero goblins remaining. Ten zero zero monsters, a number that was hard to picture, disappeared in the blink of an eye. Nevertheless, the people there were too distracted to notice this fact. There are two sixty zero zero goblins remaining. When this massacre began taking place, there was only one person who came to their senses to witness it. This. It was none other than Park Yongwon. The abnormal status effect caused by divine judgment has been cancelled. Previously, he'd lost his sense after being caught up in the abnormal effects caused by Gungnir, and only then did he begin to figure out what was going on. He saw Isaac Ivanov's undead army massacring the goblins, and he saw Isaac Ivanov fighting against the giant made of lightning that was the Lightning King. And he saw the surroundings that had been devastated. Fuck. And faced with that sight, Park Yongwon only had one thought. He dared. At that moment, if he still didn't realize what was going on, then he didn't deserve to be alive. He dared to eat me. Park Yongwon realized that he had become a dog with a leash held by none other than Isaac Ivanov. I'll wear the collar for now. Of course, Park Yongwon didn't intend to show his fangs and remove the collar right away. That was the kind of man he was. If the Lightning King was a tyrant then Park Yongwon was a villain. A man who could bow his head when necessary, and even follow obediently, but who would also have a knife hidden in his bosom. Therefore, Park Yongwon knew what he had to do in order to gain the most benefit. For now, I'll stick to Isaac Ivanov's now. The current situation showed that the Lightning King would die that day, and Isaac Ivanov would get everything. Even Park Yongwon could only decide to follow Isaac Ivanov. And it would be better if he had a good impression. In that case, it would be better to be a valiant hound than a desperate, beaten old dog. Isaac Ivanov is blocking the Lightning King. Therefore, Park Yongwon, who had finished his calculations, aroused all the players from their fear. In the meantime, we should help his skeleton sweep away the rest of the goblins. Along with those words, Park Yongwon lifted Durandal in his hands. Durandal represents courage. Durandal's spirit blesses those who follow you. Durandal. The courage of the great knight Roland drove out the fear the players felt and filled them with bravery instead. Oh. Let's go. Only then did the players, who had regained their senses, gather around Park Yongwon. There was no longer a distinction between Thunderbird and the Phoenix Guild. Let's kill the goblins. Let's end this. 
everyone began to fight as one, and the goblins were unable to put up any resistance on this battlefield. It was the moment when the true massacre had begun. Amazing. Seeing this scene, Li Jina couldn't help but click his tongue. It wasn't because of the madness or misery of the massacre. Kim Woojin really is a ghost to predict even this. Even this had been included in Kim Woojin's script. Li Jina, who was made speechless by this fact, couldn't help but look at the spear in his hand before turning to look at Kim Woojin and the Lightning King's battle. The outcome of their battle was clear. Amidst Kim Woojin's continuous attacks, it was clear that the body of the Lightning King's Lightning God state was devastated to the point of collapsing. Seeing this, Li Jina could only sneakily place the spear into his inventory. He only has himself to blame for losing it. But Li Jina didn't know that even he was a part of Kim Wujin's script. That's how the battle on the fourth floor came to an end. When it struck, a lightning bolt was powerful, but afterwards, it was nothing. It was the same for the Lightning King. The Lightning God's advent was insanely powerful, but when it was finished, the user would be severely weakened. Flash. And following a flash of light, the Lightning Giant vanished, and all that was left was the pitiful figure of the Lightning King. Hook, hook. The Lightning King's condition was very serious. If he was left as is, it would be difficult for him to survive. The same was true for his mental state. The Lightning King, who had been taken over by the descent of Indra, was forcibly being reminded of the actions he had committed. It was an injection of information after his performance, and it was incredibly painful. Kook. Nevertheless, the Lightning King recognized, understood, and grasped the leash of his reason. This required amazing mental power. I have to find a way to survive negotiation. Even at that moment, while he was filled with anger at Isaac Ivanov, who had driven him to such a state, he devised a way for himself to survive. I still have a card the subordinates I have stationed outside. What came to his mind at that moment were the troops that he had stationed outside the dungeon gate. He didn't actually prepare anything. I have to use it to negotiate. However, Isaac Ivanov wouldn't know that, so he had some room to negotiate. He will have to keep it in mind. Furthermore, Isaac Ivanov was certain to think that there would be a problem if he killed the Lightning King then exited the dungeon. In any case, one thing was certain. Dialogue was necessary for negotiation. Therefore, the Lightning King opened his mouth the moment Isaac Ivanov approached him. Is. At that moment, a bolt of lightning struck the Lightning King. It was also the moment that the Lightning King's reputation fell. And it was also the moment that a new Lightning King had been born. Chapter, 243. Get them. These are the last. By the end of the battle with the 100-00 strong goblin horde, the players' conditions were similar to cars that had just finished a long race. When this is over, their heated engines began to cool, and their reason, which had returned with their calm, began to make them feel cold. The reason why these players felt this way was simple. What will Isaac Ivanov do? They didn't know what Isaac Ivanov would do after the battle ended. But they knew that it was something that would change their fates one way or another. The battle soon ended. Keek. After that last screech, there were no longer any goblins standing on the battlefield. Gulp. Instead, tension began to fill this place that was absolutely covered in corpses. Even though no one said anything, all the players subconsciously gathered together regardless of their affiliations. P.U.K. Of course, even at this time, the skeleton knights and skeleton soldiers didn't forget to finish off any goblins who were still alive in the pile. So it made the atmosphere even scarier. Rattle. Kyaha. The dreadful silence that was only broken by the rattle of the skeleton's bones, or their occasional cry made these players, who had overcome their fear, slowly descend into that state once again. It was about that time. When the sweat that had accumulated after the battle slowly became cold. Sat. Isaac Ivanov finally approached the players with quiet, calm footsteps. Then he turned to look at the Thunderbird players and said. The Lightning King is dead. Those words made the Thunderbird players take a collective gulp. They once again remembered the scene of Isaac Ivanov slaying the Lightning King. Surely. 
What about us? These thoughts soon became fear as they wondered if Isaac Ivanov would kill them after killing the Lightning King. More importantly, they had initially had an agreement with Isaac Ivanov to work together and get rid of the Phoenix Guild. Yet in such a situation, the Lightning King died. This meant that Isaac Ivanov might have had an agreement with the Phoenix Guild to get rid of the Lightning King. Damn it! Was it intentional? The Thunderbird executives who were closest to the Lightning King began to wonder if their speculations were the truth. What should we do? But they didn't dare to fight. Just the thought of fighting Isaac Ivanov after witnessing his prowess was crazy in itself. But running was also not that good of a choice. The only place they would reach by running from there was hell. The eyes of the Thunderbird players shook violently as they wondered how to get out of their difficult situation. Then Isaac Ivanov spoke again. So nominate a representative to take over from the Lightning King. Get a representative to replace the Lightning King. This remark shocked all the Thunderbird players greatly. Suddenly, Shakira, the Lightning King's first disciple, bowed her head towards Isaac Ivanov and said, the leader didn't choose a successor, so you, Isaac Ivanov, can choose. This was a judgment made out of desperation. If she asked Isaac Ivanov to pay for the death of the Lightning King, what would Isaac Ivanov do? If he wanted to negotiate, that would be great, but what if he didn't? The answer was obvious. He would just eliminate these negotiators who dared to demand a price. I'd be next. And with the current situation, Shakira was certain that she would be the first person to follow the Lightning King. Absolutely not. Unsurprisingly, she had no intention of showing any loyalty to the dead Lightning King at that moment. Furthermore, she didn't think it was necessary to go down to hell together with the Lightning King in this dungeon. Instead, she decided to lower her head and wait for the right time. In this situation, there was one person who willingly raised their hand. Then I'll represent them. Kim Woo-jin declared himself as the representative. Thunderbird was the number one civilian military company in the world. Thunderbird's value was clear for everyone to see if it became a listed company, there was no doubt that the richest people in the world would not spare their money to invest in it. What was more surprising was that all of Thunderbird's value was held in the hands of one person, the Lightning King. The Lightning King did not give any real power to any of his subordinates, nor did he designate a successor. This was because the Lightning King believed this would only lead to inevitable betrayal. These were the thoughts of a tyrant. In any case, replacing the Lightning King was the same as taking complete control of Thunderbird. I'll be the representative. But now Kim Woo Jin had said in front of Isaac Ivanov that he wanted to replace the Lightning King. Shakira's eyes became bloody at this fact. These guys. In all honesty, this was complete nonsense. Isaac Ivanov was the one who killed the Lightning King, and now Kim Woo Jin who was one of Isaac Ivanov's closest associates wanted to be the head of Thunderbird. There won't be any problems with my qualifications. The problem was that it seemed like Kim Woo Jin had some kind of agreement with the Lightning King. I had an agreement with the Lightning King. Obviously, she knew what they had talked about at that time. If Kim Woo Jin killed Johann George in the dungeon, the Lightning King would make a place for him in Thunderbird. He would also prepare a key position for him in the group. Isn't that right, Miss Shakira? Of course, Shakira knew about this deal, even if no one else did. Naturally, she could deny his words, after all, they didn't sign a contract, nor did they get another person to notarize their agreement. But what would happen after she denied it? No, it wasn't even worth imagining. It was obvious who would win the debate. If Kim Woo Jin becomes Thunderbird's representative. So, on the contrary, Shakira began to weigh what would happen if she agreed to his offer instead. Thunderbird's power would be the same. Once Kim Woo Jin became Thunderbird's representative, at least the executives wouldn't have to worry about being hit by Isaac Ivanov's lightning. And even if they had to suffer some losses, it would only have to be to Kim Woo Jin instead of Isaac Ivanov. The difference was quite large. If you asked any of Thunderbird's executives to go talk to Isaac Ivanov, they would be unable to do so, but if it was Kim Woo Jin, they would be able to have a conversation. In other words, Kim Woo Jin could act as the buffer between Thunderbird and Isaac Ivanov. And he's not a good person. 
In addition, Kim Woo Jin wasn't someone who was completely loyal to Isaac Ivanov. It's possible to negotiate with him after. Naturally, this meant that they could deal with Kim Woo Jin in other ways be it transactions or conspiracies. After thinking about it for a while, Shakira nodded. It is up to you Isaac Ivanov, if you recognize him as the representative, then Thunderbird will follow him. When he heard Shakira's words, Isaac Ivanov turned to look at Kim Woo Jin who nodded and said. I'm Thunderbird's representative, Kim Woo Jin. TL, basically reintroducing himself. It was the moment when Kim Woo Jin had been appointed the head of Thunderbird. First of all, Thunderbird would like to delegate total command in this dungeon to you, Isaac Ivanov. Then he delegated the command of Thunderbird over to Isaac Ivanov. After nodding at those words, Isaac Ivanov then turned to look at Park Yongwan. Park Yongwan, who had been watching this from the side and making his own calculations, finished making his decision by the time those eyes came to rest on him. Nothing good will come out of resisting here. Afterwards, he lowered his gaze and said. An unexpected situation has occurred, so, Isaac Ivanov, I think it would be best if you took command from now on if you give a command, then the Phoenix Guild, including myself, will absolutely obey it. Isaac Ivanov nodded once more. This meant that from that moment, Isaac Ivanov was basically the leader of everyone in the dungeon. If they acted against Isaac Ivanov now, it would no longer be a disagreement, instead, it would be disobedience. Then I'll give the orders. Then he gave an order to everyone for the first time. On the seventh floor, we will take down the boss monster of this dungeon, the Goblin Lord. This order put everyone's minds at ease. So it's just hunting. Right, we would have had to do it to leave the dungeon anyway. All the players there knew that they had to keep attacking and eventually clear the dungeon if they wanted to survive. Of course, these relaxed thoughts didn't last very long. The time limit is a month. Kim Woo Jin continued, not giving his new subordinates the chance to interpret his words in a different way. We will clear this dungeon in a month. After Park Yongwan sold out the country to Japan before Kim Woo Jin returned to the past, the Messiah Guild went to war with Japan. And after the Messiah Guild's victory, the world became split in two. There were those who agreed with the Messiah Guild's values, and those who disagreed with the Messiah Guild's values. In this divided world, many people gathered under the Messiah Guild's banner, and in the process, the Messiah Guild experienced explosive growth both qualitatively and quantitatively. However, there were some side effects. There were many who agreed with the Messiah Guild's values, but it was not easy for those who had never fought for said values to meld into the Messiah Guild. Therefore, there were bound to be some collisions, which could be said to be a part of the fusion process. Unfortunately, most of the time, these collisions didn't just lead to casualties, but also the failure to clear the dungeon. From then on, Kim Woo Jin, you have to lead the players who will enter the dungeon this time. The hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin, began playing the role of hunting dog trainer. Because these brats are particularly troublesome. In addition, Kim Woo Jin's charges were the poisonous types that no one else dared touch. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin led them and never failed a dungeon. The trick was simple. Eliminate the goblin horde in front of you within three hours. He didn't give them time to have any other thoughts. The secret to making it possible was also simple. These are Mr. Isaac Ivanov's orders. The secret was to engrave fear, so that no one would dare to disobey an order. And Kim Woo Jin had applied the same method here. Under the horror of the name Isaac Ivanov, they didn't have the chance to regain their bearings. Damn, he doesn't even give us a chance to rest this isn't worth dying for. Let's move in the worst case scenario, Isaac Ivanov will support us. That's what makes it so much worse we can't die even if we want to. He repeatedly pushed them to the battlefield, and they had to use all their mental faculties to think of ways to win. In addition, this was better for the players as well. We don't have to worry about anything other than fighting monsters. That's true it's much easier to just fight. For these players, it was much better to just focus on hunting monsters than to be tense around the other group like the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird groups had been after they entered the dungeon. Most importantly, all the players in this dungeon were experienced players who had cleared six-floor dungeons. 
That's why it was most natural and comfortable for them to just hunt monsters. Let's go. Let's use this chance to get rid of the goblins. So they quickly became a team under Isaac Ivanov's name. Naturally, this was exactly what Kim Woo Jin wanted. Now, the team has been created. Kim Woo Jin had no intention of throwing away these players after using them once. If he had intended to do that in the first place, then he wouldn't have used such a troublesome method. If he just left them as they were, then at least half of those who went to fight would face the risk of death, and they would naturally look to Isaac Ivanov for salvation. It wasn't difficult for him to get what he wanted in exchange for his help. It was, in the end, a give and take. A team that listens to me. Leading a group and producing actual results were two different things, and what Kim Woo Jin wanted was the latter. Now I can create a guild to go against the Messiah Guild. Kim Woo Jin, who had been fighting the Messiah Guild on his own until then, planned to establish a guild that would go against the Messiah Guild. The Savior Guild. The Savior Guild. Kim Woo Jin's plan was to create a new savior who would eat the Messiah Guild. It'll be clear when we hunt the Goblin Lord. And the birth of the Savior Guild would be through the Goblin Lord's death. After pondering this plan for a while, Kim Woo Jin closed his eyes. With his eyes closed, Kim Woo Jin's expression was more serious than ever. It won't be easy, but. Kim Woo Jin remembered his first seventh floor dungeon attack. Come to think of it, when I first attacked a seventh floor dungeon, I lost limbs twice. He recalled the image of himself who had faced the real threat of death in a seventh floor dungeon. There are one eleven goblins remaining. The notification informed Kim Woo Jin that it wouldn't be long before they entered the fifth floor of the dungeon. Kim Woo Jin's eyes changed. It's been a long time since I hunted in my own style. Chapter 244 Hunt 550-00 Goblins to advance to the next floor. When they entered the fifth floor of the dungeon, the first thing the players paid attention to wasn't the notification informing them of the attack conditions. This wasn't because they had already guessed what the condition would be. It is raining red. Sha sha sha. Instead, it was the red rain that took all of the players' attention. Furthermore, the players were certain. This. These red raindrops would not stop wetting their bodies or blocking their sights. All stats have been reduced by 11%. Injury recovery rate has been slowed down. Injuries worsen at a faster rate. I knew it. Damn it. As they expected, the red rain would hold them back. Our injuries will get worse. It was impossible to not get injured while in battle, but not only would their recovery speeds be slower, their wounds would get worse faster. This meant that even a small wound could potentially become fatal. Furthermore, it wasn't easy to treat small wounds in real time during combat. That wasn't the only problem. Park Yongwan was the only one who was looking around at the surroundings instead of at the red rain. Then, Park Yongwan gestured with his chin to one of his subordinates, who then headed to the place that Park Yongwan pointed out. It's a cave. It looks like a goblin cave. A cave. After hearing that, Park Yongwan spoke in a loud voice for everyone to hear. I think we'll have to consider the possibility of guerrilla warfare. Did they have to deal with goblins hidden in caves while in rain that reduced their stats and caused their injuries to not recover easily? This was bound to be on a completely different level than simply hunting goblins. To hunt 550-00 like that I'd rather fight 100-00 at once. And under such circumstances, they had to hunt 550-00 goblins. When they realized this, the players stood in silence for a while, and the only sound that could be heard was the pattering of the raindrops. It took us three days to clear the fourth floor, so now we have twenty-seven days left. Then they heard Isaac Ivanov's calm voice in their ears. We will clear the fifth floor of the dungeon in seven days. Everyone's expressions stiffened when they heard this incredibly ridiculous command. But Isaac Ivanov continued without pausing. So everyone needs to follow my orders. These words caused the players' expressions to change. Then Isaac Ivanov said. Since it's 550-00 to 400, it's disadvantageous to go into battle also, 
the battle situation would be very different from the previous battles if we kept fighting in the simple ways that we have been before, we wouldn't even be able to clear the fifth in a month so it's time to change tactics. His next words were said in a firm tone. Catch a hundred goblins alive, cut off their limbs, and hang them on wooden poles fill this place with the goblin screams. It was the moment when the strongest hunting dog the Messiah Guild had ever created revealed its fangs. After clearing a dungeon, players would usually write a dungeon attack report. Most of the reports from low-level players who targeted dungeons with fewer floors, which weren't that big of a deal, were often quite annoying. They didn't put in a lot of effort, and many of them could be said to have written novels instead of reports, since they left out many details. However, the higher the level of the player and the higher the number of floors in the dungeon, the greater the value of the dungeon report. For example, the value of a seven-floor dungeon report easily surpassed that of average unique grade items. Naturally, the players who wrote these dungeon reports used every means and method to include as much accurate information as possible. And, unsurprisingly, if such a valuable report came into your hands, you would naturally have a look at it. It had been the same at that time. I got the attack report for the C-rank 7-floor dungeon, Goblin Lord's Kingdom, that was jointly cleared by the Frontier Guild and Great One Guild. Before Kim Woo Jin returned to the past, the Messiah Guild, who got their hands on the 7-floor dungeon's attack report, gathered their players to analyze it. The clear requirement for the first floor of the dungeon was to hunt 110-00 monsters. To clear the second floor they had to hunt 220-00. Naturally, the condition for the third floor was 330-00. Most of the players gathered were either those who were preparing to attack seven-floor dungeons, or who had already cleared a seven-floor dungeon. When they got used to it on the fourth floor they experienced hell on the fifth floor. It took them 30 days and 11 hours to clear the fifth floor of the dungeon, and in the end, 29 people died they barely made it. I think the stage we will discuss the most today is the fifth floor of the dungeon. They were the best players in the Messiah Guild, the best players in the world, and the best most experienced when it came to hunting monsters and clearing dungeons. Just the thought of them putting their heads together to analyze something was amazing. What was even more surprising was that Kim Woo Jin actually bothered to attend this event. I'm curious about Kim Woo Jin's thoughts. At that time, Kim Woo Jin was a player who was mostly active in five and six floor dungeons, and in truth, he lacked the qualifications to attend a meeting that was related to a seven floor dungeon. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin was able to attend such a meeting because his standing in the Messiah Guild was rather high. And Kim Woo Jin wasn't just attending to watch. Kim Woo Jin, how would you clear the fifth floor if you were the commander? They continuously asked Kim Woo Jin questions about important issues. And Kim Woo Jin answered them. If it were me. Someone's coming. Kim Woo Jin came out of his reverie while he sat in a tent that was constantly being bombarded by the rain. Park Yong Wan. Then, as soon as he thought the name Park Yong Wan, a man walked into the tent. Damn it. Just as Kim Woo Jin expected, the man turned out to be Park Yong Wan, drenched in red rainwater. Kim Woo Jin then spoke to him. Did you complete your mission? At the question, Park Yong Wan looked at Kim Woo Jin's face for a moment before groaning and saying, You're really like my boss now. It wasn't my order. That's why I completed it perfectly after all, it was an order from none other than Isaac Ivanov a hundred goblins have been captured alive and hung from wooden poles. Key. As soon as Park Yong Wan's words ended, they heard the cries of goblins through the rain. It was a very eerie sound. How much longer do we have to do something so crazy? Like Park Yong Wan complained, the sound was so terrifying, that even ghosts would be scared if they were to hear it. Moreover, the vicious red rain that fell from the sky made the goblins suffer even more before their deaths. Is this even going to do anything? The goblins definitely won't come out of their holes after something like this. Naturally, as Park Yong Wan said, these cries would have an even stronger effect on the goblins. As he said, the goblins wouldn't come out of their caves because of this, instead, they would go even deeper into their depths. That's exactly what Isaac Ivanov wants. And that was exactly what Kim Woo Jin was aiming for. What? There are two things we have to remember about the goblins one, 
there are 550-00 of them, the other is that there are many different types of them, and they would certainly have a hierarchy between them. So, if Mr. Park Yongwan was the leader of the goblins in the cave, what would you do if your men were frightened by the cries of those goblins outside and chose to hide deeper in the caves? Park Yongwan answered Kim Woojin's sudden question without hesitation. With benevolent leadership, like a mother, I would embrace them and pacify them. When Kim Woojin gave him a blank look, Park Yongwan, who expected such a reaction gave a dirty smile. It was a joke, a joke. Following that, the sneer on Park Yongwan's lips reduced a little. Goblins can't give speeches, so I.D. force them to leave, and kill those who don't listen. But you can't kill everyone like I said, they have a hierarchy. Do you think there would be a mutiny? Anything could happen. Park Yongwan nodded at that. Then Kim Woo Jin continued to explain. In that way, the order and cooperative system would begin to collapse and their morale will hit the floor. Then Park Yongwan asked a surprising question. But wouldn't it be for nothing when guys like the goblin shamans use their spells? Goblins were a naturally cowardly race. But goblin shamans had spells that could replace their fear with madness. That was why goblin shamans were so troublesome. That's why we're not fighting. That's why Kim Woo Jin didn't have a proper battle with the goblins. What do you mean by that? Goblin shamans only use such spells in combat in a situation where there is no battle, if they change the fear of normal goblins into madness in a cave. The spells of the goblin shaman were only applicable in battle, they were incredibly dangerous outside of battle. In this way, time is not on the goblin side. In any case, the goblin situation would only get worse as more time passed. As time goes by, they will fall apart like a wall of dominoes. One would collapse, then two, then at some point, uncontrollable panic would set into the goblin horde. It was calculated that this method would allow the dungeon to be cleared within 15 days. This was Kim Woo Jin's suggestion before returning to the past. Moreover, the moment he suggested this method, there was no longer any discussion about the fifth floor of the dungeon. Everyone admitted that Kim Woo Jin's method was the most suitable. At the same time, they admitted that Kim Woo Jin was really a terrifying hunting dog. Of course, the situation now was a bit different. And in such a situation, if the corpse poison created from the decomposing goblin bodies mixes with the rainwater before seeping into the caves. At that time, a player had proposed a situation where the king of poison used his terrifying abilities, and in fact, quite a few methods were created with that as their basis. Their rate of collapse would be even faster. With the poison that I have now, I can reduce the attack time to a week. It was then. There are 540-00 goblins remaining. It's starting. For the first time since they'd entered the fifth floor of the dungeon, they received a notification telling them that the number of goblins had decreased. Your level has increased. The emissary of the underworld admires your growth. The emissary of the underworld bestows great power to you. How lucky. Kim Woo Jin received even more notifications. The rank of the vampire skill has increased by one. Only. The rank of the corpse poison skill has increased by one. The rank of the bloodsucking skill has increased by one. Due to the effect of the plus ring, the rank of the bloodsucking skill has reached transcendent rank. You can now absorb magic power through bloodsucking. Absorb magic power. It was a reminder that the dominoes had begun falling. Chapter 245 it had been 40 days since Isaac Ivanov's party entered the dungeon. The world, which had been temporarily calmed down for a while at the appearance of the dazzling hope, descended into chaos once again. Protests in France for the abolishment of the Special Player Act spreads to bloodshed. Anti-government protests spread to Eastern Europe. In the first place, it had only been overshadowed by the bright hopes for the future, the key problems that threw society into chaos had not been resolved at all. No, instead, it seemed that these problems were growing and becoming worse. An example of this was France. The number of monsters in France increases rapidly. As the citizens protested giving the players special rights, the players declared a strike on clearing dungeons, and as the number of uncleared dungeons increased, the number of monsters that appeared naturally increased. 
twin-headed ogre appears in Bordeaux, France. French Air Force to launch Rafales. Among them, powerful monsters from four-floor or higher dungeons forced the French government to bombard their own territory with fighter jets. Oh my god, the fighter jets are being used to catch monsters. Wait, isn't Bordeaux the wine region? They want to bomb a place like that with fighter jets. Is wine important right now? The correct response is to get rid of the monsters first. What are you talking about? The wine industry doesn't just contribute a small share to France's economy. Damn, why is this happening? You should hope that it can be stopped by a fighter jet if it can't then they'll resort to shooting missiles. The impact of that fact on the world was beyond description. I got information from Italy it seems some French politicians have asked for asylum. Furthermore, the shock that O. Seichan and his subordinates, who had a clearer view of the world than anyone else felt, was bound to be even greater. There was similar information from Germany it seems the French politicians are trying to make the escape routes. Islamic extremists were caught entering France will there be another terrorist attack? O. Seichan's subordinates, who were receiving the breaking news around the world in real time, had no choice but to stiffen their expressions. In the end, a subordinate said to O. Seichan. I thought Eastern Europe would be the one to erupt first, but it seems like Western Europe will do so first. The subordinate sighed heavily. It was a sigh that seemed to say, if we continue like this, the world will be destroyed. However, O. Seichan had a bright expression even in the face of that sigh. Crises are also opportunities. With those words, O. Seichan said to his men. If Western Europe really erupts, then the legendary skill pages and items collected by the Western European countries would be placed on the market that's what we'll aim for no matter how much we have to pay, grab the things we need. As he said these words, O. Seichan's face was filled with determination. Because, now that the core members of the Messiah Guild are in a dungeon, this might be our only opportunity to do so. O oh, Seichan believed that there was a high chance that they wouldn't be able to even try anything like that after the Messiah Guild's members came out after clearing the seven floor dungeon. I've been saving up, waiting for this chance. Furthermore, O oh, Seichan had long anticipated this situation, and had made the utmost preparations for it. He did everything he could. As it was said, all that was left was for the heavens to create the right situation. Boss. And heaven's opportunity had come for O Seichan. The Dragon Slayer requested a deal. Dragon Slayer. O Seichan rejoiced at the name. That arrogant man finally had to speak first. Not so long ago, O Seichan had made a deal with the Dragon Slayer, but it was a one sided situation in which O Seichan was the one who requested the deal with the Dragon Slayer. Naturally, he had to suffer a loss in that situation. But this time, the Dragon Slayer was the one who had requested the deal with O Seichan first. Certainly, since it's Europe which was the Dragon Slayer's stronghold, and where most of his sponsors stayed, he couldn't stay still. O Seichan then said. So what does the Dragon Slayer want? He'd like to meet Isaac Ivanov in person and have a conversation with him, and he wants us to arrange it. What about the setting for the table? It's Death Knight. Ku, Knight of Death. What a great name. It was at that moment. After exclaiming with a surprised expression, O Seichan suddenly tilted his head as his expression changed. What did you say? The Dragon Slayer has obtained the Death Knight skill page. O Seichan then asked with a sincere expression. That wasn't voice fishing, was it? It takes a long time to drill a hole in a dam. But it doesn't take long for a dam filled with holes to collapse. It was a similar case this time. There are five ten zero zero monsters remaining. It took five days to hunt forty zero zero out of the five ten zero zero goblins. There are four ninety zero zero monsters remaining. But from then on, the number of deaths began to increase at a surprisingly fast rate. There are two ninety zero zero monsters remaining. In fact, nearly two hundred zero zero goblins died on the sixth day. The players were all surprised by this fact. It wasn't that they didn't know the reason. No, they couldn't not know. After all, weren't they the ones who caused it in the first place? We certainly pressured them, but was that really enough to produce such results? Is this possible? 
However, no one could have imagined that their actions would produce such a result. Just as no one could know that the snowball they threw at the top of a mountain could turn into an avalanche. But the real surprise came afterwards. None of the goblins here are healthy they have already been poisoned, so it's hard to control their bodies, and since they have been under constant mental pressure, they can't think clearly. On the seventh day since they entered the fifth floor of the dungeon, Isaac Ivanov finally gave instructions for the first time. So this isn't a hunt, it's a massacre. A goblin massacre. The battle that ensued was exactly that. Key. Key. The goblins' conditions, both mentally and physically, were as bad as they could get. Not just the ordinary goblins, even the extremely tough goblin knights and goblin champions were in a sorry state. Shoo shoo shoo. In this situation, the constant pattering of the red rain hid the players' footsteps as they approached the goblins, as well as their scents and even their appearances. We're in the best condition. On the other hand, it was no exaggeration to say that the players were in their best condition since they had entered the dungeon. After all, what they had done for the past six days was not a very difficult task. All they had to do was capture a few wandering goblins, cut off their limbs, and hang them from wooden poles. Capturing goblins wasn't hard at all. Thanks to Kim Woo Jin, who had his vampire abilities, it was a very easy and smooth process. It's thanks to our six days of rest. It was comfortable in many ways. Naturally, six days was more than enough for the players to relieve the stress they accumulated from hunting more than one million goblins from the first to the fourth floors. I talked a lot with those Phoenix Guild guys. We've been cooperating really well with those Thunderbird guys. Furthermore, in that time, the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird members had a lot of time to socialize and get to know each other. They had conversations, ate together, and even discussed how to fight with each other in battle. Rather, because they didn't have much to do, they were even a bit restless. Because of this, the players' battle lust had been ignited. We finished it in a week. Let's wipe them out. A week after entering the fifth floor, the players received the expected notification. Proceed to the next floor. Just like Isaac Ivanov said, they cleared the fifth floor of the dungeon in just seven days. Something, which had been considered impossible by everyone, had been done perfectly. We can do it. We'll definitely clear this dungeon. This fact filled everyone with unspeakable confidence. Hunt 660-00 to advance to the next floor. Therefore, when the announcement of the conditions to move on to the seventh floor appeared, they were not worried at all. Rather, they were more aggressive and determined than ever before. Let's show them our real skills before we go to the seventh floor. They planned to show off their skills on the sixth floor and prove their worth. But their ideal didn't last very long. Bloodsucking. Rank, EX. Effect, absorbs the target's blood, greatly recovering health and magic power. Hopefully, I'll be able to measure my strength properly. Because Kim Woo Jin intended to show his powers that had never been revealed before. No one knew what they would find in a dungeon until they entered it. Therefore, it was difficult to make simulations since the situation in the dungeons was unknown. In this sense, Kim Woo Jin was lucky. He already knew the internal situation of the Goblin Lord dungeon, which allowed him to prepare strategies accordingly. This was proven on the fifth floor. So naturally, Kim Woo Jin also had an idea of the situation on the seventh floor, where the dungeon boss was located. The Goblin Lord is a troublesome guy. And he also knew how terrifying the monster known as the Goblin Lord really was. In the first place, being the Lord didn't mean that he just wore a crown on his head, which made him different from other goblins. It meant that his abilities were completely incomparable to any other goblin. The king's dignity, the king's worth, and the king's army. Among these abilities were three passive skills they were the king's dignity, worth and army. The king's dignity was literally the majesty of the king. On the floor that the king was, anyone who was a different species than the king would suffer a 20% stat decrease. The king's worth was the ability to ignite the desperation in his race so that they would fight with their lives to protect the king the greater the threat to the goblin lord, the greater the ability and aggression of the surrounding goblins. The last skill, king's army, was a skill that increased the stats of all the monsters commanded by the king by 20%. 
On the seventh floor, it's hard to ignore even the ordinary goblins. The difference in power caused by King's dignity and King's army was enormous. The player's stats were reduced by 20% while the goblin's stats would be increased by 20%. That was a huge difference. The king's worth is especially troublesome. But in truth, the most troublesome one was king's worth. It wasn't like bodyguards diving to save a VIP, in fact, they weren't even on the same level. Even if their heads were chopped off, their bodies would still step towards the enemy threatening their king. Many players lost their lives in the final battle because of the king's worth skill. I also lost an arm that time. Before returning to the past, even Kim Woo Jin had lost an arm after not anticipating such a situation during a battle with a lord monster. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin knew just how difficult it would be to defeat the goblin lord. Worst case scenario, I'll hunt the goblin lord by myself. And if the situation didn't go as planned, instead of eating Thunderbird and the Phoenix Guild, he might have to kill them all. In other words, Kim Woo Jin was also prepared for a situation where he and Lee Jin Ah would have to fight the Goblin Lord alone. This also meant that Kim Woo Jin had the confidence that he would be able to hunt the Goblin Lord even in that situation. If the situation works out well. Of course, if things worked out well, Kim Woo Jin would be able to hunt the Goblin Lord with the over 400 players. After all, they weren't just ordinary players, but the elites of Thunderbird and the Phoenix Guild. In other words, it was a huge boost of power that was why Kim Woo Jin was confident. I believe we can beat it in 15 days. With them, he would be able to defeat the Goblin Lord in 15 days and clear the 7th floor dungeon. Of course, that was under the assumption of a strategic battle. He had judged that it was impossible to take on the Goblin Lord and his army in a power versus power confrontation. It was basically impossible to destroy the Goblin Lord's kingdom with pure violence. That was Kim Woo Jin's conclusion. I didn't expect this to happen. But now, that conclusion had been completely overturned. You can no longer summon new skeleton soldiers. You can no longer summon new skeleton knights. You can no longer summon new banshees. Kim Woo Jin's 455 skeleton soldiers, 20 skeleton knights, 6 banshees, two Dullahans, and one Lich, who were looking at him, had overturned his conclusion. Gur. There was even the Hellhound resurrected through Osiris' ring, spewing hellfire. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin no longer tried to simulate the battle with the Goblin Lord. It was clear that he would succeed without even a sliver of doubt. If it's this much, it would be worth trying going head to head. All that was left was to decide how to succeed. Of course, the ones who were the most surprised by this sight were none other than the players. Oh my god. That's close to 500 troops how is that possible? In front of the undead army that had even more heads than they did, they momentarily forgot how to speak. I think I'm gonna freak out. Only. Even Park Yongwon couldn't help but get goosebumps at this scene. Then they received a dungeon notification. And Kim Woo Jin, who was wearing the Isaac Ivanov mask, also said. Now we'll hunt the Goblin King. Chapter, 246 The news came suddenly. Bordeaux collapses due to bombing. A horde of ogres trample on the pride of France. Islamic extremist carries out suicide bombing, 91 confirmed dead. Just as the world descended further into chaos, another article appeared in the news. The Messiah Guild completes seven-floor dungeon attack. It was a short line. So short that no one really paid any attention to the article. The same was true for reporters. Was that article saying that the Messiah Guild completed their seven-floor dungeon attack? I'm sure it's just nonsense again. Even the reporters thought that it was just nonsense posted by a random troublemaker. And there was no way that ordinary people would believe an article that even reporters didn't. The Messiah Guild cleared the dungeon. Another liar. You're crazy. No one believed it. Breaking news. Instead of our regular broadcast. In such a situation, the world's leading broadcasters, including CNN and BBC, suddenly stopped their regular broadcasts. Then, all of them began to show the same video of an incredibly handsome man who seemed to have returned from a battlefield. This man spoke to the world. 
Our attack on the seven-floor dungeon has been completed. Only then did the world believe it. Messiah. The long-awaited hero had finally returned, and brought hope back to everyone's eyes. For a moment, the world literally paused. Demonstrators stopped protesting and the government troops who were fighting against rebels were told to retreat. The world, which had stopped like that, turned to look at one person, Lee Sejun. A lot has happened while we were in the dungeon, and because of that, I was able to realize many things. And with that attention, Lee Sejun spoke. But I didn't have to think for very long my goal won't change I will still end this game and save the world. The same words he always said. Now, I will not tolerate those who try to interfere with that goal. But this time, Lee Sejun also added some new words. It was a declaration. A declaration that he would no longer tolerate those who opposed his goal and who went against them. A declaration that they would use the power they had amassed so far against humans, instead of monsters. However, it was not a declaration of war. Those terrorist bastards who attacked the Messiah Guild are screwed. They'll receive God's judgment. On behalf of God, the Savior, who had come down to save the world, had given an ultimatum to those who hindered salvation. Therefore, no one complained or raised any questions about Lee Sejun's declaration. The same was true for Oh Se Chan, who watched this scene on TV. There's no one that can stop the Messiah Guild from going forward. After sipping coffee from a paper cup that appeared to have been recycled dozens of times, he admitted that there were no groups, powers, or countries that stopped the Messiah Guild. That's why we need to give them a rival. That was the reason. The reason that Kim Woo Jin and Oh Se Chan intended to create a new guild. The preparations had long been completed. All that was left was for them to celebrate and announce its birth. Boss. What is it? They're finally out. The attack was successful. Such good timing. And now, the world was about to see that celebration. There was one common expression used to describe the scene of a massacre. A landscape filled with mountains of corpses, standing high in a sea of blood. However, when this expression was made into reality, the feeling one got was completely different. This was the situation that the members of the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird, who were on the seventh floor of the dungeon, were experiencing. Countless goblin corpses piled up to form mountains, and the blood that flowed out from their bodies was so much that it covered their ankles. The players' expressions were grim. This wasn't because they were unable to accept this horrific scene. The goblin lord screams. For them, even the notification in their ears sounded like a distant echo, as if someone was shouting from far away. No one reacted to the sound. They didn't even move. Like mannequins, they all just stood in place without any emotion on their faces. It's over. Only one person was finishing their task in this bloody world, Kim Woo Jin. The Goblin Lord is terrified by your approach. Ignoring the constant notifications in his ear, Kim Woo Jin walked atop the bodies of Goblin Knights, that were laid like marble floors. The pile of corpses that appeared next were large goblins with red skin, blood goblins. These were goblins who, when faced off against an ogre, would bare their fangs and roar fiercely instead of backing down. Hundreds of these goblins lay on the ground together with several skeleton soldiers. Kim Woo Jin walked along this red carpet without any hesitation. Roar! Suddenly, a blood goblin, who happened to still be alive, reached out to Kim Woo Jin as he walked by. P.U.K. However, the long spear in the hands of a skeleton knight who was walking behind Kim Woo Jin struck it down easily. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin didn't stop, using the bloodied corpses on the floor as his path. Finally, he saw a goblin standing at the end of the path, about ten meters away. Gur. It was a golden-eyed goblin with a muscular body similar to an orc that was filled with silver tattoos. Goblin Lord. The king of all the goblins in this world bared his fangs at Kim Woo Jin. However, the goblin lord's roar was not smooth. This was because Gungnir, which was stabbed into the goblin lord's lungs, was interrupting its breathing. Kim Woo Jin lifted his hand in front of his chest, and Gungnir pulled itself free from the goblin lord's body before sailing towards him. After catching it, Kim Woo Jin threw the spear once again. However this time, 
instead of his lungs, the spear flew fiercely towards the goblin lord's skull, before piercing it precisely in the middle of the forehead. Clang! As the spear hit the goblin's head, there was a loud sound similar to the clashing of steel. It was the sound of the goblin lord's strong bones stopping Gungnir's penetration. Then, Kim Woojin swung Mjolnir in his hand towards Gungnir. The hammer struck the air heavily. Boom! Then, following the sound of thunder, Gungnir penetrated the goblin's skull easily. You have defeated the goblin lord. Only then did Kim Woojin hear the notification he was waiting for. And after that notifications came flooding in. You have earned the achievement Goblin Lord Hunter. You have earned the achievement King Slayer. You have earned the achievement Seven Floor Attacker. Hercules Ring has unlocked a new ability. All movements are 20% faster. The hunting dog who successfully hunted a king was given many achievements and badges. Your level has increased. The Emissary of the Underworld bestows some power to you. The rank of the Lich Summoning skill has increased by one. The rank of the Banshee skill has increased by one. The rank of the Blood Golem skill has increased by one. Then the gifts from his Halo, who was pleased by his achievements, followed. After checking the gifts, Kim Woojin bent down and picked up something that had fallen to the floor. Goblin Lord's Crown. Rating, Legendary. Required level, level 180 or higher. Description. The Goblin Lord's Crown it contains one of the Goblin Lord's abilities. All stats 10%. All attack power 10%. Recovery speed of all stats 10%. Activates the Skill King's army when equipped. The legendary item Goblin Lord's Crown. It was an indescribable gain. But the eyes of Kim Woo Jin, who placed the crown in his inventory, didn't change. They were still the eyes of a hunting dog on a hunt. This was natural. Now I can meet Lee Sejun. After all, the hunt he had been longing for was finally about to begin. It is harder to protect than it is to take away. This might not be a statement that applied to everything. But it was certainly the case when it came to dungeons. Guarding a dungeon was much more difficult than people would expect. Moreover, when people heard about guarding a dungeon gate, they would think that it was only from monsters that would come out, they would never imagine that it was also guarding against hostile forces that would try to take the dungeon away. Therefore, even the US government would have a few shortcomings when it came to protecting a dungeon gate. This was the reason why Thunderbird was able to become the best civilian military company in the entire world. As they were trained in the most chaotic areas of the Amazon rainforest, they were much better at defending dungeons than anyone else. They guarded it well. This fact was proven by the fact that Kim Woo Jin was met with an orderly area when he came out of the dungeon. There were no signs of battle anywhere. As expected of Thunderbird. Kim Woo Jin admired Thunderbird's ability. What was even more impressive was the fact that Thunderbird now belonged to Kim Woo Jin. The Lightning King left me a wonderful legacy. Furthermore, even the things that the Lightning King had hidden now belonged to the Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin also knew what he'd gained from the Lightning King and where he hid them from his memories. A really wonderful. There were things that the Lightning King had hidden that even his disciple, Shakira, didn't know about. He observed the Thunderbird soldiers, who were stationed around the area. Ahem. It was at that time that Kim Woo Jin noticed something strange. The veterans, who would normally react quickly to their appearance, showed no response. They were all just standing around, looking at something in their hands. Kim Woo Jin had a hunch. It looks like the Messiah Guild's team came out. The world had just experienced a change. It was then. Hook. I dash, Isaac. The soldiers, who had only just realized the presence of Isaac Ivanov and the players behind him began to move hurriedly. And a glint shined in their eyes. This was because of an order they'd received from the Lightning King. If he gave the signal after leaving the dungeon, don't hesitate to kill everyone. Naturally, they began looking for the Lightning King. Then Isaac Ivanov spoke. The Lightning King is dead. This surprised the Lightning King's men so much that they didn't know how to respond. Of course, their reaction was to be expected. The Lightning King didn't give any orders in the event of his death. 
The Lightning King had told them to kill everyone upon his signal, but he hadn't given them any orders to follow if he died. So informing them of his death was enough to throw them into confusion. Utah. Then Shakira took care of the problem. Ms. Shakira. Utah, get over here. As expected, when she called out the name of the leader of the unit who was guarding the area, the man, named Utah, stepped forward. Meanwhile, Kim Woo Jin headed to the tent that held his belongings. Soon after entering the tent, Kim Woo Jin picked up a briefcase and entered the password. Click. Only. Then he heard the sound of it opening. Isaac, what are you doing? Soon after, he heard the question in Russian from Lee Jin Ah, who had followed him to the tent. Kim Woo Jin also responded in Russian. YouTube personal broadcast. What? At the same time, Kim Woo Jin took out a note from the briefcase. Chapter, 247. The wind from Lee Se Jun's words quickly became a huge typhoon that swept through the world. The Messiah Guild declares war against evil. Lee Se Jun chooses the path of hardship for the world. The press began to once again prove that they were the faithful trumpets of the Messiah Guild. The powerful factions of the world also moved to express their stand. USA willingly applauds the Messiah Guild's choice. China will spare no effort to support the Messiah Guild's move. TL, for some reason, the author used the Chinese names for the countries here. The various governments of the world began expressing their support towards the Messiah Guild as though they were competing with each other. This was quite natural. The Messiah Guild is definitely amazing, but isn't this too much praise? It wasn't like this before, was it? It's natural for them to do so right now, if anyone stands against the Messiah Guild, they will be crushed until not even their bones are left. Would they dare to act against the Messiah Guild and they had made such a clear stance towards their enemies? Those who attacked the Messiah Guild will be the first to be destroyed. Absolutely those who attacked the Messiah Guild should have their heads pulled off. Moreover, the Messiah Guild had yet to release their anger over having their headquarters attacked. To put it simply, they were currently looking for an outlet to take the brunt of their anger. No matter how they felt on the inside, no one would go against the Messiah Guild at the moment. Of course, the public's response was beyond description. I wish the Messiah Guild could just rule the world. Right, it would be better if the Messiah Guild was in control of everything in the world. If it's Lee Se Jun, I'd gladly serve him as the emperor. At that moment, there were even people who were calling for the Messiah Guild to rule over the world. The belief in the Messiah Guild was slowly becoming an uncontrollable fanaticism. A gale that no one dared to face began to blow. It seems there is something on YouTube right now. What is it? What's going on? And in this gale, a piece of news appeared. Did Isaac Ivanov start a personal live broadcast on YouTube? Bullshit. What the hell are you talking about? Psycho. No one believed the news when they heard it. However, this news began to spread more and more. Isaac Ivanov hosts a personal broadcast. Did Isaac Ivanov complete the dungeon attack? At some point, the news even began to be mentioned by the media. Furthermore, it wasn't hard to determine whether the news was real or fake. As long as one had access to YouTube, they would be able to check it easily so even those who were suspicious, loaded the video to check. I am Isaac Ivanov I've just started this personal broadcast after clearing the 7th floor dungeon. Isaac Ivanov's personal broadcast. Oh my god, is this real? Is it really Isaac? Isaac. It's me. I sent five boxes of choco pie. Damn it. Get your credit cards. We have to show some love. The craze that had started because of the Messiah Guild's announcement, against everyone's expectations, began to calm down. In such a situation, Isaac Ivanov said. I have something to announce to everyone we have created a new guild by combining Thunderbird and the Phoenix Guild. The birth of a new guild. The goal of this guild is just one thing to save this world which transformed into a game faster than anyone else. And the goal of said guild. I hereby declare the creation of the Savior Guild. And so, the Savior Guild appeared in the world. Let's end this game as soon as possible and save the world. Then my broadcast will end with this. 
After hearing those words, the viewers then heard the sound of the broadcast ending and saw their screens go dark. But no one looked away from their screens. In this difficult and chaotic situation, a new savior had appeared. It would be strange if anyone could still act normally after hearing something like that. Finally. Of course, ordinary people would feel that way, but the reactions of Oh se chans subordinates were different. We've finally come this far. In order to prevent the Messiah Guild's plot, they began a lonely fight in the shadows that the world would never have knowledge of. It was a fight that none of them were sure they could win, and even if they won, it was not something they would be able to do unscathed. It was a tough fight. And according to their investigations, in such a tough fight, the only way to stop the Messiah Guild was to give them a worthy rival. The only way to stop the Savior was to create a new competitor who could rival the Savior. It was a ridiculous method. However, even when faced with such a result, Oh Se Chan and his men did not give up, and kept fighting. We managed to create a competitor for the Messiah Guild. They had finally created a guild with the same purpose as the Messiah Guild with power that was comparable to the Messiah Guild. Naturally, it was not a feeling that could just be described as feeling moved. Among them, Oh Se Chan's feelings were even more intense. Who? After a while, Oh Se Chan released a long breath before collapsing on the worn out sofa behind him. Then he closed his eyes and tilted his head back. It was as if he didn't have the strength to lift his head or open his eyes. But everyone there completely understood as they looked at him. At the same time, a subordinate walked up to Oh Se Chan and spoke with a light smile. You've worked hard. Oh Se Chan responded without changing position. Huh? Hard? What the hell are you talking about? What was he saying all of a sudden? Oh Se Chan's subordinate couldn't help but ask back in surprise. That aren't you feeling emotional right now? Of course, I'm very emotional. After saying that, Oh Se Chan pointed towards the screen. There are a lot of donations. Donations. After hearing that word, Oh Se Chan's subordinates immediately understood. Ah, that. It turned out that Oh Se Chan had been moved by the donations given by the viewers watching the YouTube live broadcast. Ah, I should have known. He's a really amazing guy. Furthermore, Oh Se Chan's subordinates were certain. Oh Se Chan was being completely sincere. I didn't think you could make enough money to buy coffee for the office for three, zero, zero years, in just five minutes. As if to confirm his subordinates' thoughts, Oh Se Chan expressed his feelings. Really amazing. And his subordinates couldn't help but feel admiration after his surprise. On the other hand, Oh Se Chan's consistent temperament made his subordinates smile. Oh Se Chan then said. It's so amazing and we haven't even started yet. A smile appeared on Oh Se Chan's face. Because we never said we'd be saving the world for free. Huh. The subordinates were unable to contain their surprise. Woo woo. Ding. Beep. At that moment, almost every telephone and cell phone in the room began to sound off constantly. Hearing this, Oh Se Chan then said. Let's get to work. With those words, he also pulled out his feature phone. Shall we start with the Dragon Slayer? Establishment of the Savior Guild. The aftermath of what Isaac Ivanov on YouTube was indescribable. The Messiah Guild gains a well intentioned competitor. Who will save the world first? What was even more surprising was the fact that a new guild called the Savior Guild blocked the craze caused by the Messiah Guild, which no one dared to face or stop. No matter how great the Phoenix Guild and Thunderbird were combined, they would not be able to overcome the Messiah Guild who were known as the Saviors for such a long time, even if Isaac Ivanov was the Guild Master. Of course, there was a trick. The trick worked. They hadn't expected to clear the dungeon on the same day as the Messiah Guild, but all the other elements were part of their scheme. Isaac Ivanov is amazing I didn't expect him to announce the creation of a new guild on YouTube. The Messiah Guild was monopolizing all the broadcasts around the world they didn't have a choice but to use YouTube. Does he really plan to save the world faster than them? He can say it because he's Isaac Ivanov. Competing to see who will save the world first he's such a cool player. Using YouTube instead of a broadcasting company, 
and using provocative words that not even the Messiah Guild would use, such as we will save the world faster than anyone else, was used to make an even bigger contrast between the two. In any case, the difference between is still pretty large is the Messiah Guild the Royal Road, and the Savior Guild the Underdog? The Savior Guild isn't on the Messiah Guild's level yet, but they certainly will be in the future. If the Savior Guild had appeared as an equal rival to the Messiah Guild, there might have been some resistance, but there was less resistance since they were the underdog. What was clear was that the Messiah Guild was sharing a stage with this underdog. Now, we're on the same stage. The world had placed the Messiah Guild on the same stage as the newcomer, the Savior Guild, without hesitation. Now my fangs can reach. This meant that Kim Woo Jin's fangs were finally within reach of Lee Se Jun. But it's not time yet. Of course, Kim Woo Jin knew better than anyone that his current strength was still not enough to kill Lee Se Jun. In any case, things have become simpler. In other words, it was clear what Kim Woo Jin had to do now. All that's left is to become stronger than him. Gain fangs sharp enough to pierce Lee Se Jun's neck. That was why. Bonjour. Li Jin Ah, who was beside Kim Woo Jin, was speaking French with very bad pronunciation. The French government had commissioned the Savior Guild through the Dragon Slayer. If they cleared the A rank dungeon that had appeared in Bordeaux, France, they would be given the Death Knight skill in return. By the way, isn't this the first time they've asked for a dungeon attack like this? In fact, it was a special case. France isn't a weak country, is it? Though it might not be the case for countries whose governments hadn't been doing their jobs, countries with military power, strong players and guilds like France had cleared most of the dungeons in their territories. Even if players from countries bid to gain the dungeon, it was natural for them to give a portion of their gains to the French government. In other words, it was quite unique for them to offer a reward for the clearance of a dungeon. This is a privilege that is only given to those who've reached the top floors. But that was only the case for the dungeons with six floors and below seven floors and higher were completely different. Currently, among the countless guilds in the world, there were only two that could successfully clear a seven-floor dungeon. On the other hand, there were currently ten seven-floors dungeons, not counting the ones cleared by Messiah Guild and the Savior Guild, and the number of seven-floor dungeons was steadily increasing. For the countries who had seven-floor dungeons in their territory, they would want to get rid of the dungeons as soon as possible at any cost. It was a privilege for only the Messiah Guild, but the Messiah Guild did not make use of it. What was interesting, the fact that the Messiah Guild did not demand any price for the dungeons. More precisely, there was no room for negotiation. The Messiah Guild's willingness to attack the dungeon stemmed from the grace and salvation of God, not for material gains. The Messiah Guild did not demand anything due to their purity and nobility. But the Savior Guild was different. They were worth contacting, and there was plenty of room for negotiation. So the French government tried to negotiate with Isaac Ivanov through the Dragon Slayer. It was unexpected that they made contact with Isaac Ivanov before he cleared the seven-floor dungeon. Of course, it should be noted that the Dragon Slayer contacted Isaac Ivanov's side on behalf of the French government even before they cleared the dungeon or created the Savior Guild. Wasn't it impossible for them to make such a move without reason? And Kim Woo Jin had an idea of the reason. This means that France's situation is worse than the world thinks. After all the factors that would push the French government and the Dragon Slayer to rush would certainly not be positive. There's no need to hurry to make a move. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't intend to look at their circumstances. Let's go. After organizing his thoughts, Kim Woo Jin stepped forward while saying those words, and Li Jin Ah followed him as he said. Where? They rented a Michelin three-star restaurant that's said to be the best in France you can taste as much French cuisine as you like. At those words, Li Jin Ah, who was overwhelmed with emotion, groaned as though he had choked on his saliva. Of course, Li Jin Ah didn't know. The first table will be a mess. That Kim Woo Jin didn't actually intend to eat anything. Chapter 248 Paris, France was the home to some of the best gourmet restaurants in the world. And this restaurant, Francis, was the highest rated restaurant in France when it came to French cuisine. It was a unique place even for French people, 
whose pride in their cooking was indescribable, and it was always filled to the extent that you had to make a reservation two years in advance. But it was completely quiet today. In this restaurant with over 100 seats, only one table had people sitting at it. The atmosphere around this table was not one that would remind you of a nice meal. It was cold, as if someone had thrown a cup of cold water onto a fire that had only just been lit. In this atmosphere, a French man with blonde hair and blue eyes, spoke while fixing his glasses. C- dash, could you say that again? Then the Asian man in front of him smiled and said. Master Isaac Ivanov is not interested in the death knight skill so he will refuse your request. In such an atmosphere, a Russian man with a fork was doing his best to not take a bite of the appetizer that had just been placed on the table. May I ask why? The French man, who had adjusted his glasses once again, couldn't help but ask, and it was the Asian man, Kim Woo Jin, who answered. First of all, the death knight skill is a unique skill that he can obtain with his own ability. However, even if he has the ability to get it for himself, it's possible. Second. Kim Woo Jin ignored the rebuttal of the glasses wearing man as he continued. Master Isaac is interested in something else. At that moment, the Frenchman's expression changed as he seemed to realize something. So you want something else? This meant that the negotiations hadn't broken down, just that the other party was interested in something else. In the new, relaxed atmosphere, Li Jin Ah, who was wearing his mask, began to move his fork which had been frozen. Yes, if he gets what he wants, he'll be willing to take the request. Following Kim Woo Jin's words, the atmosphere got progressively warmer. And what is it that he wants? When asked this question, Kim Woo Jin gave a smile that was brighter than ever. The Dragon Slayer's bomb on one, that's what the master wants. In a motel outside of Paris, France. Everything was so cheap and weak in this place that it was clear this was a place for those tourists who wanted to experience the romance of France, but could only barely afford the plane ticket. Creak. The rusted beds creaked just by having someone walk past them, and the bedsheets, which were stained with oil, gave an unidentifiable odor. No matter how you looked at it, it was almost impossible to imagine that the Vips of the Savior Guild, who could even talk to the country's leaders would be staying in such a place. Damn it. And that's exactly why Kim Woo Jin and Lee Jin Ah picked this place as their accommodation. Ah, uh, damn it. It was also the reason why Lee Jin Ah was spouting curses non-stop. I can't believe I couldn't even eat a bite. I couldn't even eat appetizers at the best restaurant in France. In the face of Lee Jin Ah's anger, Kim Woo Jin simply took a bit of his McDonald's hamburger without responding. Seeing this, Lee Jin Ah couldn't stop himself from shouting again. I came all the way to Paris, France just to eat McDonald's what kind of trip to France is this? Shouldn't we be eating foie gras and caviar, or at least baguettes with cheese? After venting his anger, Li Jina picked up the Big Mac that had been waiting in front of him. The crushed wrappings of another eleven Big Macs surrounded his body. Ah, I'm so hungry. Nevertheless, Li Jina still complained about hunger while chewing the bite of Big Mac that he had just taken. Gulp. As soon as he swallowed it down, Li Jina's expression became serious as he asked. What the hell is your goal? Kim Woo Jin responded calmly. Ba Meng. It was the same answer he'd given to the French officials, and Li Jina frowned when he heard it. Are you serious? Didn't you say that that was the Dragon Slayer's strongest weapon? Ba Meng. It was the legendary sword of Siegfried and now it was rumored to be in the Dragon Slayer's hand. Didn't Seichan say that it was within the top ten of all the legendary swords in the world? In addition, it was one of the best legendary items in the world and it was within the top ten among legendary swords. Kim Woo Jin also knew this fact well. To be precise, it's within the top three Excalibur and Mistiltine too, are the only ones that are better for attacking dungeons than Baomeng. No, he knew it better than anyone. When it comes to simple utility, there is none better. Kim Woo Jin was the only one who had faced the Baomeng twice before he returned to the past. Would the Dragon Slayer really give up something like that? In any case, it was highly unlikely that the Dragon Slayer would give up such a valuable item just to request for them to clear a seven-floor dungeon. Isn't he just doing this for the French government? 
More importantly, the Dragon Slayer was only acting as a bridge to connect the French government to Isaac Ivanov. There was no reason for the Dragon Slayer to give up his most prized weapon. Then why did the Dragon Slayer become the bridge? But that was also why Kim Woo Jin was acting in this way. Ha! Huh. Why would the French government want to create a bridge through the Dragon Slayer? That. After contemplating for a moment, Li Jina quickly came up with an answer. Does he have something to lose? In truth, the answer he gave was a joke. That's right. But it turned out that his joke had touched the heart of the matter. There was something on the line. The Dragon Slayer has something to lose. What? In addition, it wasn't the French government, but the Dragon Slayer. From the French government's perspective, there was nothing wrong with them asking someone to clear a dungeon and if they were to ask the Savior Guild, who had already cleared a seven-floor dungeon before, there would be no protesters. This was common sense it wasn't a big fault to request help to clear a dungeon. If there were to be protests, they would be directed at the other players, telling them to watch on and learn just like the protests that took place in front of the Phoenix Guild in the past. In fact, the French citizens would openly applaud the French government for inviting the Savior Guild to attack the Seven Floor Dungeon. France was currently in a situation where there was a major threat to their security because the players had selfishly decided to go on strike for their rights. That meant the other side had no problems. Therefore, it became obvious that the Dragon Slayer was the actual one who had made the request. And it wasn't difficult to guess the reason. The French government would have asked the Dragon Slayer to attack the Seven Floor Dungeon in the first place, the French government has provided a lot of support and convenience to the Dragon Slayer in addition, there is a high chance that the Dragon Slayer is so deep in debt to the French government that he has no choice but to accept the request. Faced with the huge social turmoil that resulted from the players and guilds' announcements that they would strike, the French government would have definitely planned a seven-floor attack in order to stabilize the situation, and they would definitely give this request to the Dragon Slayer. But it is too much for the Dragon Slayer, or there might be other unknown circumstances. The problem was that even if it was the Dragon Slayer, he wouldn't be able to simply attack a seven-floor dungeon as he pleased. And it's an A rank which makes it even more troublesome. Moreover, the dungeon that had appeared in Bordeaux was an A-rank dungeon. It's possible that someone already failed to clear it. There were also the worst-case scenarios like a group already failing to clear the seven-floor dungeon or a monster coming out of it. In such a situation, the Dragon Slayer devised a trick. Since he can't do it, had invite others to do it. He decided to commission Isaac Ivanov. They thought the Death Knight skill would work well. They even had bait so there was no need to hesitate. It was fine even if that didn't work. Even if the bait didn't work, the Dragon Slayer wasn't worried he believed that they could still negotiate afterwards. But not now. However, all of these plans had been destroyed after Kim Woo Jin directly asked for the Dragon Slayer's bombung. The French government would once again turn to the Dragon Slayer. And they will say that since Isaac Ivanov has made such a request, the Dragon Slayer should do something. The Dragon Slayer will have no choice but to give the French government an answer and at least now the French government would have a justification to bite the Dragon Slayer especially now that the French government's situation wasn't good. Above all, the French government's current situation was anything but good. Because the atmosphere of revolution is floating around and this country is France, not anywhere else. If things continued the way they were progressing, they might face an unprecedented collapse of the regime. So the French government would desperately cling to the Dragon Slayer. In the end, he will contact me directly. Therefore the Dragon Slayer would move to negotiate for himself. Woo Woo. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin's cell phone began vibrating. Only. Depending on the story and source material, Graham may have other names in the Nibelungen lead it is named Baumung in Richard Wagner's work, Der Ring der Nibelungen the Ring of the Nibelung, it is referred to as not hung. Chapter, 249. The Eiffel Tower, Paris. This place, which was always filled with tourists, still remained the same although the situation in France was not good at the moment. It was still filled with tourists and the business people who were selling stuff to them. The only difference was the fact that armed soldiers could be found everywhere to guard against the possible appearance of a monster there was nothing strange about it and no one cared about it. 
Therefore, no one would pay attention to an Asian man sitting on a bench not too far from the Eiffel Tower with his hat covering his face. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. And no one paid attention to the flock of pigeons who were eating the pieces of bread that this man was throwing. It was then. Isn't there a sign that says to not give food to invasive birds like pigeons? A Frenchman appeared. This Frenchman, who was wearing a luxurious colorful sweater, appeared to be quite stylish. His beard was neatly trimmed, his horn-rimmed glasses rested elegantly atop his nose, and his hair neatly pulled back. This man, whose visage was comparable to a model, sat beside the Asian man. Cuckoo. The pigeons scattered in surprise at the sudden appearance of a stranger, but when the Asian man threw out another piece of bread, the pigeons flocked once again. The repeated cries and sounds of the pigeons' wings made the surrounding area incredibly noisy. It makes me look like a tourist. The Asian man, Kim Woo Jin, who was aiming for exactly that, threw out some words. Well, that's also true. At those words, the dragon slayer, Francois Serrault, nodded with a chuckle. It certainly is smart to make it look that way. When he heard the dragon slayer's words, Kim Woo Jin simply kept throwing the bread in his hand without responding. Silence fell. But the dragon slayer didn't let it last for long. I heard you ask for the Baomong. He immediately led the conversation. The master did. I never expected Isaac Ivanov to be so materialistic nothing like a hero who's trying to save the world. The conversation dropped for a while due to that provocation. In the silence, the pigeons cried out as though they were asking for more bread, and Kim Woo Jin threw some bread at them as he said. The master said that there's no reason to save the French citizens first, instead of the citizens from third world countries who are struggling and desperate, just for one skill page. This time it was the dragon slayer who fell silent. The silence lasted for a long time. The dragon king didn't say anything for so long that even the pigeons, who had run out of things to eat again, started to cry out. It was a third party that broke their silence. Weeing. Following a piercing alarm from the speakers all around the area, French words began to flow out. This is an emergency. Monsters have appeared evacuate to a safe area immediately. After those words were said in French, it was then repeated in English. It was only then that most of the people there understood what was happening. The monsters. Everyone run away. Kayak. Screams and shouts began to sound out from every direction. Kukuku. The pigeons flapped their wings and flew away without hesitation at the sudden change in the situation flying so quickly that they disappeared from sight in an instant. Only one place remained quiet, Kim Woo Jin and the Dragon Slayer. Tututu. Roar. Even when the roars from monsters and gunshots sounded out, the two sat quietly on the bench, not showing any reaction. At that moment, they heard a fierce roar that shook the air. An ogre. It was the sound of that ridiculous, rage-filled monster, searching for prey. Only then did the dragon slayer, who had been silent all this while, open his mouth. It seems a group of ogres came out of the dungeon in the Paris subway. Can they not even manage the subway in the core of the city? They're managing it well it's just that they make mistakes like these on purpose. The world is really collapsing. The conversation between them was so calm that it would be impossible to imagine that a fearsome monster like an ogre was near them. Of course, this sight was to be expected. After all, both Kim Woo Jin and the Dragon Slayer were both players who could hunt monsters like ogres even if they were naked. In fact, there wouldn't even be a need for both of them to act. Just one of them would be able to handle the situation with ease. At that moment, an ogre appeared in front of Kim Woo Jin and the Dragon Slayer. Upon catching sight of his prey, the ogre's eyes became crazed as it let out a fierce roar. Thud. Then it began charging towards Kim Woo Jin and the Dragon Slayer with large steps. Kikiki. Suddenly, a fire dakibi appeared behind Kim Woo Jin and the Dragon Slayer, and hit the ogre with a fireball from its hand while letting out a bizarre cry TL, dakibis are generally goblins, but the author uses different words for them so I'll keep them separated. Pock. With a loud crash, the ogre fell backwards, its body covered in flames. Everyone's here already. Then a beautiful voice came from behind them. 
When he heard the voice, the dragon slayer turned around and spoke with a polite tone, completely different from how he spoke to Kim Woo Jin. Park Shin Hai, I've been waiting for you. Park Shin Hai. When the Messiah Guild's number two player appeared, Kim Woo Jin was able to grasp the dragon slayer's intentions perfectly. So he's weighing us. He had somehow brought the Messiah Guild into his negotiation with the Savior Guild to attack the Seven Floor Dungeon. He wanted to achieve his goal by using both sides. And the Messiah Guild had willingly accepted the deal. When he realized this, Kim Woo Jin covered his face with both hands, hiding his reaction from everyone. The Dragon Slayer certainly didn't fail to meet my expectations. To hide the smile that had subconsciously appeared on his face. As the number of monsters appearing in the cities increased, mankind began developing specialized countermeasures to deal with them. They developed new weapons for the different types of monsters, and created certain rules of engagement and manuals for each type of monster. The same was true for ogres. The French government had created the following manual to be followed in the event of an ogre's appearance. First, don't fire your weapon unless you intend to draw its attention, because automatic rifles were only able to invoke its anger without causing any damage. Second, only try to hunt it with anti-tank weapons such as anti-tank rockets or anti-tank mines. Third, if you don't have the above-mentioned firepower, do not engage and run away as quickly as possible. In other words, according to the manual, even dozens of soldiers with automatic rifles would only be able to flee if they were to encounter an ogre. That was how it was. The terror of the monster known as the ogre. But now, these fearsome ogres were being annihilated by a group of colorful fire dakibis. This was literal. The dakibis were trampling the ogres beneath their feet with the clubs in their hands. It was truly an amazing fact. The most surprising fact was that although these were fire dakibis, their physical strength was enormous. Every time a fire dakibi took a step, the ground shook as though a bus fell from a cliff. The power of seven colored dakibis has always been terrifying. Seven colored dakibis. It was a legendary skill that summoned seven different colored dakibis who each used a different type of magic. It's one of Park Shin Hai's top five spells. It was one of the five skills that the second in command of the Messiah Guild, Park Shin Hai, was known for. To put it bluntly, it was overkill to use it to kill ogres. Originally, this was a skill that Park Shin Hai would use to hunt a boss monster, and it was actually not easy for Park Shin Hai to summon a group of fire dakibis. In other words, she was using a blade used to kill a cow, to kill a chicken. By using that skill, she's basically making a show of strength. Of course, she was showing this skill as a warning. I think this is our first meeting I am Park Shin Hai are you Mr. Kim Woo Jin? Yes that's right. On the behalf of the Messiah Guild, I'd like to congratulate you on the creation of the Savior Guild the creation was so sudden that we could only congratulate you now. It was a warning to those who dared to bear their fangs towards the Messiah Guild. Along with that warning, Park Shin Hai stretched out her hand that completely fit the description of Dainty. And Kim Woo Jin accepted the beautiful warning without avoiding it. Thank you. After shaking hands, the eyes of the two naturally turned to the Dragon Slayer who nodded and said. First I'd like to ask you a favor I'd appreciate it if you didn't speak Korean in front of me I don't know Korean. After saying this, he quickly got to the point. First of all, I'm sorry that I didn't inform the Savior Guild about this beforehand but, the situation is urgent as you can see, the situation is France is far worse than what was revealed to the world the guillotine has already appeared above our heads so I took the liberty of also asking the Messiah Guild for help. It wasn't complex information that would take a long time to understand. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin responded immediately. In that case, is the Messiah Guild planning on attacking the dungeon? Park Shin Hai then said. We have to negotiate dungeons aren't things that can be attacked simply because you want to there are many things that have to be considered. Then, as if he had been waiting for that, the Dragon Slayer said. Well, that's what your two guilds will need to negotiate with the French government, so I will get out of the way. Wu Wu. The smartphone in Kim Woo Jin's pocket vibrated, signaling that he had received a message, and he bowed his head to them and asked to be excused. Please excuse my manners. Then he checked the message he received before frowning. Only. Immediately afterwards, 
he opened the web browser on his phone and checked a news portal website. Then he saw it. The Messiah Guild vs. the Savior Guild clash over the Seven Floor Dungeon. Who will save the world first? News articles filled the website. After confirming the text, Kim Woojin said. Now that the situation has changed, I'll need to talk to the Master before revealing the Savior Guild's position. Chapter, 250 The news quickly spread around the world. The two great guilds compete for the Seven Floor Dungeon in France. Is this the first round between the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild? Who will take the first step toward saving the world? It spread so quickly that it was obvious that someone was manipulating the media. So the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild are competing for the seven floor dungeon that appeared in France? It's a really nice competition made in good faith. Right, I'm thankful that they're competing like this. And the public seemed to be enjoying that fact. There was no reason not to enjoy it. Now, the two guilds who received the most support and love from the world were competing more actively to save the world. Who do you think will win the bid? The Messiah Guild definitely has an edge the reputation they've built up so far is on a completely different level. I'm not sure about that the Savior Guild cleared the seven floor dungeon faster, didn't they? Basically, everyone was wondering who would come out on top between the two guilds. In other words, it was a big event that was bound to be well received. It was literally an event. We suffered a bit. An event that didn't occur naturally, but was organized by someone. The Messiah Guild's press team really did a good job. Upon realizing this fact, Oh Se Chan's subordinate could only scratch his head embarrassedly as he muttered. I didn't expect them to secretly prepare like this, it seems that they're really determined this time. Oh Se Chan responded simply. This is a matter of life and death, so they would obviously be determined. Oh Se Chan was calm as he said these words. As he'd said, it was natural that the Messiah Guild had no choice but to do something like this, and there had been no flaws in their actions. And since the dice had already been thrown, what had happened couldn't be helped. Since that was the case, it was better to think about something else instead of the dice. So does this look like a trick? First of all, Oh Se Chan wanted to know whether the Messiah Guild was truly willing to attack the A rank dungeon that appeared in France. We're still trying to confirm it but it seems to be genuine among the seven floor dungeons that have appeared so far, the A ranked dungeon in France is the highest unless an A ranked seven floor dungeon appears, it's unlikely that they'd change targets. And according to their investigations, the Messiah Guild was truly determined to attack the dungeon. First of all, in this situation, wouldn't the team that obtains the right to attack get a step ahead? This was because it was worth it. After all, the public's attention was already locked onto this confrontation between the Messiah Guild and the Savior Guild. And in such a situation, the value of being one step ahead of the other could not be put into words. There were currently countless powers and capitalists weighing the situation at the moment. It's also a matter of face the Messiah Guild would never be the challenger. More importantly, the Messiah Guild was the champion. A champion who never had any challengers. In such a situation, not only had a challenger appear, but they had even hit them, so would they leave this challenger alone? They're not good people in the first place. Moreover, the Messiah Guild was one that would do anything possible to safeguard their values. The expression radical was not enough to describe them. From the Messiah Guild's perspective, this was a good opportunity for them to trample the Savior Guild. They would never let it end easily. So they would naturally face the Savior Guild with their full power. Well, we didn't intend to let it end easily either. Of course, the Savior Guild didn't intend to stay put either. Now then, let's start lobbying. Along with those words, Oh Se Chan, who had just risen from his seat, had a smile similar to a fisherman who had confirmed that the fish had bitten his bait. Who were the owners of the dungeon gates? If you were to ask 100 people on the street this question, they would all give the same answer. They belong to the government. And that answer was true. However, if you were to then ask them how the government distributes the rights to the dungeons, most of them would not be able to answer. Some of them would mention the bidding system and say that the one who offered the most would win the bid. But that wasn't true. Most countries did indeed use the bidding system, but the ones with the higher bid wouldn't necessarily win. 
therefore, it wasn't enough to say that the rights to the dungeons were determined by the bidding system. Actually, it's more of a screening than a bidding system. If a name had to be given to it, it would be more appropriate to call it a screening system. But there wasn't any clear indication anywhere on the screening criteria. Naturally, it's those government officials who set the standards. In other words, it was up to the government. It was no problem to bid for any dungeon as long as the dungeon wanted you to do so. It was the same for seven floor dungeons. When the Savior Guild demanded a higher price to attack the dungeon, the Messiah Guild expressed its willingness to attack, and the Savior Guild later revealed its willingness to attack as well. In response to that, the French government said that they would select and announce the winning bidder after their internal consultations. The consultation period was quite long. So they're going to give it to the kid who acts the cutest in front of them? This was done so that the two guilds could properly display their sincerity during the consultation process. That's right. Li Jina then shook his head and said. If you had accepted it from the start then you would have cleared the dungeon and gotten the Death Knight skill instead of having to go through all of this, right? The look in Li Jina's eyes was similar to a mother-in-law finding fault with her ugly daughter-in-law. In addition, Li Jina's words about Kim Wujin's mistakes were correct. If he had accepted the offer before, he would have obtained the right to clear the dungeon as well as the Death Knight skill page. And I could have enjoyed the French cuisine in the restaurant. Naturally, they could have also enjoyed the food that was served in the best restaurant in France. A free meal flew away just like that. And it was free. I knew you'd messed up the moment we left. Kim Wu Jin didn't respond to Li Jin Ahs words. Instead, he simply looked at a map on the desk while writing something with the pen in his hand. Then Li Jin Ah walked over to him and said. What's that? A map of the Paris subway. A subway map? Why that? As you said, we have to show our sincerity to the French government. Li Jina tilted his head at those words. Are you going to get them to support the Savior Guild by using the subway station? It's more than that. Kim Wu Jin looked at what he'd written before saying. Cleaning. Cleaning. You mean cleaning the subway station of Paris, France? Holding the banner of the Savior Guild while picking up a cigarette but with a pair of tongs so that they'll vote for us? After saying that, Li Jina clicked his tongue. Hey, I, Li Jina, am a man if you want me to fight an ogre, I'll do it but I will never do something that isn't manly. Kim Wu Jin responded simply. You'll get your heart's desire. Huh. What will be cleaning in the subway is monsters. It was then. French news took the place of the show they were watching on TV. Twenty-one people have been buried following the appearance of an ogre who then destroyed the subway station, the government. Even if they couldn't understand French, it was possible to figure out what was going on by watching the images and videos. So when a monster appears, we'll go hunt them in the subway stations that could possibly collapse. So Li Jina was able to see the scene that he would have to witness in person soon. Then he spoke carefully. Why don't we just have a signing exercise instead? I'll work hard to get at least 10, 0, 0 people I should have a bit of fame in France, shouldn't I? Li Jina said his request very earnestly. Naturally, Kim Wu Jin ignored Li Jina, took out his smartphone, and made a call. Who are you calling huh? Ha! Huh. And when the call was picked up immediately, question marks couldn't help but appear on Li Jin Ahs face. When the dungeon gate first appeared, and when they first learned the characteristics of the dungeon gate, everyone couldn't help but nervously ask a question. Will the subway be okay? The more populated a city was, the more complex the subway would be, so was the subway going to be okay? Of course, it wouldn't be okay. The dungeon gates that appeared on subway tracks were not easy to deal with, and the monsters that appeared out of them could cause all sorts of disasters depending on their types. There were two ways to handle this. One way was to simply collapse the subway, the other was to shut down the areas that were difficult to manage or collapse. These were methods used in Paris, France. The subway of Paris, which originally had 14 routes, had changed significantly after the world became a game. Nevertheless, there were still many stations and many problems. And these problems only got bigger over time. 
higher floor dungeon gates began appearing, making it hard to manage the subway properly as stronger monsters began appearing from them. Eventually, the French government made an announcement on October 29, 2024. Use of the Paris subway has stopped. A major monster sweeping exercise has been initiated. It will not stop until all the monsters and dungeon gates have been cleared. It was the moment when the Iron Horses of France, which had been running for more than a century, stopped. The French government then commissioned each guild to clean up the monsters in the Paris subway. The French Guild Federation has difficulties negotiating with the French government. The French Guild Federation demands more reliable treatment. But the French guilds demanded a higher price from the French government. The French guilds, who had already passed the point of no return, intended to use this opportunity to drive a wedge. Those sons of bitches. They're threatening the French government with the lives of French people. Damn it. Is there anything we can do? Can't we ask the players from Italy or Germany for help? They're all a part of the European Guild Alliance so they're all the same. The French people's opposition naturally skyrocketed, but there was truly nothing that they could do about it. Then a sudden reversal occurred. The Savior Guild begins sweeping the monsters in the Paris subway. The Savior Guild becomes France's saviors. The Savior Guild began cleaning the Paris subway. Of course, everyone knew why they were doing this. Is this how they are bidding for the dungeon? To step over the Messiah Guild and obtain the rights to the dungeon. What a refreshing sight. So there is a guild in the world that deals with monsters in order to bid for dungeons. Of course, from the perspective of an ordinary person, it was truly an admirable act. In particular, the reactions of the French citizens, who were dealing with a major crisis due to the guild strike, was particularly intense. Those French guild bastards aren't even worth half of the Savior Guild. Bring the Savior Guild to France. This is how it should be done. Just give the management rights to all of our dungeons over to the Savior Guild. They protested heavily against the French guilds while also praising the Savior Guild. Of course, there were still some who tried to make rational judgments about the situation. Can the Savior Guild really clean up the Paris subway? Cleaning the subway is different from a dungeon attack. No one disregarded the Savior Guild's capabilities, but wiping out the monsters in the subway was definitely different to clearing a dungeon. In fact, unlike dungeons, there were many cases in history where people died in subways because the tunnel collapsed or other such accidents. The enclosed space of a subway was not like the open and wide environments in dungeons which would allow them to use their abilities as they pleased. By the way, does the Savior Guild even know anything about the Paris subway? Is there anyone among them who even likes Paris cuisine? Only. More importantly, it would definitely be a problem if they were to try something like that in Paris when there weren't even any French members in the Savior Guild. The public opinion that it was just an unreasonable attempt in order to win the bid for the dungeon began to increase. Of course, this public opinion didn't last very long. The moment one name appeared, everyone accepted the fact that it was possible. Kim Woo Jin makes an appearance. Kim Woo Jin, I alone am enough to clear the subway. It was the player who was most likely to perfectly clear the subway. Chapter, 251 In a dark tunnel that would be considered a tunnel to hell if it weren't for the train tracks that had been laid on the floor. Crick. Crick. A small caterpillar robot was moving with its lights on. This robot had several cameras built into its body. It was due to this. This is hell, isn't it? This is insane. This doesn't make sense. That the people on the other side, who were watching this scene from Paris, France, were able to witness a terrifying sight in real time. It was a hell-like scene. I've never seen so many dead monsters. The sight of various monsters of all kinds dying with eyes rolled back and faces filled with pain was hard to explain in words other than the word hell. I never thought there would be a day when I'd be able to watch something like this on YouTube. We don't even need to watch those lousy monster movies anymore. Such a sight was being broadcasted to the entire world in real time through YouTube's live streaming function. Naturally, the number of viewers was indescribable. And the shock that these viewers were currently feeling was also beyond description. Incredible. Among these viewers was Oh Se-chan and his subordinates. 
I never expected Kim Woo Jin's abilities to be this. Although they were Kim Woo Jin's closest confidants, this was their first time truly witnessing what Kim Woo Jin was capable of. It was already amazing that time in California, but it's on a completely different level when in an enclosed space. Moreover, what Kim Woo Jin was showing now was much more intense than the monster hunt he showed last time in California. If it was a battle before, doesn't it feel like a real cleanup now? In this case, it was so one sided that it couldn't even be called a battle. When Kim Woo Jin released his poison, the enclosed space became filled very quickly, and the monsters, who couldn't handle it, died. It would be strange if it wasn't intense. His image will certainly be imprinted. In any case, it was the best performance with which to impress the presence of Kim Woo Jin and the Savior Guild to the French citizens. In addition to gaining the recognition of the French people, he was also proving that the Savior Guild, with the help of Kim Woo Jin, did not lack the ability to clear an A rank dungeon. Do you think so too, boss? Huh? Oh Se Chan seemed surprised by his subordinate's question. It seemed he hadn't even heard the question at all. What did you say? Tilting their head at the question, the subordinate changed their question and asked again. What are you looking at? What was taking so much of Oh Se Chan's attention at such an important moment? Oh Se Chan answered the question without hesitation. Donation money. As he gave this answer, Oh Se Chan had the brightest and most innocent smile he'd ever displayed before. Even his subordinates had never seen him smile so brightly. So when faced with that smile, the minds of his subordinates couldn't help but go blank for a moment. After finally regaining their senses, one of the subordinates couldn't help but ask. Is donation money really important right now? Oh Se Chan nodded firmly in response. Of course it is. His subordinates couldn't help but frown at the response that was given without hesitation. The Messiah Guild is more likely to win the bid anyway. However, they were all surprised by the words that came after. What does that? On the other hand, Oh Se Chan explained as though it was nothing important. Isn't it obvious? The Messiah Guild and Savior Guild are in completely different weight classes it's possible that they've already finished their negotiations with the French government that's probably why Park Shinhai is there. It was then. Breaking news. One of the subordinates, who was monitoring another situation, shouted out. The Messiah Guild has established a branch in Paris, France. Those words shocked Oh Se Chan's subordinates, but Oh Se Chan himself nodded as though he expected it to happen. As expected of the Messiah Guild, they're so big that they can organize the situation easily. One of his subordinates couldn't take it, and asked. If it continues like this, won't we lose the bid for the dungeon? The establishment of a branch meant that the Messiah Guild were planting their will here, and for the French people, it was completely different from simply cleaning the subway. Naturally, the bid was also more likely to be obtained by the Messiah Guild. Oh Se Chan nodded in agreement. Right, we'll probably lose the A rank dungeon to them. As he said those words, Oh Se Chan got up from his seat. What can we do about it? When hunting rabbits, sometimes you miss your shot and lose them, isn't that so? These calm words caused the expressions of his subordinates to stiffen. The atmosphere in the room also became cold. But Oh Se Chan's mood was different. This will hold the Messiah Guild back. It's a monster corpse. People wearing protective clothing were lifting monster corpses up the stairs to the subway station one after the other. I didn't think you could just pick up monster corpses like this. It's terrifying. The corpses of these monsters that were being carried out didn't have a single injury, and those who were carrying them couldn't help but be tongue-tied by this fact. Suddenly. Ah. Uh, th dash, there. In this chaotic situation, a man who, unlike the others, was not wearing a protective suit, could be seen walking out. He's coming out. Right. That's Kim Woo Jin. It was the moment when Kim Woo Jin, the person who had created this ridiculous scene, showed up. But no one cheered for him. Gulp. Instead, only the sound of saliva being swallowed could be heard from the crowd. This was to be expected. After all, it would be very hard for a rabbit to cheer after witnessing a lion's successful hunt. In the midst of such tension, 
Kim Woojin simply brushed the dust from his body and kept moving without saying a word. Crick. Meanwhile, a row of luxurious Range Rovers pulled up. One of the vehicle's doors opened up, and Kim Woojin boarded it without hesitation. Good job. Then the Dragon Slayer, wearing a nice suit and no glasses welcomed him. However, the ridicule that was clear in the Dragon Slayer's expression and voice showed that he wasn't actually welcoming him. It was for naught. The Dragon Slayer got to the point immediately. The Messiah Guild has established a branch in France the French government will naturally look at the situation afterwards, but frankly, it's already settled the dungeon will go to the Messiah Guild the Savior Guild lost the dungeon to the Messiah Guild. Along with those words, the Dragon Slayer picked up an envelope from the seat beside Kim Woo Jin before handing it over. This is the price I promised. Instead of answering him, Kim Woo Jin opened the envelope. Then he found a sheet of golden paper inside. Death Knight. Conditions, Emissary of the Underworld. Required level, 200 or higher. Effect, can turn a skeleton knight, who has hunted 44, 44 monsters into a death knight. Death knight. The worst and strongest among all the undead soldiers. The dragon slayer then spoke as Kim Woo Jin put the skill page back into the envelope without a word. Isaac is smart too to be able to get the skill page without attacking the dungeon on the condition of leaving it to the Messiah Guild. It was a simple deal. The Dragon Slayer needed someone to attack the A rank dungeon in his stead, so Kim Woo Jin made a suggestion to him. Let's leave it to the Messiah Guild. Then, since the Messiah Guild will pay a bigger price to get it above us, you will give us the Death Knight skill page. We didn't need to do it anyway. It wasn't a bad suggestion for the Dragon Slayer, and the result wasn't very bad either. The establishment of a Messiah Guild branch in France was the best scenario for the French government to turn around the turbulent situation. But the Savior Guild's reputation will take a hit. Of course, it was inevitable that the Savior Guild's reputation would fall below the Messiah Guild's for a while. Kim Woo Jin responded to the Dragon Slayer, who pointed out that fact. It can't be helped. The smartphone in the Dragon Slayer's breast pocket began playing a song by Edith Fiat One. The subsequent phone call was short. After finishing his call, the Dragon Slayer spoke to Kim Woo Jin. The French government announced breaking news the contents of it was that they'd be giving the chance to attack the seven-floor dungeon located in Bordeaux, to the Messiah Guild. After that, Kim Woo Jin took out his own smartphone and looked for the news article. The French government selects the Messiah Guild as the successful bidder for the dungeon. As the Dragon Slayer had said, it had been officially declared by the French government. It has been nailed and the nails can no longer be removed. Now, it couldn't be undone. Kim Woo Jin nodded at that fact. There's nothing we can do we just have to do better next time. The Dragon Slayer smiled at his relaxed appearance. The music began to flow from the Dragon Slayer's chest once again, and the Dragon Slayer answered the phone with ease. However, it didn't take long for the Dragon Slayer's expression to harden. Before long, the Dragon Slayer spoke with his smartphone still on. Did you know there was an A-rank 7-floor dungeon in England? Kim Woo Jin didn't answer the question. It's that greedy Lightning King's legacy. It was none other than one of the treasures he'd hidden away. And Excalibur is inside. And what was inside of it was simply ridiculous. I don't have to tell you guys what Excalibur is do I? XD. Chapter, 252. Over time, the value of legendary great items had increased beyond description. And the value of a rank dungeons, where one had a high chance of obtaining them, also increased beyond description. Naturally, the number of people who secretly possessed a ranked dungeons also increased steadily. The Lightning King was one of them. No, it was inevitable. The scariest thing about the Lightning King's Thunderbird, was the fact that there were no better partners than them when it came to doing something illegal. In order to possess a dungeon, and be somewhat of a dungeon broker, one first needed the ability to deal with the monsters coming out of the dungeon, and the ability to remove the evidence afterwards. When it came to one and two floor dungeons, this wasn't much of a problem since these dungeons could be killed with normal assault rifles. However, five floor dungeons and above were naturally different stories. 
When the ogres had appeared in Paris, France, they needed to use anti-tank mines and anti-tank rockets to deal with them. Because Thunderbird could even give you an Apache helicopter as long as you could afford it. Thunderbird was the only place in the world where one could use such a level of military power privately. More importantly, the Lightning King was not negligent when it came to building connections. In addition, by using Thunderbird, the Lightning King was able to create connections with many powerful people around the world. And his connection with the United Kingdom was particularly deep. The United Kingdom was also among them. Just like Japan, when the world was transformed to a game, the United Kingdom also feared isolation, which was one of the limitations to being an island. Furthermore, by 2020, when the world became a game, the United Kingdom had already left the European Union TL, the author said the Eurozone, but the UK was never a part of the Eurozone so I changed it accordingly. With its political and economic relations with mainland Europe entering a delicate stage, the United Kingdom sought to secure a new route of activity and a new stronghold TL, just gonna use the UK, from now on. And they chose Thunderbird as their partner in the process. In fact, they've already established a territory for the UK in Brazil although it was just a verbal agreement. For the UK the region of South and Central America, where the government function had been practically paralyzed, was bound to be very attractive. In any case, the Lightning King had become deeply connected with the UK and had even planted a number of his own subordinates there. With such a strong relationship, the Lightning King was pretty lucky to get his hands on a treasure chest. And because of this, the Lightning King was able to acquire a treasure chest that appeared in the UK. A rank 7 floor dungeon, Land of Dragons. A treasure chest where the chance of obtaining a legendary item was almost guaranteed. The moment he found the dungeon, he bribed the official in charge and hid it as a C rank 5 floor dungeon. After hiding it, he simply waited for the time when he was strong enough to clear it himself. I'm truly grateful for the inheritance the Lightning King left behind. However, the Lightning King had died, so the dungeon naturally fell into the hands of Kim Woo Jin. But it's really not easy to inherit. The problem was that it wasn't possible to inherit it naturally from Kim Woo Jin's perspective. There were only two options. Well, we could attack it secretly, but. One was to attack it secretly. The merit is low. Unfortunately, there were many problems that came with attacking the dungeon secretly. Firstly, it would be impossible to release the information to the public. Regardless of whether the Lightning King was the one who hid it or not, the dungeon was without a doubt a British asset. On the other hand, it's very risky. If they were to be discovered, it would certainly be a large blemish on the Savior Guild's reputation. An open flaw for at least two months would not be ignored. More importantly, the Messiah Guild would definitely not miss the flaw created by attacking the dungeon. It was the same as showing a weakness to a strong predator. The other option is to reveal it to the public and bid for it. If not, then there was only one other option. Inform the world about the dungeon's existence and take the proper steps to acquire it. In other words, win the bid through the bidding system. Of course, even with this option, the Messiah Guild would not stay still. But this way is more complicated the Messiah Guild would be really determined. Rather, it was obvious that their eyes would light up with desire and they would rush to bid for it. It was to be expected. Even if the opponent wasn't the Savior Guild. Symbolism aside, the merit of this dungeon was too large. A dragon, a creature that was infinitely more powerful than the hatchling, had a value that was second only to or maybe even more than that of a legendary item by itself. And if we follow the standard method, the Savior Guild would never beat the Messiah Guild. What was very clear to the Savior Guild was that they had no hope of competing against the Messiah Guild head to head. That was why they needed to play a trick. They made the Messiah Guild sink their teeth into a large catch so that they would be unable to catch any other prey. And that's everything that's happened so far. Li Jina quietly glanced at the golden skill page resting on the table while listening to Kim Woo Jin's explanation. Then was obtaining this Death Knight skill page also part of the plan? I was just lucky. At that moment, Li Jina once again came to a realization. I can never borrow money from the guy I'm never going to owe him anything. One should never obtain Kim Woo Jin's resentment. Kim Woo Jin then spoke to Li Jina. 
Now, let me explain the next plan. The next plan. Aren't we just attacking the dungeon? Then the profit wouldn't be too big. Profit? If you can suck it out, you have to aim for the marrow. Li Jin Ah couldn't help but feel that Kim Wu Jin was the most frightening and dangerous hunting dog. The Messiah Guild is set to attack the 8th rank. The Messiah Guild beats the Savior Guild in the competition for the bid. The French government does the Messiah Guild a favor. Just as the news of the Messiah Guild's victory spread around the world. A seven-floor dungeon appears in the North York Moors National Park in the UK. The dungeon is a rank. As if it had been waiting for that moment, the news of the appearance of an A-rank seven-floor dungeon was made known to the world. The Savior Guild bids for the dungeon in the UK. Kim Woo Jin is dispatched to the UK as the Savior Guild's representative. Soon after, the news of the Savior Guild's bid appeared. The meaning of this was simple. Wow, this is how it happens. If it's like this, then the Savior Guild will probably win the bid for the UK dungeon. It can't be helped since the Messiah Guild has to attack the dungeon in France. The Savior Guild is being helped by the heavens. That this was the best opportunity for the Savior Guild. And that it was the Messiah Guild's bad luck. This is such a headache it's driving me crazy. The expression on Park Shinhai's face was definitely not good. Her expression alone was probably enough to kill a weak-willed person. But even with that look on her face, she didn't vent her anger. This was because although she was extremely angry at that moment, she knew that nothing good would come from losing her composure. Tell me, is there any way for us to stop the Savior Guild? Furthermore, she knew that the most important thing at that moment was to figure out a way to prevent the Savior Guild from obtaining the right to attack the dungeon. At her question, one of her subordinates who had gone to France with her spoke up. Currently, we are communicating with the remaining four of the top five guilds. Communicating? To get them to bid for the UK dungeon if they are given numerous candidates to choose from, the UK government will have no choice but to take some time to decide the more candidates that step forward, the longer this screening will take. Park Shinhai pointed with her chin, gesturing for the subordinate to continue. Therefore, the subordinate didn't stop. We would at least be able to buy some time I believe we can make it take up to a month at best. It was a reasonably smart method. As her subordinate had said, since the dungeon had appeared officially, it now belonged to the UK government, and the UK government would have no choice but to carry out a bid for the dungeon following normal procedures. The problem is. Of course, there was a fatal problem with that plan. Whether they can attack a five-floor dungeon or not. Currently, apart from the Messiah Guild, the members of the top five guilds had never attacked a seven-floor dungeon. So common sense dictated that it was incredibly reckless for them to attack an A-rank seven-floor dungeon from the start. Communicate with them properly if necessary, use our insiders to let it flow more smoothly. But that wasn't something that the Messiah Guild had to keep in mind. If necessary, make them join forces. After all, the four guilds could join forces to form an allied team. And if possible, include us as well. If the Messiah Guild also decided to participate, then it would become an alliance formed by the top five guilds something that would definitely be able to compete against the Savior Guild. It doesn't matter how you get it done. Even if it failed, it was something to consider after it failed. Now was the time for them to do everything they could. Do whatever you can to stop the Savior Guild from attacking that dungeon. We can't destroy the tower that we took so long to build. At this rate, the tower that the Messiah Guild had barely managed to build might very well collapse. Th- dash, there. What is it? The Savior Guild just made an announcement. The Savior Guild responded to her resolute determination. What announcement? They're recruiting participants to attack the dungeon with them. The day after the Land of Dragons dungeon appeared, the Savior Guild declared their bid. The Savior Guild is recruiting participants to help them attack the dungeon. They are recruiting as much as 400 people, 80% of the maximum number of entries. And the next day, the Savior Guild released news that they would be recruiting people to attack the dungeon. Naturally, everyone was surprised by the unexpected news. Then Isaac Ivanov spoke to them directly via a YouTube live broadcast. 
The appearance of this seventh floor dungeon is said to be an opportunity given to the Savior Guild by the heavens I will not deny that that is why we will do our best to attack this dungeon perfectly for this reason, we are recruiting players to assist us this time after going through our screening and evaluation, anyone is welcome to help us clear this seventh floor dungeon perfectly. This was an opportunity given to them by heaven, so they would complete it perfectly. And after clearing this dungeon, we will immediately target eight floor dungeons in the new year. And in the year 2025, the Savior Guild would head to a higher floor. As expected of Isaac Ivanov. Perfect. Right, this is how a Savior should be. This is better than recklessness. The public was understandably enthusiastic about this fact. Some even had a certain thought. It's an opportunity for those who never got the chance to attack a seven-floor dungeon to gain the title. It's a bus, a bus a seven-floor attack bus. Those who had never gotten the opportunity to even attack a seven-floor dungeon would get the golden opportunity to follow Isaac Ivanov and clear one. There aren't any guys who are planning to step on the bus for free, are there? You'd better pay for your ticket accordingly. I think they should at least offer a legendary item. There was even the public opinion that the applicants should pay participation fees regardless of their abilities. What was more surprising was that this wasn't taken as a joke. In fact, the big guilds who were faced with this situation, had the same thought as the public opinion. This is a great opportunity in addition to being able to clear a seven-floor dungeon, it's a good chance for us to grasp the Savior Guild's power. The opportunity to safely attack a seven-floor dungeon does not come often. It was an opportunity for them to experience the peak of seven floors when no guild other than the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild had been able to clear it. And it was an opportunity that one wouldn't be able to buy even if they had money. It's not just about skill you also have to show your sincerity. You have to show a certain level of sincerity. So they had no choice but to somehow pay for this thing that couldn't be bought even with money. Naturally, there was something they could use to pay for it. Legendary items. Isaac Ivanov didn't tell them that it was necessary to show their sincerity. Isaac Ivanov also didn't ask for a price. Isaac Ivanov said he would willingly save the world no matter the cost, but I'm different. But Kim Woo Jin was different. In the meeting with the representatives of the large guilds, Kim Woo Jin told them clearly. I only believe in sincerity that I can see with my own eyes ah, and you know that this is a relative evaluation, don't you? So don't forget to show sincerity that's better than your competitors. Pay the entry fee. And you should avoid standing out in the bidding process for no reason. Of course, he didn't forget to threaten them at the same time. The effect was obvious. The Kunlun Guild gives up the bid. The Frontier Guild gives up the bid. Of the top five guilds, no one dared to bid against the Savior Guild when all the other guilds, except the Messiah Guild, wished to ride the Savior Guild's bus, so they immediately announced their decisions through the media. Naturally, the UK government only had one decision to make in this situation. The UK government selects the Savior Guild as the bidder for the Land of Dragons dungeon. Chapter, 253 The Savior Guild had been recruiting participants for a week. The Kunlun Guild will join the Savior Guild to take on the dungeon. 80 players from the Kunlun Guild will participate in the dungeon attack. The Kunlun Guild was the first passenger on the ship named the Savior Guild. Achilles' armor is more than enough to earn a ticket. The sincerity that the Kunlun Guild showed was none other than Achilles' armor. It was a sure price that allowed them to not have to worry about other people's sincerity, and the Savior Guild was more than willing to accept it. In addition, the sincerity displayed by the Kunlun Guild set the standard for the other guilds to follow. It should at least be on the level of Achilles' armor. Eighty players from the Frontier Guild prepare to attack the Seven Floor Dungeon. The first to follow this standard was the Frontier Guild. Kohulun, S1, Helmet, a great item. They became the second passenger aboard the ship by presenting Kohulun's helmet, an item comparable to Achilles' armor. On the other hand, the third passenger was different. Seventy members of the Victoria Guild have been confirmed to participate. A UK Guild will be the first European Guild to challenge a seven-floor dungeon. The Victoria Guild. This was the Guild considered to be the best in the UK. But this group, 
whose reputation was in no way comparable to that of the five great guilds were able to become the third passengers on the ship without needing to pay a significant price. The reason for this was simple. They were being fully supported by the UK government. When they were offering the bid for this dungeon which had appeared in their territory, the UK government made a condition that their own guilds and players would have the opportunity to engrave their names on this challenge a condition that the Saviour Guild accepted. The fourth passenger was chosen immediately after. Eighty members of the Great One Guild have been confirmed to participate. Three of the four remaining top five guilds have confirmed their participation. The Great One Guild was the fourth passenger. Hector, S2, bronze armor you've offered a pretty strong piece of armor. The price they paid was the bronze armor belonging to the Guardian of Troy, Hector. This, too, was a fee that was in no way lacking. Furthermore, the Great One Guild even took it a step further. Trinity will directly participate in the dungeon attack. The Guild Master of the Great One Guild and one of the best players in the world, Trinity. She was going to personally participate in the dungeon attack. It was a declaration that they weren't willing to just be sidekicks, and that they would also become the main characters if given the opportunity. In any case, it was a wise move in many ways. Now there is only one seat left. Which guild will claim the last seat? In the competition for the last spot, it was certain that the participants would have to pay a higher price than Hector's armor. This was obvious. Now that there was just one spot left, countless guilds were rushing to give a higher price than their competitors. The competition was definitely bound to intensify. Who will it be? Naturally, it'll be one of the top five guilds. It's impossible for the other large guilds to even dream of overcoming the top five. Won't one of the top five take the spot? The world focused its attention on who the last passenger would turn out to be. Then, the last participant was decided. Seventy players from the Messiah Guild will participate. The Messiah Guild had become the last passenger. There was a warehouse in Liverpool, England. In this warehouse, which was so old that it could no longer be used, Kim Woo-jin was measuring the sizes of a skeleton knight in front of him. Slam! Then someone rushed in. This person, Li jin -ah, whose face was currently so fierce that someone's heart would stop just from looking at him, shouted out angrily as soon as he walked in. Hey, Kim Woo-jin! Are you insane? Does it make sense to accept the Messiah Guild as the last participant? The reason for this was none other than an article he'd just seen TL, fun fact that I'm not sure I pointed out before article and knight are actually the same word dash. An article that claimed the Messiah Guild to be the last passenger aboard the Savior Guild ship headed for the Land of Dragons dungeon. And you didn't tell me about it. Naturally, Li Jin Ah, who hadn't received any word about this couldn't but be shocked. I rushed over here before I couldn't even finish eating my McDonald's fries because of you. He was so shocked that he immediately ran over to find out about the situation from Kim Woo Jin, leaving behind the food he'd been eating. Kim Woo Jin, on the other hand, remained calm as he said. The Messiah Guild lowered their heads first and asked for a favor, it wouldn't look good if we refused. Look good. If we just refused them here, it would seem as though we had a bad relationship with the Messiah Guild. Don't we have a bad relationship with the Messiah Guild? The world doesn't know that. When he heard Kim Woo Jin's words, Li Jin Ah made a face as if he couldn't understand what he meant, so Kim Woo Jin decided to explain for him. The competition between the Messiah Guild and the Savior Guild is similar to if two Korean national teams met each other in the finals of the Olympics they might compete fiercely, but the losers would still be applauded by the Korean people anyway. It was exactly that. The world saw the competition between the Messiah Guild and the Savior Guild as one held in good faith. Not only would the winner be cheered for, but even the loser would be applauded despite being second place. That's why I used YouTube to make a lot of my announcements. It was Kim Woo Jin himself who induced this competitive atmosphere. It was also the reason why he said he would compete to save the world first, and not that he would trample on the Messiah Guild and save the world. Ha! Huh. Weren't you doing the videos on YouTube for the donations? I thought you just wanted to dance in the donation money you obtained from your fans. Kim Woo Jin looked at Lee Jin Ah, who seemed to be extremely surprised as though he was learning the truth for the first time, before continuing. 
On the other hand, if it became a battle between Korea and Japan, the world would naturally be forced to take sides. In other words, if the situation changed so that they were fiercely competing against each other, the reaction towards winning and losing would certainly be different. No matter who won, the loser would not be applauded, and the winner and loser would be extremely divided, even to the extent of wanting to kill each other. And if we were to become Korea and Japan, then we would certainly be Japan most people would choose to support the Messiah Guild. In that case, it was obvious that most of the people in the world would choose to side with the Messiah Guild. After all, the Messiah Guild's reputation, which had been accumulated over a period of five years was not something the Savior Guild could overcome just yet. In particular, the Messiah Guild's followers would definitely launch a crazy offensive. Furthermore, unlike the Savior Guild, the Messiah Guild had numerous followers with unwavering beliefs. Being hostile towards them is the same as giving those followers a reason to become martyrs. If the Messiah Guild gave the order, it wouldn't be strange for them to bit the throat of a passing old man. Kim Woo Jin had more knowledge of this than anyone else. In any case, in such a situation, the Savior Guild had no choice but to outwardly show that they were on good terms with the Messiah Guild, and in a sense, showing such an appearance was a boon. Plus, their sincerity was too good to pass up. Of course, the thing that stirred Kim Woo Jin's heart the most was the price offered by the Messiah Guild. What did they give you? Galahad's shield. Is it good? Galahad's shield, its correct name was the Cursed Shield. The shield's ability was simple. The moment you successfully block an attack, it will put a deadly curse on the enemy that attacked you. There were many items that could give curses, and many types of curses, but Galahad's shield was amazing in the fact that simply blocking an attack would launch a curse. It's great. Before returning to the past, it was an item that Kim Woo Jin used quite often. In fact, the moment it was offered, Kim Woo Jin no longer thought about refusing them. Of course, Lee Jina was different. No, regardless of how good it is. What will we do if they decide to work together? Don't they have almost four times our number? The maximum number of people who could enter the A rank dungeon, Land of Dragons, was 500. Among this group, 390 people belonged to five other guilds TL, the author made a series of errors here first, if you count the numbers above you'd find that there should be 380 other players in the dungeon second, the author actually said 4 guilds in the raw and not 5 I changed the number of guilds to what it should be but I can't change anything else unfortunately. As for the savior guild, 110 of their members would be participating, so the difference between the two sides was roughly 4 times. They could betray us. As long as the word betrayal existed in the world, it was completely unacceptable odds. Moreover, it's a dungeon. And weren't they headed to a place where such a word was by no means rare? Kim Woo Jin replied simply to Lee Jin Ah's concerns. That's why we will show them clearly from the start. As he said those words, Kim Woo Jin looked at his status window. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 196. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats. Health 6101629, Stamina 2861, Magic Power 31631. Achievements, 183. Extra Points, 0. Level 196. After measuring his level, Kim Woo Jin spoke with a burning gaze. Because we recruited participants to show off our strength in the first place. Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin took Mjolnir from his inventory and gave it to the skeleton knight in front of him. By October 31st, everything was ready. The D-Day for the Savior Guild's dungeon attack. In front of the dungeon gate for the Land of Dragons dungeon, the 500 players who would be participating in the dungeon attack were gathered. And Isaac Ivanov, who was in front of them spoke slowly. We will clear this dungeon before the new year starts. That was all. Then let's start our attack on the Land of Dragons dungeon. And with that, the dungeon attack began. Chapter, 254. 500 people. With such a large number, there would naturally be a long period of time between the first person to enter the dungeon and the last. That's why the first ones to enter the dungeon had to bear a certain amount of risk in many ways. If there was some issue in the middle of them entering the dungeon and the ones on the outside were cut off, 
the people on the inside would have to face the worst-case scenario. Nevertheless, the Messiah Guild readily claimed the first position. We'll enter first. Cho Sun Wu. This level 233 player was the representative of the Messiah Guild's players who were participating in the Land of Dragons dungeon this time. We came here to help the Savior Guild, so we naturally have to help. The order after that was the Kunlun Guild, Frontier Guild, Great One Guild, and Victoria Guild. Naturally, the Savior Guild took up the rear. Such positioning was carried out smoothly. After the Messiah Guild entered, they maintained their vigilance as they observed the surroundings and waited for the Kunlun Guild to enter. Nothing special happened in the process. As soon as the Kunlun Guild's representative entered the dungeon, he immediately made eye contact with Cho Sun Wu instead of paying attention to the swelteringly hot jungle. Afterwards, as soon as the representative of the Frontier Guild entered, he nodded to Cho Sun Wu after their eyes met. Please take care of me. Yes. Trinity, the guild master of the Great One Guild didn't do anything special except for sharing a light handshake with Cho Sun Wu the moment she entered the dungeon. Of course, that was enough. With this, our four guilds have formed an alliance. They had created a secret alliance without the Savior Guild's knowledge. In fact, this was natural in a way. The top five guilds had long made their own agreements with each other, respecting each other's territories and sometimes even helping each other. Although the Messiah Guild was incredibly outstanding, they still had their own points of contact with the other four guilds, and would not go to the extremes when competing by killing them openly. To put it bluntly, they had voluntarily lowered their heads to the Messiah Guild, and would avert their gaze from whatever the Messiah Guild was doing as long as it didn't outrightly affect them. In any case, they all had their own alliances. The Savior Guild's weak point was the fact that they don't have many allies. The Savior Guild on the other hand stood on the opposite side of their alliance. Except for the Messiah Guild, from the standpoint of the members of top five guilds, the Savior Guild's existence was quite troublesome. Furthermore, the Savior Guild's value was not much different from the Messiah Guild's. The other four guilds didn't necessarily like or dislike the Savior Guild. It was the Messiah Guild who brought up the suggestion to exclude the Savior Guild and create their own alliance in the dungeon. We'll tolerate them for now. Of course, that didn't mean they intended to do anything to the Savior Guild with the alliance. If there was a problem, the four guilds, including the Messiah Guild, would suffer fatal damage. Instead, they intended to actively help the Savior Guild as long as nothing special outside of the original purpose happened. We don't know how powerful they are. Therefore, the only reason that Cho Sun Wu, who was supposed to join Li Se Jun in the attack on the French dungeon, was to confirm the Savior Guild's capabilities. It's the Savior Guild. Then the Savior Guild began to enter after the Victoria Guild. That's Park Yong Wan. Park Yong Wan, who was now a key figure in the Savior Guild, was the first member to enter the dungeon. Then, one after the other, the celebrities of the Savior Guild began to appear. Tension naturally appeared on the faces of those who were observing them. On the other hand, the faces of the Savior Guild members were quite relaxed, as though they had nothing to worry about. They're full of confidence. Only the firm confidence that they would successfully clear the dungeon could be seen on their faces. The source of this confidence soon arrived. It's Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov. As soon as he appeared, the commotion in the group immediately calmed down as everyone's eyes became focused on one person. There was a moment of silence. Kill 100 00 guardians to proceed to the next floor. And in this silence, they received the notification which informed them of the condition to clear the first floor of the dungeon. The moment they received the notification, the faces of most of the members there hardened considerably. 100 00 guardians. Isn't this too much? After all, this quest wasn't to kill 100 00 normal monsters, but dragon guardians. It was on a completely different level. We have to deal with a 100 00 monster army. This task was no different from dealing with an army composed of 100 00 monsters of different kinds. This was a completely different task compared to hunting 100 00 goblins. This will be quite the headache if the first floor is like this then this a rank dungeon is really too much. Even Cho Sun Wu, 
who had experience with attacking seven-floor dungeons couldn't help but momentarily forget his mission of observing Isaac Ivanov when he saw this. However, after seeing the notification, Isaac Ivanov simply turned to the Savior Guild and spoke in a calm voice. We will go up to the second floor in three days. This remark caused question marks to appear above the heads of those who heard it. Had they heard him correctly? But after realizing that everyone else had the same expression, their faces became pale from shock. The Book of the Dead has been opened. And in that shock, Kim Woo Jin opened the Book of the Dead. Then he took out a page which contained a monster from the book. The undead wizard appears. The Lich. This monster, which could already be considered a nightmare in seven floor dungeons, made its appearance. The Goblin Lord's crown, which is being worn by the Lich, exerts the power of a king. The king's army is activated. The stats of all undead monsters increased by 20%. Together with the Goblin Lord's crown. That was the moment when the battle against the Guardian army had transformed in a massacre. Guardians, the soldiers created from various types of monsters that dragons use to protect their territories. These guardians were considered to be quite tricky monsters to face by the players. The reason was simple. They were like machines that the dragons had personally created. Therefore it was possible for ogres and goblins, who normally had a predator-prey relationship, would be able to work together in battle, to the extent that the ogres would even sacrifice themselves for the other. In other words, the common sense and knowledge about monsters that had been engraved on the players' minds and bodies by experience were completely against guardians. If it was a question in an exam, it would be one that was about a different subject. Of course, that wasn't a problem that the players who had entered the Land of Dragons dungeon. Hunt only what you can to minimize power consumption as much as possible. Divide the grades, let the tanks attract the attention of the medium grade and higher monsters, and hunt the low grades first. Keep the retreat signal in mind at all times, and the moment you hear the signal, follow the order without hesitation. The players in this dungeon were all veterans who were at least level 158. And just as the dungeon's name was Land of Dragons, there were many players there who had experience hunting dragons. Moreover, apart from the players from the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild, this was these players' first time attacking a seven-floor dungeon. Don't let your guards down. Remember this is only the first floor of the seven-floor dungeon. Do your best. Although they were all filled with determination, there was no trace of carelessness. Roar. Kaya. This fact was proved as they faced the guardians of all kinds who charged towards the group of intruders after finding them. Hi hi hi. Unfortunately, the army of undead, which appeared following the cry of a banshee, did not tolerate such a battle. Rattle. Kyaha. Hayaha. The only thing they tolerated, was a massacre. And that's exactly what happened. At one point, this undead army, which numbered around 400 and were led by the Lich and Dullahan, went beyond the level of overwhelming as they killed every guardian around them. The effect of ruler of battlefield stacks. And they were still becoming stronger over time. Even that wasn't the end. The Poison King is making his move. Everyone retreat. Then Kim Woo Jin, whose fame at that moment was no longer lacking when compared to Isaac Ivanov set the stage for this undead army. The blood fog begins to spread. He created a stage that didn't tolerate any living being who breathed or were made of flesh and blood, as gaining wounds on such a stage would only end badly. Used bloodsucking skill. Your magic power has been restored. And in the process, the corpses that were created by this process became materials for an even greater slaughter. Used corpse poison skill. Cheap materials that could be used in their entirety. He's more terrifying than I thought. This is unbelievable. The players who weren't a part of the Savior Guild and had never witnessed this scene couldn't help but watch on in shock, completely speechless. What was even more shocking was that wasn't even all they had to show. I wanted to make a bet on who would be able to hunt the most monsters like back then, but it wouldn't even work from the start. Park Yong Wan, who was now carrying the name of the Savior Guild as well, also revealed his presence in this scene. Now, let's get the ones the skeletons missed. While the undead army were fighting on the stage where the living were not allowed, the players, led by Park Yong Wan, 
began cleaning up the monsters who had managed to evade the range of the poison. In this dungeon, they were determined to not give the guardians any space. Follow me. And he would maintain that will. Durandal. With this sword in his hand, Park Yongwan began cleaning up the monsters from the front. Is Park Yongwan really that strong? It was none other than Cho Sungwoo who was the most surprised by Park Yongwan's performance. In truth, Cho Sungwoo always believed Park Yongwan was weaker than him. There was a good reason for that. After all, wouldn't it be strange if the Park Yongwan, the guild master of the Phoenix Guild which was nothing when compared to the Messiah Guild, who was known to pursue his own selfish desires was considered to be comparable to a hero who risked their life for the world. Cho Sung Wu always thought that since their resolutions and goals were different, their power would naturally be different. He's better than I expected. However, the performance that Park Yong Wan was now displaying on the battlefield was not lacking when compared to Cho Sung Wu. Even his men. Furthermore, the sight of the men following behind him was just as shocking. Of course, there was one that was the most shocking. Siba. The only man who dared to participate in a battlefield where living beings were not allowed to be. Holding a black shield in his hand, Li Jina threw himself at the guardians even more fiercely than the undead army. Sheba. Fuck. He really had to give the hardest job to me. Of course, the reason was to put a curse on the guardians with the cursed shield. As Li Jina said, he was given the hardest task out of everyone on the battlefield. However, this scene was quite different in the eyes of others. He's pulling all of the monsters aggro. That's the textbook example of a tank. Are there any tanks in our guild who would throw themselves into a group of monsters like that? He was the perfect tank for Kim Woojin and Isaac Ivanov. Lee Jina was the only one who dared to fight in the battlefield there other people wouldn't dare to even breathe. And the result was self-evident. The skeleton soldiers and skeleton wizards steadily grew stronger as the fight progressed. A skeleton knight uses the riding skill. Then the monsters became corpses even faster as a skeleton knight managed to successfully acquire a guardian as its mount the Dullahan also used its own skill to also accomplish the same feat. These corpses supplied Kim Woo Jin with blood and magic power which he then used to increase his power even further. Summoned a blood golem. This blood golem, which secretly appeared, became a powerful assassin who swept through the battlefield. And in time, the words that were said became a reality. All the monsters have been hunted. Just as Isaac Ivanov had said, they cleared the first floor on the third day after they entered the dungeon. Survive for ten days to proceed to the next floor. On the third day of the dungeon attack, they received the notification of the clearance requirement of the second floor. We have to preserve our power. Avoid excessive fighting. The players wanted to conserve as much energy as they could over the course of ten days. Naturally, the Savior Guild was different. To be exact, Isaac Ivanov was the one who had a different idea. I will reach level 200 here. Chapter, 255 The Messiah Guild emphasized one fact for Cho Sung Wu when he was told to take part in the Savior Guild's dungeon attack. Never interfere with the Savior Guild's actions. In truth, this was something that didn't even need to be emphasized since it was common sense. After all, nothing good would come from provoking or interfering with the Savior Guild. For example, let's say they fought against the Savior Guild and one would it still be possible for them to clear the A rank 7 floor dungeon without the Savior Guild. In this situation, they'd already paid a considerable price in order to take part in this trip. Since that was the case, wouldn't it be more profitable for them if the ship safely reached its destination? Nevertheless, the reason they gave such simple advice was simple. I'm saying this because I know Cho Sung Woo's personality don't push yourself too much. Cho Sung Woo had a very competitive spirit. It wasn't just him. In fact, it was natural for the players who ranked at the top of the world to have very competitive spirits. Therefore, Cho Sung Woo's temperament wasn't unique. Of course, the reason that Cho Sung Woo had been able to survive for so long and even managed to become a key player in the Messiah Guild was because he was not foolish enough to lose his reason because of his competitive spirit. Therefore, he was only looking for an opportunity inwardly. If Isaac Ivanov doesn't turn out to be as amazing as they say, it wouldn't be too bad to compete a bit. 
an opportunity to measure his skills with Isaac Ivanov. There were many ways to do this. He could hunt more monsters than Isaac Ivanov, or monsters stronger than what Isaac Ivanov hunted. There was no need for the players to actually fight each other. However, these inner thoughts didn't last for very long. The first floor. On this stage where they had to hunt 100 000 guardians, Isaac Ivanov showcased a very ridiculous performance. The thoughts that he had been thinking never came out, but that didn't mean that they had disappeared either, Cho Sun Wu went up to the second floor with an even stronger fighting spirit burning lightly within him. Survive for ten days to proceed to the next floor. Then the attack on the second floor began. No matter how one looked at it, this was a stage where one had to minimize the number of battles they had and save their power. Yet, it was on this stage that Isaac Ivanov said. Now I can hunt monsters as much as I want that he was going to continuously slaughter for the ten days. Then Isaac Ivanov immediately made his words a reality. Rattle. The skeleton soldiers, which had already stacked the effect of ruler of the battlefield on the first floor and were equipped with weapons made from the bones of corpses that were covered in blood poison, continued their relentless slaughter under the command of the lich. It wasn't just the skeleton soldiers either. The momentum of the Savior Guild's members was also different from the others. The warm-up on the first floor is over, it's time to pick up the pace from the second floor. Follow Isaac Ivanov. This is a great opportunity to level up. That was because the attack on the first floor, which had taken just three days, had really fired them up. When faced with such a scene, the other five guilds in the dungeon were completely dumbfounded. Then they all collectively released a sigh of relief at the fact that they didn't have to fight against the Savior Guild. Oh my god. On the other hand, Cho Sung Woo from the Messiah Guild, which was the Savior Guild's competitor, could not accept what he was seeing. This is far beyond what we imagined. It was at that moment that the fighting spirit that burned inside was thoroughly trampled upon and shattered. And this was exactly what Kim Woo Jin had been aiming for. Their gazes are more comfortable now. The reason Kim Woo Jin had invited others to attack the dungeon with them wasn't just because he wanted the participation fees. The real goal was to showcase the Savior Guild's power to the other top-class guilds in the world. This was a natural move. No matter how much of an opponent the Savior Guild was for the Messiah Guild, the world would always consider the Messiah Guild to be far superior. First of all, their scales were different. Compared to the number of players who were gathered under the banner of the Messiah Guild, as well as the number of sponsoring companies and the size of their sponsorships, the Savior Guild was only a mid-sized company at best. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin intended to win the game not by the scale, but by the sharpness of their blade's edge. He would show that they had many more blades than the Messiah Guild. And that the sharpness of any one blade would be equal to the best blades in the Messiah Guild. So he'd set this stage in order to show those who held the most power in the current era. I need to drive it in a little more. Because that was his goal, he needed something more concrete. To place my name beside Lee Sejun's. So that the name Isaac Ivanov would then be compared to the name that no one dared to be compared to before. I'll reveal that power here. And soon, that time came. Your level has increased. You have reached level 200. On the fifth day after entering the second floor of the dungeon, a second floor that was absolutely littered by guardian corpses, Kim Woojin finally leveled up for the 199th time. Death Knight. And he gained the qualifications to finally summon the Death Knight. Kim Woojin immediately opened his inventory, and his eyes immediately fell upon a golden skill page that stood out from everything else. Then he received a notification from his halo. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your amazing growth. The Emissary of the Underworld has sent you an amazing gift. A new item has been added to your inventory. Then Kim Woo Jin's eyes were drawn to the new item that appeared in his inventory. Anubis Descent. It was a skill page that shined with an obsidian light. Ha! Huh. They were currently engaged in a fierce battle with the Guardians. It was Li Jina who first noticed the change in Kim Woo Jin, who was currently wearing the Isaac Ivanov mask. He. Kim Woo Jin was the type of person who would not arbitrarily pay attention to other things in the midst of battle. 
But now it was this same Kim Woo Jin who was currently looking at something else. This meant that it was something out of the ordinary. It wasn't hard to guess what it could be. He leveled up. A level up. Naturally, he wasn't so excited for a simple level up. Can he use the Death Knight now? The Death Knight. Kim Woo Jin's level up meant that he would be able to bring that terrifyingly ridiculous monster into the world. Gulp. Lee Jin Ah couldn't help but gulp upon realizing this fact. This monster will get another monster. Kim Woo Jin's skeleton army had already reached a point where it completely defied common sense. But now he was going to add an even more terrifying monster to that group. It was like adding more to something that already went beyond one's imagination. Lee Jin Ah couldn't even guess what the outcome of such a thing would be. He moved. And in this situation, Kim Woo Jin finally made a move. As he beckoned, the shadows around him began to climb up his body before taking shape around Kim Woo Jin. Dog? The shadows on Kim Woo Jin's head eventually formed into a dog shaped mask. Lee Jin Ah tilted his head when he saw this. This is different to the Death Knight that I imagined. It was then. While Li Jina was shaking his head because he'd pictured the Death Knight to be a giant majestic skeleton riding a horse. The others on the battlefield took notice of the changes that had occurred to Kim Wu Jin. Anubis has descended. Then they received a never before seen notification. Anubis? As in the Egyptian god Anubis? This notification caused a stir and naturally, the eyes of all the players settled onto Kim Wu Jin's figure. Under that attention, Kim Woo Jin turned to look at an ogre guardian. It was a creature that was already covered in numerous wounds from the battle. It wasn't just wounded either in fact, it was already fatally wounded its injuries were so severe that even the ogre's resilience could do nothing to prevent its death. Furthermore, to have such injuries on Kim Woo Jin's blood poison filled stage was no better than having a pre-signed death warrant. Roar! Nevertheless, the ogre still continued to squeeze out all of its power to continue fighting. It burned its will to fight until it died. Anubis weighs the ogre guardian's death. Then a silver scale appeared above the ogre guardian's head. The ogre guardian has less than 10% of its health remaining. Thud. Soon afterwards, as soon as the scale became balanced in the middle, the ogre guardian collapsed like a puppet that got its strings cut. This monster that was fighting fiercely just a moment ago had died without a sound. What just happened? While everyone was being shocked by this fact, Kim Woo Jin received another notification. Anubis guided the ogre guardian to death. It was the moment when the god of death, Anubis, had descended. Anubis. The god from Egyptian mythology who weighed the souls of the dead and judged their sins. The Anubis descent skill that Kim Woo Jin gained was a skill that allowed him to welcome this god into his body. Your magic power is being consumed quickly. You have 30% of your magic power left. The requirements for the summoning was a ridiculous amount of magic power. The power that the user gained in return for their magic power was simple. It was the ability to kill any being that had less than 10% of their health remaining instantly. What a terrifying ability. It was truly a tremendous ability. This was different from simply removing 10% of someone's health. This power is more terrifying than I expected. By nature, the most dangerous moment was that moment just before a living creature was about to die. Most creatures would do anything they could to survive, or at least to not die alone. Kim Woo Jin knew this fact better than anyone. That was why the skeletons who took after him never forgot to ensure all of their enemies were dead after every battle. Beings who were on the verge of death were usually the most dangerous. But with the power of Anubis, he would be able to prevent that final attack. I really gained an amazing power. That was why Kim Woo Jin was so filled with admiration and surprise. It wasn't just that. As soon as Anubis descended, a notification was sent to all of the players around him and they soon saw Kim Woo Jin know they saw Isaac Ivanov use Anubis power. Is that really an instant death skill? And they quickly realized how ridiculous and terrifying an ability it was. The condition it seems to only work on monsters that are in a near-death state. It shouldn't be an unconditional instantaneous death when he used his skill on the ogre, it was already almost dead. 
They also knew that there would be necessary conditions in order to use such a power, but this didn't comfort anyway. In other words, it meant that anything that was in a near-death state would soon die in front of Isaac Ivanov. This means that we can't allow ourselves to get severely injured in front of Isaac Ivanov. We can't fight to the limit against Isaac Ivanov. There was nothing more terrifying for the players who would often push themselves to the limit in fights since they knew that they could be saved as long as they didn't directly die. In other words, the lethality of Isaac Ivanov's new skill was something that only the top players could truly feel. And the fear that this fact created caused the atmosphere in the group to become exceedingly cold. They once again looked at Isaac Ivanov, who brought fear that went beyond common sense. Anubis is leaving you. You have 1,440 minutes before you can use the skill again, TL, 24 hours. Then Kim Woo Jin released the Anubis descent in front of them. He took off the black dog mask which then returned to the shadows. Only then did the atmosphere in the surroundings lighten up a little. Summon the Book of the Dead. It was in this lighter atmosphere that Kim Woo Jin then summoned the Book of the Dead. The page that he took out was the only one that remained in the book. Summoned a skeleton knight. A skeleton knight appeared. A skeleton covered in the Nenian lion skin, with the Aegis shield in its left hand, and Mjolnir in its right. It's time to make the death knight. It was the moment when the real ace that Kim Woo Jin had prepared, the death knight, was about to make its appearance. Chapter, 256. It was December 1, 2024. The atmosphere of the world, which was slowly reaching the end of 2024 was not good. Winter begins and monster alerts are issued. In the winter, the monsters in the wild who were experiencing winter for the first time started appearing one after another, consuming the world. This happened every year. A hellhound has appeared in Mongolia. A monster wave starts in Russia. China declares a state of emergency in the Sichuan area. But 2024 was much more serious than the world expected. In a way, this was natural. Since more dungeons with higher floors had appeared when compared to the year before, the quality and quantity of the monsters had risen proportionately. In order to hunt these monsters, fighter jets were launched, and warships on the coastline fired their rockets, fighting as if they were at war. The entire world was covered in screams and fear. The situation next year will be even more severe. A large number of seven and eight floor dungeons are expected to appear in 2025. Will the first nine floor dungeon appear in 2025? However, the thing that terrified the world the most was the fact that the situation was bound to get worse, rather than better. The only way to save the world is to end the game. Their only hope was to end the game. Therefore, many people in the world were looking forward to the game ending as soon as possible and being saved. Of course, not everyone was like that. It wouldn't end just because the game ended. Oh Sei-chan was one of those who wasn't. What do you mean by that? Let's say the game ended right this second what do you think would happen next? The dungeons and monsters would disappear and the players' abilities would also disappear. Right, with terrorists overflowing, constant protests, and the social infrastructure almost completely destroyed. After saying that, Oh Sei-chan smiled bitterly. That wouldn't be a great world to live in, would it? When he said those words, his subordinate could only look at him with a stiff expression. Instead of waiting for an answer, Oh Sei-chan spoke again. Well, it's not too late to think about this stuff after Kim Woo-jin clears the dungeon. This was the truth. In the end, all of these discussions could only be based on Kim Woo-jin's success. If there were any problems and the attack failed, then all of these worries were meaningless. So pray for Kim Woo Jin to return safely oh, Lee Jina too. After saying this, Oh Sei Chan smiled again. It won't be easy, but. It's not as easy as I expected. It had been one month since they'd entered the dungeon. They were currently on the fifth floor, and Kim Woo Jin and the other players were currently struggling against the guardians. This wasn't particularly strange. However, it was also strange to say that when they had only taken a month to reach the fifth floor of the dungeon. Naturally, this meant that Kim Woo Jin was talking about something else. The current number of monsters that the Skeleton Knight has killed is 44,319. 
it's harder to make a death knight than I expected. Kim Wu Jin was actually talking about none other than the basic condition to create the death knight, which was to make a skeleton knight kill 44, 44 monsters. I didn't think it'd take this long. In truth, Kim Wu Jin thought that he'd be able to summon the death knight by the time they cleared the fourth floor. However, Kim Wu Jin's expectations had deviated far more than he expected. The reason for this was simple. Well, the skeleton knight doesn't have the chance to put on a one-man show. As Li Jinat said, the other skeleton soldiers and knights were not giving the skeleton knight the chance to fight on its own. A simple analogy for this would be, the supporting roles are shining so brightly that the main character can't perform well. The reason why this wasn't amusing was also simple. A skeleton knight wielding Mjolnir. Isaac Ivanov is strong enough to clear this seven-floor dungeon on his own. This was because it was unbelievable no matter which perspective you looked at it from. In any case, it wasn't good news for Kim Woo Jin. I have to get a death knight before going to the sixth floor. According to his plan, he should be able to summon the death knight before they entered the sixth floor of the dungeon. In other words, this meant that there was something special on the sixth floor. It was then. All the monsters have been slain. Advance to the next floor. Everyone received a notification signaling the completion of the fifth floor. Huh. Why? The timing is a bit wrong. Usually, if the number of monsters fell below 1-0-0 it was normal to slow down or even stop hunting directly in order to take a rest before entering the next floor. But everything didn't go according to plan. Furthermore, the players in the dungeons had completely different hunting speeds. The players from the other guilds were unable to keep up with the pace displayed by the Isaac Ivanov-led Savior Guild. Of course, this wasn't a fatal problem or anything like that. It wasn't often, but it was possible to adjust the speed to some extent when there were about 10, 0, 0 or so monsters remaining. No one sprinted to the point that they couldn't catch their breaths. We couldn't get the timing right because of the poison someone sprayed everywhere. So Li Jina didn't think too much of it either. Well, we don't usually rest anyway it doesn't matter whether we take a break here or not, does it? Furthermore, it was no exaggeration to say that the ones who were clearing the dungeon were really the Savior Guild and Isaac Ivanov. But Kim Woo Jin was different this time. Don't let your guard down. He warned Li Jina. No one can tell what strange things might happen in a dungeon. What? Li Jina tilted his head slightly at the warning. In the meantime, the players who were on the fifth floor were forced to enter the sixth floor of the dungeon. Enter the sixth floor. With the seventh floor just a step away, they received the notification on the sixth floor telling them the conditions to reach the very top of the dungeon. Defeat the red dragon to clear the sixth floor of the dungeon. There was a dragon on the sixth floor. Red dragon? Isn't this the sixth floor? Why did a dragon appear on the sixth floor? Everyone was extremely surprised by this fact and couldn't help but shout out in shock. It was certainly shocking. Wasn't it natural to panic when a dragon, which they expected to encounter on the seventh floor suddenly appeared on the sixth? Unfortunately, the sixth floor didn't give the players the chance to gather their bearings. Roar! Dragon's fear approaches. The red dragon had moved to hunt the intruders that came to its territory. Before entering the dungeon, everyone was briefed on what type of dungeon they were going to attack. And the title for this dungeon. There was no one present who didn't know it. Land of Dragons. Floors, 7. Difficulty, a rank. Maximum number of entries, 500. Requirement, level 240 and below. Challenge conditions, defeat the ruler of the land. Reward, skill stones. It had been reviewed countless times, and numerous scenarios were created based on the name of the dungeon. Therefore, it could be said that the players were prepared enough so as to not be shocked no matter what situation they faced. Why is a dragon here? Isn't this the sixth floor? However, there was no one who could have guessed that there would be a dragon on the sixth floor of the dungeon. Wasn't this natural? The appearance of a dragon on the sixth floor of a dungeon when it was guaranteed to be the boss of the dungeon was no different from having the owner of a house greet you at the front door. Naturally, this wasn't something the players would have ever expected to encounter. 
Damn it, what the hell is this nonsense? Why is a dragon appearing here? It's not ridiculous. Dragons can turn any monster into their guardians, there's no reason why they couldn't transform another dragon. It was just as Kim Woojin said to a surprised Li Jino. Anything could happen in a dungeon. Furthermore, there had never been a rule in the world that stated that dragons, who could transform other monsters into their guardians, couldn't do the same to another dragon. Even if there was no way to know for certain if it was or wasn't, that wasn't important. So it's a guardian? Even if we're not sure, we still have to keep it in mind after all, all the monsters that we've encountered in this dungeon so far were guardians. Oh my god. If the red dragon that had just appeared was actually a guardian, then it would be the worst weapon to face. Only. A weapon that would willingly sacrifice itself to complete the orders it had been given. Roar. And that weapon was now beginning to cast a shadow over the players' heads with its enormous wings. All the players shouted out at the sight. It's using dragon breath. Retreat. On the sixth floor of the dungeon, the escape had begun. Chapter, 257. There were two main scenarios that were possible when facing a dragon. Was the dragon standing on the ground? Or was it flying in the sky? In the event of the former, the choices to be made became quite complicated. On the other hand, the choices for the latter were extremely simple. Spread out and tactically retreat, then regather at a designated location. How is the damage to the Frontier Guild? Six dead so far. The Kunlun Guild lost ten people. No one from the Great One Guild died, but there are seven with serious injuries. Led by their representatives such as Cho Sungwoo, Trinity, and Park Yongwan, the players from the various guilds were able to gather in one place thanks to their knowledge of what to do when handling a flying dragon. Of course, there was nothing strange about this. So we lost about 20 people. Thankfully there was less damage than expected. That's because everyone was trained on what to do after encountering a dragon before entering the dungeon. After all, it was natural for everyone to study and practice how to deal with a dragon in preparation to enter a dungeon where the probability of the final boss being a dragon was 100%. Then all that's left is to hunt the red dragon. The method is simple. That's why they didn't need to spend a long time discussing how to deal with the red dragon. Their strategy had already been prepared. We'll split the group into the wing cutting team and the attack team. The first rule when hunting dragons was to cut off their wings and take away their ability to fly. We have two options. In addition, the decision this time was rather simple. Isaac Ivanov cuts the wings and we fight the dragon, or vice versa. Considering the current number of players, their performance, and their combat ability, they had no choice but to divide the group into two, with Isaac Ivanov on one side and everyone else on the other. Moreover, there was no need for them to debate this any further, because the five previous floors had already made this division concrete. Therefore, all they had to do next was decide which group would take on which task. In fact, even that didn't require much discussion. The Great One Guild will defer to Isaac Ivanov's opinion. The Frontier Guild will do the same. Same for the Kunlun Guild. Isaac Ivanov was the only person qualified to lead this group that was filled with the top players from different guilds. At those words, Park Yongwan turned his head to look at Cho Sungwoo. What about the Messiah Guild? Are you willing to comply with your rivals, the Savior Guild's, orders? As he said this, Park Yongwan looked at Cho Sungwoo without hiding the ridicule in his eyes. Park Yongwan, who had experienced all kinds of humiliation in front of the high-nosed Messiah Guild, intended to repay some of that humiliation by using the current situation. But Cho Sungwoo did not reveal even a hint of anger at his actions. The ridiculous things he'd seen so far had all extinguished the fighting spirit within him without leaving even a single spark. We'll follow unconditionally. Therefore, Cho Sungwoo nodded without hesitation. Park Yongwan also nodded. Now then, Isaac Ivanov will. Suddenly. The energy of death sweeps over, TL, oh my new notification. The hairs of all the living beings in the area rose and their entire bodies felt like they were beginning to freeze. Surprised, everyone quickly shot to their feet, paying close attention to their surroundings. Rohar. 
Then, a loud dragon cry from the distance shook their eardrums. Naturally, this caused them to turn and look in the direction the cry came from then they saw it. Oh my god! A dragon falling to the ground with one of its wings cut off. Sherba! And on top of it, a player shouting thanks. The power and effectiveness of a dragon's breath attack depended on their type. The red dragon's breath was accompanied by a horrifying flame. Although it didn't reach the level of hellfire, a red dragon's fire breath was powerful enough to melt steel, and it was not easily extinguished. Fwoosh! So when the forest was constantly raked by the red dragon's fire breath, it seemed to cry out pitifully. Li Jina. Kim Wu Jin, who had escaped together with Li Jina, took something from his inventory before throwing it at him. Here's a gift. A gift? Hearing the word gift, Li Jina quickly looked down to see what Kim Wu Jin had thrown at him. No, it should be said that it was something he didn't dare to waste time before doing. Gungnir. The item that Kim Wu Jin had thrown to him turned out to be Gungnir, the legendary spear that Li Jina had tried to steal before being caught by Kim Wu Jin. Ha! Huh. What is this? But there was also something that Li Jina had never seen before bundled together with it. Thread? It was a thread that was wrapped around the spear's shaft. Its black arachne thread it is very durable, has excellent magic resistance, and moderate viscosity. This thread actually turned out to be black arachne thread. When he heard the description of the thread that Kim Wu Jin so kindly added, Li Jina simply stood there with a blank look on his face as though he couldn't understand a word that was said. Then, a few seconds later, his expression became distorted. You don't mean. He seemed to realize just why Kim Wu Jin had given him Gungnir. In fact, it wasn't something that was hard to guess. You want me to throw Gungnir, hold the thread, hit the dragon and then climb onto its body? Now. If it was Gungnir, which could never miss, it was not a difficult task to hit the flying dragon. And if the thread was tied onto Gungnir, then it was possible to get onto the dragon's body. Of course, that didn't mean that doing the last part was as easy as it sounded. Who do you think I am, Bruce Willis? Do you think this is die hard? TL, I found this too funny. The speed of a dragon, which was already flying in the air, was by no means slow, and its flight path was not simple. It seemed like an impossible task to follow after such a thing while holding on to nothing but a thread. Let alone the fact that Li Jina's task was to use the thread to get to the dragon's body before cutting off its wing. He couldn't even complain because of how speechless he was. Kim Wu Jin patted Li Jina on the shoulder while saying, You are the only person here that I can trust to do this task this is something that no one but you can do. When he heard the words only person I can trust, Li Jin Ahs expression changed. In all honesty, hearing such a statement made him quite happy. This was because he was being recognized and asked for help by the strongest person he'd ever met. Fine, since you're practically kneeling down to beg me, he'll help you out. Therefore, Li Jina agreed with a face filled with determination. Kim Wu Jin then spoke with a similar expression. Think of it as a rehearsal and focus. Right, a rehearsal wa dash, wait what? By the time Li Jina realized what those words meant, Kim Wu Jin had already turned around and was moving away. Seeing this, Li Jina could only speak out in an aggrieved tone. Sheba. With that frustration building inside of him, Li Jina hefted Gungnir. And an hour later, the dragon began to fall. There was only one thing to do when a dragon started falling from the sky run away without hesitation. In fact, there were no rules or manuals created for this scenario. Even if there wasn't a manual, would you simply stand and watch as a gigantic body fell to the ground at an incredible speed if you had common sense? Retreat. Get away. Luckily, none of the players on the sixth floor of the dungeon lacked common sense. Head to the east. Move west. Everyone predicted where the dragon would fall and began to move to the safest locations accordingly. Prepare to battle the guardians. Don't just run away recklessly. Move in groups. At the same time, they maintained their vigilance on their surroundings so that they were ready to fight at any time not forgetting that there was still a large number of guardians who aimed to remove the intruders. But not everyone did that. 
there were still some who moved to the place that the dragon was predicted to fall, rather than away. What are the skeletons doing? Isn't that a skeleton knight? They were none other than Isaac Ivanov's skeleton army. The skeletons headed towards the dragon's crash site and cleared away all the monsters in the area. They were cleaning up as though they were preparing for a big battle. Some people were curious, but few thought too deeply about what was happening. Wake up. We only have this one life. Focus on your own survival. Above all, the current situation was so urgent that they couldn't afford to think about what others were doing. It's almost down. Get ready. It wasn't long before the thing everyone was focused on finally happened. The dragon's giant body collided with the ground. Boom! And the ground shook. The aftermath of the collision shook the entire floor of the dungeon. That was no joke. It was like a natural disaster. The aftermath was completely unexpected. But what was truly surprising was the condition of the red dragon, which was still lively even after experiencing such a heavy impact. Despite the explosion which shattered everything in its surroundings, the red dragon didn't seem to receive any injuries at all. Kara. Instead, it let out a growl filled with rage. No, it would have been better if it became filled with rage and went wild. If that was the case, they would have been able to make it vent its anger until it became exhausted, making the battle much easier. Unfortunately, as a guardian, the red dragon continued to carry out the orders it had been given to it even at that moment. It took the necessary actions in order to get rid of the intruders. KRR, KRR. So after calming itself, it began to use its sense to search for the enemies. In the next instant, the enemy was locked onto by the dragon's powerful senses. KRR. And that enemy was currently approaching the red dragon, instead of moving away. The red dragon was happy to see this. Then the enemy appeared. Nay. The first thing to make its presence known was a giant skeleton horse. This horse was as large as three or four elephants combined, looking nothing like a horse at all. Who, who? And on top of this horse, was a skeleton knight dressed in black armor and a rugged, blood-colored cloak whose size was proportional to his mount. Death Knight. It was the moment when the Knight of Death, who ignored death and led everything to death at the same time, had appeared. And this death knight then lifted a large hammer in its hand to point at the red dragon. Chink. Immediately afterwards, chains of darkness shot up from the ground and began to bind the red dragon. This was a sign. The death knight traps its prey. The death knight puts the curse of death on its prey. A sign that the death knight would lead the red dragon to death. Kara. And at that sign, the red dragon began to twist and turn as though it would not accept it. It tried to crush the chains that were wrapped tightly around its body. However, the red dragon didn't manage to destroy the chains, instead, the black chains began to squeeze it tighter. At the same time, the skeleton horse let out a sharp cry as it narrowed the distance to the red dragon in an instant, and the death knight, who sat on its back, hit the body of the dragon with the hammer. Following a loud clap of thunder, the red dragon's body shook violently as it was pushed backwards. But the sound didn't last long. The skeleton horse started to climb the red dragon's body immediately afterwards. There was no concept of gravity or the laws of physics in the skeleton horse's movements. And there was no mercy, indecision or hesitation in the attacks of the death knight as it controlled the horse's movements. Rohar this caused the red dragon to roar in anger as it moved to stop the death knight from moving all over its body. However, it was still being restricted by the chain. Of course, the chain itself didn't completely interfere with the red dragon's movements. It just restricted it a bit. However, that was enough. The cooking has started. The death knight could now begin cooking its meal. Then a notification was heard. Mjolnir is filled with the power of thunder. The power of the God of Thunder has been released. Kim Woo Jin no longer had any doubts after seeing the notification. So all that's left now is the Dragon Knight on the seventh floor. The sixth floor of the dungeon was practically over. Chapter, 258 The dragons that appeared in dungeons were largely divided into three classes. 
the lowest ranked were the hatchlings. The hatchlings, who could be called babies, were basically weak in all areas. They didn't have the chance to create many guardians, and the guardians they did create were usually not that strong. More importantly, neither their bodies nor their dragon breaths were particularly strong either. Of course, it was still strong enough to instantly kill many players who encountered it. Once they got out of the hatchling stage, they could then be called dragons, and when that happened, their strength moved to a completely different level. The dragon slayer had used one expression to describe it. Hunting a dragon is like hitting a rock with an egg it's not impossible but if you just do it without knowing how, you'll never succeed. Hitting a rock with an egg. So you need to find a way freeze the egg to make it harder, or aim precisely for the rock's weak point the best thing to do is to replace your egg with a piece of metal an even better method would be to prepare a missile a player like me is that missile. It was not impossible as long as you had a method, but if there was no method, then the results could only be disastrous. Above dragons were none other than the dragon lords. Of course, the existence of the dragon lords was only speculation at this point. Nevertheless, dragons were such terrifying monsters. Even if their wings were torn off and they crashed to the ground, it wouldn't be strange for them to kill all the players attacking them instantly. Rohar. But now, this state that this monster was in could only be described as miserable. First of all, the condition of its wonderful red hide which had a similar color to rich red wine was terrible. It was crushed and bursting in many places, as if it was pork that had been struck by a hammer. The dents and craters on its body was enough to make any person watching this, hang their mouth open in disbelief. Roar. Due to this, the dragon's roars, which could inflict dragon fear upon any creature who heard it, sounded more pitiful than domineering. But no one around it cared about its cries despite the fact that not many people had ever seen a red dragon in such a disastrous state. The reason was simple. Boom. Everyone's attention was attracted to the Death Knight, who constantly let out the cries of thunder as continued to brutally attack the miserable red dragon. Oh my god. Is this a Death Knight? All the players who were watching the Death Knight's performance couldn't help but feel a chill. The prowess that the Death Knight displayed was even horrifying for these highly experienced veteran players who were used to having fierce, desperate battles on a daily basis. Furthermore, the Death Knight didn't stop there. Nay. Even though the Red Dragon's condition was so bad that even ordinary players would consider it excessive, the skeleton horse did not stop letting out its cries as it ran all over its body. And the Death Knight continued to pound the Red Dragon with the God of Thunder's hammer, Mjolnir, in its hand. It was like a machine. A machine created with the sole purpose of killing the living. Gulp. And faced with such a scene, the living beings couldn't help but swallow their saliva. Suddenly. The Death Knight has disappeared. Just as the Death Knight was about to do the last bit of damage to end the Red Dragon's life, it was covered in a cloud of darkness before disappearing. At the same time, Kim Woo Jin received a notification that a new item had been added to his inventory. You have acquired the Death Knight's bones. The Death Knight's bones. It was the item that would allow him to summon the Death Knight at any time. Naturally, he wouldn't have to pay any price for the summon. This was another reason why the Death Knight was so fearsome. It meant that once it was created, the summoner would be able to unleash this ridiculous horror whenever they wanted to. Why? It suddenly disappeared. But the players who were watching couldn't help but wonder why the Death Knight had suddenly disappeared. Kara. And they were nervous about the fact that the Red Dragon was still alive. Should we finish it off? A dragon is a dragon we can't rush in. Even if it was in a near-death state, a dragon was still a dragon. It was not strange that the players who valued their lives were hesitant to approach this monster that could erase them in an instant. Of course, there were still some players who moved despite this fact. They were those who were already prepared for a situation where someone had to take the risk. So they moved to play their part. It was at that moment. Tap, tap. Kim Woo Jin began to walk towards the Red Dragon. Isaac. Isaac Ivanov. Everyone's tension had been at its peak and their attention was locked onto the Red Dragon, so when Kim Woo Jin appeared in front of it, their eyes naturally turned to him. Under this attention, 
Kim Woo Jin looked at the red dragon for a moment before turning his back to it. This monster that defied common sense, this monster the players had steadied their determination to approach despite the fact that they might lose their lives, had become a simple background. It was an unbelievable sight. Wearing Isaac Ivanov's mask, Kim Woo Jin addressed the players. You can take a break now to prepare for our entry into the seventh floor. Prepare for the next floor. In other words, they no longer needed to hunt on the sixth floor. Only then did they remember. Ah. That. The silver scale that Isaac Ivanov had displayed before. Only then could the players understand why Isaac Ivanov dared to say those words in front of a red dragon that was still breathing. How terrifying. And the moment they understood, a cold shiver went down their spines. How many players in the world could make such a mess out of a dragon? The Dragon Slayer. They could bet that after clearing this dungeon, the Dragon Slayer would not dare to use such a nickname in front of Isaac Ivanov. This meant that there was only one. Lee Sejun. The savior of the Messiah Guild and the one who always conquered what no one could before. The one who others didn't dare to compare themselves to. Lee Sejun wouldn't be able to do this on his own. No matter how amazing Lee Sejun is, if he were to hunt a dragon by himself he would be able to kill it, but he wouldn't be able to put it in such a state. But they all knew that it wouldn't be easy for Lee Sejun to mistreat a dragon in such a way on his own. He might be stronger than Lee Sejun. If you look at the individual players not the guilds, Isaac Ivanov might be better than Lee Sejun. This meant that Isaac Ivanov's power was at least on the same level as Lee Sejun's. When their thoughts reached that point, the players didn't dare to think any further. It wasn't something that they could easily conclude with just their imaginations. As Isaac Ivanov said, we will rest and prepare for the seventh floor. Everyone get some rest and prepare for the seventh floor. Therefore, in order to stop thinking about it, the group leaders began to give their players orders. The last attack is coming up soon. Everyone, maintain your focus. Furthermore, they had to remain focused on the task they were about to face. And that was the right answer. There was only one floor left. It was a floor where they would have to face more hardships than any they'd encountered so far. Most of the players there had never even been on the seventh floor before. Everyone took the chance to rest properly. While looking at them, Kim Woo Jin also prepared for the seventh floor of the dungeon. If their luck isn't bad, only half of them will die. A few hours later. Anubis is descending. A notification to indicate the end of the attack on the sixth floor was heard. How did players feel when they climbed to a floor they had never reached before? Most would say that there were two answers to that question. Either they would be terrified when stepping onto the new floor, or they would be excited that they would be able to go back into the real world after overcoming this new challenge. But if you were to ask that question to the top players, the answer you'd receive would be different. To be honest, it's best to just feel calm because useless feelings would just get in the way. It was best to not feel any emotion at all. Defeat the ruler of the land of dragons. So that was the emotional state of the 461 players entering the seventh floor of the dungeon, most of which for the first time. Just do it like we normally do. They weren't excited or afraid, instead maintaining a calm, numb expression. I just have to perform the role given to me like I usually do. The time they were given before entering the seventh floor made this mental preparation possible. This was exactly the reason why Kim Woo Jin had willingly given them a break. The black dragon's poison spread. It was also the reason why they weren't too shocked and they received a notification that wasn't too good immediately after entering the floor. We also kept the possibility of encountering a black dragon in mind. This is still within the range of our estimations. Black dragon. Even though the poison left by this powerful and incredibly venomous creature began to gnaw at their health, the players quickly took action to fight against it. Change the setting. Most of the players began to change to their item settings that were prepared for black dragons. They increased their poison resistances, and each began to use various skills to combat the poison. Of course, there were also players who didn't need it. The power of Apophis protects you from the black dragon's poison. Your blood poison grows a bit stronger. 
Kim Woo-jin even took it a step further as the poison in their surroundings made his poison stronger. Knowing this fact, Li Jina laughed inwardly. We're definitely gonna win this time too. The black dragon was definitely a scary monster. In particular, its most powerful ability, poison breath, completely defied common sense. A black dragon's poison breath was comparable to a biological or chemical weapon. A weapon that one couldn't escape from just by running away. However, it was not a problem for Kim Woo Jin, who wasn't affected by poison at all. Furthermore, this also applied to the skeleton army that Kim Woo Jin was most proud of. And now, they even had the Death Knight, which was known for its ridiculous combat capabilities to add to his power. I just need to cut off its wings. So as long as Li Jina was able to bring the Black Dragon down, the battle would practically be over. It was natural for him to make an expression of easy victory, because of this. In fact, it wasn't just Li Jina most of the players there also had the same thought. The Black Dragon is harder to hunt than the Red Dragon, but it shouldn't be too much of a difference for Isaac Ivanov. Thinking about Isaac Ivanov, everyone thought the same thing. It wouldn't be easy, but there wasn't any reason why they wouldn't be able to hunt it. So if they could survive until Isaac Ivanov killed the Black Dragon, they would be able to leave the dungeon. Ha! Huh. However, a question mark appeared in Li Jina's mind when he turned to look at Kim Woo Jin. This was because he could see how serious Kim Woo Jin's eyes were. Of course, Kim Woo Jin was always serious. He was the type of player who would always give his best performance without relaxing. What is it? However, Kim Woo Jin was also never a wasteful player. He wasn't a player who would pull out his sword to hunt a cow. Nevertheless, this Kim Woo Jin was showing a sharper focus than ever before. Then something happened which immediately erased the complacency that had built up after hunting the red dragon so easily. It was none other than the fact that Kim Woo Jin had taken an item from his inventory. Aegis Shield. He took a shield and not a weapon. This caused Li Jina to be filled with an unknown sense of crisis as he was filled with countless doubts and suspicions. It's a guardian. From the fog of poison released by the black dragon, a guardian appeared to deal with the intruders. After confirming this, several players moved before receiving any specific orders. Isaac will handle the main task, so we'll take care of the rest. They moved with the desire to clean up the surroundings for Isaac Ivanov, who was going to hunt the black dragon some of them didn't just move, but also acted. Several hunters pulled their bowstrings back and aimed at the guardian. Then they noticed something strange. Why is there just one of them? The fact that only one guardian had appeared before them. The scariest thing about the guardians was the fact that they were perfectly controlled to carry out one task, regardless of their race. In other words, a lone guardian would never be able to showcase the truly terrifying ability of the guardians, and as a result they never moved around on their own. Furthermore, guardians weren't known to cause damage to their surroundings just by moving like this guardian, which had appeared, did. Is it an orc? The exact identity of the guardian was unknown as it was wearing heavy armor, but its size seemed to be similar to that of an orc. It was strange in many ways, and the players couldn't help but wonder. Of course, that didn't mean they wouldn't still release their arrows without hesitation. Twang. One player released his bowstring, sending an arrow towards the lone enemy. The arrow flew quickly before hitting the armor of the guardian. Ting. Then it bounced off a shield that appeared around the guardian. It has a defensive barrier. This action helped them confirm that the guardian who'd appeared had a special ability. The player who released the arrow received a notification. Excalibur's wielder has confirmed your hostility. Excalibur's wielder has started a fight with you. All stats reduced by 25%. What? The player who received these notifications then shouted in surprise. I dash, it has Excalibur. At the same time, the guardian, who had been about 300 meters away from the player who shot the arrow, closed the distance between them in an instant. It happened in a flash. As if it had teleported, the guardian appeared before the player and immediately swung the sword in its hand. It was Isaac Ivanov who came to the rescue of the player who couldn't escape or defend himself. Clang. There was a loud clash as the sword struck the Aegis shield which had appeared in front of the player. 
Then Isaac Ivanov shouted. Kill the dragon. TL, in English. It was the moment when two simultaneous battles began. Chapter, 259. One of the basic techniques when hunting dragons was to divide your forces in two. One unit would fight the dragon, while the other would fight the dragon's guardians. The best players were usually part of the dragon slaying team. This was a fact that had never been questioned before. It was the same this time as well. In Kim Woo Jin's memory, those who had attacked the A rank 7 floor dungeon had the same thought. When they encountered the black dragon on the 7th floor, they identified the situation, split their group into two units, and the main force moved to hunt the dragon. Their movements were fast and smooth since they had already encountered the red dragon on the 6th floor. That was why they didn't panic. Dragon Knight is stronger than the dragon. No one expected that the guardian they had to deal with was a dragon knight, a monster that was even stronger than a dragon. It's a vicious combination. As Kim Woo Jin said, it was a vicious setting that would trick even the most experienced dragon hunters. And the thing that made this setting possible was none other than Excalibur, which the dragon knight was wielding. No one could imagine a monster wielding Excalibur. Excalibur's abilities were simple. It recognizes those who attacked its wielder as challengers, then it gave those who were perceived as challengers the curse of the challenger. And when their fight began, the wielder of the sword would be given the blessing of the winner. The curse of the challenger decreased the target stats by 25% while the blessing of the winner increased the target stats by 20%. It was truly the sword of the king which would make the person who wielded it in battle inevitably win their fights. To give it to the dragon knight. Furthermore, it was being wielded by none other than a dragon knight. Dragon knights were different from guardians. If the guardians were simply puppets that the dragon simply controlled, then dragon knights were the children of the dragons who were even given part of their dragon hearts. They were monsters whose physical ability, physical resistance, and magical resistance could be considered to be on the same level as dragons. Such an opponent was impossible for any player who had not at least reached level 200. That was why it was terrible. There were players here with levels as high as 230, but what if they were given the curse of the challenger while facing a dragon knight with the blessing of the winner? Then it no longer became a problem of being able to deal with the opponent. If Excalibur's effect was activated, it was impossible for even the strongest players in the dungeon to even stall against the dragon knight. In all honesty, most of them would just be annihilated instantly. If it's like this then the dragon slayer would have just died. If the player who had come to clear this dungeon was none other than the dragon slayer, he was certain that it would have only been remembered as a failed dungeon attack. Even if the dragon slayer has Baomong, he would probably fail. Even if the dragon slayer had the legendary item, Baomong, in his grasp, he would be unable to do anything to the Excalibur wielding dragon knight. That was how threatening and overwhelming the existence of a dragon knight with Excalibur was. Of course, even Kim Woo Jin was not an exception to that fact. He had a large amount of health, but even Kim Woo Jin wasn't certain how long he could take on a dragon knight buffed with the blessing of the winner while he had the curse of the challenger. That was the reason. Bang! The reason why Kim Woo Jin was blocking the dragon knight's terrifying attacks with the Aegis shield. However, it's fine as long as you don't show hostility. The blind spot to Excalibur's skill was that it was only triggered by direct attacks. Naturally, this meant that the effect didn't work on a target that was just defending. Of course, this didn't mean that it was easy. When the attack on the dragon began, the dragon knight would naturally move to protect it. When that happened, Kim Woo Jin would have to draw the attention of the dragon knight back to himself. This meant that the hunting dog had to stop the prey from biting the hand of its owner who was holding the gun. I'll hold on to you all day. This wasn't a hard task for the hunting dog, Kim Woo Jin. Rohar. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin did not even twitch when he heard the dragon's roar ring in his ears. He had no doubt. Li Jina, I can only trust you. That Li Jina would make it happen. Kill the dragon. The moment Isaac Ivanov shouted out these words, the players instinctively moved at the same time. It was just that. Instinctively, 
They knew that Isaac Ivanov was dealing with a huge disaster and recognized that it was their role to hunt the dragon in the midst of that recognizing that it was the only way for them to clear the dungeon and escape with their lives. But Li Jina was different. The fact that Kim Woo Jin went to him directly means that that's not a normal guy. Instead, he acted more rationally as ever. Furthermore, the fact that he's using a shield rather than a weapon means that he has no intention of fighting in the player who attacked shouted Excalibur, didn't he? And he judged the current situation properly. So in summary, it's a dragon guardian with Excalibur, and in order to stop it, he needs the legendary item, Aegis Shield, and if we go after the dragon the dragon guardian will come to protect the dragon. And with this rational judgment, he came up with an answer. The longer this goes on, the worse the situation will be. The sooner this finished this hunt, the better. As soon as his thoughts reached that stage, Li Jina didn't bother to think about it further. If we want to hunt the dragon, we'll have to split into two teams first. Let's form the wing cutting team first each guild will nominate 10 players and we will divide them into 3 groups in case of failure. Gather the players first then we'll clean up the surrounding guardians one by one. We need to prepare for the poison breath since it's a black dragon. Let's make sure the buffs are stacked. Set your item setting properly. While the others were devising their carefully laid out plans to deal with the dragon, Li Jina began to run towards the dragon's location as fast as possible. Uh, th dash, there. Oh my god. Spashiba is running. Those who noticed this sudden action were shocked. They had no choice but to be. There were not many opportunities when hunting dragons, and if an attempt led to failure, it would cause a large number of lives to be lost. If Li Jina's actions lead to failure, they would have to pay an unspeakable price. And even if they succeeded, there would be problems. The black dragon was currently flying, but what about after it fell? Change your settings, quickly. It's too late those who aren't ready, get as far away as possible. The top priority of those players was to escape from the aftermath. At that point, cooperation was impossible. I don't need them anyway. Of course, Li Jina didn't care about that. He didn't have even the slightest bit of worry about it. I just need to bring it down. In any case, all he had to do was cut the dragon's wings to prevent it from flying. Rattle. And it was clear that the skeletons moving alongside him would do the rest. With his faith in that fact, Li Jina aimed Gungnir, which he held in his hand, towards the flying black dragon. Sheba. Then he threw the spear after releasing a short cry. In the world of players, keeping a monster's attention was known as aggro management. In truth, Agro management was not an easy task. In particular, it was difficult to perform proper agro management without controlling the aggro of a monster. After all, wasn't the ultimate goal of agro management to create an opportunity for your teammates to attack the monster? In other words, even if a teammate was to attack the prey, the tank's duty was to ensure that the prey's attention stayed on them. And to do this, the tanks would block the monster's path and send all kinds of attacks directly at its face doing whatever it took to regain their aggro. So what about a situation where it was impossible to attack? Tanks would tell you. Such a task was impossible in the first place, so it's pointless to even hypothesize. Clang. Nevertheless, that was exactly what Kim Woo Jin was doing now. It was so ridiculous that even tanks couldn't help but think about this hypothesis. How long has this been going on? Quite a while it's been over an hour now. However, Kim Woo Jin had been doing just that for over an hour. It's scary that this is not a dream. Agreed. The players who were watching from afar in case of an unforeseen situation were unknowingly impressed. After all, Kim Woo Jin's performance was worth their admiration. How the hell is he doing it? Shortly after Kim Woo Jin began to tangle with the Dragon Knight, it realized that Kim Woo Jin, who was only defending, was an obstacle. Naturally, it had moved to remove the intruders. Recognizing that, Kim Woo Jin predicted the Dragon Knight's path and blocked it precisely. That was the point. I didn't expect him to be able to read its movements so perfectly. It's hard to believe that he can even control a monster's aggro. Perfect prediction and interception of its path. 
Using this, Kim Woo Jin was able to perfectly block the Dragon Knight without attacking it even once. Of course, if that was all, they would just feel a little admiration. After the Dragon Raid began, the Guardian went crazy too. The real challenge started after the Black Dragon fell to the ground. The Dragon Knight's focus immediately changed to protecting the Black Dragon as its roars and cries of pain shook the poison-filled forest. The Dragon Knight's attempts to head over to the Dragon became much more intense. It was like a rugby ball that you couldn't tell when it would bounce. But he's still able to predict it. Nevertheless, Kim Woo Jin continued to predict the anomalous and aggressive movements of the Dragon Knight and blocked them. It was so perfect that this wouldn't have been possible even if they'd agreed and practiced to do it in advance. It made those watching find it hard to believe what they were seeing. What the hell is Isaac Ivanov made of? How can he showcase such skill? It was even harder to believe that it was none other than Isaac Ivanov who was doing this. The Isaac Ivanov the world knew was the king of the undead army. But the display that Isaac Ivanov was showing them wasn't that of a king. More importantly, Whatever it is, there's one thing we can tell for sure Isaac Ivanov could clear any dungeon on his own. What was clear was that Isaac Ivanov was the only player who could clear an entire dungeon on his own. What he was currently displaying was the best proof of that. Then a long roar from the Black Dragon shook the forest once again. And everyone who heard it could immediately tell. It's almost over. They almost got it. Thanks to the experience they gained from the sixth floor, they could tell that that wasn't a triumphant roar, but a pitiful cry uttered by a dying dragon. They also realized. It shouldn't take much longer. That the countdown to their clearance of the seven-floor dungeon and the time when they could return to the real world had begun. Not long after, they received a notification. The ruler of the land of dragons has been defeated. It was the notification which signified the end upon hearing it, the players all lifted their hands to the sky. We did it. We cleared it. We cleared the peak of seven floors. Disregarding the process, they cheered the fact that they had cleared the highest dungeon up to that point. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't cheer. Instead of cheering, he looked down at the body of the Dragon Knight, which had fallen after the Black Dragon's death. Then he reached for the sword in the Dragon Knight's hand. As soon as he grabbed the sword, Kim Woo Jin received a notification. Excalibur reacts to King Arthur's ring. Excalibur recognizes you as its owner. Kim Woo Jin smiled at that. To think that the Dragon Slayer missed it even when it was right in front of him. Excalibur. It was revealed that the item was found in this dungeon. Despite that, however, the sword never made an appearance in the world. The reason for that was because one needed King Arthur's ring in order to wield Excalibur. The Dragon Slayer, who didn't have King Arthur's ring at that time, could only come out of the dungeon with Excalibur's information. But now, in Kim Woo Jin's hands, the sword would be able to reveal its true value. Excalibur. Rating, Legendary. Physical Attack, 77. Required Level, Level 100 or Higher. Description, King Arthur's sword it is a sword that brings eternal glory to its owner anyone who doesn't have King Arthur's ring should not dare to wield it. Attack power increased in proportion to user's level. All stats 15%. All attack power 15%. All defense 15%. Triggers curse of the challenger when attacked. Triggers blessing of the winner when attacked. Kim Woo Jin, who was looking at Excalibur, wasn't very impressed. Holding the sword in his hand, he began to walk towards the site of the battle with the black dragon. Your level has increased. The Emissary of the Underworld admires your performance. The Emissary of the Underworld bestows some power unto you. The rank of the Lich skill increased by 1, TL, C, didn't use Lich summoning here. The rank of the Death Knight skill increased by 1. He also received a notification. But Kim Woo Jin didn't pay attention to the notification either. There's just one left now. He didn't even notice. I'll meet you soon, Lee Se Jun, after the next dungeon. At that moment, the only thing that Kim Woo Jin could see was his prey. Chapter, 260. December 15, 2024. At this time, the atmosphere at the end of the year began to ripen, 
but the current atmosphere in the world was different from any end-of-year atmosphere that they had encountered so far. Of course, since the world had changed like a game, New Year's Day had become a scary time for the world's people. This year's end-of-year celebrations have all been cancelled. No New Year's celebration. But this time, it was especially bad. The atmosphere in the world was indescribably dark and solemn, as though it was the end of a century rather than the end of a year. The same was true even for Oh Se Chan. The world is changing. Knowing the truth of the true situation of the world more clearly than anyone else, he could feel just how much the world was changing. In a bad direction. He also knew that this change was in no way good for mankind. We don't have much time. And he also knew that they didn't have much time to face and prepare for these changes. It was then. We have to make sure everything is settled by 2025 no later than that. When Oh se -chan began to draw up plans and make calculations in his head once again. One of his subordinates, who was hard at work just a moment before, suddenly sprang up from their seat. Surprised, Oh se -chan looked at them and asked. What's wrong? The subordinate was also surprised by his question. Huh. I just need to go to the bathroom. Oh se -chan could only make a gloomy expression at his subordinate who was scratching their head sheepishly. Oh, right. Of course, as it had just been Oh se -chan's overreaction, he couldn't actually blame his subordinate. The last time I used the toilet I found that the water pressure was a little strong did you guys put rocks in the toilet bowl? Seeing him roughly brush over the problem in such a way, Oh se -chan's subordinate could only stare at him with an open mouth. Suddenly. Another subordinate jumped up from their seat, so Oh se -chan decided to confirm it first. Do you want to use the bathroom too? At that question, the subordinate simply stretched his arms. No, I just needed to stretch. It was clear that he just wanted to tease Oh se -chan. These bastards. Oh se -chan couldn't help but laugh at the sight, and like that, the tense atmosphere in the office completely unraveled. Now, it had returned to the friendly state where they were able to make light jokes without hesitation. It was in this atmosphere that someone said. More importantly, are we having an end-of-year party? A Christmas party would be good too, wouldn't it? We could buy a big cake, pizza and chicken, and have a nice party. When the eyes of the subordinate turned to Oh se -chan and saw that Oh se -chan was staring at him with an eerie gaze, his words slowly faded. I'm sorry. The look on this subordinate's face, which was so nervous that it was almost comparable to Lee Jean A.H.'s signature expression, made the other subordinates also close their mouths. Naturally, the atmosphere became cold once again. At that moment, another subordinate sprung up from his seat. Hey, not now. Read the room. The other employees were visibly shocked, and Oh se -chan's expression became even colder. Then the subordinate who got up shouted out. Kim Woo Jin, no, Isaac Ivanov has started a YouTube live broadcast. On December 15, 2024, at 1722 UK time, I hereby announce the Savior Guild's successful clearance of the A rank 7 floor dungeon. The announcement of the Savior Guild's dungeon clear that was made on YouTube was quite plain. The Savior Guild saves the world once again. However, that didn't prevent the news from transforming the world's end of century atmosphere into a festive one. Mankind finally conquers seven floors. The conquered seven floors. Furthermore, this was very symbolic. Until now, mankind would challenge a new floor every year, thus creating hope for the next year. But with seven floor dungeons in 2024, it seemed very unlikely. This was proven by the fact that the only guilds which had begun targeting seven floor dungeons so far were the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild. The Savior Guild's next target is eight floors. The eight floor era is coming. Under such circumstances, the Savior Guild successfully attacked an A rank 7 floor dungeon, making it a foregone conclusion that they would attack 8 floors in 2025. The Savior Guild is the greatest. Since this happened, will the other four guilds also start attacking 7 floor dungeons? Not counting the Messiah Guild, there is the Frontier Guild, Great One Guild, Kunlun Guild, and Victoria Guild, right? Well, since they've already experienced the dungeon, it's highly likely that they will start attacking them. There will soon be six guilds in seven floors. 
In addition, there were many elements of hope that had appeared for humanity. It was enough to completely overturn the end-of-century atmosphere. However, when faced with such an atmosphere, the guilds who had taken part in the seven-floor dungeon attack could not express any joy. If this is the kind of reaction we get just by clearing. I can't imagine how they would react if they knew what Isaac Ivanov showed us in the dungeon. They knew better than anyone that what Isaac Ivanov had achieved was not just the dungeon clear. Furthermore, they knew that the impact such a fact would have when it was revealed to the world would be completely incomparable to what they were experiencing. Most of all, they were clear about one thing. It can no longer be denied that Isaac Ivanov is on the same level as Lee Sejun if not better. This is the era of Isaac Ivanov. The era where Lee Sejun stood alone at the top of the world had ended and the era of Isaac Ivanov had begun. We have to change our relationship with the Savior Guild. There will be a major shift in the world's power structure. And it was clear that the order of the world would begin to fluctuate and change in accordance with the times. This is so troublesome. Park Yongwan had no choice but to look at such changes with anxious eyes. If it keeps going like this, I might actually be eaten by Isaac Ivanov. At first, he intended to use Isaac Ivanov for his own benefit. And the result wasn't bad either. Isaac Ivanov had made Park Yongwan, the player who was never treated as the number two player in Korea, be recognized and admired by the world. Therefore, Park Yongwan bowed his head without hesitation when he saw what happened to the Lightning King. He thought it would be more profitable to stay under Isaac Ivanov for the time being. Furthermore, he had been confident that he would be able to get out at some point. It's really dangerous. However, Park Yongwan couldn't help but lose his confidence during this dungeon attack. He felt a sense of crisis that Isaac Ivanov, who was now chatting with the officials from the British royal family, might eat him whole, without leaving any flesh or bones. It was around this time. When sweat dripped down his spine and his body shivered under the stress of the crisis. Park Yong Wan. Kim Woo Jin approached him. What is it? I'll organize a meeting Shakira will also be there I think it's time we had a proper conversation. Park Yong Wan didn't think about it for too long. Please contact me when it is time. Yes. After the short conversation, Kim Woo Jin walked past Park Yong Wan and headed directly to Isaac Ivanov. Park Yongwan followed him with his sharp gaze. The world had begun to change. After the dungeon attack was completed, the thing that made people the most curious was what happened in the dungeon. How did they clear the dungeon? How did they hunt the dragon? I bet Isaac Ivanov used a really cool method. Ah, uh, I'm so curious. It would be strange if people weren't interested in the story of how the hero saved the world. Nevertheless, it was extremely rare for the information about the dungeon attack process to be revealed to the public in detail. So what if you're curious? It can't be released. Such expensive information can't just be handed out. Maybe we'll see it in his autobiography later. This was due to the value of the information that the players obtained directly from the dungeon. Moreover, an A-rank 7-floor dungeon was a dungeon that no one had ever climbed before. So the value of this information was so high that it was impossible to buy with money. Following the confidentiality agreement, the five guilds which participated in the dungeon attack with the Savior Guild remained silent. But as always, there were no eternal secrets in the world. Breaking News The Savior Guild's attack process revealed. It was almost natural that a person bearing the mask of Anonymous would appear and reveal the information for a very high price TL, I'm almost certain that this was Kim Woo Jin. So what happened in the dungeon was revealed to everyone in the world. Isaac Ivanov basically cleared the seven-floor dungeon by himself. The Death Knight summoned by Isaac Ivanov was able to violate a dragon on its own. Isaac Ivanov obtains Excalibur in the dungeon. Isaac Ivanov, the player who can clear a seven-floor dungeon on his own. And the information that appeared sent the world into chaos once again. No, it wasn't chaos. This feels like a lie no matter how I look at it. No matter how amazing Isaac Ivanov is, something like this shouldn't be possible. Who would believe that he was able to do so much? At first, most people didn't believe this information. After all, it was incredibly ridiculous. 
however, none of the players who participated in the dungeon denied it. Even the Messiah Guild didn't deny it. Is it really true? It's not a lie. Hey, no way. When the world's reaction to that fact steadily began to change, the Savior Guild released a statement. We will look for whoever broke the confidentiality agreement and disclosed the events of the dungeon to the world, and sue them. They would pay any price to find those who revealed what should have been a secret. Of course, people were not interested about the price at all. Oh my god, so that story was all true. Isaac Ivanov is that strong. Enough to clear a seven-floor dungeon on his own. They were only interested in the fact that the information turned out to be true. The world soon went wild because of this fact. It looks like we'll really end this game. With that ability, it shouldn't be too hard to clear an eight-floor dungeon. I knew Isaac Ivanov was the best. Where are the bastards who doubted the Savior Guild before? They cheered the emergence of a Savior who would be able to save the world before the Messiah Guild, and maybe even do it on his own. However, not everyone was cheering this fact. Three people sat in a dimly lit room covered in shadows. Before I begin, I must emphasize that we will take the things that are said here to our graves. One of them, Kim Woo Jin spoke in a solemn tone, and the other two, Park Yong Wan and Shakira, nodded. Then Kim Woo Jin continued. Everyone already knows the situation, so I'll just be straightforward if things continue at this rate, we will just become Isaac Ivanov's tools. There was no question to this fact, so Kim Woo Jin continued. The problem is that Isaac Ivanov truly intends to target dungeons without stopping until he dies. No one said anything even after he said those words. Naturally, Kim Woo Jin continued to speak. As you should have noticed in this last dungeon attack, there is no human who can keep up with Isaac Ivanov of course, it's also clear that he would definitely survive a runaway so even if we were to try to do so, we would just be destroyed. After Kim Woo Jin stopped speaking, a heavy silence fell upon the room. It was the most obvious way to show their agreement with Kim Woo Jin's words. As he said, it was abundantly clear. Isaac Ivanov was doing his best to finish the game as soon as possible, and his abilities had already reached a point where few people could keep up with him. First of all, none of the people here want the game to end like this. For the people gathered there, the most worrisome part was the fact that the game might end because we would all lose everything we'd accomplished so far. To be honest, there were few players who actually wanted the game to end. And that was why the Messiah Guild had been regarded as saviors. In a world where most of the players actually liked the game, only the Messiah Guild fought to reach the end of the game instead of only looking at their own personal interests. Kim Woo Jin then made a statement. The Messiah Guild will not let Isaac Ivanov do as he pleases that the Messiah Guild didn't want it either. This caused the expression of both Park yong -wan and Shakira to change. What do you mean? What are you talking about? The two finally spoke for the first time. Kim Woo Jin's words made it sound like the Messiah Guild had no intention of saving the world. Kim Woo Jin then told them. The Messiah Guild signed a secret contract with Johann George in order to get rid of Isaac Ivanov and even sponsored him if you consider the deal between Johann George and the Messiah Guild it would be clear that the Messiah Guild doesn't actually plan to save the world. Amazing words. That's a really amazing tale, but do you think it means much in the current situation? However, those amazing words didn't mean much in the current situation. There's no evidence. This could only be based on what happened in the past and Kim Woo Jin's own hypothesis. This meant that it was just a speculation without any real evidence. What if I told you that Johann George was still alive? However, the weight of Kim Woo Jin's words changed completely under the assumption that Johann George was still alive. He's alive. Johann George. At that moment, Kim Woo Jin gestured to the door with his chin, and a man walked in. Hello. The appearance of Johann George, whose beautiful appearance could not be mistaken for anyone else, caused the two to freeze. I've had a number of discussions with Johann George and the two of us have come to one conclusion. In this situation, Kim Woo Jin said. If we don't kill Isaac Ivanov, we will die. At those words, Park Yong Wan and Shakira turned to look at Kim Woo Jin again. Kim Woo Jin met their gazes with cold, sullen eyes. 
so let's kill Isaac Ivanov. Chapter, 261 There is nothing scarier than war. However, most people would feel more scared if a psycho was to stab someone in their neighborhood than if there was a war somewhere else in the world. The same was true this time. If we don't get rid of Isaac Ivanov, we will be in danger. There was no one who didn't know how dangerous Isaac Ivanov really was. So there was no denying the fact that he had to die. But there was also no one who desperately wanted to risk their lives to do it. That was why Kim Woo Jin didn't stop talking since he'd taken the stage. More than anything else, the Messiah Guild will not let Isaac Ivanov do as he wishes Johann George is proof of that. Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin pointed a finger towards Johann George. The Messiah Guild were never pacifists they even tried to hire Johann George to get rid of Isaac Ivanov and it wasn't just a sloppy job either, it was one that came with tremendous support. Johann George was presented as evidence. There's no way the Messiah Guild, who already made such an attempt, would let their rivals get ahead of them. Evidence that the Messiah Guild would never let Isaac Ivanov stand above their heads. Evidence that the threat they faced was much more dangerous than they thought. From now on, the Messiah Guild will do everything in its power to attack the Savior Guild and, naturally, before they hit Isaac Ivanov, they will have to clean up his surroundings first. Furthermore, Kim Woo Jin told them that the first targets of the Messiah Guild wouldn't be Isaac Ivanov himself, but those around him. The threat they faced was much closer than they thought. Do you have a way? Only then did Park Yong Wan ask a question like this for the first time. In truth, Park Yong Wan and Shakira had the same thought. They had recognized a threat. The reason for this meeting was to decide how to deal with it. They came here just to listen to the discussion on how they would kill Isaac Ivanov without making any real commitments. That way, it became possible for them to make an excuse if necessary. So if word of this somehow reached Isaac Ivanov's ears, they could say they just attended the meeting without giving any opinions it was a petty, but honest excuse. A way to hunt that monster. So in such a situation, by saying something like that, Park Yong Wan was basically giving up his excuse. This was proof that he felt threatened enough to think that removing the threat had a higher priority than leaving an excuse. To this question, Kim Woo Jin replied. We have to find one somehow. It was an unexpected answer. But no one expressed any disappointment when they heard it. After all, it would naturally be strange if it was easy to think of a way to deal with a monster like Isaac Ivanov. But I'm sure we're not the only ones who want Isaac Ivanov dead. That didn't mean their situation was hopeless, however. There were still many people in the world who wanted Isaac Ivanov dead. We still have time. And it was true that they still had time. Isaac Ivanov currently has no plans for the new year at the start of the new year, we will definitely prepare to attack an eight-floor dungeon, but we will also keep a close eye on the Messiah Guild. Keep a close eye. The Messiah Guild will definitely challenge an eight-floor dungeon after this dungeon attack if so, Isaac Ivanov will aim for a higher-ranked dungeon than the one the Messiah Guild attacks. So if the Messiah Guild chooses a C-ranked dungeon, he will enter a B-ranked dungeon without hesitation. Of course, after that, the outcome they'd have to face would not be pleasant. Yes that's right. So you're saying that our first step into an 8-floor dungeon might be B-rank. Those who agreed with Shakira's complaint nodded. Then we'll have to wait and see until the new year the Messiah Guild will definitely make a move after this dungeon attack. Everyone nodded again at Park Yong Wan's words. Then Kim Woo Jin spoke up. Then we'll end our meeting here if there are any changes in the situation, he'll contact everyone. After saying these words, Kim Woo Jin turned around. Wait. Then Park Yong Wan stopped him. How can we get in contact with you? We certainly can't use our personal contact information for something like this, can we? Kim Woo Jin gave an immediate response to this question. I'll have a broker deliver burner phones to you. Despite saying this, Kim Woo Jin still didn't turn around. He didn't want them to see his gaze which was colder than ever. Then I wish you all a happy new year. That was the end of 2024. December 31, 2024. The end of 2024 was still filled with news about Isaac Ivanov. The hammer Isaac Ivanov's death knight uses is Mjolnir. 
Isaac Ivanov has a skill that can instantly kill monsters. News about Isaac Ivanov's dungeon attack didn't end after the first release, instead, new details were revealed day by day. Ah, who the hell is it? How do they keep giving more information? Weren't they filing for a lawsuit? Have they been identified yet? It was a scene where the Savior Guild's threat to find the one who didn't uphold the confidentiality agreement and sue them didn't seem to have an effect. Therefore, people began to wonder. Is it normal to keep getting information like this after the Savior Guild already said they were going to sue? Who the hell is it? I don't know who he is, but he's certainly an amazing person. Who on earth was it that kept revealing information despite the possible feud with the Savior Guild? Even O Seichan's subordinates were the same. Who the hell is revealing the information like this? I'm sure he's one of those guys who took part in the dungeon attack. I don't know who exactly it is, but it's almost certain that their background is amazing. And it looks like they really get a lot of money for revealing it otherwise, there would be no need to sell the information in such a risky manner. They also wondered who the mysterious informant was. O Seichan answered this question for them. It was me. Huh. All of the employees, including the subordinates who asked the questions, couldn't help but tilt their heads at the confession. The atmosphere in the room also became strangely cold. But Oh Seichan didn't seem to care. I did it. So his subordinates asked. Why? Because almost everyone knows already, so there's no reason to hide it. You don't know. The Messiah Guild, Kunlun Guild, Great One Guild, and Frontier Guild all know this information, don't they? Then we can almost guarantee that all the guilds who have a close relationship with them also know it how can that still be called a secret? It was a valid statement. Although they had signed a confidentiality agreement, there were too many people involved and there was no way to guarantee that they would really keep everything perfectly confidential. More importantly, that information is now outdated. In addition, the information they obtained from the seven-floor dungeon could already be considered old information. Then. Right, next is eight floors. At least, this was the case for Kim Woo Jin who was preparing to attack an eight-floor dungeon. Under those circumstances, there was no need to get hung up on information from a seven-floor dungeon. The tension, which had started to disperse, began to grow once again after Oh Se Chan's words. It's finally time for eight floors. The world order created by the Messiah Guild will finally change. The fact that the Savior Guild was targeting eight-floor dungeons meant that a different order was about to begin. Everyone who knew this couldn't help but feel nervous. In this tension, Oh Se Chan muttered to himself. Well, and we could still make money. At that moment, all of the subordinates who heard him made the same expression as though they had predicted it beforehand. That's what it was. That was it. Seeing their expressions, Oh Se Chan said. You don't think the biggest reason I released the information was for the money, do you? Wasn't it? When his subordinate asked this question, Oh Se Chan responded with a serene expression. No, you're right. After saying this, Oh Se Chan looked down at his watch. They have two hours left. It was currently two hours before the new year. If they were going to come out, it would definitely be around this time. Just as it became clear that Oh Se Chan was waiting for something. We received breaking news. The thing that he was waiting for appeared. The Messiah Guild has completed their dungeon attack. The Messiah Guild had returned to the world before the new year. The Messiah Guild completes their dungeon attack ahead of the new year. On December 31, 2024, the Messiah had successfully cleared the dungeon two hours before the new year. It was perfect timing. It was as though the Savior had returned to welcome the new year. The world became excited at the situation which seemed to have been orchestrated by a divine being. After all, the Messiah is from heaven. No matter how great the Savior Guild is, in the end, the heavens are helping the Messiah Guild. The Messiah is the true Savior. The news was immediately delivered to Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin, who checked the contents of the message he received while standing in a dense forest under the dark night sky, then turned off his smartphone. He felt a bit of appreciation within. You're finally here. That was all. After that brief appreciation, 
Kim Wuji no longer thought about the Messiah Guild. Because he knew. As expected, they deliberately set the time. The fact that their timely exit was intentional. It wasn't a particularly difficult task. If the dungeon attack experienced unexpected delays, there was nothing that could be done about it, but if the dungeon attack went smoothly, it wasn't difficult to set the time that you exited the dungeon. Because there must not have been anything challenging. And since Kim Woo Jin knew exactly what dungeon they'd entered, he was confident that they would be able to do so. It wouldn't have been hard for Lee Se Jun. Because the main player that had entered the dungeon was none other than Lee Se Jun. He was still recognized as the strongest player in the world, which was why he was revered as the savior. With Lee Sejun's power, seven floor dungeons were not a threat. That was the reason would not be able to be impressed by the Messiah Guild's timely return even if he wanted to be. Moreover, there was something even more important than that. However, it's different from eight floors. The problem was eight floors. First, most eight floor dungeons were Lord Dungeons. And being Lord Dungeons meant that it was guaranteed that at least one legendary item could be obtained in them, even if they were a low rank. In other words, that was how difficult of a stage it was. A nine-floor dungeon should appear soon. But what was really important weren't the eight-floor dungeons. In 2025, the first nine-floor dungeon would appear in the world. The nine-floor without a rank. And that nine-floor dungeon didn't have a rank. The last dungeon. The final dungeon, which could be considered the end of the game, would appear. That was why the Messiah Guild began influencing the world earnestly in 2025. To ensure that no one could attack the Nine Floor Dungeon before they wanted it to be attacked. So that the world would continue being a game. Their ambition was no different now. As soon as the Nine Floor Dungeon is announced, the Messiah Guild would begin to feel impatient. In fact, it was highly likely that the anxiety they felt would be even stronger than Kim Woo Jin had expected since they had to face the pressure of a new rival named the Savior Guild. If the Messiah Guild confirms the existence of the Nine Floor Dungeon the outcome might be different from what I know. It was possible that they might even take off the Savior mask that they had been wearing all along. These people who wanted to devour the world might be willing to wear a new mask. I'll finish before that. That would be the worst scenario for Kim Woo Jin. If the game he was aiming for was to change, then all the preparations he made for the game would become meaningless. That's why Kim Woo Jin was waiting alone on Halasan Mountain on Jeju Island. Beep. Then he heard the alarm he set go off. It was an indication that the new year had arrived. At the same time, Miss began to appear in front of Kim Woo Jin before transforming into an enormous gate. Kim Woo Jin reached out to the dungeon gate. Then the dungeon status appeared before him. Land of the Nine Tails. Floors, 8. Difficulty, B- dash. Maximum number of entries, 99 TL, Holy SHT. Requirement, level 250 and below. Challenge conditions, defeat the Nine-Tailed Beast. Reward, catalog. The Land of Nine Tails. After confirming it, Kim Woo Jin removed his hand. Immediately afterwards, Kim Woo Jin took a feature phone from his pocket and called a number that was stored on it. What is it? Then he heard Park Yong Wan's voice. It's an extension of the thing we talked about last time. Say it. When Park Yong Wan heard Kim Woo Jin's words, his voice became heavy and cold. Kim Woo Jin told him. I just finished a conversation with Isaac Ivanov as expected, he intends to attack a higher grade dungeon than the Messiah Guild he knows it's reckless, so he is going to form an elite group to enter the dungeon with him even at the cost of their lives. That would be dangerous for us. Maybe it's an opportunity it would be a tough stage for Isaac Ivanov, and chance for us to get rid of him. Did you call me to tell me that? If we really want to use the opportunity to kill Isaac Ivanov, we'd need something first. Something. There's only one sword that can kill him since he's covered in legendary items, including the Aegis Shield. Kim Woo Jin smiled drilly. The Dragon Slayer's Baomong is the only sword that can cut Isaac Ivanov. Park Yong Wan stopped talking for a while. Naturally, there was silence. Then who will use Baomong? Kim Woo Jin answered simply. I will. 
Park Yong Wan responded immediately. I'll contact the Dragon Slayer. After the conversation, Kim Woo Jin closed the feature phone before breaking it in two. Then he looked at the dungeon gate in front of him without a word. Chapter 262 January 1, 2025 A press conference was held by none other than the master of the Messiah Guild, Lee Se Jun. Lee Se Jun, dressed in armor and showing signs of just completing the dungeon, spoke as soon as the new year came. The Messiah Guild's goal hasn't changed in 2025, we will do everything we can to end the game. These words by Lee Sejun were simultaneously transmitted to the world by every broadcaster. However, the reaction he gained was different from the past. Lee Sejun is so amazing. Lee Sejun is the savior. Let's just trust and follow Lee Sejun. In the past, there was only praise towards Lee Sejun, but now it was different. Isaac Ivanov is the amazing one, not Lee Sejun. That's right in the end, Isaac Ivanov cleared the seventh floor dungeon faster, and it was even at a higher rank. The Messiah Guild certainly has more influence but Isaac Ivanov's skills are definitely better. Whenever Lee Sejun's name, which no one dared to be compared to, was mentioned, so was Isaac Ivanov's name. The world has changed a lot. This was proof that the world was no longer relying on Lee Sejun alone. Lee Sejun's name is not the same as it used to be. Li Jina, who was watching the proceedings on his smartphone, stuck his tongue out with a laugh. If it continues like this, we'll win the game without even having to fight. With those words, Li Jina turned to look at Kim Woo Jin. In his eyes, he could see Kim Woo Jin typing something on a laptop in front of him. Isn't that right? Even when asked a question, Kim Woo Jin didn't answer. Li Jina made a glum expression. Isn't it right? Don't you think you've in against Li Sejun in a 1v1? No, it's natural for you to win. I'm not sure how powerful Li Sejun is, but I'm sure that he's not as strong as you are. Only then did Kim Wu Jin respond for the first time. That's right. Li Jina was surprised at the unexpectedly gentle response. Kim Wu Jin was the strongest person Li Jina knew, and he didn't think there was any other human who could compare to him. So when he said that's right, it was basically a definitive answer. It meant that he was stronger than Li Sejun. In truth, Kim Wu Jin thought so too. At this point, Kim Wu Jin's strength was way beyond his expectations, and was enough to hunt Li Sejun. This wasn't just his thought. Li Sejun will think so too. Kim Wu Jin was certain that Li Sejun would reach the same conclusion. Because the Messiah Guild's players would have reported my battles perfectly. After all, the players from the Messiah Guild had confirmed Kim Woo Jin's, or rather Isaac Ivanov's combat capability. That was Kim Woo Jin's goal. He tried to make the Messiah Guild somehow believe that Isaac Ivanov was something to be wary, fearful, and afraid of, while at the same time believing that he was too dangerous to be touched easily. That's why it's a problem. At the same time, that was a problem. Li Sejun will run away the moment Isaac Ivanov comes close. Li Sejun would never want to use the same space or stage as Isaac Ivanov anymore. No one wanted to hang around a beast that was stronger than them. Li Jina couldn't help but ask back when he heard that. Then you should have hidden your skills, right? If the problem was that your opponent became scared after you revealed your skills, then wasn't hiding your skills the right answer? Kim Woo Jin responded simply to Li Jina's reaction. Regardless of whether I hide my skills or not, it would still be impossible to meet Li Sejun. What? Li Sejun has never revealed his location no matter what power I had, Li Sejun never wanted to meet me. Apart from that, Li Sejun was an incredibly hard person to meet in the first place. His official appearances were rare, and even those were mostly irregular. Furthermore, all of his movements were treated with the utmost secrecy, and all kinds of methods and maneuvers were used to hide those secrets. As far as Kim Woo Jin knew, he even had a doppelganger who took his place at times. It must have gotten even worse now. Perhaps by this point, only a few people in the Messiah Guild knew about Lee Se Jun's movements, and it was highly liked that they were given false information in order to conceal the true information. Naturally, it was necessary to pay an unspeakable price in order to meet a person like Lee Sejun. 
That's why we need a sacrifice. Sacrifice? Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin tapped on his laptop a few more times. Seeing this, Lee Jin Ah decided to change his question. No, more than that, what the hell have you been typing all this time? Are you chatting with a blonde haired foreigner? TL, author really likes to make foreigners blonde. To that question, Kim Woo Jin looked at Lee Jin Ah and said, That's correct. Surprised, Lee Jin Ah shot up from his seat and said, no, if you're really chatting with a blonde beauty then you should include me too. You can't do it alone. Wah, I've put up with everything else so far, but I definitely can't put up with this. Li Jina was genuinely angry. Despite Li Jina's antics, Kim Woo Jin simply closed the laptop and stood up. Li Jina asked him a question. What's their name? Francois Soro. Did you meet in France? How did you meet? Is she pretty? Suddenly, Li Jina tilted his head. But why do I feel like I've heard that name before? Only then did he realize. The Dragon Slayer? That it was the Dragon Slayer's name. Why him? Li Jina expressed his doubts at the unexpected name, and Kim Wu Jin answered him with a smile. He's going to lend me Ba Meng. Ba Meng? Oh my god, that Ba Meng. Li Jina was frightened by those words. No, why all of a sudden? It's because of Park Yongwan's best efforts I asked him to obtain Ba Meng for me. Park Yongwan again. Hearing that Park Yongwan had once again given him a present, Li Jina looked like he couldn't believe it. Then his expression changed once again. No, but what would Park Yongwan have had to do in order to get Ba Meng? That was something that even you couldn't get, wasn't it? So far, the gifts that Park Yongwan had given to Kim Woo Jin were certainly valuable. But Ba Meng was different. In terms of reputation or value, it was on par with Excalibur, which Kim Woo Jin had obtained, and it belonged to the Dragon Slayer. No matter how much of a world class player Park Yongwan was now, there was no way that he could easily obtain Ba Meng. What can that poor guy that has basically given everything to you possibly offer? Would he even be able to get Ba Meng even if he offered Durandal? How on earth did he manage to obtain Ba Meng? Kim Woo Jin answered his question. Park Yongwan still had something to offer. What was it? Kim Woo Jin responded in a plain voice. Me. A small mansion located in Inya County, Kangwandu. A vehicle carefully approached this mansion, which had been covered by the snow that had fallen a few days before. As soon as the car arrived at the mansion, two men got out of it. Their thick coats, hats and sunglasses made it difficult to tell their appearances as they headed straight into the mansion without a single word. You're here. Park Yong Wan, who was waiting in the living room of the mansion, greeted them. Sit. However, despite welcoming guests, Park Yong Wan's voice was much heavier than usual. In this atmosphere, one of the men took off his coat, hat and sunglasses. Yes. This person was none other than Johan George. Park Yongwan narrowed his eyes as he looked at him. I didn't expect him to come all the way here. At the same time, Park Yongwan recalled the conversation he'd had with Johan George a few days prior. At that time, Park Yongwan was doing everything he could in order to borrow Ba Meng from the Dragon Slayer. Of course, his results were not very good. No, it could be said that Park Yongwan had nothing that would enable him to carry out such a transaction. In that situation, Johan George approached him and made a suggestion. Let's join hands with the people in the world who also want Isaac Ivanov dead. Is this the representative sent by the Messiah Guild? Join hands with the Messiah Guild. Yes, he's been helping me all this while. Should I talk to him while he keeps his face hidden? Not at all we're now on the same side, what's the point of hiding our faces? At that moment, the man besides Johan George also removed his coat, hat and sunglasses. Park Yong Wan, who confirmed his identity, let out a laugh. I didn't expect the Bao God to come. When the Bao God was revealed as the Messiah Guild's representative, the atmosphere became a bit heavier. This was natural. After all, the meaning behind this meeting had also become heavier. The Bao God, who also knew this, spoke to Park Yongwan with a heavy tone. 
It should be clear since I was the one to come here from now on, Park Yongwan, you are a member of the Messiah Guild. He clearly expressed his will in Korean. Did you become proficient in Korean because you're in the Messiah Guild? Park Yongwan couldn't help but make a sarcastic remark about that as he shot an eerie look towards the Bao God. After looking at him for a while, Park Yongwan nodded. Since this is about killing Isaac Ivanov, I don't plan to do anything foolish instead, and more curious about the Messiah Guild I wonder if you've truly accepted me as a member just because I gave you my loyalty and if you can protect me. Then Johann George opened his mouth. Since we're all on the same page now, why don't we move on to the next part? When Korean also came out of his mouth, the Bao God and Park Yongwan turned to look at him. How could he speak Korean? Johann George laughed and answered this question that he saw in their eyes. I studied Korean a bit. With a beautiful smile that would seem terrifying to anyone else looking, the two sat down. For now, the situation is simple the Savior Guild wants to get rid of Isaac Ivanov and the Messiah Guild wanted to in this situation, Kim Woojin said that he could kill Isaac Ivanov as long as he had the Dragon Slayer's Bamung but since we couldn't get the Bamung on our own, we had to ask for the Messiah Guild's help. To this explanation, the Bao God asked. Why do you need Bamung to kill Isaac Ivanov? Do you know the abilities of Bamung? I do. Then the reason is simple the defenses and resistances of anyone wounded by Bamung are greatly reduced in truth, the concept of defense is rather abstract but naturally, his resistance to poison will also drop sharply and for us, the player who we want to give Bamung to is the player with the strongest poison in the world. In truth, this was a question that didn't need to be asked. If you knew the abilities of Bamung, and knew that the player asking for it was Kim Woo Jin, then you didn't have to roll your head around to be able to realize why he wanted it. This was not something that the Bao God, who had wanted to kill Kim Woo Jin, couldn't know. Right, that's true. Nevertheless, since the Bao God brought up this question, it meant that he had other intentions. And the Bao God didn't take long to reveal it. But why isn't Kim Woo Jin, the party involved, here? At this question, Park Yongwan turned to look at Johan George. In fact, Park Yongwan had wanted Kim Woo Jin to be a part of the meeting. After all, it was none other than Kim Woo Jin who would be handling it, which meant that it would certainly be neat and clean. But Johan George had rejected Park Yongwan's suggestion. He'd asked for a meeting without Kim Woo Jin. Well, that is also simple. And now, he revealed the reason. Because Kim Woo Jin must also be removed together with Isaac Ivanov. There was no change in Johan George's eyes as he said those words. Proof that this was not a sudden suggestion, but something that he had been planning for a long time. In fact, there was nothing strange about it. The emissary of the underworld is known for their favoritism therefore, in order to be favored by him, I need to remove my competitors as much as possible. His halo was the emissary of the underworld, that alone was enough of a reason. The Bao God nodded at Johann George's words. After all, the Bao God, who had tried countless means and methods to kill Kim Woo Jin only to experience one bitter failure after another, had no reason to refuse this suggestion. Of course, Park Yongwan's decision is the most important part. The only problem was the decision of Park Yongwan, who could be said to be Kim Woo Jin's biggest sponsor. Naturally, everyone turned to look at Park Yongwan, and under their gazes, Park Yongwan said. Kim Woo Jin is one of the best cards I have created since become a player. As he said these words, Park Yongwan seemed to be lost in his recollection. With that look on his face, he continued. To tear this card with my own hands. The atmosphere in the room became heavier and heavier. In such an atmosphere, Park Yongwan looked at them and said. Then what can you give me in return? If the price was right, I would willingly give up this card. When they heard this, Johann George and the Bao God smiled. January 15th, the day that signified that half of January had passed. Wu Wu. Kim Wu Jin who was doing something in the Halasan Mountains, stopped what he was doing as his feature phone vibrated, and checked the text that he'd received. Ba Meng secured. After confirming the text he received from Park Yongwan, Kim Woo Jin gave a dirty smile. A person's nature will never change. With that brief ridicule, Kim Woo Jin typed a reply on his feature phone and sent it to Park Yongwan. 
then I will prepare for the savior hunt. While sending this message, Kim Woo Jin affirmed in his mind. Never. No matter who they were, a man's nature could not be changed. A few hours later, a shocking piece of news shocked the world. The Messiah Guild announces their eight-floor dungeon attack. Their goal is the Orc Lord, ruler of AC rank dungeon. And as soon as the news came out, more news was revealed. The Savior Guild set to challenge B rank 8 floor dungeon. Once again, the war had begun. Chapter 263 The greatest rivalry always came during the second match. AKA the revenge match. Because there was nothing that made the fighters and viewers more desperate than a revenge match. The Messiah Guild challenges an 8 floor dungeon. The Savior Guild challenges an 8 floor dungeon one rank higher than the Messiah Guild. That's why people were even more enthusiastic about the second match between the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild. The attention of the entire world became focused on the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild's 8 floor dungeon challenges. It's finally coming to an end. If the Messiah Guild loses here, then everyone will know that the Savior Guild is the best. Rather, this is a good opportunity for the Messiah Guild to overturn the public opinion the Messiah Guild will always be the best guild. It was such that even calling it the confrontation of the century was not enough. It was the Savior Guild who made the first move in this match. The Savior Guild gathers on Halasan Mountain. Ninety-nine players will gather to hunt the nine-tailed beast. Many international players will participate. A whopping ninety-nine players had gathered on the Halasan Mountain. Jeju Island. Jeju Airport closed. Jeju Port closed. Jeju Island becomes a stage for only the Savior Guild. To make sure there were no problems with the dungeon attack, the Korean government completely controlled access to Jeju Island. The gigantic Jeju Island was willingly transformed into a stage for the Savior Guild. I never thought it was possible to reserve Jeju Island. When Park Yongwon arrived on Jeju Island, which had been controlled in this way, in a private jet, he was greeted to the site of a quiet Jeju International Airport. Park Yongwon, who was descending the stairs of his plane couldn't help but laugh as he looked at Jeju International Airport, which was considered to be one of the busiest airports in the world in the past. The scale is really huge. The scale is really big. At that moment, a man who appeared beside Park Yongwon, expressed his feelings in words. Kim Woo Jin. Realizing that it was Kim Woo Jin, Park Yong Wan turned to look at his eyes. After a brief conversation with their eyes, Park Yong Wan pointed to the custom-built, bulletproof Cadillac Escalade that was parked nearby. Soon, the two of them got into the car. Click. There was the sound of the door closing, and at that moment, Kim Woo Jin and Park Yong Wan both took out their smartphones. No signs of communication could be seen. After confirming something, Park Yong Wan removed a long sword from his inventory. There was no need to say anything. He simply handed the swords to Kim Woo Jin, who checked its status window as he received it. Ba Meng. Rating, Legendary. Physical Attack, 88. Required Level, Level 88 or Higher. Description, Siegfried Sworded can kill anything. All stats 30%. All attack power 30%. All stats 20% when attacking. Activates curse of Ba Meng after wounding an enemy. Ba Meng. As he confirmed that it was truly the Dragon Slayer's Ba Meng, Kim Woo Jin's eyes began to shine. Of course, this light only flashed by briefly. Immediately after, Kim Woo Jin's eyes returned to normal and he calmly placed Ba Meng into his inventory. Their conversation began after that. What about Isaac Ivanov? He's waiting near the dungeon. Near the dungeon? He's preparing for possible acts of terrorism, surprise attacks, and preemptive sabotage. It's the first time I've heard of him preparing so much isn't it enough to have Thunderbird handle that? Kim Woo Jin's response to Park Yong Wan's question was simple. It seems he thinks this dungeon attack won't be easy even for him. Park Yong Wan shut his mouth at that answer. If it was an ordinary situation, he might have tried to make a sarcastic remark, but Park Yong Wan, who had seen the dungeon report, couldn't even make any jokes. It's really 99. Yes, 
the maximum number of entries is 99. The fact that the maximum number of entries was 99 told him clearly. It will really be a difficult dungeon. Yes, a dungeon that seven floor dungeons could not be compared to. This dungeon would be far more dangerous than any dungeon they had ever faced before. It was a place whose difficulty they couldn't even begin to imagine. In all honesty, they were beginning to think that this challenge was too reckless. Is he willing to give up? In this situation, giving up would be the smart choice. He doesn't intend to give up not unless the Messiah Guild gives up first otherwise, he'll attack the dungeon at all costs. But Isaac Ivanov had no intention of making the smart choice. Park Yonwan didn't make any more comments to that fact. Then are you confident? First of all, we have to let Johann George participate in this dungeon attack. And? We need about ten talented people to risk their lives at the critical moment. That should be enough. After hearing that, Park Yongwan nodded and handed a folder paper over to Kim Woo Jin. This is our list. Our list. After saying that, Kim Woo Jin received the paper and put it into his pocket. But you didn't give me an answer, are you confident? Kim Woo Jin nodded. Yes. When he heard that, Park Yongwan didn't ask any more questions. The inside of the vehicle became silent, and after a while, the vehicle stopped. We've arrived. They had reached the stage of the decisive battle. On February 1, 2025, the D-Day arrived. All 99 players have been summoned to Jeju Island. The Savior Guild plans to take on the 8-floor dungeon immediately. All 99 players gathered at the entrance of the dungeon with the goal of hunting the Nine-Tailed Beast, which was the ruler of the B-Rank 8-floor dungeon. This was amazing in many ways. If they clear this, doesn't that mean that all that's left is a rank? If they can clear this, it basically means that they've conquered eight floors. Is this really the end of the game? Rumor has it that nine floors is the last, so if they continue with this momentum it might end by next year. Challenges to new floors had always been made at the D rank and below. However, with their first attack, the Savior Guild aimed for a spot that was right below the peak of eight floor dungeons. Isn't this reckless? Obviously, this was a very reckless thing to do. But the Savior Guild hasn't failed before, has it? They will succeed again. Right, Isaac Ivanov doesn't know failure because he's the real savior. However, the name Isaac Ivanov changed this recklessness into a great challenge filled with courage, not ignorance. This wasn't just a vague analogy. A tremendous amount of talents have gathered. They're all going to bet their lives. It's amazing that so many talented people would apply without hesitation. It was because of Isaac Ivanov's name that many skilled players who were famous around the world were willing to risk their lives to take this challenge. Isaac Ivanov's name was now at that level. Beyond the level of just creating results, it was at the level of creating an order and flow around himself. It's Isaac. It was this Isaac Ivanov that appeared in front of the players. On his two sides stood Li Jin and Kim Wu Jin, who could be called his closest confidants. The three's appearance made the crowd quiet down. This was proof that everyone knew now was not the time to be cheering. And it was also proof that everyone gathered were veterans filled with determination. Isaac Ivanov didn't speak to them for too long. Let's start the attack on the eight floor dungeon. Following those short words, Isaac Ivanov began walking towards the dungeon gate. He walked slowly and soon disappeared into the dungeon. Next was Li Jina. The third was Kim Woo Jin. As Kim Woo Jin entered the dungeon, the other players began to line up one by one according to the order they'd been given. Suddenly, the moment Kim Woo Jin entered the dungeon, boom! The ground shook with a large explosion. An accident had occurred. When planning a dungeon attack, the first thing that was done was to clean up the surrounding area. In addition to creating an environment that made it easy for the players to enter the dungeon gate, outsiders were also prevented from entering the area, and security was maintained in case of any unexpected situations. The same was true for the Savior Guild's dungeon attack this time. As soon as the dungeon was discovered and a dungeon attack was scheduled, the Korean government and Thunderbird jointly monitored the area around the dungeon gate. 
the Korean government had even controlled the exit and entry to the entire Jeju island. It was a dungeon attack made with the strictest security protocols that had ever been seen. Therefore, no one expected any accidents to occur. What was that? What happened? Therefore, this event was so sudden that no one knew how to react. At that moment, the sound came once more. Only this time, there wasn't just the sound. Kaboom! A huge explosion happened around the dungeon gate and flames erupted in the area. Some of the people gathered shouted out instinctively. Retreat! Run away! It was literally an instinctive cry. The cry of their survival instincts. However, the instincts of some of the others were the exact opposite of this. Go in. They told them to throw themselves at the explosions and flames. It wasn't nonsense that had appeared in their head because of the situation. Keep entering the dungeon gate. Before it closes. If no one threw themselves through the flames then only three people would be locked in the dungeon. It was the cries of those who had thought up to this point. And some of the people who cried out also threw themselves at the dungeon gate where huge explosions had just taken place. As long as I don't die. If I can at least put my hand in the gate. Trusting in their superhuman stats and their item settings, they threw themselves at the dungeon gate. At that moment, a third explosion occurred, and those who threw themselves towards the dungeon gate were sent flying. Quack! Their screams of pains were much louder than their shouts from earlier. Oh my god! This caused those who were also about to throw themselves to stiffen up with hardened expressions. And in this time, a fourth explosion occurred. The players had no choice but to give up their attempts in the face of the series of explosions which seemed to have been planned with them in mind. And the fifth explosion made them realize. Ah! That it was already over. The dungeon gate has closed. It was the moment the worst possible scenario had occurred. What's going on? Lee Jin Ah, who entered the dungeon, tilted his head after he saw that no one had entered after Kim Woo Jin. Why is no one coming? Instead of answering, Kim Woo Jin simply looked at the dungeon gate that he just walked through. After a little while passed, no one entered after them. Wa dash, wait. Confused by this, Lee Jin Ah was about to head over to the dungeon gate. Then he received a notification. Kill 22, 22 monsters to proceed to the next floor. No more players would be entering the dungeon. When he saw this, the shocked Lee Jina turned to look at Kim Woo Jin for confirmation. And under his gaze, Kim Woo Jin nodded, to show that it was planned. It seemed Kim Woo Jin had done something. No, what did you do? Kim Woo Jin responded to this question calmly. We installed bombs around the dungeon gate. Bombs? We installed five lines so that the explosions would occur in a chain. Five lines? Because one explosion wouldn't be enough to stop the players from coming in we had to cause multiple explosions. Only then did Lee Jina understand the situation what was surprising was that he didn't show any apprehension or anger. It seemed as though Lee Jina was already used to such situations. Damn it, I knew it was too quiet there was no way that the scourge of the earth, Kim Woo Jin, wouldn't do something bad. This was because Kim Woo Jin had done such crazy and reckless things many times since they started moving together. Therefore, Lee Jin Ah simply asked questions instead of expressing any anger. So what's the reason this time? Why did you want only the two of us to enter the dungeon? Don't tell me you just wanted us to have a romantic date. Kim Woo Jin replied. After entering the dungeon, many people would have tried to kill Isaac Ivanov. Kim Woo Jin didn't have any intention of sharing this dungeon with others in the first place. I don't want anyone interfering or causing trouble here. Moreover, as the target that so many people wanted to kill, it was natural that he wouldn't want to put himself in such a position. The second goal is to create a sense of crisis. A sense of crisis? While the attention of the world was on him, Isaac Ivanov suffered from an act of terrorism. Li Jin Ah snorted at those words. This isn't a terrorist attack, it's self-harm. Other than you, Li Jin Ah, no one in the world would think this was an act of self-harm. As Kim Woo Jin said, no one in the world would think that Isaac Ivanov was behind this terrorist attack. 
just like no one thought the attack on the Messiah Guild's headquarters was self-inflicted. In the past, the Messiah Guild had done the same thing. The result for the Messiah Guild was the same. Just as the Messiah Guild had changed the world order after they cleared the dungeon after the terrorist attack, Kim Woo Jin also intended to change the world order after this attack. In such a situation, if you clear this dungeon, Isaac Ivanov's name will surpass Lee Se Jun. The name Isaac Ivanov would definitely shine on top of Lee Se Jun's. After understanding this, Lee Jina no longer asked any questions. And while we were attacking the dungeon last time, I realized something. What is it? Making a death knight is not easy if there are many players helping. Death knight? Along with those words, Kim Woo Jin opened the Book of the Dead and summoned a skeleton knight. After seeing it, Lee Jin Ah recalled the notification that he'd received not so long ago. There are two twenty zero zero monsters here, aren't there? And the number of sacrifices that are required for one death knight is. At the same time, he calculated the number of monsters required to make a death knight. Then, Li Jina who realized what that meant, said. Oh my god. By his simple calculations, that meant that five death knights could be created on the first floor. Kim Wu Jin tapped the shoulder of the now frightened Li Jina. Li Jina. Ha. Huh. What? You know the plan, bring some monsters. Only then did Li Jina realize. What Ash, wait so you want me to tank while your skeleton knight hunts 40 zero zero monsters. Kim Wu Jin spoke gently when he saw the expression on Li Jina's face. When we leave, I'll let you buy anything you want to eat. Hey, do you think I'm a pig that goes crazy for food? Huh? You think I'm crazy about eating anything you want to buy? Kim Wu Jin didn't respond to Li Jin AHS completely justified anger. Instead, he simply looked around. Kyaha. In the quiet world, only the skeleton knight's cry could be heard. Right now, he was currently alone with the most dangerous monster in the world, in a place where no one would know what happened. Only. And that monster was a psycho who often did things that defied common sense. Li Jina, who came to his thoughts, then said. Is it possible for me to get the sushi I wasn't able to eat in Japan last time? It should be possible with the donations we received from YouTube. Li Jina let out a long sigh before saying. Okay, then let's set up the Death Knight Factory. Chapter, 264 Before entering the dungeon, the thing the Savior Guild had paid the most attention to was safety. After all, Isaac Ivanov had already experienced accidents when entering dungeons several times. In addition, the eight-floor dungeon, Nine-Tailed Land was clearly a dangerous place even for Isaac Ivanov. That's why they had formed a team of 99 which completely filled the entry limits, and of course, it was most important that they entered the dungeon with their full power. The Savior Guild bans the press. Only those involved in the dungeon attack can enter the 10 kilometers radius around the dungeon. Therefore, the Savior Guild blocked the media's access in order to ensure maximum safety during the dungeon entry process. The Savior Guild will broadcast the process live through YouTube. Instead, the Savior Guild decided to reveal the process of their dungeon attack to the world in real time through a live YouTube broadcast. This made it easy for the countless people around the world to watch the Savior Guild's entry into the dungeon without any filtering. Get back. Go in. Because of that, they were able to witness the accident that happened without any filtering. Oh my god, what the hell just happened? It wasn't a terror attack, was it? It was a terror attack. It was a bombing. Terror attack. It was the moment that a sudden, shocking terror attack was carried out against the person closest to being the true savior, reached the world without any filtering. The situation afterwards could only be described as chaos. It was so shocking that the people watching simply stiffened without being able to properly process exactly what had happened. The time it took for firm reason to return was a day, a literal day. The Savior Guild was attacked. Hope is broken. That was how long it took for the media to begin publishing articles, and also for the public to begin reacting. Those damn bastards. No way, were they the same guys who attacked the Messiah Guild. Only those kinds of people could do something like this. 
In this situation, the first reaction of the public was not fear, but anger. Just as cornered mice would no longer be afraid of cats, but would instead bare their teeth, the people of the world began showing anger and aggression instead of fear. Because that was how the people of the world felt. Like rats that had been cornered by a cat. And like rats, there was nothing they could do. The seventh day since Isaac Ivanov entered the dungeon. Is it possible to clear an eight-floor dungeon with just three people? Unspeakable helplessness filled the people of the world, and in this helplessness, all people could do was pray. I just pray Isaac Ivanov has peace. Pray that Isaac Ivanov would at least have a peaceful time in the dungeon. In a quiet, desolate forest. Kim Woo Jin sat still, wearing the Grim Reaper's mask. It was an unspeakable serene scene. Fuck. Suddenly, Lee Jin Ah appeared from the distance with a harsh shout. Lee Jin Ah's appearance was not good in many ways. Although he was wearing the Nemean lion skin, he was still covered in injuries, some of which were so serious they even reached down to his bones. If people were to see this, they would wonder how he was still alive and active. Someone's having a hard time while the other one is just sucking honey. However, instead of caring about his wounds, Li Jin Ah looked at Kim Woo Jin and complained. People outside the dungeon must be worried and praying for you, but you're just sitting here sucking honey damn it. While Li Jin Ah repeatedly complained, Kim Woo Jin simply turned to look at him with the Grim Reaper's mask on his face. Kyaha. Then, the skeleton knights who fought with him appeared. A black aura was constantly flowing out of the bones of one of the knights. A death knight can be summoned. This was proof that it was qualified to become a death knight. I finally made one. With those words, Li Jin Ah flopped to the ground. He knew that it was useless to complain. It's definitely hard to fight with just the skeleton knights, without the help of the lich or the other skeletons. The skeleton knights summoned by Kim Woo Jin were definitely strong. However, no matter how strong they were, it was not easy for a dozen or so individuals, including Li Jin Ah, to face thousands of monsters. Moreover, Li Jin Ah was the only tank. Rather than that, this is the twelfth day since we entered the dungeon, isn't it? It had taken twelve days to create one death knight. Of course, the other skeleton knights had accumulated a large amount of kills which made it easier for them to become death knights later. It won't be easy. However, the higher they went in the dungeon, the more monsters they would have to face and the more powerful these monsters would be. They were only on the first floor now. Maybe it would take longer on the other floors. If we continue at this pace, it will take at least half a year to clear this dungeon. As Li Jin Ah said, if they continued attacking the dungeon as they were now, when they finally went out, they would be greeted by the summer sun. You're right. Kim Wu Jin was also aware of that. That was exactly why he was wearing the Grim Reaper's mask at that moment. That's why he'll also make a move. What? I've finished my analysis of the surrounding terrain and the distribution of monsters. While Li Jin Ah was working hard to hunt the monsters, Kim Wu Jin used the chance while the monster's attention was focused on Li Jin Ah and the skeleton knights to do a complete analysis of the dungeon floor. Then he planned accordingly. From now on, the two of us will take turns. The only thing left was to implement it. With those words, Kim Wu Jin got up from his seat and unsheathed the sword hanging at his waist. Ba Meng demands a sacrifice. It was the moment when Ba Meng's greedy fangs were revealed. It was never good to deal with a large number of opponents on your own. In fact, it was better if you didn't do such a thing at all. However, players in the dungeons often had to face a large number of opponents in some way or the other, so they received a lot of training and education in preparation for such situations. It was the same for Kim Woo Jin. Having more experience of facing large numbers than anyone else in the world, his advice when facing such situations were as follows. Don't be too obsessed about the headcount if you are forced to deal with a group larger than a hundred by yourself instead, picture your opponents as a large mass and attack with the intent of cutting off parts of this mass bit by bit. From Kim Woo Jin's perspective, this was advice that stemmed from ample experience. But he usually received the same reaction upon giving said advice. That's easy to say, can't anyone say that? Kim Woo Jin never gave a long explanation in response to this. 
Instead, he just showed it personally. He practiced the idiom that had been used since ancient times tl, I'm guessing actions are better than words. It was the same now. Roar. An albino orc variant. A ridiculous monster who stood at an average height of 25m with white skin and bloody red eyes. Furthermore, unlike regular orcs, they were so good at group battles, that they could be compared to ants. Against 300 such orcs, Kim Woojin merely put his advice into action. Poot. He cut into the body of an albino orc in front of him. The exact location of the wound wasn't too important. He didn't bother to aim for its throat. Roar. He just measured the depth of the injury from the orc screams, and if the depth was at the desired level, he moved on to the next target without hesitation, repeating the same action. Then he made a big move. Because of his movements, the three zero zero albino orcs were forced to move in order to encircle Kim Woo Jin, who had changed his route, once again. Due to this, the injured orcs were forced to fall behind. And like peeling the skin of an apple, the surface of the mass of albino orcs had been cut away. It was truly a simple method. Kook. As the battle continued, the number of orcs that chased Kim Woo Jin continually decreased. At some point, the number of orcs that collapsed from exhaustion and injuries surpassed the number that were chasing after him. It was the moment when Kim Woo Jin had proven his words. Then, the skeleton knights who had been waiting at a distance appeared. The skeleton knights that appeared all had their own weapons. From Mjolnir, to dual-wielding Ganjang and Makya, these knights who held all kinds of legendary weapons in their hands including the Jang Pao Zamo and the Blue River Sword unleashed the hostility that they had been raining in upon the fallen albino orcs. The skeleton knight squad had begun their attacks. The curse of Baomong has been activated. Moreover, every albino orc that the skeleton knights faced were afflicted with the curse of Baomong without fear. The only thing that these knights could do when faced with such albino orcs was carry out a slaughter. Sook. As though they were rice being harvested, the albino orcs breathed their last. And as the body count of the massacre rose higher and higher, the dark aura coming out of the various skeleton knights became stronger. And eventually, the notification announcing the birth of the third death knight was heard TL, third in the dungeon. This is insane. Li Jin Ah, who was watching this scene from a distance couldn't help but click his tongue. Soon after the battle ended, Li Jin Ah approached Kim Wu Jin. The Death Knight has disappeared. You have acquired the Death Knight's bones. Li Jina spoke to Kim Wu Jin, who put the newly created fourth Death Knight into his inventory. You're amazing, really amazing. Kim Wu Jin's response was simple. You can do something like this too your abilities are good enough for me to admit that. Li Jina, who had not expected the sudden praise, couldn't help but smile. Ku, naturally people on the same level can do similar things. He continued to smile, basking in the words of Kim Woo Jin, who was usually stingy with his praise. Right, this man, Li Jin Ah, once it's done properly, while I might not be as good as you, Im Simi Dash. Just as he was about to finish his words, Li Jin Ah realized what he was doing. Oh no. He was digging his own grave. Actually, I don't think I could be on the same level no matter how good I am, such a thing is definitely not possible not even a man like me could do it. He tried to change his words, but Kim Woo Jin tapped Li Jin Ah's shoulder as he said. You need to have confidence the man named Li Jin Ah can do it I can guarantee. No, that, I meant. I believe in you, Li Jin Ah the man. Li Jin Ah's face began to turn sour from Kim Woo Jin's repeated praise. Then his expression became resigned. With this look on his face, Li Jina said. Rather than that, how many death knights are you planning to make? You're not trying to make a hundred of them are you? Kim Wu Jin shook his head. A hundred is a ridiculous number we'd need to kill 44 million monsters. Li Jina nodded at Kim Wu Jin's resolute response. That's right. The characteristics of the dungeon and time restraints should be kept in mind we can't spend half a year in this dungeon in any case, that's a ridiculous number. The more Kim Wu Jin continued to speak, the more realization began to appear on Li Jin Ahs face. Kim Wu Jin then said. I plan to make approximately 30 of them. 
Right, 30. Then Li Jina shouted subconsciously. Hey, are you crazy? Kim Wu Jin only spoke in a firm tone. There are still 27 to go. Fuck. TL, this is an angrier version of the fuck that he usually uses. As if he couldn't stand it, Li Jina spat out a swear. It was then. Your level has increased. I'm not doing it. Just as Li Jina spat out all kinds of complaints, Kim Wu Jin received his 209th level up notification. You have reached level 210 inventory increased by 42 spaces. The emissary of the underworld admires your growth your inventory has increased by an additional 42 spaces. The emissary of the underworld praises your greatness. The emissary of the underworld bestows some power unto you. He received a nice notification, and Kim Wu Jin openly smiled when he received it. I hope the Death Knight skills rank increases. This smile was filled with expectation. His halo gladly rewarded his anticipation. The rank of the Death Knight skill increased by two steps. Two steps. A two-step increase. While Kim Wu Jin was surprised by the first gift he received, he heard more notifications. The Emissary of the Underworld praises your achievements. The Emissary of the Underworld sends you a special gift while looking forward to your future accomplishments. Kim Wu Jin immediately confirmed the new gift from the notification. Bone Dragon Conditions, Emissary of the Underworld Required Level, Level 220 Effect, Summon Skeleton Soldiers can be combined to create a dragon. Upon seeing this skill, Kim Wu Jin couldn't help but let out a laugh, and upon seeing this, Li Jina spoke out in anger. Hey, you can still laugh. Ha! Huh. What's so funny? Kim Wu Jin answered this question easily. I got lucky. Finally, Kim Wu Jin threw Ba Meng, which he had been holding in his hand, to Li Jina. Ha! Huh. Upon receiving Ba Meng, Li Jina couldn't help but look at Kim Wu Jin in shock. And the eyes of Kim Wu Jin that Li Jina could see, were more serious than ever. This look was proof. When we leave this dungeon, Li Jina will have no opponents other than Li Sejun. Proof that Kim Wu Jin's goal in the dungeon wasn't just the Death Knights. Only. We will finish all of our preparations in this dungeon. Proof that this was the last stage that he'd used to sharpen the sword with which he would kill the hero who claimed he would save the world. It's time to be the man. Sheba. And so the hunt truly began. Chapter, 265. The second month after the terrorist attack. The second month since the disaster and Isaac Ivanov is still attacking the dungeon. The world was still filled with a terrible atmosphere. And it was bound to be the same in the future. With Isaac Ivanov's ability, he can survive for at least half a year. Isaac Ivanov would never fall easily. With Isaac Ivanov's ability alone, they can easily reach the seventh floor. The media poured out all kinds of positive analyses that Isaac Ivanov could survive in the future, but the world knew the truth. It's not about getting to the seventh floor, is it? Right, can they hunt the dungeon boss on the eighth floor? That's the real question. No matter how strong Isaac Ivanov's three-man party is, the dungeon boss on the eighth floor will be difficult. It wouldn't just be difficult, it would be almost impossible after all, it's a B rank dungeon with a max entry of 99. In the end, the only outcome for Isaac Ivanov was destruction. And when forced to face this fact, people could only feel despair. Is there anything we can do? If there was, it would have been used sooner. What brought even more despair was the fact that there was nothing the world could do to prevent this destruction. That was why. Who are those bastards? We need to find those sons of bitches and tear them apart. The people of the world began to search for the people responsible for this situation. People around the world started looking for anything they can do to alleviate their despair and helplessness even a little bit. This dungeon attack was more secure than ever they were watching the dungeon gate days before the attack. The Korean government even gave up the tourism industry of Jeju Island and took control of it it was not a place that outsiders could have interfered with. And the gazes of these people started to look towards the Savior Guild on the inside, rather than the outside. In a way, this was natural. 
It was not just a small job since there were five consecutive explosions they made up their minds to do it right. That's right this couldn't have happened without the help of key officials in the Savior Guild. In this dungeon attack, which was prepared more thoroughly than ever before, there was no space for outsiders to do as they pleased. Nevertheless, since this proved that it was not the work of an outsider, it could only be that of insiders. This is such a headache. In this situation, it was none other than Park Yongwan who was the most troubled. Even for Park Yongwan, this terrorist attack had come as a surprise. At the same time, Park Yongwan was the one who was also responsible for handling the aftermath. That was why he was busier than anyone else during these past two months. And in this state, things were only becoming worse for him, instead of better. They're starting to suspect me. Him and the other members of the Savior Guild were beginning to be suspected of being behind the attack. Of course, the suspicions themselves weren't the problem. If I get caught in this, it's all over. The problem was that Park Yongwan had really plotted and manipulated to get rid of Isaac Ivanov. Everything. For that goal, Park Yongwan even went as far as to join hands with the Messiah Guild. If that fact was revealed to the world, it would mark the end of Park Yongwan. For him, there was only one solution to this problem. That's why he definitely has to die. Isaac Ivanov and the other two had to fail the attack and let the dungeon become their grave. Definitely. If that happened then everything would become clear. The Savior Guild would no longer need to go crazy in dungeons with Isaac Ivanov. And everything in the Savior Guild would belong to Park Yongwan. He would gain everything that Isaac Ivanov had achieved. Naturally, Park Yongwan was focused on one thing. Can Isaac Ivanov clear the dungeon? In fact, there was no need for him to worry too much about this question. Well, there's no way they can clear it. There was absolutely no way that a three-person team could clear an eight-floor dungeon. Unless he has dozens of monsters like that death knight. Park Yongwan, who had this thought, couldn't help but smile. A death knight can be summoned. Kyaha. Along with that notification, a skeleton knight with a heavy black aura announced its presence. We're finished. And Li Jina also announced his presence with a shout. Ha, huh, we're done. 30 completed. He looked exhausted as he cheered, like a runner who just finished a marathon. Kim Wu Jin responded to his cheers. Great job. It was a plain but more sincere answer than ever. Kim Woo Jin was also genuinely surprised and happy at this achievement. We did it. He wasn't lying when he said he wanted to create 30 death knights. Kim Woo Jin was truly determined to produce 30 of them. However, he never thought it would be this easy. Especially because Kim Woo Jin knew this dungeon better than anyone else. It's more than I expected. But the current result was better than Kim Woo Jin had expected. I didn't expect to finish on the fifth floor. It was beyond perfect. Of course, these were all facts of the past. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin didn't attach any more importance to those memories from the past so that he wouldn't become emotional. Instead, his eyes turned to his status window. Kim Woo Jin. Level, 216. Halo, Emissary of the Underworld. Stats. Health 6401749, Stamina 2901, Magic Power 31751. Achievements, 199. Extra Points, 0. The only thing left to do now is level up. Instead, he focused on reality. Li Jina. When he heard his name, Li Jina turned to look at Kim Wu Jin. There was unease in his eyes. Don't tell me you want to make more because we have the time to do it, huh? Do you suddenly want three more servings? You're not gonna do something like that, are you? He thought that Kim Woo Jin would use this as an opportunity to create more death knights. In fact, Li Jin Ah wouldn't be surprised if Kim Woo Jin really thought that way. 30 is enough. Fortunately, Kim Woo Jin didn't request more. It's meaningless to collect more than that. In all honesty, even 30 was a number that Kim Woo Jin couldn't currently summon. Even if he could gain magic power with bloodsucking, he would still need monsters from which to absorb it. With such a condition in mind, there was no need for him to overdo it. It would be meaningless against him. 
Most importantly, Kim Woo Jin had made such a force to hunt none other than Lee Se Jun. The new card is more important. Instead, what was more important was to secure even more abilities by leveling up. That was Kim Woo Jin's new plan. I'll raise my level as high as I can on the sixth and seventh floors. He had used the first five floors to create 30 death knights, and he would now use the remaining floors to level up. From now on, we'll focus on leveling up. Li Jina's expression hardened when he heard Kim Woo Jin's words. Kim Woo Jin said they were going to level up and he knew what those words meant more than anyone else. Who? So he simply gave a long sigh, as if he'd given up. Right, I don't get to sip honey. Kim Woo Jin then said to him. Li Jina, there's no need for you to do anything. Ha! Huh. Kim Woo Jin didn't answer the surprised Li Jina. Instead, Kim Woo Jin simply put his thoughts into action. After taking their bones out of his inventory, he summoned a group of death knights. The knight of death appears. Five death knights appeared at the same time. Open the book of the dead. Following that, Kim Woo Jin opened the book of the dead. A lich appears. And he took the lich from it. A Dullahan appears. Next was the Dullahan. Then, Kim Woo Jin began to summon skeleton soldiers and knights using the corpses that surrounded them. Rattle. In an instant, an army of 200 skeletons appeared. Kim Woo Jin then turned around and said. Because the skeleton army will take care of the hunting. Watching this scene, Li Jin Ah could only smile at Kim Woo Jin. Right, this is how a necromancer should act. For Li Jin Ah this was his first time experiencing such a comfortable and sweet dungeon attack since he became a player TL, he got to sip honey. After the Messiah Guild cleared the 8th floor dungeon in 2025, the next event that the world faced was the appearance of the 9th floor dungeon. The last floor. With the appearance of the 9th floor dungeon, all guilds, including the Messiah Guild, changed their routes to gathering as much power as possible in preparation to attack the 9th floor dungeon. The battle for legendary items thus began. Everyone was forced to take part in the scramble. Naturally, the top players all stalled at a rank 8 floor dungeons. Everyone, including the Dragon Slayer, stopped there. Naturally, the same was true for Lee Sejun, the Messiah Guild savior. His seemingly unstoppable run, which was always at a higher stage than others, had stopped for the first time. From the world's perspective, this wasn't good news. At that time, I thought it was an opportunity. However, before returning to the past, Kim Woo Jin saw it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. An opportunity to stand on the same stage as Lee Se Jun. An opportunity to catch up to Lee Se Jun, who always climbed a step higher than him. An opportunity to attack the ninth floor with him. He thought it was a great opportunity to attack the final dungeon together with Lee Se Jun and stand on the same stage as him. He thought it was an opportunity from heaven to save the world with him. That was what Kim Woo Jin had thought at that time. So for Kim Woo Jin, who was like that at that time, a B-ranked dungeon, a test which could prove his qualification to attack an A-ranked dungeon, was an indescribably important stage. So I was more desperate than ever for any dungeon. He wanted to show everything he had in order to prove that he was more qualified than anyone else. And it was the dungeon that appeared on Jeju Island, the Nine-Tailed Beast dungeon, that became Kim Woo Jin's test stage. The nine-tailed fox, I wanted to catch it more perfectly than anyone in the world. An extraordinary resolution. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin, who had advanced past countless adversities, had reached the peak in terms of skill. And it was perfect. And the result he created was perfection in itself. The moment he received the dungeon report, and the moment he understood it, it was impossible for any other players to target the dungeon more overwhelmingly and completely than him. To the extent that I didn't think I could do it again. Even Kim Woo Jin himself thought it was impossible to attack another dungeon so perfectly. Even after returning to the past, this thought hadn't changed. Even before he entered the dungeon this time, Kim Woo Jin didn't think that a perfect attack would be possible. So he thought it would be better to just focus on making the Death Knights. But now, his thoughts had changed. This is insane. A skeleton army whose numbers surpassed 400. 
forty skeleton knights and a Dullahan as the cavalry. High. Ten banshees roaming around the skeleton army and a lich leisurely looking from the highest vantage point. This is really insane. And the twelve death knights that made even the aforementioned army look like paper. In front of this undead army, the bodies of over one hundred zero zero monsters lay spread out like a carpet. It was a scene that represented an overwhelming victory in a battle against a great army, a ridiculous amount of monsters. This sight clearly told him. The common sense Kim Wu Jin had known had been completely destroyed at that moment. It's a completely different attack from back then. Therefore, Kim Wu Jin was certain that the experience he had before returning to the past, the attack that he felt was more perfect than anything else, would be defied completely. Of course, one thing remained unchanged. This dungeon will still be the stage that allows me to reach Lee Sejun. That this dungeon was the last door he had to pass to meet the hero who claimed he would save the world. Advance to the next floor. Kim Wu Jin then heard the notification that told him to climb to the last floor. Chapter 266 The players had a saying. Stepping onto a new floor was like stepping onto the surface of the moon. Those who heard would think that it meant stepping onto a new floor was an amazing and mysterious experience. Naturally, they had the wrong idea. The reason players compared new floors to the moon wasn't because it was new, fresh, or even amazing. Instead, it was because they had stepped foot in a mysterious space, where it wouldn't be strange for them to suddenly die without knowing what happened. That was what that saying meant. It was the same for Li Jina at that moment. Gulp. The moment he entered the eighth floor, he couldn't help but subconsciously swallow his saliva. Even Li Jina, who had encountered and overcome numerous hardships couldn't help but be tense. However, it couldn't be helped. Night. On the eighth floor of the dungeon, there was darkness reminiscent of the surface of the moon. Furthermore, the darkness was so thick that they were unable to see anything except for small lights that flickered in the distance. In this darkness, Kim Wu Jin, whose eyes had turned golden, said. Those lights, they're foxfire. Through Horus' eyes, he was able to determine the identity of the lights that illuminate the darkness. Foxfire? Li Jina, who clearly remembered their experience dealing with foxfire, was surprised, and couldn't help but ask back carefully. Isn't that a monster that only appears on the fifth floor? Foxfire? They were monsters who could take the shape of any other monsters and couldn't be dealt with by normal attacks. In addition, they were rare monsters who were only found on the fifth floor. They're not monsters. But the foxfire they were seeing at that moment weren't monsters. They're magic that the nine-tailed fox created with its skill. Magic. The nine-tailed fox's magic. Li Jina's expression stiffened when he heard those words. Wait, the boss of this dungeon is a nine-tailed fox. Kim Wu Jin frowned slightly at the question. This was because it was a truly unexpected question. Kim Wu Jin thought that Li Jina would have known that the boss monster of this dungeon was a nine-tailed fox. Then what did you think the nine-tailed beast was? Because the only nine-tailed beast that they knew of was the nine-tailed fox. Even if it turned out to be another monster, it was still natural to at least keep the nine-tailed fox in mind. Li Jina could only scratch his head sheepishly when he heard Kim Wu Jin's question, and say. No, well I just didn't think too much about it, okay? We just have to defeat whatever it is anyway, don't we? So I just prepared to defeat whatever we encountered. An eight-floor dungeon, the first eight-floor dungeon attack, and he didn't think too much about it. Amazing. This fact caused even the normally stoic Kim Wu Jin to express his surprise and admiration. This admiration made Li Jina smile as he said. Huh, I am a little amazing. It was a very bright smile. Anyway, those foxfires aren't monsters, but magic. With the smile still on his face, Li Jina continued. Doesn't that mean we'd get no loot from it if we kill it? And that we'd get no experience to level up? Plus, since it's that nine-tailed fox's skill, doesn't that mean it can keep summoning them endlessly? Fortunately, Li Jina didn't forget the dangers of the foxfire just because he heard it was magic. 
So we have to search for the nine-tailed fox while dealing with these foxfires that such a headache and am certain that the nine-tailed fox would be hiding in the dark, it wouldn't be easy to find. Furthermore, Li Jina was able to quickly analyze the difficulties of the dungeon attack. It was as he said. First of all, the magic foxfires were rather tricky. They weren't monsters, they were constructs made of magic, but that was the only difference between them as they still had the same characteristics. Foxfires could turn into any monster, and ordinary attacks would not work on them. In addition, the light given off from the foxfires basically blinded the hunters. It didn't matter if they stayed in the dark. But if in such darkness, a bright light appeared, when it went out, the eyes of most living creatures would need time to adjust to the darkness once again. How much of them can the nine-tailed fox summon? The troublesome part was the fact that they weren't sure just how many foxfires the nine-tailed fox could summon at a time. This might just be a portion of it. If it's a hundred or more, that would be such a headache. It would be very difficult if the number exceeded a hundred. Kim Woojin answered this question for him. Infinitely. What? Infinitely. When he heard this expression, Li Jina could only stare at Kim Woojin in shock. Then Kim Woojin continued. In the worst case scenario, it might be able to summon them infinitely so we have to plan with that in mind. Although he said worst case scenario, Kim Woojin knew for a fact that the nine-tailed fox was able to summon foxfires infinitely. That's why it's the worst. And that was the reason why the nine-tailed fox was one of the worst monsters to face. In that case, a drawn-out battle is inevitable. Against the nine-tailed fox, a prolonged battle was basically inevitable. Even if that's the case, it wouldn't be good to have a prolonged battle if there are no other monsters other than the foxfire, my magic power would not be able to last. Furthermore, in the absence of corpses, Kim Woojin would not be able to showcase his full ability. As Kim Woojin said, if there were no other monsters on the floor, he wouldn't be able to absorb any additional magic power. So we have to finish this in a day. Therefore, Kim Woojin intended to end the battle with the nine-tailed fox in a day. Phew. Li Jina let out a long sigh at those words. Then I guess I'll just have to deal with foxfires again that's just my life. But Kim Woojin interrupted him. This time, I'll deal with the foxfires. Along with those words, Kim Woojin gave Ba Meng, which had been in his hand, to Li Jina. If you find the nine-tailed fox while I'm dealing with the foxfires, stab it. Shocked, Li Jina couldn't help but ask. Why? Kim Woojin replied easily. Because it'll be faster if I handle it. Along with those words, Kim Woojin took Excalibur from his inventory. In a forest covered in deep darkness. Crackle. Numerous foxfires that had been created by the nine-tailed fox, each with the shape of a different monster, illuminated the darkness. In a way, they could be called beautiful lanterns. In particular, they lit up the dark forest like stars lighting up the night sky. It was truly a beautiful scene. But it wasn't just beautiful. In the dark, their brightness served only to blind the players who had come to hunt the nine-tailed fox, attracting them like moths and causing them to be unaware of their surroundings. Furthermore, the foxfires were arranged in such a way that if one foxfire was attacked, the rest would be able to quickly encircle the aggressors. The foxfires were laid down in order to alloy the master of this territory to annihilate the intruders faster. Those who knew such a fact wouldn't dare to call such a thing beautiful. Of course, that didn't mean it was guaranteed to work. Ha! Death Knight. The Knight of Death created by Death stepped out of the darkness in front of a foxfire. When the Death Knight appeared, the foxfire took the form of a troll. And when the battle started, the Death Knight's sword tore through the foxfire. Pot. The Death Knight's sword cut through the foxfire easily. In a way, this was to be expected. The sword it held in its hand was none other than the legendary Achilles sword, which had no problems cutting into the foxfire. Moreover, it was none other than the Death Knight who was wielding this sword. The Death Knight cuts off the foxfire's life. A being that was able to kill any living thing. A Death Knight had the ability to rip a foxfire apart with its bare hands. So naturally, the battle was one-sided. Shook. 
The Death Knight, which rode a skeleton horse, swung its sword three times, sending pieces of the foxfire flying with every slash. It was a moment when a foxfire, a creature which terrorized every player that encountered them in five-floor dungeons, became extremely helpless. Then, the foxfire around it began to move. The flaming bodies of more than thirty foxfires began to burn brightly as they transformed themselves. The shapes they took were that of monsters who were able to run very quickly. In that state, they all flocked towards the Death Knight. Then, the Death Knights who had been hiding in the darkness made their appearances known. These Death Knights, who suddenly appeared, all attacked the Foxfire's flanks without exception. It was a surprise attack. A surprise attack that their enemies could not have seen coming. Naturally, the effect of this attack was powerful. Shook. The twelve Death Knights that appeared unilaterally annihilated the Foxfires to the point where their fights could barely be called as such. Naturally, the forest darkened as a result. It was as if the Death Knights had occupied this portion of the land. Suddenly, a group of Foxfires appeared in the distance. At that moment, exactly 300 Foxfires had been created. The Nine-Tailed Fox summoned Foxfires. And it was the moment that the Nine-Tailed Fox, which had been silent until then, finally showed its hostility towards the intruders. Like well-trained soldiers, the Foxfires which appeared all took the form of ogres and began advancing towards the Death Knights like a well-trained army. In an instant, the darkness of the forest was pushed back by the resplendent brightness. The sight was so bright that it would force onlookers to avert their gazes. Of course, the Death Knights didn't need to look away from this scene. Following this terrifying cry, thirteen Death Knights, each atop a skeleton horse, charged towards the group of ogre-shaped foxfire without hesitation tl, gonna call them foxfire ogres from now on, and I'll do the same for any monster the foxfires transform into. Light and darkness the two groups, which could only be described in this way, soon collided. Then something began to approach the foxfires from behind. Excalibur's wielder has confirmed the foxfire's hostility. Excalibur has granted you the winner's blessing. It was Kim Woojin. Appearing behind the ogre-shaped foxfire army, Kim Woojin leaped towards them as soon as he appeared. This leap from Kim Woojin was spotted by a 5M tall foxfire ogre, the neck of whom was immediately cut by Kim Woojin's sword. You cut the enemy's neck. Your winner's blessing has ended. Cut by Excalibur, this foxfire ogre was immediately extinguished. This was one of Excalibur's abilities. Cutting the opponent's neck was a guaranteed victory, and no interference would be tolerated. When Kim Woo Jin appeared, some of the Foxfire Ogres turned around to face him. That was the moment when the perfectly formed battle line collapsed. Naturally, this was good news for the Death Knights. The Death Knights were prepared to repay the opportunity their master gave them with only one word victory. Hayaha. Suddenly, ice arrows shot over from the distance. Skeleton Wizards. It was the moment they began to provide support under the Lich's orders. The broken battle line had to face off against Death Knights, monsters which defied common sense, as well as the supporting fire from the skeleton wizards. In the face of such a situation, the Foxfire Ogre army was not able to showcase even half of their original strength. Despite outnumbering them, the Foxfire army was the one at a disadvantage. Who? And in such a situation, Kim Woojin showcased his prowess more strongly than anything else. They literally began sweeping away the foxfire. In such a situation, the choice the nine-tailed fox, who hid in the dark, would make was simple. This time, it summoned five hundred foxfires. The light, which had once again begun to die down, now burned more brightly than ever. It was at that time. There. Li Jina, who had been looking for the nine-tailed fox all this time, made his move. Just like Kim Woojin said, the foxfires will only be summoned around the nine-tailed fox. The nine-tailed fox summoned foxfires around itself, so Kim Woojin had told him to use them to find its location. And now, he had figured it out. It's smaller than I expected. The 10M long body of the nine-tailed fox, which lowered itself so that it wouldn't be spotted among the foxfires appeared in front of Li Jin Ahs eyes. Then Li Jina charged towards the nine-tailed fox with a sword in his hand. Just once. 
Li Jina's task was to just leave one wound on the nine-tailed fox. This was easier than any task Li Jina had been given so far. Therefore, Li Jina performed this task well. P.U.K. The tip of Li Jina's sword pierced the side of the nine-tailed fox which had all of its attention on Kim Wujin. Key. At that moment, a bizarre cry was heard from the fox's mouth. At the same time, the nine-tailed fox's body began to burn with a violent red flame. The nine-tailed fox's alter ego has been destroyed. Ah! This proved that the monster Li Jina had just stabbed was only an alter ego, one of the nine-tailed fox's abilities. In other words, it meant that Li Jina's supposedly easy task had failed. At the same time, a large tree nearby made a terrifying sound as it quickly transformed into the shape of the nine-tailed fox. Crunch. After revealing another ability, the nine-tailed fox opened its mouth towards Li Jina. Then a huge fireball flew from its mouth and swallowed Li Jina like a snake made of fire. The fire quickly enveloped and burnt Li Jina to ashes before he was even given the chance to scream. Key. The nine-tailed fox's lips curled into a cruel smile at this sight. It was a smile that mocked its prey for falling into the trap it created. This was none other than the sound of the nine-tailed fox's side being pierced. And with the sound, something gradually appeared beside the nine-tailed fox. Cap of Invisibility's concealment released. The figure that was revealed was Li Jina wearing the Cap of Invisibility ED. My heart skipped a beat I thought Li Jina died since they were nearing the end of the book. The nine-tailed fox has been afflicted by the curse of Baomeng. In addition, the sword he held in his hand was Baomeng. What had just happened was really simple. Kim Wu Jin had also given the seventh tail of the nine-tailed fox in his inventory to Li Jina, and Li Jina used the item to create an alter ego. And since then, his real body had been hidden by the cap of invisibility. In other words, Kim Wu Jin had expected the nine-tailed fox to use its alter ego from the start. This was Kim Wu Jin's plan to injure the nine-tailed fox. The nine-tailed fox lights itself on fire. The nine-tailed fox, which was attacked with its own skill suddenly set itself on fire. In an instant, its body became covered in huge flames, and Li Jina instinctively retreated. That's dangerous. It was a wise move. If he came in contact with that fire, then like hellfire, it would not go out until he was burned to ashes. Of course, while retreating, Li Jina kept his eyes on the nine-tailed fox. If I let it get away, Kim Wu Jin will beat me to death. He was determined to keep following the nine-tailed fox till he died. Flash. Suddenly, the nine-tailed fox emitted an intense light before disappearing. Ah. In that moment, Li Jina's eyes lost their function. This wasn't the same as a blind effect. It was just a natural process of his eyes adapting to an intense light source. Even if Li Jina had Lancelot's bracelet which made him immune to negative status effects, he wouldn't be able to avoid this natural phenomenon. I lost it. When Li Jina's eyes finally adjusted, the nine-tailed fox was long gone. All that was left in its place was Baomeng which had fallen from its body. Damn it. Suddenly, a small goblin skeleton soldier appeared beside Li Jina. Then the skeleton soldier said. Good job. Li Jina responded bluntly to Kim Wu Jin's words. Are you being sarcastic now? No, I mean it. Mean it? The skeleton soldier nodded. Because now I can smell the nine-tailed fox's blood. Chapter, 267 Kim Wu Jin, who had hunted the nine-tailed fox before returning to the past had added a list of requirements that were to deal with this monster in his dungeon report. First, the power to deal with at least one zero zero foxfires in a short period of time was absolutely necessary. Second, the ability to detect the nine-tailed fox's location when it summoned foxfires once again. Third, the ability to identify and attack its real body, and not the body of its alter ego. Fourth, the ability to track the nine-tailed fox which would undoubtedly try to escape. Fifth, the ability to cut off all of the nine-tailed fox's tails during the pursuit. Before returning to the past, these were the steps Kim Wu Jin led his teammates through in order to hunt the nine-tailed fox. 
especially the fifth Kim Woo Jin had finally managed to cut off all of the nine-tailed fox's tails after fourteen different skirmishes. Using only fourteen fights to do this made everyone judge Kim Woo Jin's attack on the nine-tailed fox as perfect. However, the number of skirmishes the current Kim Woo Jin needed was only one. The nine-tailed fox has lost all of its tails. Key. In just a single battle, the nine-tailed fox could only let out a miserable cry as Kim Woo Jin cut off all of its tails. This was a situation that could be admired for many reasons. Of course, Kim Woo Jin didn't feel any admiration, nor did he dwell on his recollections. As soon as the nine-tailed fox let out that cry, he quickly narrowed the difference between them and sliced his sword across its throat. The nine-tailed fox jumped back to avoid it, but Kim Woo Jin took another step forward, measuring the distance perfectly as he swung Excalibur. You have slain the nine-tailed fox. Without any suspense, the nine-tailed fox, which had first lost its tails and then its head, collapsed to the ground. It's finally over. Li Jin Ah, who was holding Ba Meng in his hand, prepared to intervene in case of any accidents, relaxed slightly as he saw this scene. However, Kim Woo Jin was different. Instead, he turned his head and looked around. Then, he saw one of the nine-tailed fox's tails, which he had cut off, began to give off a bright light TL, do you think the author forgot what he said before? Or that I misinterpreted it? The first tale of the nine-tailed fox. Rating, legendary. Required level, level one or higher. Description, the first tale of the nine-tailed fox it contains mysterious power if all nine tails are collected, one will be able to use the power of the nine-tailed fox. All defense 20%. Grants the ability to use the skill transform. It was the moment when he'd gathered all nine tails. Kim Woo Jin added this tail to his inventory without hesitation. Collected all nine tails of the nine tailed fox. You have unlocked the power of the nine tailed fox. The power of the nine tailed fox. Along with that notification, another window appeared in front of Kim Woo Jin's eyes. Power of the nine tailed fox. All skills of the nine-tailed fox's tails can be used without consuming any magic power for nine minutes. It was an unexpected gain. However, Kim Woo Jin didn't dwell on his gains for very long. Now there's just one left. Because there was now only one prey that Kim Woo Jin really wanted to hunt. It was often said. There are always ups and downs in life. If good things happened, then bad things would happen, and if bad things happened, then good things would happen. It was a common saying. But it was none other than the Messiah Guild that proved to the world the truth behind those words. The Messiah Guild successfully clears the eighth floor dungeon. The Messiah Guild slays the Orc Lord. After the terrorist attack on the Savior Guild, the Messiah Guild didn't give up their attack on the eighth floor dungeon, Orc Lord's kingdom, and brought hope to the world once again. Lee Sejun becomes the first player to conquer eight floors. Lee Sejun writes his own legend. It was the moment that Lee Sejun became the first to clear an eight floor dungeon. In the end, Lee Sejun is the only hero who can save the world. Lee Sejun was the only savior from the start. Right, in the end, only the Messiah Guild can save the world. At the same time, it was the moment when Lee Sejun had once again taken the seat of the world's one and only savior. In other words, no one had any more expectations. Isaac Ivanov's party's attack still in progress. Isaac is still alive. They believed that Isaac Ivanov was still alive, but also that his chances of returning were virtually zero. Sooner or later, we'll receive news about Isaac Ivanov's obituary. It's over. With the saying in mind, after receiving good news, the world was prepared to once again receive bad news. Then, on April 1st, Isaac Ivanov told them. Isaac Ivanov successfully clears the dungeon. Isaac Ivanov once again creates a miracle. That his tale was not yet over. The Dragon Slayer once said. The odds of Isaac Ivanov succeeding are the same as the game suddenly ending. Trinity of the Great One Guild said. No matter how amazing the hunting dog is, there's no way it can hunt a bear on its own that's why we work together the dungeons also know this fact, that's why they set a maximum number of entries. Park Yong-won, 
who had become the temporary master of the Savior Guild also said. I can only pray earnestly for his return. These were some of the players who knew more about dungeons than anyone else in the world. And they told everyone that Isaac Ivanov could not return safely from the eight-floor dungeon. It was impossible. Their reasoning was also so valid that no one dared to refute it. Isaac Ivanov returns. So when this news came out, no one in the world was really surprised. No, it could be said that they paid no attention to it at all. Someone is making jokes again. Is this an April Fool's joke? It's a very disgusting joke. Since it was April 1st, most people in the world dismissed it as a cruel April Fool's joke made by someone. The same was true for the media. Isaac Ivanov came out of the dungeon. I'm not sure who came up with it, but either way, they're crazy even if it's April Fool's, such jokes are dangerous. It's ridiculous. It would have been more believable if they said that a meteoroid was on a collision course with Earth. And NASA is training an oil rig drilling team to blow up the meteoroid. Despite the fact that it was potentially the biggest breaking news they ever received, no one paid attention to this. Perhaps by chance, there were still a few who wanted to confirm the authenticity of the information, something that was incredibly rare. In other words, there were still a few of them. A few reporters, some of them even using their smartphones, searched around with a there's nothing to lose mentality. With this in mind, they entered YouTube and checked Isaac Ivanov's live streaming channel. Of course, the thoughts of these reporters were the same. It must be a lie. Who came up with this nonsense? I knew someone would do something like this. That what they were doing was completely meaningless. It was no different than searching on the ground after hearing someone said they lost a 10 carat diamond ring. Uh. Ha. Huh. What's going on? However, if you were to think about it conversely, if you were to search on the ground, you might become the person who found the diamond. They are preparing a live broadcast. Isaac Ivanov's channel is active. And the reporters, who unexpectedly discovered a treasure, could not help but shout out. This is a scoop. Oh my god. They moved quickly to become the main characters to release this breaking news. These few journalists and netizens around the world began to take action. And through them, this news resonated throughout the world. Isaac Ivanov is back. Isaac Ivanov is back. The hero that would save the world was back. In O Seichan's office, all of the employees were gathered in front of a monitor. How many people have connected? Oh Seichan, who was standing among them, asked this question to the employee sitting with a mouse and keyboard in front of him. The subordinate answered the question with a stiff expression. YouTube isn't showing us the numbers. What's that supposed to mean? They informed us that this was not an event that should be used to break records, I could only agree. A large number of people would most assuredly watch the broadcast so the number of views was not something that needed to be recorded. The number shouldn't be displayed. No one disagreed with this fact. Right, it's worthy of such a decision. This is a historical event. Because they were certain that this live broadcast after Isaac Ivanov's successful dungeon attack would definitely go down in history. Not only would it be written into the history of mankind, but the future generations learning about the past would certainly be told about this day. It was a tale that was not lacking in inspiration. What the hell are you talking about? We need the numbers to calculate the donations and use them for business later. Of course, Oh Seichan was different. Hey, really I should have made a website instead of using YouTube I bet they won't even collect any donations for this. His dissatisfaction made his subordinates completely speechless. Ah. Then the broadcast started. And Isaac Ivanov's face appeared on the screen. They cleared it. The attack was successful. Everyone cheered at this fact. It was the moment that the thought that it could be a trick or something Isaac Ivanov prepared before he died, disappeared. They weren't the only ones. It's Isaac. It's not a Last Testament broadcast. I'm so happy, the Savior has returned. The chat window beside the broadcast was filled with cheers. The entire world began to cheer and praise like they were competing with each other. The world was filled with joy. I'm so happy to be able to interact with you like this once again. 
And in such pandemonium, Isaac Ivanov started speaking. And as a result, the world gradually calmed down as everyone began to pay attention to Isaac Ivanov. In such a situation, Isaac Ivanov said. First, I'd like to deal with the traitor. At that moment, the atmosphere around the world changed. Traitor? What does he mean? Oh Seichan's subordinates couldn't help but be surprised when they heard Isaac Ivanov's unexpected statement. They, who were closer to Isaac Ivanov than anyone else, were the most perplexed. A traitor? What is he talking about? Was there a traitor? No way, were they behind this terrorist attack? Wait, doesn't that mean Isaac Ivanov knows who the traitor is? How? Isaac Ivanov's words caused numerous questions to appear in the minds of his audience. It was at this time that Isaac Ivanov turned the camera, allowing them to see a man bound to a chair. Kim Woo Jin. Kim Woo Jin. This man was none other than Kim Woo Jin. What's going on? He looks injured. Was he tortured? Only. The appearance of Kim Woo Jin, who was bound tightly, showed signs of torture, or something similar to it. Everyone became shocked when they saw this. Even the constantly flowing chat at the side froze. In this situation, Isaac Ivanov's voice came from behind the camera. Kim Woo Jin, why did you betray me? Chapter, 268 Kim Woo Jin, why did you betray me? Kim Woo Jin who was bound to the chair didn't answer when the soft voice echoed in the tent. Instead, he pleaded. I have never betrayed you. Isaac Ivanov didn't respond to his plea. Instead, he asked another question. Can you bet your life on those words? Ha! Huh? Kim Woo Jin was surprised. Isaac Ivanov gestured with his chin to a skeleton soldier standing in a corner of the tent. Rattle! Then, the skeleton soldier flashed Achilles' sword in its hand. You say you didn't betray me I'd be happy to believe you if you took your life to prove yourself. Kim Woo Jin clenched his jaws at those words. His eyes shook. How long had it been? If my death is what you need to prove it, then I'll gladly do so. As if it had been waiting for Kim Woo Jin to say those words, the skeleton soldier cut the rope that bound Kim Woo Jin to the chair. This should not have been an easy task. The rope used to bind players was naturally special, yet the skeleton's sword cut through it like it was a string. Keek, keek. The rope, which was extremely durable, began to snap one after the other, setting Kim Woo Jin free. The skeleton soldier then retreated back to its position. And as it stepped back, it threw Achilles' sword, which it had been holding, to Kim Woo Jin's feet. Naturally, everyone's attention became focused on Kim Woo Jin, who had been set free, and the sword at his feet. SSK. With a dragging sound, Kim Woo Jin picked up the sword. PUK. Then he stabbed it into his own stomach. Mm. Kim Woo Jin's face contorted as he felt the pain of the blade piercing into his belly, and a fishy smell filled the room as his blood began to drip down to his feet. A puddle of blood appeared on the floor in an instant. Isaac. Kim Woo Jin, who was bleeding heavily, called out Isaac Ivanov's name, and Isaac Ivanov raised his head to look at Kim Woo Jin. The two looked into each other's eyes. That was why no one noticed. That the blood beneath Kim Woo Jin's feet had suddenly come to life. Tuck. The blood he shed had become a blood golem which immediately tried to destroy the camera they were filming with. Isaac. As Isaac Ivanov turned around to see what was happening, Kim Woo Jin shouted his name once again as he rushed towards him. He brandished Achilles' sword, which had been stabbed into his stomach, towards Isaac Ivanov. Isaac. It was at that moment. When Kim Woo Jin shouted Isaac Ivanov's name, the camera suddenly lost its balance and fell to the floor and all that could be heard through the live broadcast was the sound of static and a faint rumbling. What was that? What's happening? Fuck, what's going on? As a result, the chat which had fallen silent because of the unexpected situation became lively once again. Because the live broadcast showed no signs of being fixed, the people naturally began to talk to each other. Kim Woo Jin was a traitor. Kim Woo Jin just attacked Isaac Ivanov, didn't he? Isn't this too much like a movie? Is this really a live broadcast? 
Are we sure they're not filming a movie? What the fuck is going on? Of course, it wasn't really a conversation. Everyone just spat out what they thought without stopping. Even Oh Seichan's office was the same. Hey, what the hell's going on? Kim Woo Jin attacked Isaac Ivanov. Furthermore, the confusion they felt was more pronounced because they knew the truth about Isaac Ivanov and Kim Woo Jin's identities. Only one person seemed satisfied with this situation as he had a soft smile on his lips, Oh Seichan. When the world was once again descending into chaos because of the unknown situation, Isaac Ivanov once again appeared before the camera. Without wasting any time, Isaac Ivanov spoke briefly. From this moment on, the Savior Guild is hereby disbanded TL, poor Master Park Yongwan. From this moment on, the Savior Guild is hereby disbanded. It was a short but utterly shocking statement. But what came next was even more shocking. And I would like to formally request to join the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov requested to join the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov's return was something no one could have expected. Then the betrayal of Isaac Ivanov's closest aide, Kim Woo Jin was revealed, and the broadcast was suddenly ended. And when the disbandment of the Savior Guild was announced after the chaos, the situation reached an indescribable state, and it honestly became impossible for anyone to properly judge what exactly was going on. It was the moment when the world's thought circuits had basically exploded. To put it into computer terms, the computer had been shut down. Then, as the computer began to reboot once again, Isaac Ivanov said. He revealed information that was even more shocking. What did he say? Isaac Ivanov requested to join the Messiah Guild. Formally. Wait. Doesn't that mean Isaac Ivanov would become a member of the Messiah Guild? On the other hand, it was news that everyone in the world thought they would only be able to see in their dreams. This was natural. People around the world watched the competitions between the Messiah Guild and Savior Guild and cheered for either side, but the thing they wanted to see the most, was for these two guilds to merge. Lee Sejun and Isaac Ivanov, these two saviors, united to save the world. And now the wishes of countless people in the world had actually come true at this moment. Of course, the Messiah Guild still had to give an answer, but no one really paid much attention to that part. It's a wonderful story. Oh Seichan clapped lightly at this fact. Two heroes competing to save the world, one of them is betrayed and decides to join the other how about it? Doesn't that sound good enough to make a Hollywood movie? At those words, Oh Seichan's subordinates could only stare at him with their mouths open, speechless. They had prepared to face some kind of unexpected scenario. But who would have imagined something so extraordinary? Oh Seichan smiled slightly when he saw his subordinates' reactions. Woo woo. Then the old, worn out feature phone in Oh Seichan's pocket began vibrating, and he couldn't help but smile wider. Now I get to talk to the lead actor. Were your acting skills always this good? At Oh Seichan's words, Kim Woo Jin looked at the blazing flames surrounding the burning tent in front of him and said. What about the others? We're monitoring them in real time but there hasn't been any movement yet well, it's obvious how things will turn out anyway. The earthquake-like situation caused by Isaac Ivanov had shaken the world. And of course, the tsunami was coming next. Park Yongwan will be the most hurried. I suppose so. Among them, the one whose situation was most urgent was Park Yongwan, who'd colluded with Kim Woo Jin to get rid of Isaac Ivanov. In a situation where Isaac Ivanov was thought to be dead, it was none other than Park Yongwan who had the most to gain. That was always the case. Whenever a crime like murder occurred, the people who had the most to gain from the victim's death were always the first suspects. So from that perspective, it was natural for Park Yongwan to be the most suspicious one in this situation. Since Isaac Ivanov was trapped in a dungeon, all of the authority of the giant guild, which could threaten even the Messiah guild, had been entrusted to Park Yongwan. Him, Shakira and Johan George will definitely meet to discuss countermeasures. Shakira and Johan George, who had also been a part of the plan, would also meet to discuss what they should do. Kim Woo Jin was caught, so there is no guarantee that they couldn't also get caught. With Kim Woo Jin being punished as a traitor, they had no choice but to keep the worst-case situation of them suffering the same fate in mind. 
well, the conclusion that they'll reach is also obvious. But the options that they could take were obvious. They have no choice but to dismantle the Savior Guild first. That's right. Isaac Ivanov had already announced the dissolution of the Savior Guild. In such a situation, what would happen if they defied such an order? It would be the same as confessing that they were the ones who tried to kill Isaac Ivanov. After all, since Isaac Ivanov had returned, he once again became the master and owner of the Savior Guild. Park Yongwan, Shakira and Johann George had finally managed to reach a peak that they could only look at before. Nevertheless, it was not a good thing to stand in Isaac Ivanov's way just to protect this crown. After that, they'll contact the Messiah Guild. So, following Isaac Ivanov's words, they would also contact the Messiah Guild. Since Isaac Ivanov himself had requested to join the Messiah Guild, this was the natural choice. They will surrender themselves without asking for any conditions. Of course, there would be no such thing as a deal during the process. They would surrender just so they could save their lives. However, the Messiah Guild will just look at their proposals. However, the Messiah Guild would never give them an easy answer. No, they're even going to hold off answering Isaac Ivanov's question as much as they could. Furthermore, the Messiah Guild would delay responding to Isaac Ivanov's request to join their guild. They had to do that. Because they don't have a choice. From the Messiah Guild's perspective, their answer was already set in stone. Right, there's no way they can deny Isaac Ivanov's request to join their guild Lee Sejun, who has now become the only savior, could never do that no matter what. Above all, Isaac Ivanov's request to join the Messiah Guild was the same as declaring to the world that he recognized Lee Sejun as the only savior. The Messiah Guild was right. Lee Sejun was the savior who would save the world. In such a situation, the Messiah Guild would have no choice but to play the role of the perfect savior better than ever before. That's why they'll make more mistakes. That's why they had to worry even more. They had to prepare in the shortest time possible prepare to kill Isaac Ivanov. After all, they had to prepare to kill Isaac Ivanov. The best of the best around the world, the real members of the Messiah Guild would have to be called out. Of course, the members would be all those who pretended to be saviors to deceive the world, those who knew the truth about the Messiah Guild. It was a great opportunity to dig it up from the roots. That was why Kim Woo Jin had prepared and acted for so long. There were countless great players gathered under the name Lee Sejun. So there was only one thing left. So are you confident? Whether he was truly capable of hunting those who pretended to be saviors in order to devour the world? Kim Woo Jin answered this question. I'm confident. Good, then I'll move as planned. The call ended after that, and Kim Woo Jin destroyed the feature phone in his hand before placing it in a plastic bag. Lee Jin Ah, who had been listening carefully to their conversation, then said. Why did you put it in a plastic bag? Wouldn't it be better to just throw it in the fire over there? It didn't make sense to wrap it up separately when there was a fire that could burn the evidence. Because this isn't a movie. However, that was only seen in movies. Unless the fire was hellfire, which would disintegrate the phone completely, the fire would only melt the feature phone, leaving the possibility for evidence to be found. Lee jin -ah laughed at Kim Woo Jin's answer. Didn't you just film a movie? After saying that, Lee jin -ah pretended to stab himself in the stomach. I will commit suicide to prove myself. After that, he pretended to pull out the sword and shouted. And he acted the same way Kim Woo Jin had. Ku, it was amazing. Lee jin -ah smiled teasingly at Kim Woo Jin. You will definitely receive an Oscar at the end of the year Best Actor Award for Isaac Ivanov, and Best Supporting Actor for Kim Woo Jin. Then, as though he just remembered something, Lee Jina said. Wait, but what about Ba Meng? Ba Meng was the weapon Kim Woo Jin had borrowed from the Dragon Slayer to kill Isaac Ivanov. But now, Kim Woo Jin had failed his task, and had even died. So what would happen to Ba Meng? Kim Woo Jin answered calmly. That's the Dragon Slayer's problem. To this, Lee jin -ah said. And the Dragon Slayer will receive the pushover award. Kim Woo Jin simply turned his back to Lee jin -ah, who could only click his tongue. It was clear that he was ready to leave, so Lee jin -ah followed him while saying. 
What's the plan for the future? The plan from now on is simple join the Messiah Guild and enter a dungeon with Li Sejun. Li Jina couldn't help but feel a bit anxious. Only. But isn't that too dangerous? If they have the time to prepare, regardless of if you say. It wasn't a good thing to give your enemy too much time to prepare for battle. That's right. Kim Wu Jin also knew this. Therefore we have to shake them a little so that they won't be able to prepare fully. Kim Wu Jin truly began planning to put his sword in Li Sejun's chest. Chapter 269 The Eve of the Storm The atmosphere in the place in which Park Shinhai and the other executives of the Messiah Guild gathered was just right. The atmosphere was brighter than ever. The people gathered were talking and smiling so cheerfully with each other that there would be nothing strange if they brought out champagne. No one believed that they had just discussed their plans to dominate the world. Forget everything we just talked about. After explaining her plan in more grander than anyone else, Park Shinhai turned her words to trash. I will now brief everyone on the current situation Isaac Ivanov has come back alive and Kim Woojin is dead at the same time, Isaac Ivanov has noticed Kim Woojin's betrayal. Suddenly. And. A man interrupted Park Shinhai's words. Normally, if this happened, Park Shinhai's gaze would have become cold. He requested to join the Messiah Guild. However, no one would dare to glance coldly at the one who said those words. Because it was none other than Li Sejun who spoke. At that moment, everyone's gazes turned to Li Sejun, and with their attention, he continued. I'll accept Isaac Ivanov's request to join the guild. There were no questions or objections. Because Li Jina would never allow anyone to question him directly. Before that, I intend to create an elite to eliminate Isaac Ivanov. Even when he said that, there were no questions. And will take as long as possible to do it. As expected, there were, once again, no questions. More importantly, Li Sejun's words were reasonable enough to convince everyone gathered there. It was impossible to refuse Isaac Ivanov's entry into the guild. Still, it was also impossible for them to let Isaac Ivanov live. Eventually, Isaac Ivanov would have to be eliminated, and in order to do that, they would have no choice but to gather the best talents in the Messiah Guild who knew their true goal. All of that took time. Therefore, everyone there began to think about how they could carry out what Lee Sejun said. Among them, Park Shinhai was the first to offer a suggestion. First, we can blame Isaac Ivanov for murder. Murder? There is no real evidence, but we can be certain that he killed Kim Woo Jin during that broadcast we can use the media and claim he broadcasted the murder live to the world, I'm sure that would be able to stall him for a while. Then I can meet with Park Yong Wan. As if to compete with her suggestion, the Bao God spoke out. Park Yong Wan will definitely surrender to our side as a condition to accept him, we can make him drag out the Savior Guild's disbandment process. What about if we carried out another terror attack to divert the public's attention for a while? One by one, each of them began making their own suggestions on how to stall for time. This discussion continued for a while. All right, let's stop for now and get up. After a while, fatigue began to set in from their long discussion, so Park Shinhai concluded the meeting appropriately. We don't know when we might need to call you urgently, so everyone please stay on standby in case of an emergency. Following that, everyone got up from their seats and began leaving one by one. Finally, Lee Sejun and Park Shinhai stood up. The conference room, which had been noisy before, was now quiet. At that time, the atmosphere in the room became a bit stiffer TL, this transition felt strange to me, but it didn't seem like anything was missing from the Ross. Everyone, please have a seat. Everyone who had disappeared outside once again sat back in their seats with serious expressions on their faces. Then Park Shinhai spoke to them. We received urgent news a nine-floor dungeon was found in Iraq additionally, the nine-floor dungeon didn't have a rank. This news was the reason everyone had returned to their seats with serious expressions. However, the faces of those seated were much harder than the weight of this news. No, it could be said that they were so firm they were almost dark. And the discoverer was. The reason for that was simple. Isaac Ivanov. They had confirmed that they didn't have much time. 
If this nine floor dungeon is really the last dungeon, then it's impossible to stall for time with a clumsy media play. As Park Shinhai said, if this nine floor was the final dungeon, the world would pray for the Messiah Guild to attack it. And they would hope that they'd join forces with the great hero, Isaac Ivanov, as soon as possible in order to do it. If they were to clumsily try to do a media play in order to prolong the time, it was highly likely that they would be caught in the headwind. I will confirm the existence of the Nine Floor Dungeon. One person spoke up after hearing Park Shinhai's words. And if that truly is the final dungeon, then I will accept Isaac Ivanov on the spot. It was Lee Sejun who said those words with a cold expression. One month we have to create a team to kill Isaac Ivanov in that time. The hunt began. People tend to believe what they want. Objectively speaking, it was possible for them to believe that didn't make sense as long as they wanted to believe it. That's why mathematicians thought that they could win the lottery even when they often said the odds of winning the lottery were not fair. Isaac Ivanov requests to join the Messiah Guild. Therefore, when Isaac Ivanov requested to join the Messiah Guild, people did not doubt that the Messiah Guild would accept him. Because that was exactly what the world wanted. A nine-floor dungeon has been discovered. The discoverer was Isaac Ivanov. That's why, in the situation where a nine-floor dungeon was said to have been found, the world chose to believe it and didn't doubt it even a bit. Together with Isaac Ivanov, the Messiah Guild will definitely be able to attack the nine-floor dungeon. If Isaac Ivanov, who can attack a B-rank eight-floor dungeon alone, joins the Messiah Guild, the nine-floor dungeon will not be much work. They will definitely clear the nine-floor dungeon. No one doubted that the Messiah Guild would be able to clear the nine-floor dungeon with Isaac Ivanov. Is the nine-floor dungeon the last dungeon? The nine-floor has no rank and no level restrictions. And when it was discovered that the nine-floor dungeon might be the last one, the world no longer demanded trust. Is it the last dungeon? Has the final dungeon really appeared? It has to be. No matter how many people it takes, we have to finish it. Finish the game. The world was not asking and praying for the saviors to grant their wish. Of course, Kim Woojin knew. Those guys will never attack the Nine Floor Dungeon. The Messiah Guild had no intention of attacking the Nine Floor Dungeon. He knew that the Messiah Guild had no intention of being a savior. And the world will not tolerate that fact. However, as he'd said before, the world had no intention of accepting this fact. In such a situation, the Messiah Guild only had one option. It would take a shocking sacrifice to calm the world's desires Isaac Ivanov's sacrifice. And that was calming the world by sacrificing Isaac Ivanov. They would claim that it was still too early to target the Nine Floor Dungeon. They would make up something else whether it's the King of Undead, the King of Extreme Poison, whoever. After that, they would create new enemies in order to postpone the attack on the Nine Floor Dungeon even further. They'd keep doing that until the real competitors disappeared. And the moment they became convinced that they'd taken complete control of the world, the moment when no one but them would be able to attack the Nine Floor Dungeon, they would take off their savior masks. That's why they will try to kill me. In other words, the Messiah Guild had no choice but to kill Isaac Ivanov. That was why Kim Woojin waited. Lee Sejun will do it himself. For Lee Sejun to personally make his move to kill Isaac Ivanov. And to his waiting, Lee Sejun responded. The Messiah Guild checks the existence of the Nine Floor Dungeon. Most of the large guilds develop their power through close cooperation with their respective governments. Therefore, their field of activity did not exceed that of a national sports team. Of course, the Messiah Guild was an exception. They were supported by the world and worked around the world, and in return, the governments around the world had no choice but to open their doors to the Messiah Guild who demanded to attack dungeons around the world. But there were naturally exceptions to this act by the Messiah Guild. For example, South America. With the loss of government function, this place, which had become a land of outlaws, was difficult to operate in for many reasons. Another such place was none other than the Middle East. The Messiah Guild is not the savior. The Middle East, which was filled with scriptures from the Quran and kneeling people crying out to Allah with their hands in the air, called the Messiah Guild's actions heresy and ostracized them. 
Some Muslim countries made friendly gestures to the Messiah Guild, but it was only a small portion of them. None of the great religious leaders made any friendly gestures towards the Messiah Guild. That was why radical Islamists were the most likely suspects when the Messiah Guild was attacked. Therefore, the world was surprised when the Messiah Guild claimed they would be going to Hilla, the capital of Babylon province, Iraq, where the nine-floor dungeon was discovered, to confirm the existence of the dungeon. Isn't that dangerous? What if there's another terrorist attack? Will they act like bastards again? TL, bad sentence, I had to change it. Some feared that there would be an act of terrorism that might spark something akin to war. However, no one thought about stopping them. But there's nothing we can do about it if the nine-floor dungeon is the last dungeon, they have to attack it somehow. If it's confirmed that the nine-floor dungeon is the last dungeon, then the Messiah Guild has to attack it, even if it means going to war with the Muslims TL, author favorability, minus 100. The dungeon had to be attacked. In any case, the world responded to the Messiah Guild's actions. The US military promises to support the Messiah Guild. China and Russia also promised to support the Messiah Guild. Attacking the Messiah Guild means going to war with the entire world. They promised the best support so that no one dared to interfere with the Messiah Guild. Thus the Messiah Guild's team reached the location of the nine-floor dungeon with a better escort than anyone else in the world. And on this stage, where Babylon had been located in the past, people gathered in front of the enormous dungeon gate that soared into the air like an obelisk. Those gathered were naturally reporters. Reporters who were set to attend the press conference that the Messiah Guild would hold to discuss their thoughts after confirming the nine-floor dungeon. Who will be the representative? These reporters were interested in who the representative of the Messiah Guild in the press conference would be. Of course, there was only a certain number of people who could do such a thing. It's most likely that Park Shinhai would be the representative. It could be the Bao God. Maybe they will send the right person who wouldn't provoke the Muslims players like Cho Sungwoo would be appropriate the type of player who has a brilliant career but not much of a presence. There certainly weren't many people who could stand on such a stage. That was why they were greatly surprised. Lee Sejun. It's Lee Sejun. Because it was none other than Lee Sejun who came out to represent the Messiah Guild. Oh my God, Lee Sejun came personally. Unbelievable. Something really crazy has occurred. All the officials gathered, including the media, were shocked at the unannounced and truly unthinkable situation. And in the face of such shock, Lee Sejun carried out his task perfectly in an elegant manner. He stood in front of the dungeon and stretched out his hand. King of Kings. Floors, 9. Difficulty, none. Maximum number of entries, 99. Requirement, none. Challenge conditions, defeat all the monsters on the floor. Then the information of the nine-floor dungeon appeared before him. The stage to save the world had appeared in front of the Savior. After confirming this, Lee Sejun immediately turned around and walked to the microphone in front of the prepared podium. And he said to everyone gathered. This nine-floor dungeon is the final dungeon. The moment this confirmation came out, all the reporters stiffened. They didn't even think about asking any questions. No, they never thought about doing that. In the first place, all the reporters gathered there were selected by the Messiah Guild and were followers of the Messiah Guild who were ready to write whatever the Messiah Guild told them to. They were those who unconditionally supported Lee Sejun as their savior. That was why it was impossible for these people to even think about asking Lee Sejun questions. Then do you plan to attack the nine-floor dungeon? But in such a situation, a reporter wearing a baseball cap and sunglasses asked a question without hesitation. Are you going to accept Isaac Ivanov into your guild? And before Lee Sejun could even answer, he asked another question. Psycho. Who the hell is that? It was like blasphemy. If it was a reporter from a company controlled by the Messiah Guild, they wouldn't dare to do such a thing. So those gathered there were certain. He isn't a reporter on the Messiah Guild side. A different person. This person was not someone who'd passed the Messiah Guild screening process. And they were not there with the intention of assisting the Messiah Guild. A terrorist? 
thinking that it could perhaps be a terrorist, the other reporters couldn't help but step back. On the other hand, the real reporter held his camera high. He expressed his determination to properly record the events happening even if it meant risking his life. In such a situation, the reporter who asked the questions and Lee Sejun silently faced each other. The reporter didn't avoid Lee Sejun's gaze. And Lee Sejun didn't ask the reporter about his identity or affiliation, nor did he gesture for the reporter to leave. The moment I am confident I can attack this dungeon, I will come here again. Instead, he answered easily. And that's when we will end this game and save the world. It was a savior-like answer that one had come to expect from Lee Sejun. To that answer, the reporter said. Then what about Isaac Ivanov's addition to the guild? Is it set? Or is it on hold? He once again asked questions. Oh my god. The atmosphere in the clearing froze. Only. In this atmosphere, Lee Sejun spoke calmly. I made a promise to the world I will do everything to save this world that transformed into a game if attacking this nine-floor dungeon is the way to end the game, then I will definitely do it somehow and if this means joining together with Isaac Ivanov, I will do so happily. After giving his answer, Lee Sejun continued in Russian instead of English. Is this answer enough, Isaac Ivanov? In response to that, the reporter raised his head, removed his sunglasses, and responded in Russian. It's enough. Chapter, 270. It's enough. That was the moment when the thing the people in the world wanted the most happened in a spectacular manner. It was a scene that could not have been accomplished without some directing. As expected. In other words, it had to be something that was agreed upon beforehand. First of all, it didn't make sense that the Messiah Guild wouldn't know that Isaac Ivanov hid his identity and mixed in with the group of reporters. After all, in this time when the risk of terrorist attacks was extremely high, it was natural for them to thoroughly check the identity of the reporters who would be covering the press conference. And if someone had really been hiding amongst the reporters and displayed hostile intentions towards Lee Sejun, the snipers deployed around the area would not have hesitated. The Messiah Guild had no choice but to do this. This meant that the Messiah Guild had spoken to Isaac Ivanov before Lee Sejun went up. They told him that they would accept his request to join the guild. And they also gave him a scene to act. He would pretend to be a reporter and ask Lee Sejun a few questions. Join me. And when Lee Sejun called him, he would go up onto the stage and stand together with him. Following what he'd been told, Kim Woo Jin walked onto the stage and stood in front of Lee Sejun. Every reporter raised their camera at this scene. However, no one pressed the shutters for their cameras just yet. There was no limit to the number of times they could press the shutter, but everyone knew that there was only one moment that they truly needed to get a picture of. The moment they shake hands is the best time to take a picture. The only photo that would be taken today was one of the moment Lee Sejun and Isaac Ivanov shook hands in front of the gate of the final dungeon. As if responding to their anticipation, Lee Sejun stretched out his hand. This was the last scene that had been given to him by the Messiah Guild. Of course, Kim Woo Jin's scene was a little different. I won't follow their scenario. Then Isaac Ivanov turned around. Instead of looking at Lee Sejun, he looked at the reporters. There's only one reason why I chose to abandon everything I.D. achieved so far and join the Messiah Guild and that is because only the Messiah Guild has the will to truly end this game and faced with the opportunity to end this game and save the world I have no reason to hesitate. And said. Under the name of the Messiah Guild, we will target an A-rank 8-floor dungeon and we will prove that the Messiah Guild is qualified to climb to the last floor. He declared to the world. On June 1st, we will finish all of our preparations. Afterwards, Kim Woo Jin, wearing Isaac Ivanov's mask, turned to look at Lee Sejun once again. Then he grabbed his outstretched hand and shook it. Save this world with me let's put an end to this game. Kim Woo Jin had finally returned to the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov officially becomes a member of the Messiah Guild. The world went wild when the thing it wanted to happen the most truly happened. Isaac Ivanov, I will put an end to this game under the banner of the Messiah Guild. Isaac Ivanov, I will save the world in 2026 foot. And to such enthusiasm, Isaac Ivanov continued to pour oil. Finally. 
the day of salvation is approaching. The world began to burn with a moment that would leave no ashes. This is no joke. In front of this heat, even Li Jina, who had overcome numerous hardships couldn't help but sweat. The heat that could be felt even through his smartphone was truly different. If we do this, we'll really end the world. It was no exaggeration to say that if the Messiah Guild failed to attack the dungeon and save the world, the world would basically end. From the perspective of a person who was about to do this exact thing, it was hard to not tremble even within his soul. Of course, there was an exception to this. Kim Woo Jin, who was in the same situation, and could even be called the mastermind behind the situation, showed no reaction at all. Instead, he continued to arm his skeletons with items he obtained from Oh Se Chan. Amazing, you're really amazing. Li Jin Ah couldn't help but express his admiration at such a sight. Of course, this admiration didn't last very long. Are you sure we'll have the advantage? Will we finish all of our preparations by June? In order to prevent the Messiah Guild from prolonging the time too long, Kim Woo Jin had given them a limited amount of time. In other words, Kim Woo Jin also had to be ready to face the Messiah Guild in that time. The Messiah Guild's team will also be different from any other we've encountered so far, wouldn't they? It wasn't just preparing to defend themselves, it was preparation to devour the elite team created by the Messiah Guild in order to destroy Isaac Ivanov. This was completely incomparable to any of the dangers or crises that Kim Woo Jin had faced before. Moreover, Kim Woo Jin also had to attack an eight floor dungeon while dealing with such a Messiah Guild. We have to attack the dungeon. They had to clear an A rank dungeon, the peak of eight floors. It was a mountain that they had to cross. Are you scared? Kim Woo Jin suddenly threw a question towards Li Jina. Li Jina responded immediately. Hey, I'm the manly Li Jina manly Li Jina I said there's no such word as scared in my dictionary. With those words, Li Jina tapped his chest heavily. Kim Woo Jin responded briefly. That's a relief. Huh? Relief? Li Jina couldn't help but ask this question as he heard the sudden phrase from Kim Woo Jin. From now on, it starts for real. Starts for real. Woo Woo. Suddenly, Kim Woo Jin's feature phone, which was sitting on the shelf beside him began to vibrate. After reading the text he received, Kim Woo Jin immediately threw the phone to Li Jina. What? When he read the text, Li Jina couldn't help but make a strange expression, wondering if he forgot how to read Korean. Then, his expression stiffened. The Sword Saint joined the Messiah Guild. The Sword Saint joins the Messiah Guild. Sword Saint, I will now save the world together with the Messiah Guild. The Sword Saint finally joins the Bao God in the Messiah Guild. The Sword Saint. For the Japanese, he was the player who represented their country. He was also their last pride. For the Japanese, he was their last pride that could stand against the Messiah Guild, a Korean guild. That was why the shock generated from his induction into the Messiah Guild was much larger than anyone expected. What was more shocking, was the fact that that was only the beginning. Executives from the Great One Guild transfer to the Messiah Guild. A large number of executives from the Kunlun Guild join the Messiah Guild. Including members from the top five guilds, a large amount of talented players began joining the Messiah Guild almost like a domino effect. What's going on? Why is everyone suddenly transferring to the Messiah Guild? This situation was inevitably shocking in many ways. Why do you think? The Messiah Guild is definitely going to save the world now. There aren't any blind bastards who would dare to stand against the Messiah Guild now, are there? The tide is already on the Messiah Guild side. Of course, no one raised any objections to this. And in a way, this was to be expected. The Messiah Guild is on the rise. We're betting everything on the Messiah Guild. After all, the final dungeon had appeared, and Isaac Ivanov and the Messiah Guild were joining forces in order to clear this dungeon. With the Messiah Guild's announcement that they would attack the 9-floor dungeon after attacking the 8-floor dungeon in June, going under any banner other than the Messiah Guilds was the same as boarding a sinking ship. It seemed wiser to transfer to the Messiah Guild while there was still space. The Messiah Guild becomes the one true guild. The five great guilds have virtually collapsed. 
Now, there is only one great guild, the Messiah Guild. It was the moment when the Messiah Guild reached its peak. I think more than 40 of the top 100 players are in the Messiah Guild doesn't that mean they encompass the whole world. It was also the moment that the Messiah Guild had truly spread across the entire world. Right, that's why the Messiah Guild will probably reveal their true self. And it was the moment the Messiah Guild revealed their true faces. There are so many people who deceived the world. After confirming this fact in the last news article, Kim Woo Jin recalled his memories before he returned to the past. He recalled the faces of those who had looked at him as though he was just a crazy dog running around like a hunting dog without knowing the truth that lay below his belief that they would save the world. Recalling those faces, Kim Woo Jin waited for the right moment. I'll cut them down from the root. Before long, that moment came. June 1st, the Messiah Guild's A Rank 8 Floor Dungeon attack commences. The Messiah Guild gathers in China to take down the Ogre Lord. On June 1st, the Messiah Guild gathered in China. Chengdu, capital of the Sichuan province, China. Chengdu, which was usually filled with people, was instead filled with silence for the first time. Despite the fact that it was the middle of the day with the burning sun high in the sky instead of night, no one walked the streets. Instead, tanks filled the streets that were usually covered in motorcycles and other vehicles, and soldiers could be seen in every corner standing at the ready. The military discipline displayed by these people was beyond description. At first glance, you might even think they were mannequins. However, there were people there that were even more disciplined than these soldiers. We will enter the dungeon in 30 minutes. The discipline displayed by the members of the Messiah Guild, who were making their final preparations before the attack on the 8th floor dungeon went beyond the level of looking like mannequins. Gulp. The staff of the Messiah Guild's dungeon support team could not help but swallow their saliva at this sight. It's really terrifying. Those watching this ground couldn't help but feel afraid. Of course, this wasn't to say that they didn't understand. Well, a dungeon is a dungeon. After all, the difficulty of this dungeon attack was something that couldn't be properly put into words. Firstly, it was a rank. What kind of monster is the Ogre Lord? Second, the boss of this dungeon was none other than the Ogre Lord. It was a stage whether the ruler of the ogres, monsters that were already quite terrifying, had appeared. And there was something even more pressing than these things. After this is the Nine Floor Dungeon. Most of the players who were gathered there would also take part in the attack on the final dungeon. In the face of such circumstances, it was natural for even these players who had reached the top to feel nervous. But the staff there didn't know. In this dungeon, we have to defeat Isaac Ivanov. We have to defeat that monster who can clear an eight-floor dungeon on his own. The thing these players intended to hunt was probably many times stronger than the Ogre Lord. It'll be impossible without some sacrifices. They were certain that not a few players would die in the process. No, in fact, they had already decided who would sacrifice themselves first when it was required. Therefore, it was natural that those who would have to sacrifice themselves and become stepping stones to feel pressured. Isaac Ivanov is here. Then, the notification that Isaac Ivanov had arrived reached their ears. Everyone looked up when they heard that. Subconsciously, their faces became a bit dark. Master Lee Sejun is here. It was the arrival of Lee Sejun that lightened the looks on their faces. Right, we still have Lee Sejun. The moment they heard that name, firm faith arose on their darkened faces. Moreover, this wasn't because of some mistaken belief that this man would save the world. We have this great man, who will create the greatest empire to ever appear in human history, above us. They had faith in the grand ambitions of the man who had completely deceived the entire world in order to turn it into his own empire. And this faith was stronger than the one that was based upon the belief that he was a savior. It wasn't much longer before they were notified. Start entering the dungeon. Chapter, 271. It was a dome. A dome made up of layers of concrete. The dungeon gate is currently in that dome and that dome can even withstand missile attacks. A dome that could even withstand missile attacks. There's no way to enter the dome from the outside. At the same time, it was a dome without an entrance. 
There's only one way to get in. There was only one way to enter the dome. And that's by going through one of the underground passages in total, there are four different underground passages each designed to withstand even a bunker buster. Entering through the underground passageways. All of these were created only after the Chinese government had paid hundreds of millions of dollars in construction costs. The reason they were made was simple. You will only be informed of your passageway 10 minutes before you enter and the passageways are all randomly selected. To prevent any sabotage that might hinder the Messiah Guild from trying to save the world. With all of these, I bet an accident is impossible. It was a plan prepared to prevent a similar incident to what happened to Isaac Ivanov on Jeju Island from happening. In other words, if it wasn't for Isaac Ivanov, there would never have been such precautions. Therefore, everyone paid attention to Isaac Ivanov's assessment. What did he think of their preparations? It's perfect. And under the attention of everyone else in the area, Isaac Ivanov gave the judgment that it was perfect. This meant that they only really needed to enter the dungeon now. Is the order the only thing left? Well if there was something that had to be decided, it was the order with which they entered the dungeon. In fact, there was really no need to choose. With such a perfect arrangement, in all honesty, they could just rush in all at once at that moment. But it was symbolic. Who would go in first? And also, who would go in last? In fact, there were only two people who could take up these symbolic positions. Isaac Ivanov and Lee Sejun. In such a situation, Isaac Ivanov said. Naturally, I will go in first. He was willing to take the lead. Since I'm the one who said we would carry out the attack, I naturally have to stand on the front lines. After hearing those words, Lee Sejun said. Then I'll be last. After this was decided, there was truly no need for them to talk about anything else in the real world. Then, let's begin. The first thing that greeted Kim Woo Jin when he entered the dungeon gate was a forest that was covered in white snow. Whoosh! A forest through which flowed a cold, gentle breeze. Come. However, Kim Woo Jin's gaze seemed to be even colder than the surroundings. In Isaac Ivanov's mask, the look in his eyes seemed to carry an eerie chill. With such a gaze, Kim Woo Jin looked at the dungeon gate. Then, one after the other, players began to appear. First, it was Lee Jina. The moment he spotted Kim Woo Jin, he nodded before moving away from the dungeon gate. Next was the Sword Saint. It's cold. The Sword Saint didn't even glance at Kim Woo Jin. You fucking bastard, now you've done it. This was because his relationship with Isaac Ivanov was obvious. If he made eye contact with Isaac Ivanov, he might expose his hate-filled gaze. In such a situation, it was the Sword Saint's disciples and subordinates that appeared after him. Next was Cho Sung Woo. Having experienced Isaac Ivanov's power before personally, he looked at Kim Woo Jin wearing the Isaac Ivanov mask as soon as he entered the dungeon before averting his gaze. We have to kill him this ridiculous monster. This was to hide the fact that he was actually terrified. In fact, this was not necessary. Because Kim Woo Jin's eyes had never turned to them. Kim Woo Jin had never been interested in them in the first place. After that, the players continued entering the dungeon one after the other, and soon the 887th player appeared. Park Shin Hai. As if expecting the cold, she appeared in a coat made from the fur of a flame beast, and looked around at the crowd. But Kim Woo Jin didn't pay any attention to her either. He still continued to look at nothing but the dungeon gate. Finally, the one Kim Woo Jin was waiting for appeared. Lee Se Jun. Appearing in shining armor, the grandeur he revealed was even more dazzling than the white forest around them. For the first time, Kim Woo Jin's eyes drifted away from the dungeon gate, instead coming to settle on Lee Se Jun. His eyes became yellow. You came. Horace eyes confirmed it. Really? Lee Sejun himself had entered. At the same time, they received a notification. Destroy all the ogres to proceed to the next floor. As if to remind them that the world would no longer know what happened in this dungeon. To this notification, Lee Sejun spoke. Begin the hunt. And Kim Woo Jin thought. Begin the hunt. 
the great players usually had nicknames that corresponded with their abilities. Lightning King, Sword Saint, Trinity, Dragon Slayer. It wasn't difficult to determine what abilities these players had from their nicknames. But not everyone was the same. This was the case for Isaac Ivanov. What nickname should we give to Isaac Ivanov? Isn't it Savior? No, not like that a nickname that represents Isaac Ivanov's abilities. Isaac Ivanov didn't have a nickname that represented his abilities. Of course, his abilities had already been revealed to the world without filtering, and there was no one who didn't know what he was capable of. It was just that they couldn't think of a good nickname for him. Hang on. At that point, people realized another question. Then what are Lee Sejun's abilities? Lee Sejun, who was also called the Savior, had no nickname to represent his abilities. In fact, only a few people even knew in detail what abilities Lee Sejun had. Isn't that top secret? To protect Lee Sejun, such a thing must never be revealed. It was to protect Lee Sejun, who was exposed to more threats than anyone else in the world. Revealing his abilities was like creating opportunities for assassins to easily target his weaknesses. Therefore, the Messiah Guild made considerable efforts to keep Lee Sejun's abilities hidden. But that wasn't the only reason Lee Sejun's abilities were unknown. Players who saw Lee Sejun's abilities always said one thing. The master's abilities are hard to explain. Lee Sejun's abilities were not easy to explain even for those who had seen them with their own eyes. This was literal. Lee Sejun's fighting style was completely different from normal players. Even among the few players who have the Guardian of Sacred Light as their halo, the master is unique I can't really tell you much about his legendary skills. The unique halo and the skills he gained from said halo were already beyond comparison. Nevertheless, they could only use one way to express Lee Sejun's skills. After a flash of light, the monsters all lost their fighting spirit and became frozen like statues, terrified. After a flash of light, everything was burned by white flames. Light flashed in the sky and then bolts of lightning struck down. Expressions that were difficult to understand just by listening to them. Of course, those who heard these expressions would laugh, thinking that the other person was just making a joke in order to sanctify Lee Sejun. But it was by no means a joke. It's just as they'd been told. The abilities that he'd heard about, and the abilities that Lee Sejun displayed before Kim Woo Jin's eyes were the same. Sacred Light Explodes Blinding Explosion As soon as the skill was activated, an explosion of bright light exploded, hitting the army of more than 700 fully armed ogres. Roar The ogre soldiers roared because of this light. The ogre soldiers have been blinded. And the reason for these roars was because the ogres found that they'd been blinded. Medusa's curse has activated. And the curse of Medusa which followed this bright light forced the ogres and even the heavily falling snow to stop moving. In that way, a wall of ogre soldiers had been created. Lee Sejun then created a spot of light above his palm and aimed it at the ogre soldiers. And after taking the form of a huge arrow, this light shot forward, burning everything in its path. Apollo's Arrow It was Apollo's Arrow, a legendary skill dedicated to the Guardian of the Sacred Light. This battle was hard to even describe as such. He's saving Zeus Lightning. Of course, Kim Woo Jin also knew that Lee Se Jun had the skill Zeus Lightning in addition to these two. But he didn't have to use it. In fact, there was no need for him to reveal it. Lee Se Jun had already sorted out the outcome of the battle with just two skills. A huge path had been created in the army of 700 ogres who had been frozen mid stride. Oh! As expected of the master. And it filled everyone who saw it with admiration and awe. Kyaha. And in this admiration, an army of skeletons appeared. Rattle. These skeletons rushed to ravenously eat at the table Lee Sejun had set. Puk. The skeleton soldiers who were shorter than the 5M tall ogres climbed onto their tall bodies and attacked their weak spots, like their eyes and throats. Ah! This scene caused the faces of the members of the Messiah Guild who were looking on to stiffen. Ha! And it was the appearance of the Death Knights that darkened this stiff expression. There were five. 
With their dignified appearances, the Death Knights didn't need to walk the path Lee Sejun had created. Nay. Instead, they charged directly towards the ogres atop their skeleton horses. Moreover, the Death Knights didn't bother to aim for their weaknesses. Instead, they used the weapons in their hands to easily devastate the ogres. Oh my god. So this is Isaac Ivanov? It's more than the rumors. Although the stage had been created by Lee Sejun, the members of the Messiah Guild were horrified by the performance of Isaac Ivanov's skeleton army which easily crushed the ogre wall like a bulldozer. They couldn't help but think. If it were the two of them the nine-floor dungeon wouldn't be a problem. If Lee Sejun and Isaac Ivanov were to attack the nine-floor dungeon, they could really clear it and save the world. That was why the expressions of the Messiah Guild's members became even harder. We have to kill Isaac Ivanov here somehow. We definitely have to kill him this time. Because they'd never wanted to end the game and save the world. It was then. Rohar. A fierce roar that shook the ground below came from the sky. The Wyvern King howls. The owner of this roar was none other than a Wyvern King. It was a monster that was three times the size of a normal Wyvern and could even compete with a dragon. Roar. What was even more surprising was the fact that there was a giant ogre riding on the back of the Wyvern King. It's an ogre knight. Ogre knight. It was the moment when a monster that could not be compared with other ogres, the ruler of the first floor, appeared. However, even though it appeared, it didn't reveal itself openly. Instead, it continued to look down at the sky and commanded its troops. The morale of the ogre soldiers has been greatly increased by the ogre knight's appearance. Following the orders of the Ogre Knight, the Ogre soldiers that had been waiting began to move. Thump, thump, thump. The ground shook, and the vegetation in their path was completely uprooted. Then the army began to let out their war cries. The Ogre soldiers roared at their enemies. It was at that moment. At the moment when it was easy to be shaken by the noises, a beam of light penetrated the head of the Ogre Knight, who was flying high in the sky on its mount. P.U.K. At the same time, the Wyvern King's head had also been pierced. Lee Sejun frowned slightly as the Ogre Knight and its mount began to fall to the ground. But Isaac Ivanov simply directed his skeleton army to meet the Ogre soldiers in battle without paying any mind to that fact. Ha! A massacre began. Get ready. Then Park Shin Hai reminded the others. We'll finish on the next floor as we planned. Find out next time on The Misadventures of Translator 7. Chapter, 272. All the ogres have been slain. Violation. That was the only word that could be used to describe Isaac Ivanov and Lee Sejun's attack on the first floor of the dungeon. It was overwhelming. There was no time to feel your body heat up or to feel any tension. Proceed to the next floor. Even the notifications that they received in this situation were unable to cause tension. Of course, Isaac Ivanov was different. He remained cautious and vigilant towards his surroundings. As soon as they entered the new floor, he immediately spread his senses and looked around. Survive for thirty days to proceed to the next floor. They were attacking the dungeon, so naturally, he would try to gather as much information as he could from their surroundings. In other words, Isaac Ivanov's attention was focused on understanding the dungeon. This also meant that the caution and vigilance he had towards other things would be considerably less. It was basically impossible to hope that Isaac Ivanov would be able to prevent a sudden attack from those he considered his allies in this situation. P.U.K. It happened in an instant. A long spear stabbed deep into Isaac Ivanov's side. Kook. As Isaac Ivanov turned around, shocked by this sudden attack, a bright flash of light exploded in front of his eyes. Sacred light explodes. Blinding explosion. Medusa's curse has activated. After seeing these notifications, Isaac Ivanov shouted. Lee Sejun. The answer he received was another notification. The effect of the Longinus Spear 1 makes it impossible to use skills. The Spear of Longinus. Isaac Ivanov could do nothing but shout in front of the spear which had rendered even God powerless. He moved to pull the spear from his body. 
he then gave a command to all of the skeletons around him. This order was simple. Destroy everything. Boom. Suddenly, a bright yellow bolt of lightning struck down upon Isaac Ivanov's head. Zeus lightning strikes. Zeus lightning. The lightning bolt struck Isaac Ivanov's head without giving him the chance to escape. At that moment, Isaac Ivanov's body froze. Boom boom. Zeus lightning kept striking down upon Isaac Ivanov's head. And because of this, Isaac Ivanov was unable to hear. The Bifrist has been activated. That the Messiah Guild had locked him up perfectly. Bifrist. The ultimate barrier spell that prevented anything from entering or leaving without the permission of the caster for six days. This was Park Shinhai's trump card. The moment this spell activated, the players from the Messiah Guild were certain. We've succeeded. We locked up Isaac Ivanov. When they first began to plan the hunting of Isaac Ivanov, there was one thing that the Messiah Guild was most worried about. Now he can't escape even if he has the Cap of Invisibility. And that was none other than the Cap of Invisibility. After all, it wouldn't be possible if he had the ability to hide himself at any time he was faced with a dangerous situation. Even if he has the Cap of Invisibility, he won't be able to escape the Bifrost. The only way to kill Isaac Ivanov was to confine him in an area. And now they've been able to confine him in the area within the Bifrost barrier. Of course, the attacks that had been dealt to Isaac Ivanov before that were certainly not enough to kill him. The attack from the Spear of Longinus could have been considered deadly, and the repeated attacks from Zeus Lightning would have paralyzed the target's thinking ability. But even that wasn't enough. Look it's a Dakibi. So while he was defenseless and trapped in the Bifrost, Isaac Ivanov would be forced to fight against Park Shinhai's seven-colored Dakibis. He would have to fight against these creatures that could even burn dragons without any weapons. An ordinary person wouldn't even be able to fight against a single lion with just their body. Therefore, this was basically the end of the Isaac Ivanov hunt. Now we just need to deal with Spashiba. All that was left was to deal with the remnants. This was much easier than I expected. The remnant was also unusual, but it wouldn't be too much of a problem for the Messiah Guild's members. It was then. Stay alert. A player came over to them as they were relaxing and gave them a warning. The battle isn't over yet. In the end, the Messiah Guild members could only nod. From now on, we'll be hunting Spashiba. Even when they heard these words, they still nodded without saying anything. No one doubted these words. There was nothing to doubt. The one who'd appeared was one of their colleagues who was also given the task of clearing up the remnants. Naturally, none of them noticed. You'd better be careful not to get killed by a monster while chasing him. The black flash in that person's eyes as he gave them this reminder. The most thrilling way to hunt was to catch your prey without making any preparations. And on the other hand, the least thrilling way to hunt was to be fully prepared and simply wait for your prey to walk into your trap. It's over. This just proves that our preparations were perfect. It was for that reason that the bow god responded to the sword saint in such a way as they stared at the hazy walls of the Bifrost. And it was for the same reason that the sword saint didn't say anything further after receiving this response. It's not over yet. It was Cho Sungwu who approached them and spoke. There's still his teammate. The silver armor that Cho Sun Wu was wearing was filled with dents and tears. These were signs of battle. They were the signs he gained while dealing with the monster known as the Death Knight. They were amazing signs. After all, those who could survive with just these traces after going up against such a ridiculous monster would not surpass 50 even if one was to search the entire world. Despite being such a talented man, Cho Sung Wu still spoke with a voice filled with apprehension. His teammate is also unnatural. He gave a sincere warning so that they would not look down on Isaac Ivanov's runaway teammate. He's the best tank I've ever seen. It was high praise. In fact, it was high to the point of feeling excessive. However, the Bao God and Sword Saint didn't doubt this praise. If you say it that much, then he must definitely be unnatural. After all, how could they not know what type of person Cho Sung Wu was? This should be interesting. More importantly, it was the Sword Saint and Bao God's task to hunt Isaac Ivanov's teammate. 
As some of the world's leading hunters, they knew better than to disregard a warning about their prey. Then let's move. And so, the two hunters also went to capture the remnants. Sheba. As soon as Li Jina let out a short complaint at the thick forest surrounding him, something came up behind him. Ah. As soon as he felt it, Li Jina turned around and saw a sword flying towards him at an incredible speed. Li Jina leaned his head to the side. Pite. The tip of the sword pierced through the space where Li Jina's head just was. At the same time, the sword chi emanating from the sword pierced the trees behind Li Jina. Instead of a sword, it was more like an attack from a gun. It was truly an eerie ability. Sheba. Li Jina roared and punched at the enemy who stabbed at him. This punch was incredibly powerful. Pak. Following a harsh sound, the body of the person who was hit by this punch soared into the air. But after reaching a decent height, they simply corrected their posture, flipped over and landed lightly on the ground. There were no attacks after that. Fuck. From Li Jina's perspective, this situation was even more annoying. From now on, he'd have to be worrying about when his enemy would attack him, and from where. Of course, there was one thing that made Li Jina a bit nervous. I'm surrounded. And that was the fact that he was actually surrounded in this thick forest. And make sure to read on Wupred Wonder if the aggregators will copy my embed, dash. Chapter, 273. In the thick forest which reduced his visibility to about three meters, the Messiah Guild's members were located in every direction centering around Li Jina. Many of them were the Sword Saint's disciples. Humph. And the Sword Saint himself was also there. He stood there waiting with one of his treasured swords, the Eo Jang One, sword, in his hand. It took six days. It was the moment the chase that lasted six days, came to an end. What an amazing guy. In other words, Li Jina had evaded them for six days. This was a remarkable achievement since he was chased by none other than the Messiah Guild's best hunters, led by the Sword Saint and Bao God. He deserves that praise. It was at that moment that he truly understood Cho Sung Wu's words. But that's all. Of course, the Sword Saint was certain that the chase would end today. There were two reasons for this certainty. One was the fact that they'd already caught up. The moment he stops my sword, the Bao God's arrow will end his life in an instant. And the other was that the sword saint was just a decoy for the Bao God. These were the reasons for his certainty. And with that conviction, the sword saint no longer had any doubts in his head. He returned his attention to the surroundings. Focus on this guy. Instead, he focused all of his concentration and senses upon his one prey, Li Jina. This was the Sword Saint's talent. From the start, he was the best at killing a target as long as he had a sword in his hand. In other words, what he did best wasn't to hold a sword and do fancy and flashy sword dances. It was to kill any target with a sword. It was his ability to predict a step ahead that made this possible. He didn't need to predict far into the future. Instead, all he needed was to predict the target's next step and move in preparation for that step. And with the Eo Jang sword in his hand, the sword saint had no doubts. Yeo Dong, Bin, S2, power settles within you. After putting the power of the sword god, Yeo Dong Bin, into the Eo Jang sword, before stabbing it towards his prey. In response to this attack, his prey leaned back and twisted himself to avoid the sword. It was a truly amazing evasion. However, the sword saint continued to attack with his sword as though he'd expected this. His sword fell down quickly like a thunderbolt, but this time, his prey didn't evade it. P.U.K. Instead, he kicked towards the sword saint's body, forcing him to stop his attack and sidestep to avoid him. This disturbed the sword's trajectory, causing it to only strike air. At that moment, the sword saint's eyes shook slightly. This was proof that this wasn't going as had expected. Nevertheless, the Sword Saint didn't stop. The Sword Saint didn't stop moving and attacked again, but his prey avoided those attacks easily as well. Swish. He easily avoided 13 attacks. Only then did the Sword Saint stop his offensive for the first time. Instead, he looked at his prey with cold, sunken eyes and said. 
Yu Hao. Although he was surprised, his prey, Li Jina, didn't answer. There was no reason to answer the questions of someone who wanted to kill you. And from Li Jina's perspective, there was nothing he had to say. It feels like fighting against Kim Wu Jin. The reason he was able to avoid the Sword Saint's attacks so perfectly was because he was on a similar level to Kim Wu Jin. If it wasn't for Kim Wu Jin, I'd probably have lost a few limbs by now. Li Jina was able to show such an eased expression during what should have been an intense fight against the Sword Saint, only because of Kim Wu Jin's constant tempering. This was something the Sword Saint would never have been able to expect. Ah. And it was at that moment that he recalled something that he'd completely forgotten due to this unexpected situation. What about the Bao God? He realized the Bao God had not supported him even once, although he'd launched thirteen attacks at their prey. And that none of his students had moved to assist him. As the Sword Saint realized something strange was going on, he heard a strange cry. Sheba. It was Li Jina. The Sword Saint turned to look at Li Jina, who spoke in a calm tone. You're here. Then, as he was shocked by the sudden, perfect Korean from the Russian in front of him, the Sword Saint heard a sound from his chest. It was the sound of his chest being pierced. You have been afflicted with the curse of Baomung. And that sound was the last sound the Sword Saint heard before he died. The thing the Messiah Guild considered most important while hunting Isaac Ivanov was the preservation of power. If they were to catch Isaac Ivanov but lose half of their power, it would be almost impossible for them to clear the dungeon afterward. In other words, the Messiah Guild's top priority was to prevent such an outcome, and in order to achieve this goal, the Messiah Guild didn't mind spending more time. No matter how long it took, the Messiah Guild was prepared to hunt steadily and stably. For this purpose, instead of deploying all their troops at once, they broke them into groups and placed them in various locations while constantly exchanging information, moving forward step by step in order to corner their prey. They were basically making a spider web. The groups that were located all over the dungeon floor exchanged information regularly. Cho Sun Wu was at the center of the web. There's no response from Group A02. We've lost contact with Group B13. But now, he had suddenly received a series of unexpected reports TL, how exactly are they contacting each other? What are you talking about? Everything was fine when we checked an hour ago, wasn't it? Everything that was fine up to an hour ago had suddenly become a terrible disaster. We've lost contact with 19 groups so far, a total of 210 people. 210 people. Such a large number had disappeared in an instant. Of course, this was possible. After all, this was a dungeon, so it wouldn't be strange for a strange, ridiculously powerful monster to appear and slaughter the players. Is it a boss class monster? Furthermore, since this was an A ranked 8 floor dungeon, it wouldn't be strange if two or three boss monsters appeared on the same floor. In any case, we shouldn't have lost contact with them without a trace. However, the players here weren't common. They were all skilled individuals who would at least leave some kind of hint before they died. They were not those who would just die silently after being attacked by a monster. How the hell? Cho Sun Wu's worries deepened. Then, Cho Sun Wu received information that made him put aside his worries a little. A request for help has come for Group C01. C01. He had no choice but to put them aside after receiving a request for help from the group that had both the Sword Saint and the Bow God in it. The two of them should be able to stall for time. This was a great opportunity to get an answer about this strange situation. Send reinforcements immediately. As he said those words, Cho Sung Wu himself began to prepare. I will go as well. At his orders, Cho Sung Wu and his men prepared as though they were about to rush into a monster's lair. But they didn't know. The existence of a bone dragon moving above their heads. There are 24 days remaining. They received a notification on the sixth day after entering the second floor of the dungeon. It was also the notification that told them six days had passed since they trapped Isaac Ivanov in the Bifrist after their sneak attack. The fact that the Bifrist barrier would soon be lifted caused the Messiah Guild members surrounding it to tense up. The Bifrist barrier will be lifted sooner or later. Whether they liked it or not, 
the Bifrist could only be maintained for as many as six days. And the moment the barrier dissipated, the Messiah Guild members would have to move to confirm Isaac Ivanov's life or death. Of course, most of them were certain. He's probably dead. There's no way he could have survived. That the only thing they'd find was Isaac Ivanov's corpse. This was because the repeated attacks in the barrier over the past six days had been thorough. In all honesty, they could have confirmed Isaac Ivanov's death sooner. Nevertheless, the Messiah Guild had not identified Isaac Ivanov's corpse yet. Not a single player had been allowed to enter the Bifrost. This was to prevent the possibility that Isaac Ivanov would trick another player and use them to escape the dungeon. He can't be alive after all of that. It would be weird if they weren't certain after this level of thoroughness. Nevertheless, the Messiah Guild members were nervous. Perhaps. Because of the many miracles Isaac Ivanov had created in his path to the top. There are six minutes left until the barrier is lifted. Park Shinhai, who had stayed awake to constantly monitor the Bifrost barrier for six days, announced the time limit so that they would remain vigilant. Suddenly. Five minutes. About a minute after she began her countdown. Ha. Huh. Someone's coming. A player was rushing at full force towards the place where the Bifrist was located. It's Cho Sun Wu. It was none other than Cho Sun Wu. The tension brought on by his appearance caused everyone to stiffen subconsciously, to the point that they couldn't even breathe. There's an emergency. In a loud voice, Cho Sun Wu shouted about an emergency, causing the tension to rise even higher. It was at that moment. Flash. An intense light surged towards Cho Sun Wu. When that happened, everyone turned away from Cho Sun Wu and looked towards Li Se Jun. Apollo's arrow. This was a skill that only one person in the world could use. Under the gaze of everyone in the group, Li Se Jun simply said, "That's not Cho Sun Wu." At those words, they turned their heads towards Cho Sun Wu again, and sure enough. They found the player holding the Aegis shield in their hand. Shortly afterwards, that player called out. It seems I was unable to deceive the hero's eyes. All the Messiah Guild members were incredibly shocked and they heard fluent Korean from this unknown player. Who is that? The situation was extremely confusing because those words were definitely spoken by a Korean native. Then someone with good ears stuttered. Ki Dash, Kim Woo Jin. He realized that the voice was Kim Woo Jin's voice and hurriedly shouted to the others. That's Kim Woo Jin. The Poison King Kim Woo Jin. That's his voice. At that cry, everyone's attention turned to Kim Woo Jin who was wielding the Aegis shield. The situation became chaotic at that moment. At a very important moment, Cho Sun Woo suddenly appeared, then Lee Se Jun attacked him, then they heard the voice of Kim Woo Jin, who was killed by Isaac Ivanov, from Cho Sun Wu. It was inevitable that this caused everyone to be incredibly confused and placed all of their attention upon Kim Woo Jin. That was why. Above. The reason they took too long to notice the gigantic bone dragon diving towards their heads. Because of this, the dragon crashed into the group uninterrupted. Crack crack crack. The bones of the dragon shattered and scattered in every direction as the players screamed and flew into the air because of the attack. Rattle. Then these shattered bone pieces began to clump together to form skeleton soldiers. The bone dragon returns to the form of skeleton soldiers. It's skeleton soldiers. It was the moment when 300 skeleton soldiers had pierced into the heart of the enemy in an instant. Oh my god. Block them. Get ready. Naturally, the Messiah Guild's battle formation became a mess as a result. Looking at this mess, Kim Woo Jin then said. Power of the Nine-Tailed Fox. The Nine-Tailed Fox's powers settle within you. Magic power will not be consumed for nine minutes. The moment he heard this notification, Kim Woo Jin started summoning. A Death Knight appears. And Death Knights began appearing behind him one after the other. Before long, Thirty Death Knights had made their appearance. Let's end this now. The final battle had begun. 
Kidding, from this chapter, we only have about three chapters left two parts of the last chapter Kill the Hero, and the epilogue and afterward which I will combine into one. This is my first time completely translating a novel, and I must say I'm really excited but also sad. And make sure to read on Woopred Wonder if the aggregators will copy my embed, dash. Chapter, 274. Kim Woo Jin hadn't been a hunting dog from the start. To put it bluntly, he used to be a stray dog. A stray who could only wander around, wondering what to bite while knowing nothing of the parents who birthed him or what to do with his life. Hunting dog Kim Woo Jin, I need your strength. It was just this one simple statement that transformed a stray dog into a hunting dog. With that one statement, the stray dog went through countless training and practice, through numerous hardships and adversity, and soon became the world's best hunting dog. It became a hunting dog that could hunt any prey. To put an end to this game and save the world. And he became a hunting dog who could hunt anything for one reason. Even when Kim Woo Jin returned to the past and countless things changed, that one thing didn't change. For that, I need to kill you, Lee Se Jun. To hunt everything standing in his path, put an end to the game, and save the world. That was the reason Kim Woo Jin made his move TL, not for revenge. That was why, in the midst of the charging death knights, the 300 raging skeleton soldier, and the lich and skeleton knights who were leading their own troops into battle, Kim Woo Jin ran towards Lee Se Jun. You have received the winner's blessing. Holding Excalibur in his hand, Kim Woo Jin clashed with Lee Se Jun. Everything didn't always go according to plan. This was especially true in dungeons. No one knew when or where an unexpected situation might occur. It was impossible to be able to deal with these unexpected situations perfectly, after all, if that was possible, it wouldn't be an unexpected situation. That was why having a manual was important. It allowed the players to just keep specific rules in mind in order to avoid the worst outcome in an emergency situation. Wake up. Act according to the manual. In an emergency, it was important to form a battle line. Once a battle line had been established, they would at least be able to buy some time, and in that time, they would be able to make plans according to the situation. Get ready. Parties, gather together. Among the members of the Messiah Guild, there was definitely no one who didn't know this fact. Rattle. However, the skeleton soldiers who fell from the sky did not allow the Messiah Guild members to easily gather together. The skeleton soldiers, who had crashed into the heart of the Messiah Guild's formation in the form of a bone dragon, began to attack before the Messiah Guild members were able to create their battle line. Damn it! Protect the healers and wizards first. Even the skeleton soldiers and skeleton knights on the outside persistently attacked the weakest members in the Messiah Guild's formation. These crazy bastards are only aiming for the healers. Among them, their offensive against the healers was the fiercest there were even cases of three or four skeleton soldiers rushing towards the same target. God damn it. Give up. We can't save them. Naturally, the results were devastating. But even under such circumstances, the Messiah Guild members were able to identify and implement the best course of action in this situation. Focus on the situation. Don't lose focus. Maintain focus and don't panic. It didn't seem like much, but it was very important in a situation like this one. Just like you can escape a tiger's den as long as you stayed alert and focused in order to seize the opportunity whenever it arrived. Hi hi hi. The Banshee's cries resound. However, the cries of the Banshees, who began weeping among the Messiah Guild members, did not allow them to do this easily. Coo. Wah. Moreover, only a few had ways to block the effects of the Banshee's cries now that the healers were the first to be attacked. Most of them could only freeze up as they felt cold hands grip their hearts on the fierce battlefield and shake their heads like they were trying to clear them. Kyaha. Unfortunately, the skeleton knights and skeleton soldiers would not miss such an opportunity. When the Messiah Guild's members lost their concentration, the skeleton knights began attacking them. Kwa. Wa. Screams rang out from every direction. Of course, there were still some who were able to put up a fight. Pak. 
the talented members of the Messiah Guild who had excellent personal abilities not only ruthlessly and relentlessly crushed the skeleton soldiers, but even pressured or crushed the skeleton knights. Gather around me, I'll destroy everything. It was like the appearance of a main character in a movie. It was like the appearance of a great figure. The lich raises the skeleton soldier again. However, in the face of a constant series of attacks launched by the skeleton soldiers who would return even if they were ground into bone dust, this dignity didn't last very long. There is no end. The series of terrible events didn't end there. Tuck, tuck. Rain began to fall over the battlefield. Rain. What's going on? The sudden rain cooled the heat of the Messiah Guild members that allowed them to move and think during the fierce battle with the skeleton army. You have been afflicted by blood poison. It cooled down to the extent that the faces of everyone in the rain became white. It's poison. Watch out for the poison. It's a blood golem. And with the appearance of the blood poison, the blood golem no longer concealed itself, and made its existence known. The night of death appears. It was around that time that the death knights began appearing. Thirty of them. This unbelievable number of death knights rushed atop their skeleton horses towards the already ravaged battlefield. Ah! The moment they saw this sight, the minds of the Messiah Guild members couldn't help but go blank. It's over. It was over. They couldn't help but have this thought. Gather around the master. In this situation, Park Shinhai's voice tore through the battlefield. As the Bifrist had ended, she was now free and she shouted out, her red hair fluttering. Protect the master. HR. Along with that cry, the figures of multicolored demons began to charge towards the undead army. The cold atmosphere on the battlefield began to heat up once again. Master. The members of the Messiah Guild, who had been filled with despair just a moment ago, began to feel hope. Right, there's still the master. Lee Sejun. The name that could bring hope to a despairing heart. The moment this name appeared in their minds, the members of the Messiah Guild began to move for one purpose. Assist the master. They started to gather around Lee Sejun. However, as she looked at this scene, Park Shinhai's expression was not good. The sacrifice will be greater. In truth, Park Shinhai already knew. In the midst of battle, the skeleton army would not allow their opponents, who hadn't even formed a proper battle line, to untangle themselves and move away suddenly. After all, that basically meant allowing them to gather in another place after letting them run away. Only Lee Sejun needs to survive. Nevertheless, the only reason she gave the order was to save Lee Sejun. And that was the answer. As long as we stop them, we'll have the chance to turn the tables. The abilities Isaac Ivanov had shown so far were incredibly unbelievable, but Lee Sejun was also not much worse than he was. Furthermore, it was true that Isaac Ivanov's abilities exceeded common sense too much. There were 300 skeleton soldiers that had transformed from a bone dragon, a lich and 30 death knights there. No matter how she looked at it, there was no way such a thing as possible without any conditions. There is probably a condition for Isaac Ivanov's skills. That was why Park Shinhai believed Isaac Ivanov and Kim Woojin's abilities had certain limitations. Time is on our side. She thought that they would surely disappear after a while. There will be plenty of opportunities. More importantly, the Lee Sejun that Park Shinhai knew was not someone who would die easily. Lee Sejun had many skills that could practically turn him into an immortal and items that he could use to escape from desperate situations. In time. In other words, with a little help, Lee Sejun would never die, and as long as he was alive, there would be many opportunities to reverse the situation. Except for one variable. Ah. Park Shinhai's expression couldn't help but stiffen as she thought of this variable. What were player versus player fights like? When they heard this question, most people thought of scenes from superhero or martial arts movies. Of course, fights between players differed from the scenes shown in movies in many ways. However, fights between players were also different from fights between ordinary people. It was not enough to call the sight of people with physical abilities that far surpassed human capabilities who also had all kinds of skills superhuman. 
Battles like that were things that anyone could imagine and expect. Hunting dogs should never fight in ways that anyone could expect. A hunting dog just needs to find their prey's weakness and latch onto it. It was okay to be messy or dirty, as long as you could persistently target and hold on to the prey's weaknesses. Kim Woo Jin's battle was like that. Due to the effect of Excalibur, Kim Woo Jin had been given the winner's blessing, and Lee Se Jun the challenger's curse. The dignity of Hercules settles within you. In this situation, Lee Se Jun increased his physical strength by activating the skill Hercules Dignity. The two of them had similar stats. In this situation, Kim Woo Jin didn't bother to engage in a fancy battle. There were no sounds of metal clashing as they constantly locked blades as seen in martial arts movies. Clang. As soon as their swords met, Kim Woo Jin kicked Lee Se Jun in the stomach, and as soon as Lee Se Jun stepped back, he leapt forwards with his sword in hand and wrapped his other arm around Lee Se Jun's waist. And in this state, they rolled on the floor without stopping. As if they were a ball, the tangled forms of Lee Se Jun and Kim Woo Jin rolled along the ground. It was really like a dog fight. As they rolled non stop, Lee Se Jun constantly tried to get away while Kim Woo Jin managed to always catch him somehow and continue rolling. Even Lee Se Jun couldn't help but let out a grunt filled with complicated feelings as they continued this ridiculous dog fight which couldn't even be described as a battle. Of course, Kim Woo Jin was different. You probably never fought like this before. In fact, this was quite natural for him. For him who always had to fight opponents and monsters stronger than himself, he had learned to not care about dignity, splendor, or beauty. In particular, when dealing with a player, he always prepared to get tangled and dirty in the mud. He always used a method that the other person had never experienced or would expect. By doing so, he wore away at their mental power, concentration, and physical strength, as well as bought time. Lee Se-Jun, this was the way I lived for you. This was the way Kim Woo Jin learned to live as the Messiah Guild's hunting dog. Therefore, Kim Woo Jin bit Lee Se-Jun in the same way that he had learned as the Messiah Guild's hunting dog. There was nothing Lee Se-Jun could do in the face of Kim Woo Jin's offensive. Sacred Light Explodes, TL, author left out sacred here, but it's the same skill so I put it in dash. Even if he used the blinding explosion skill, it would not have any effect on Kim Woo Jin, who was stuck to him. He really stuck to Lee Se Jun like a dog biting its prey. After a while, Lee Se Jun's eyes began losing focus little by little. He could feel his reason begin to melt bit by bit. He also started to feel a sense of crisis. Suddenly, whoosh! Lee Se Jun's body erupted with white flames. Cert S1, flames burn. Cert. It was the moment when the power of the fire giant, who brought destruction to the world, erupted from Lee Se Jun's body. Finally. It was only then that Kim Woo Jin let go of Lee Se Jun for the first time. And for the first time, he was forced to widen the distance between them. Nevertheless, the look in Kim Woo Jin's eyes didn't change. This was natural. After all, this was exactly what Kim Woo Jin had been waiting for. P.U.K. At that moment, something stabbed deeply into Lee Se Jun's side. Kook. Lee Se Jun screamed. Following that scream, the identity of the invisible being who had stabbed Lee Se Jun was revealed. The effect of the cap of invisibility has disappeared. It was Lee Jin Ah, who was wearing the cap of invisibility. The effect of the Longinus Spear activates, TL, Karma. With the Longinus Spear in his hand. Lee Se Jun couldn't help but stare at Lee Jin Ah, who had stabbed him in the side, with wide eyes. And in that moment, a sword pierced Lee Se Jun's chest. The curse of Ba Meng has been activated. Kim Wu Jin had stabbed Lee Se Jun in the chest with Ba Meng. Fun fact, Frere Fry, is the male twin of Freya and some of their authorities coincided dash. And make sure to read on Wupred Wonder if the aggregators will copy my embed, dash. Chapter, 275. There were many things that needed to be prepared when hunting. The first thing that had to be prepared was none other than your weapon, your fangs. What kind of fangs would be needed to pierce the skin, tear the flesh and break the bones of the prey? Without an answer to that question, 
the plan itself could not form. The same was true for Lee Sejun. It was the first question Kim Woo Jin asked himself when he decided to hunt Lee Sejun. How many fangs would he need to hunt a prey like Lee Sejun? Kim Woo Jin's answer to this question was simple. Only the Longinus spear can kill Lee Sejun. Longinus spear. Only this item was the fong that could be used to kill Lee Sejun. It's the only item that can make all of Lee Sejun's skills and items useless. It was the only thing that could neutralize Lee Sejun's large number of legendary items and skills. So he made a plan. A plan to make Lee Sejun take out the Longina spear, which he'd hidden deep within his inventory. He made him use it against Isaac Ivanov. This gave Lee Jina the opportunity to obtain the spear and attack Lee Sejun with it. P.U.K. And while Lee Sejun could not use any skills because of the Longina spear, Kim Woo Jin stabbed him in the heart with Baomeng. Now only his head remains. Lee Sejun grabbed onto the sword like it was his lifeline. If Kim Woo Jin moved his hand, then Lee Sejun would die even if he had thousands or hundreds of thousands of ways to survive if things had gone differently TL, half sure I TL this wrong but it was a pretty hard sentence. It was a situation that marked the end of a long hunt. This is the last. On the other hand, this was also his last chance. Why did you betray the world that believed in you? Why did you betray the colleagues who sacrificed their lives for you? Why did you betray me? This was Kim Woo Jin's last chance to hear an answer to all his questions from Lee Se Jun himself. When he had this thought, Kim Woo Jin pulled Ba Meng, which had been stuck in Lee Se Jun's chest, out. Puffed. Blood shot out of Lee Se Jun's chest and covered Kim Woo Jin. Shook. And in that state, Kim Woo Jin swung Ba Meng and cut off Lee Se Jun's head without hesitation. The cut was so clean that it took a few moments for the severed head to tumble off the neck and fall to the floor. Kim Woo Jin didn't even look down at the head. Instead, it was Lee Jina who looked at him in shock. Why dash, you just killed him right away. It seemed Lee Jina would never have imagined that such a long, difficult, and fierce fight would end in such a dry manner. Aren't you supposed to ask why? In fact, Li Jina thought Kim Woo Jin would ask a few questions after finally cornering Li Se Jun. This was natural. After all, one was the person who perfectly played the role of savior in order to devour the whole world and the other was the person who noticed this goal and moved to stop it. When they finally met each other face to face, it was natural that they would have a lot to say to each other. Kim Woo Jin responded inwardly to Li Jina's words. I didn't come here because I wanted to hear his excuses. It was like this from the start. Kim Woo Jin didn't just want to kill Lee Se Jun. He knew that the feelings he felt after being betrayed by Lee Se Jun wouldn't simply melt like snow after killing him. I didn't take such a long and arduous path just to listen to some childish excuse. On the other hand, if he just intended to end it by killing Lee Se Jun, if the completion and culmination of his revenge was all he'd been after, there would have been no reason for Kim Woo Jin to have prepared all of this. After all, it still wasn't over yet. With that thought, Kim Woo Jin turned to look at the remaining members of the Messiah Guild. There were no longer any traces of reason in the expressions of the Messiah Guild's members. Lee Se Jun. Master. It was because the presence of Lee Se Jun, who had been decapitated, had taken away their reason. Kyaha. Rattle. The Messiah Guild's members, who had lost their reason, simply charged towards Kim Woo Jin, ignoring the skeleton army that was attacking them. Even if their colleagues died miserably, even if they were inflicted with grievous injuries, they continued rushing forward without stopping. They were no longer afraid of death, so they threw away their lives for this final attack. Li Jina, who saw this scene, no longer looked stunned. This is no joke. It was difficult and dangerous to deal with so many talented people who had lost everything and were now doing everything to take down their enemy even at the cost of their lives, and he had to be focused. Of course, Kim Woo Jin was different. The shadows around them began to crawl towards Kim Woo Jin, who was calmly observing this scene. These shadows crawled up Kim Woo Jin's body to his head where they finally took the shape of a pure black dog mask. Anubis descends. It was the moment he used Anubis descent. 30 days. 
That was how long they were forced to survive on the second floor of the dungeon. There is one day remaining. And now they received a notification that only one day of that time remained. It was an indescribably joyful reminder. Now, there's only us two left. However, Li Jina's words after they received the reminder were truly terrifying. They meant that out of the 99 people, the number closest to 100, that had gone to the second floor of the dungeon, only two remained. In other words, 997 people died on this floor. Kim Wu Jin didn't respond to Li Jin Ahs words. Anubis fades away. Instead of answering, he released the power of Anubis, which had descended on his body. Then he took off the mask he was wearing, as well as the Isaac Ivanov mask. He had returned to his original appearance. It was a more definite answer than any words. An answer that there was no longer anyone who could see their appearances so they no longer needed to act. In response to that, Li Jina also took off the mask he was wearing. Ku, now I can walk around with my manly face it's such a waste to hide your handsome face isn't it? Li Jina, who'd taken off his mask, spoke as if he was trying to show off his coolness. Kim Wu Jin didn't answer his question. Instead, he walked forward. Most of the bodies that Kim Wu Jin passed as he walked were not complete. And as there were so many bodies piled up, their blood formed a pond. This sight was very messy and cruel to the point that it would make one dizzy, but it wasn't difficult to find the body with red hair among the pile. Park Shinhai The number two in the Messiah Guild The woman who helped the hero play the savior in order to rule the world. Her current appearance wasn't very good. Her robes was filled with cuts and signs of battle, and through the countless holes on her armor, countless injuries could be seen on her body. Her face also had obvious signs of poisoning. The only thing that seemed comfortable was her expression. Of course, that wasn't necessarily a good thing either. This was the comfort that Park Shinhai had only managed to reach after she gave up on her own life after her death became obvious. Anubis' descent was such a skill. A skill that made those who knew they would die give up without hesitation. Looking at Park Shinhai's expression reminded Kim Woo Jin of a few memories he had of her. Now that I think about it, I have more memories with Park Shinhai than with Lee Sejun. There were more memories than those of Lee Sejun. In a way, she was Lee Sejun's mouthpiece. She was the one who communicated Lee Sejun's wishes to Kim Woo Jin, and also the one who he met when he fulfilled those wishes. Li Jina approached Kim Wu Jin who was staring at Park Shinhai while immersed in his memories. Is it finally over? As he said those words, Li Jina's voice carried a trace of weakness. It would be strange if he didn't feel drained in a situation where he had to carry out an unbelievably difficult task that no one could know about, and eventually succeeded. Of course, Li Jina knew. Ah, of course I know we still have to clear the dungeon I know that much even without you telling me. If he reacted like that, Kim Wu Jin would definitely tell him it's not done. He'd tell him there was still the dungeon attack left. Kim Wu Jin chuckled at Li Jina's words. Right, there's still more to be done. Ha. Huh. More. Li Jina couldn't help but ask this when he saw Kim Wu Jin's expression. Kim Wu Jin's eyes became black as he responded. We still have to make everyone here heroes who tried to save the world. Kim Wu Jin then received a notification. Anubis' eyes have opened. With those black eyes, Kim Wu Jin looked at Park Shinhai. Because my revenge isn't over yet. October 4th. An unusually strong wind blew over the Chengdu city. The only thing that wasn't affected by these heavy winds was the concrete dome in the center of the city. This place, which was called the Savior's Cradle, was as secure as ever. And in it, was the same scene as always. Hundreds of cameras located around the dungeon gate were constantly streaming a still image. It was a scene that was so boring it would make people lose their minds. However, there were no signs of boredom in the eyes of those watching. They were watching to ensure that they didn't miss a single moment of this historical event. It was due to this. Ah! Someone came out. The person who was monitoring the image immediately understood what this meant and quickly reported the situation. Immediately after that, the world began moving busily. 
There was a huge screen in a conference room filled with reporters which showed the inside of the concrete dome. They finally cleared it. Thanks to that, they were able to see it right away. It's Isaac Ivanov. Isaac Ivanov. The sight of this hero crossing the dungeon gate. It's Bathsheba. And following Isaac Ivanov, the large frame of his closest companion appeared. That was all. Huh. No new players appeared from the dungeon gate. What about Lee Sejun? What about the Messiah Guild? The savior who would save the world didn't appear. It remained the same even as more time passed. Ah. The cheers that erupted around the world suddenly stopped, and the atmosphere became cold. It was as if a harsh winter had settled upon the world. Everything froze. Chubuk. And in this situation, only one person, Isaac Ivanov, stepped forward without hesitation. His footsteps led him to the podium that had been erected with the concrete dome beforehand. It was just a simple platform. But Isaac Ivanov stood upon the platform meant for the greatest and most historic declaration in the world. Soon, Isaac Ivanov, who stood upon this platform, said. 997 people died. The world didn't show any reaction to the words he said. They were like dolls who had lost all of their emotions. Nevertheless, Isaac Ivanov continued. Every time someone died, they left a will 997 people left their wills and every time, I only gave them one answer. He calmly repeated the wills of the dead. That I will kill the final boss and put an end to this game. Everyone in the world looked towards Isaac Ivanov, who stood upon the podium. Only then did they realize. Isaac Ivanov didn't lower his head, narrow his shoulders, or avert his eyes despite announcing this terrible news. Instead, his eyes burned intensely with strong determination and will. It was this Isaac Ivanov that said to the world. That way, I will save the world they wanted to save. When those words came out, a warm spring began to fall on the cold winter that had suddenly settled. The warmth blossomed green. And in this warmth, Isaac Ivanov said. I will accept Lee Sejun's will and in the name of the Messiah Guild, I will attack the nine-floor dungeon and save the world. Then that warmth became a fiery heat that devoured the world. Wah! Yua! The reporters all jumped up, throwing their pencils, notepads, and even their smartphones and cameras into the air as they cheered. Then, Kim Woo Jin said. And I will make the world remember the Messiah Guild and Lee Sejun as heroes who saved the world. Lee Sejun, die as a hero who saved the world. It was the moment Kim Woo Jin righted all of the wrongs. Because the Lee Sejun whom I gave my life for was a hero who wanted to save the world. And it was the moment he regained the meaning of his existence that had been denied. Chapter, 276. December 23, 2025. It was the day before Christmas Eve, and the atmosphere in Seoul, the capital of Korea, was tenser than ever. It's a week from now. Right, a week from now, Isaac Ivanov will attack the nine-floor dungeon. The dungeon attack that was announced on October 4 to commemorate the great hero who fought to save the world was only a week away. However, it wasn't just tension. Will you succeed? There was a reason for the tension. Expectations were high that there would be a peaceful world where they would no longer need to worry about monsters appearing every year. The expectation that this game would finally end. Because an all-star team has been created. The source of this expectation were the players who had been gathered to attack the nine-floor dungeon. An all-star team. All of the best players in the world had been gathered for this final dungeon attack. Because the all-star team will be led by Isaac Ivanov. And those who gathered were all under the banner of Isaac Ivanov. Would they really be completely obedient just because of your little story? Of course they will obey those who go against the Messiah Guild's values here are basically going against all of humanity. Well, if the other guilds had cooperated fully with the Messiah Guild then maybe Lee Sejun wouldn't have died. It was the death of the world savior, Lee Sejun, made it possible. His noble sacrifice made it impossible for the other players to be selfish. Now it's time to finally end this game. That was why tension and expectation coexisted in the atmosphere around the world on the day before Christmas Eve. 
Hey, really a Chinese restaurant of all things, a Chinese restaurant. And despite this atmosphere in Seoul, a man complained without hesitation. Since we're preparing to do something so big we should at least have giant lobster and king crab with caviar huh? It was a man whose appearance was so ugly that just looking at him would give you goosebumps. Whenever this man complained, the people around couldn't help but be surprised by his ugly appearance. However, the ordinary looking man across from him didn't respond at all to the ugly man's complaints. Make an order. Along with those words, he handed a menu over to the ugly man. Li Jina, the man who received the menu, asked with delight. You're shooting right. Kim Wu Jin simply closed his eyes instead of answering. Li Jina laughed at this sight. Punk, you brought me to a cheap Chinese restaurant, but I'll just eat 100 million wands worth that should be enough. Then I'll place my order. Yes. Hiding the ridicule in his heart, Li Jina pointed out what he wanted to the employee who came to take his order. I'll have from here to here. Ha. Huh. When the waiter tilted their head at his order, Li Jina pointed to the first dish on the first page of the menu. From here. Then turning the menu to the last page, he pointed at the last dish. To here. Only then did the waiter understand what he meant, but they looked even more surprised. Li Jina ignored the waiter and handed the menu back to Kim Wu Jin. You should also make your order. This fact made the waiter even more embarrassed. He wants to eat all of that alone. Ignoring the waiter's shocked expression, Kim Wu Jin simply ordered a bowl of jajangmyeon. After taking their orders, the employee hurried to relay it to the kitchen, and Li Jin Ah began humming a small tune while waiting for his food. Kim Wu Jin simply sat there without a word. After a while, the food was brought out. A bowl of jajangmyeon for Kim Wu Jin, and a plate of tang suyuk for Li Jin Ah. Oh, you already ordered. A man walked into the restaurant and greeted Kim Wu Jin and Li Jina as soon as he saw them. It looks delicious who's shooting. Ha! Huh. This was Kim Wu Jin's first time meeting this man. But that didn't mean he didn't know who he was. Oh Se Chan. It was the moment when Kim Wu Jin and Oh Se Chan were finally able to meet for the first time. Oh Se Chan looked towards Kim Wu Jin and smiled. This is our first meeting, isn't it? Kim Wu Jin nodded and said. As I heard, you're bald. As you heard, I'm bald. Oh Se Chan slowly turned his head to Li Jina who simply shrugged his shoulders at his expression. What? You're bald, aren't you? Oh Se Chan shut his mouth as though the confident words made him speechless. Then he simply sat on the chair beside Li Jina facing Kim Wu Jin and said. There's only one left. At those words, the messy atmosphere calmed down a bit. It was a long fight. As he said those words, Oh Se Chan's expression was heavy. That's why finishing it is all the more important. Here's your Yang Jangpi. TL, basically mixed vegetables and seafood in mustard sauce. One more dish was brought in this heavy atmosphere and Oh Se Chan immediately shut up. It was only after the waiter disappeared that Oh Se Chan opened his mouth again. Have you ever thought about what will happen after the game ends? He once again created a heavy atmosphere with his questions. Here's your palboki. TL, 8 treasures dish. At that moment the waiter once again left the kitchen and put a plate on the table in front of Li Jina. Once again, Oh Se Chan shut up. And when the employee disappeared into the kitchen, he opened his mouth again. Players will lose their abilities, guilds will lose their function. Here is the chili shrimp you ordered. Hey, really? Only then did Oh Se Chan break the heavy atmosphere and shout towards Li Jina. You damn pig, little pig bastard. Li Jina furrowed his brows when he heard that. Hey, why are you suddenly insulting me? It's not like you're the one paying, is it? Oh Se Chan scratched his head nervously and closed his mouth at those words because Li Jina had accurately targeted his weakness. It was Kim Wu Jin who set the mood once again. There would be chaos everything that was created during this period would become a bubble overnight. Oh Se Chan nodded. Right, but if the player's abilities remain after the game ends that will be a problem, 
but it would be even more troublesome if they lose their abilities they have built a lot over the past six years, all the power structures around the world have been organized and reorganized by the players and guilds. The world wanted the game to end. That much was true. However, most people didn't think about what would happen after the game ended. And no one prepared for it. Even the Messiah Guild had not made any preparations in event that the game ended. What you need the most in a time of chaos like that is power. Only one person was different. Like an exemplary social enterprise where you could give food and medicine instead of guns and ammunition to the people who are sick and have no food to eat. Oh Seichan had been preparing for when the game ended. I created a company called Pandora, it's a company I made using all the money I de-saved. Pandora. That was what Oh Seichan had prepared. We've already acquired all the necessary technologies, factories and technicians we need for what I just mentioned the technologies that would be used in the world that changed because the game ended we have them for all kinds of fields and it's completely legitimate unlike the players and guilds, the money used there is completely clean from now on, Pandora will save the world. As he said this, Oh Seichan smiled bitterly. Sure it won't be easy, but it's definitely better than waiting for nuclear weapons to be launched or hungry people picking up weapons and rebelling. Ah, uh, Pandora was like that. Li Jina, who'd finished his plate of chili shrimp, responded to Oh Seichan's remarks. Oh Seichan glared at him for a bit before continuing. So what do you think? I thought you were just raising money for yourself, I didn't think you were working globally to raise money for world peace. Oh Seichan's expression crumpled. Hey, what do you take me for? Li Jina answered this question without hesitation. Aren't you just a bald, cheap money grubber? You bastard. Kim Wu Jin couldn't help but laugh at the conversation between the two. Ugh, I wasn't asking you anyway. Oh Seichan clicked his tongue at Li Jina before turning back to Kim Wu Jin. Anyways, that's the end of the public story I'm all set so you can go ahead and do whatever you want. Don't worry about what would happen after clearing the final dungeon. Kim Wu Jin smiled and nodded at the indescribable help. Now then, shall we talk about something personal? Seeing that smile, Oh Seichan continued. I've thought a lot about the game I'm certain that this was done by some transcendent being that we can't even begin to fathom. Kim Wu Jin nodded. And that transcendent being must have a bloody twisted personality. Like you Hyung. Oh Seichan ignored Li Jina's words, although the veins on his bald head pulsed dangerously. Would such a being tolerated if the game they made became stagnant without being ended by the players? Think about it if you made a game, but you weren't able to see the ending of the game because the characters inside didn't want the game to end what would you do? Kim Wu Jin didn't answer that question. Oh Seichan looked at Kim Wu Jin carefully for a moment before continuing in a soft tone. If it was me I'd fix the error and play the game again isn't that right? Huh? Do you have similar thoughts as me? Instead of answering, Kim Wu Jin narrowed his eyes slightly. A light smile spread across his lips. Then Oh Seichan's smartphone began vibrating. Excuse me. After giving him a glance, Oh Seichan got up from his seat. Hyung doesn't get a lot of time to rest rather, I'm not even sure if he pays his phone bill as he should if the call fee exceeds 101, he'll probably hack the carrier's server so that he doesn't have to pay the fee. With those words, Li Jina turned to the waiter who was bringing a new dish. Let me change my order. When they heard that, the waiter nodded. After all, how could one person eat all of that food? That's what their expression said. Naturally, while they thought he wanted to cancel the order, Li Jina continued. Then what should I cans? I'd like to order some desserts in advance. To the surprised employee, Li Jina held up the menu and said. From here to here. While the waiter was still in shock, Oh Seichan reappeared and beckoned to Kim Wu Jin. Can I talk to you for a minute? Kim Wu Jin got up from his seat without saying anything and followed Oh Seichan out the restaurant. Looking at their retreating figures, Li Jina had just one thought. I have to eat everything before they come back. He had to eat even more before they returned. As he was filled with determination and smiled insidiously, something caught Li Jina's eye. It was a bill sitting on Kim Wu Jin's seat. No way. 
After confirming what it was, Li Jina turned to look at the door of the restaurant. However, he could see neither hide nor hair of Oh Se Chan or Kim Wu Jin. With a ridiculous expression on his face, Li Jina said. Wow, they're really spiteful, terrible. End.